room getting ready and you've been jumping up and down. So that means uh. it's creative time, man. I cannot wait to get to these games to get inside of the Arthur Ashe Stadium, Zeke. Again, I'm surprised we're standing still. I, I mean, if you guys aren't feeling the hype right now, you need to open your eyes because this is it. 10 weeks of qualifiers, eight weeks of creative qualifiers have led us to this very weekend, the Fortnite World Cup Finals in New York City. We're gonna walk away with world champions. Yeah. I'm so excited. I could not be happy right now. And not only that, we are outside at the Fan Festival having a blast. Everybody's doing all sorts of fun activities. All the player, all the people are getting inside, starting to get ready for the show, get in the bleachers, start watching some creative action, and then later, of course, the Pro-Am. It's a blast. Make sure you're coming down here and joining us. Yeah, for sure, man. Uh, now, funny enough, we actually have Pookie, who is standing by. She is chilling with the leader of the Funky Fighters. That is Tamoya, so let's send it over to her for an interview. Thank you so much, Zeke. I am here with Tamoya of the Funky Fighters. It is so exciting to have you here competing in the Creative Fortnite World Cup. How have you been preparing for today? Um, I just practiced with my team yesterday and things went pretty good. And we didn't have as much time as I thought we would be, do, but we played really good, so I'm pretty excited. Yeah. That's awesome. Team synergy is definitely important. Now, do you know any of the other competitors that are going to be here today that you'll be facing? Do you have your eye on anybody? Um, the Death Run map, I think, is going to be the most competitive. So, yeah, uh, I'm excited to do the Death Run map, yeah. So, it's, I mean, Scissors is very well known for his Death Runs. Do you think you'll have any competition with him? Yeah, I think it's going to be really hard beating him, but um, my map was also a death run, so I think my teammates have a good chance. Well, I wish you the best of luck. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me. Zeke and Bala, back to you guys. Oh, man. Oh, man. The hype is building. Now, guys, the show is getting ready to start, but there it is. You've got the 32 players, 19 countries represented across eight different teams. The Fortnite World Cup Creative Finals are about to begin. You ready? I am ready, Zeke. I'm ready to run inside. So without further ado, let's send it inside to kick things off. gentlemen what's going on how you feeling today that's what I like to hear that's what I like to hear welcome everyone to the Arthur Ashe Stadium I'm Golden Boy your host and I couldn't be more happy that you guys are here in my hometown of New York City it's actually quite nice for me because that means I don't really have to travel that far it's pretty cool that being said we have a lot of cool stuff that's gonna be happening here today not only do we have the creative showdown but we also have the third Fortnite Pro-Am that's about to go down. It is gonna be incredible. You got some of your favorite content creators. They're gonna take that stage and battle for your entertainment. Now, you know that we saw a few of the players that were coming out here. We actually have one that you all may recognize standing by with Pookie. Pookie, who you got for me? Thank you so much, Golden Boy. I am up here on the main stage with Ninja. Familiar faces for everyone in the crowd. Let's hear it. How excited are you to be here today at the World Cup Creative Mode? This is something different for you, I'm sure. Yeah, uh, I haven't really done too much creative, but I've been playing a lot with these guys, obviously, the last 48 hours. And uh, no, I'm really excited. I think we got a really good chance, and, uh, and we're, we're going to have a lot of fun. Now, tell me a little bit how your team came together. Yeah, uh, I checked out their clips uh, for the trick shots that they submitted, and, and they were all, you know, they stood out to me. They were special and it was just an easy choice so, to pick these three guys. And, you know, like I said, we've actually been bonding pretty hard the last 48 hours. So team, team cohesion is an all-time high. Team cohesion, I love it. We should have named you guys the Ninja Trick Shot Warriors, really. That would have been awesome, but uh, there's no, I mean, there are, yeah, there is a, a ninja skin kind of in the game. So, you know, we could have had, you know, maybe some of that. That's all good. I like the little whip. I love my little ice cream. And anybody that you're looking forward to facing off against here today? Everyone here, you know, uh, Gotaga, he's my fellow, uh, you know, Red Bull competitor, uh, essentially, and uh, 
you know, scissors because he talks a big game. That's it, yeah. Those two guys, I'm looking out for them the most. Well, he does talk a big game. Let's see if he can back it up today. Thank you so much. I wish you all the best of luck. Golden Boy, what do you think? Well, I think that's pretty awesome because the good news is we got eight great teams that are going to be playing for a $1 million grand prize in three very creative modes, which means today's really all about fun. And who better to have some fun with than none other? You got Monster, Sundown, over at the cast move. Take it away, fellas. And boys and girls, and Jonesies, Bonesies, and everyone in between, welcome to the Fortnite World Cup Creative Finals. I'm one of your casters, Sundown, joined here by Monster. Monster, how you doing today, man? Doing great. This is the moment we've all been waiting for. Ten weeks of qualifiers, and it's all coming to life. And uh, this is what we're here for. Yes, after the eight trials now, what you'll be seeing on the stage will be four sets of three matches and two never before seen maps and a little refresher coming from the creative showdown there with Sky Station Showdown. It's gonna be incredible. That's right. So you guys have seen the Sky Station before. Lucky for them, you know, they get to kind of come in here, prepare, kind of prepped up, but there is so much more that is gonna happen that has been unveiled today. Oh, and I mean, it's good. Seeing the adaptation across these sets is going to be incredible and they're going to get a chance to revisit them at the end with a little uh, remix, but we'll get into that here in a second. Let's check out the overall scoring and how these guys are going to be competing and how they will win. So, as we said, that first set is Sky Station Showdown. Junkyard Juke will be the second one. Set three will be a never-before-seen world run, and then set four will be the Golden Games. Now, the Golden Games will comprise of a singular match from each one of the other three with, as I said, a nice little remix on it and the golden games is worth a golden llama while all of the other sets are worth a singular silver llama how do those llamas add up monster yeah you want to accumulate the most llamas throughout each set we're treating each set its own uh, individual thing with a couple games in between so they're gonna get a couple runs at it and you just want to do the best in every set and get those llamas so you can take it all home yes now the winner of the set will go through and in case there is a tie it will come down to that golden llama the golden llama will try all now let's get into the prizing which will also determine a little bit of the scoring we'll take a look and we'll throw that up there for you and the way it ends up working is from top to bottom each one of these contestants will be winning money so everyone is a winner in there but first place ends up deciding that and this is per the individual matches and it's cumulative it won't carry over through the sets but they're still taking it home at the end of the day so you definitely want to get in the top four to bump up that score yeah, that's right. And that is every game per match. We have a big winner. Of course, it's going to be divvied out between everyone competing. But come on, with the amount of games that's going on today, this is incredible. Yes, that is across 12 of matches total. So tons of chances to win prizes from all of these guys. Let's take a look at the roster and all of the teams who will be competing and give you guys a quick little overview. You can see Chicken Champions led by El Rubius, Sunshine Soldiers, got that one right too, Zeke, with Danyan and Achin representing as the captains, Funky Fighters with Tomoya, Cuddle Crew represented by Lachlan. But we gotta give some love to the Ravens Revenge. You can see them up there, Little Whip Warriors. We already kind of touched base with Ninja. Llama Record, uh, which you talked about a lot coming up into here, and of course the fish fam who's going to be led by scissors and these are some of the creative kings they've been yes. able to go through run qualify a lot of them have had the world run or not world run experience excuse me but in those death runs where they were doing the qualifications but they're also some combat aspects so we've seen sky station showdown before you know there's going to be a little bit i don't want to say advantage but they might be a little more at home when you're actually firing bullets building out and trying to get those rotations in yeah, I mean, you cannot underestimate any of these teams. These guys grind and they all play Fortnite. But let's go ahead and take a look at the format here so we can kind of see a, see a run and how they take these victories. So now the VIP will be those creative captains and they have to be the one in the capture point uncontested to score points. They will get three points per second in the initial hills and then the first team to a thousand points or the highest scoring team by the end. And also the creative captains will be wielding the infinity blade. That infinity blade will be important because they have to get to the capture points a b and c which will give three points a second and then seven minutes into the round point d opens up where you will get about a lot a lot more right 12 yeah. points a second four Th times that is, is what, a lot that is what you want to what you want to do you want to gun for 
the point D on the map, that's your comeback or that's your, your lead taker. Yeah, you can see a lot change when that opens up at seven minutes, but now we're gonna go in an overview. For those of you who are unfamiliar and didn't get to watch it at the summer block party, we got you. Zeke, catch us up. This map is a collaboration between Team Evolve and Epic. Now let's break down how it all works. For this very special event, we are bringing you an exciting King of the Hill style game built in creative by Team Evolve. Eight teams of four players will start at their home base on the edge of this massive flying city. Together, they will push three capture circles, racking up points by holding them down for their team. As each team heads toward the capture points, they'll need to protect their team's VIP, who plays a key role in this game mode. If they get eliminated, they'll respawn at the team's home base. The VIP is the only player who can earn points for your team while in the capture circle, earning three points per second. They are also the only ones who can wield the Infinity Blade, which deals massive melee damage and enables the wielder to jump incredible distances. It's the rest of the team's job to make sure the VIP gets to the capture circle and stays there as long as possible without being eliminated. With three capture circles across the map, teams have to strategize to figure out which point they'll be able to hold. Pay attention to your surroundings, because if lots of teams are fighting for the same point, there could be an open circle elsewhere. Hold up. Did I say three capture circles? Actually, there's a fourth one. Partway through the match, the fourth capture circle in the center of the map will open up and will award four times more points per second than the others. But with high reward comes high risk. After each match, teams will be ranked based on how long they held the capture circles and earn overall points based on their rank in that game. Those points will be added to an overall leaderboard, and at the end of six matches, the team with the most points wins. Let the showdown begin. Love seeing that and getting a quick rundown on how the teams can go about playing. Now, Monster, I have to ask you, knowing the rules now, seeing the map, seeing the teams, who is your team to watch out for? You know, early on, I thought the Little Whip Warriors and the Fish Ram were going to do good, uh, good, but hearing from the Ravens Revenge, Gotaga now, I, I'm just shifting towards Ravens Revenge here. Uh, they, they've swayed me. Their, their entrance has really swayed me. They definitely had a lot of confidence down there in Gotaga. It can be very competitive at a drop of a hat. My team to watch, the Llama Record Co, Hand of Blood, Spenos, Alex JJ Carnifex. You heard him talk about it. Three competitive veterans and a very aggressive German. That's a combination that <laughs> I want to see on Sky Station Showdown. Now, we've done a whole bunch of talking, but I know why you guys are here. You know why we're here. It's time to play some Fortnite. The Fortnite World Cup Creative Finals starts right now. And this is it. We are loading in. Everyone's hopping now, and this is there are they are actually familiar with this map. So we're gonna see the strategies off the bat here. Let's see who can take away and break away with that early lead you saw there. Nice wide shot of all of our captains here. And here it is. Little Whip Warriors in the lead off the bat. Already you can see trades coming out now. A fun fact, the Infinity Blade wielder gets a bonus 100 health and shield. So he's sitting at the 200-200 mark. On top of that, Siphon is on. If you get an elimination, you get that 50 effective HP back over. That makes the Infinity Blade very hard to take down. They also get those big crescent move jumps to slam down. And as you can see going on the right hand side of your screen, it is creative chaos all over the place. But now taking in with the little Whip Warriors as they're able to clean it out and Ninja's trying to rotate up top. Yeah, I'm sorry to break it to you, but the Lava Record was completely pushed off of their point. And now we have Ninja who's going in with the Infinity Blade. What a player to wield this one right here. Oh, he's getting pushed back. Notice how he doesn't even want to get eliminated. He wants to do as much damage as possible. But is that effective? I think you just kind of reset and you go or you get up there and you start swinging. The 75 damage hit will be able to take it down. And the Llama Record Company establishes himself right back up. Now, what's going to be interesting to me is how the players utilize their building. You start with 50 wood, and then if you get an elimination, you get 25 wood directly into your inventory. So if you're able to kind of eliminate out and put pressure down, you can get some ridiculous builds, as we're already seeing on top of the blue hill. Yeah, this is actually a neck-and-neck -neck race 
start here in the early game so far. Fish Fam, Chicken Champions, and Raven's Revenge are all trading spots at the moment. And uh-oh, Sunshine Soldiers comes right on in to wipe that up and get them out of there. And nice job for Sewer. And look at the Cuddle Crew across the way just now getting their first points because they've been contested the entire time, whereas Llama Record Company has only had one team coming up towards them. Another thing to note, let's talk about the loadouts here, Monster. What are they rocking? They're rocking everything that you can get in the game from blue tactical AR up to that hunting rifle. So you have the long range, you have the close range, you have the AR. You kind of just pick and choose your battle, what you want to use. And the one thing you're missing that the Infinity Blade wielder does not have will be nine impulse grenades. So everyone has a bunch of mobility to be able to get up there. But you see right there, Scissor's able to cut down a bunch and get a decent amount of timing. Let's take a look at the score. Little Whip Warriors climbing up, but it is only a five second uncontested lead and they're building on it. Right now, not a lot of points have been scored, which means when that hill opens up at seven minutes, it's going to be that much more important. Yeah, this is going way better than I expected. There is no one dominant team so far. But the Little Whip Warriors are doing so great right now. There goes Ninja, and he does get traded out. Raven's Revenge kind of takes it back over. Will Gotaga's squad manage to hold it down for long enough to get their, uh, you know, points in? Don't forget, he has to clear out the point. If there's someone on it, you're not going to get uh, anything. Right, and as soon as you're up there, if teammates are not building for you, you're exposed for the entire map. Everyone else is able to see you. You can see El Rubius going in, but the double pack plus the Infinity Blade Wheeler of Hand of Blood. This Llama Record Company team is looking to go platinum with a great defense of their point. There it is, very nice. Finally starting to earn some points, trying to break that you know, triple digit Hand of Blood. Little fun fact right there. His dog Falco is Germany's second biggest dog influencer on Instagram. That's impressive, but I Imagine. wonder who the first biggest is. Now, that's like, I'm just, is there a statistic for that? Like, do you go down the line? But one thing I do want to note for Hand of Blood, look at the eliminations coming out of the Infinity Blade, already sitting on seven and being aggressive. As the more he gets that siphon going, the better he's going to be. But the Chicken Champions come out on top there. No tender defenders are going left. Able to hold the top, and now crawling their way back up there. They're only about, like, 10 seconds or so behind the Funky Fighters? Dude, wait a second. Where did the Funky Fighters come from? Suddenly they're at the top here, and the Little Whip Warriors have not managed to earn any points. Sunshine Soldiers looking to kind of ruin that festival up top, but it's Tomoya. We touched with him with Pookie early on. He said, you know what, he chose his players, you know, specifically because they're great at death runs, but it looks like they battle it out too. They're doing a very good job of making sure they go at the same time. You can see Tomoya here being patient, doing everything he can to try and find an outlet, but he doesn't want to commit before his teammates are there. He's waiting for Kutu. There they are. Kutu coming up with them as well. And the fight is on, but we switch back over to Scissors just chopping it oh. down. But the fish fam is a sushi there as the retake happens. That is actually crazy. Watch him kind of wait there, prepare the ambush. His team comes up and they collapse on the point. And bye-bye, fish fam. And notice they had enough mats to completely encycle the top, but the Infinity Blade will be able to come oh. right out. So instead, Tomoya jumps straight up to just stall out a couple every seconds because every second matters. As you see, Kutu also on eight E limbs right now. The sword players putting in work. We have a bit of a tie up top. Funky Fighters and Fish Fam. Llama Records so close as well. This is a close one for the run in the top five so far. And I like seeing the Funky Fighters using impulses out of spawn. You get nine of them, so it's great to throw them off to knock other people off the point, but use three to get a little faster. These guys are all very experienced in terms of navigating basically every part of Creative and Battle Royale, so they can use those little quick impulses to get themselves more efficient. As you see Zan go down, Suzu go down, Scissors go down right there as Lachlan is just cutting them apart. But Tomoya, again, the Funky Fighters come out on top with the Infinity Blades at least, so no points going over right now to the Cuddle Crew. Oh no, the Cuddle Crew does not have the Infinity Blade wielder here, so Clytex has to kind of hold it down for now and wait until the leader, the team captain, can get up to the top. If Lachlan gets there in time, he might be able to, but nope, they kind of lose their point of interest, unfortunately. And now Gotaga goes up and goes straight back down, not able to catch himself on the edge. So Raven's Revenge gonna have to wait a little bit before they get points, but have full control. And Gotaga unfortunately breaks some of his teammates' build there with the Infinity Blade. Yeah, you see Chappie. Chappie's from, you know, the USA. His favorite aspect of creative mode is actually 1v1 build fights. So this is why they're doing pretty good right now. And they kind of close it up. 
Looks like the Cuddle Crew has come back, but the Fish Bam is here to ruin that entire party. Can they shut it down? And Scissors survives just for a bit more. And again, you see every single time the Funky Fighters go up, it is never a solo person. It is always two, most of the time three. They get control and then they immediately, immediately box up. But while we've been talking about them, let's check in back with the scoring as we're now right around the third mark in a minute out from that 12 point per second circle. In Ninja's team, the Little Whip Warriors are Little Whipping all over as Tomoya goes up, comes back down, and the Xing Xing was not enough. Puddle Group takes him down. I actually love that strat. You don't see anyone else really utilizing the, uh, the dive straight up into the air to kind of disengage off the pressure. Ninja's doing a great job chopping up here. He's already at eight of That, never mind, make that nine. That was good. Taga who went down right there. And they finally get another run at, you know, advancing the lead here. And they are slaying out, too. Yes. You see every single one of them almost to the double digit marks. But uh, Taco, hello. Don't that peek. was your head. Yeah, you got to be careful because, hey, if all you're doing is sitting there rifling, that's fine. Somebody's going to take a hunting rifle and make you pay. Lachlan goes up. MSYP is just behind him, and Lachlan is able to take that one over. Kaz is trying to do everything he can, and he does get Lachlan. So good delay coming out from there, but opening up about a 20-second lead. But here we go. Three, two, one. Middle point is open. That's 12 points per second, and right off of the bat, we see Kanoku heading towards the impulse. is oh. going out, and a swing and a miss there with the Superman jump from Ninja, not quite gonna get it, as Rubius and Hammer are in the circle right away. Rubius under fire, but Ninja under fire. Who will take it? Rubius has the better sword on the day, and then immediately taken out. This is chaos. Whoever's the last one here is probably gonna be the most successful. But remember, you need your sword rear that your captain has to be there. If Lachlan isn't there, it's not even worth fighting for, so Claytex doesn't care. He's trying to pick up that Elim counter. And he's on it. He's playing some good defense there. Down goes Hand of Blood. No points for the Llama record anymore. They actually use that. Just a couple seconds put them all the way back up to second place. And two of the Karaku right now have combined for 31 eliminations, but they're not converting it into points. They're currently sitting at the bottom. 189 Little Whip Warriors do still have a lead, but it's already been cut down. And just as I say it, with the middle hill, Funky Fighters almost take it away. Rare goes right on over. And you see any amount of time in that middle hill is so efficient. I'm actually loving that little strat right there. They hold a, uh, hold a point, then aim out to where these players spawn in and kind of moving from just kind of pressure them back. Yeah, so that's when you need somebody with a hunting rifle to start taking shots and saying, hey, pick on somebody else. If you look this way, you're going to have to respawn because if you can get tags, great. But if you don't convert them and, and into anything, it's not worth it. As I just kind of stuttered because Carnifix is sitting on 23 eliminations, Hand of Blood on 14 right there. Oh that's gosh. why the Llama Record Company is ahead right now. Yes, and they were using that 4x bonus on Capture Point D, which is right in the middle. It only appears after the seven minute mark. So now that we only have five left in the game, it's up to whoever can hit that 1,000 first or the timer runs out. But at this pace, I think the Fish Fam, the Funky Fighters, or the Llama Records are probably gonna take it here. Yeah, the Sunshine Soldiers are also racking up points quickly. What's interesting to see is the Fish Fam are pretty much now uncontested as everyone has tunneled in on that center hill. But once you get later into the game, when you need to kind of go up a little bit more, consistent points end up winning out because everyone will turn their attention to the 12 points per second. You'll have impulses going down there, random hunting rifle shots, builds 24-7 because they see that tick happening. And look, as I say, all the sword players are down there, two of them going off the attack, shotguns being thrown up, walls everywhere but it doesn't matter points aren't being scored right now yeah they're trying so hard to get all the bonus points that the fish fam is just like stealing away the lead right now but also remember if their teammates pick up elims you get matched straight to your points uh into your inventory so they're able to fortify up there and that's why they're just slowly growing and you can actually fortify to prevent the impulses from going in or make kind of a wall to toss it in. As you see, Hand of Blood picking up his 16th Elim, but hey, Scissors is chilling. Yeah, Pumper Nickel it up, man. Pumper Nickel it up. Yeah, let him know. <laughs> let him know. There we go. He's saying, hey, you guys, we'll stick to our strategy. Let's see if somebody uh -oh. goes to contest it. There it is right away. They go up, but all four of them, you don't want to run into this. They're ready and waiting. They know they have the lead right now. Oh, he's <laughs> holding a trophy. Got Look, he's it. looking around, he's telling him to let him know, man. And that's what it's all about. They've opened up a 100 plus point lead, but no contestant because everyone is tunneling on the bottom. Uh oh. And I like this now. Now they're turning their attention outwards. The other teams kind of realize wait a second, they're just up there scoring. 
Like, what can you do in this instance? They see the other scores. That leaderboard is running for them. What they have to do, if you're the Lama Record Company, you hold the middle and lock They're it down it. for that time. And then the second you get the lead, start running at the fish fam. Don't let them come anywhere near any point. Nobody else is going to catch you unless they get the middle. Everyone's attention is there right now. And the Lama Record Company now has the 100 point lead back in the span of just 10 seconds. They let their it's guard gone. down one time, and suddenly Lama Record takes the lead as if Fish Fam wasn't just farming all those points. Nope, Fish Fam no longer have a free point. It is up to everyone to stop the Lama, uh, the Lama Record Company here because Hand of Blood has 17 Elims and he's going for the middle now. He's got his team ready. Let's see what he's going to do. Hits the vent, goes right in, nice and sneaky. Oh, he's still waiting. Look at the big brain plays. Comes out the collateral right there, and it's all his. The center point is his to earn points now, Sundown. It's so close. It's just a few more Gotta takes stop him. One more goes over, and that's it. Lama Record Co. takes the first match. Hand of Blood, Spenos, Alex, JJ, and Carnifix are your match one, set one winners right there. Incredibly impressive coming out. Well executed gameplay, and they say, Scissors, you can hold that L instead of the trap. Trophy. Don't celebrate too early. It's the World Cup creative finals. Every game is worth so much money as well, so much prize. So to take a victory off the bat, you have to be feeling great. And that was your fan fave to pick. I mean, they had everything going in. They're incredibly confident, but they had to make sure they were able to get it. You can see the last few moments, they would already boxed themselves up after clearing out the Funky Fighters, who were the only other contestants. The Funky Fighters actually also passed the Fish Fam in the last moment, which is huge in terms of not only the prizing, but what will end up being potentially a Llama in the end. That's right, that is right. Loving this replay right there. The let's goes, the energy is real. You can clearly see the excitement. That was a great game to watch. It's fantastic. Honestly, I love Sky Station Showdown so much because I think there's a level of depth there, right? Everything is wood, so you're able to like kind of hit through it, and the Infinity Blade cuts through all of it right away. But the Infinity Blade wielder doesn't have the ability to build, needs the support from his teammates. So you saw the people who were roaming in packs of three and four incredibly successful. Yeah, it was kind of unfortunate the cutter crew was like slaying legit so many Elims, but not a lot of points. And that's because play that split game, it's not going to work out. You have to convert it into control. It is a control the point game mode. And if you're not doing that, the other players are going to be doing that, as you saw right there. And what was unfortunate then for the Fish Fam is they got contested twice in a row right after and just couldn't get reestablished. They couldn't group together in those long spawn lines like you were talking about. I mean, they could be painful. Yeah, you know, I was I was rooting for Raven's Revenge, man. I might have to jump on the Llama Record Company whoa, whoa, bandwagon. Whoa, whoa. Bandwagon in? Really? <laughs> One match? Just one, dude. I'm one match? That, that was quick. All right, well, he jumps on the bandwagon. We're going to jump on over to Pookie, who has an interview for us. Thank you so much, guys. I am here down on the arena floor with our champions here. We have the Llama Record Company. Now, have any of you ever played this? Let's go to you first. Uh, yeah, we had a few training sessions yesterday, and we were totally dominating the game mode. So. I mean, we are by far the best team here, and um, right now we feel very confident, yeah. Well, you certainly played like you came a little bit from behind there, so your strategy was kind of like to get those points uh, that are slower occurring at the very beginning, and then kind of go into the middle and kind of start dominating near the end. Who made that call? Um, I mean, that was pretty much me, yeah. Like, we know that at seven minutes, like, the middle just opens up, and you, you get like 12 points a second instead of three. So uh, yeah, we decided to work on that. We weren't that good at first, but um, we got a strat going. So uh, yeah, it went pretty good. Speaking of strategy, are you going to carry that into the later games? Are you going to change it up? We're just going to do the same thing. Hopefully no one follows us. I mean, now all of your competitors have heard you say that. So we're gonna, we might have to discuss strategy a little bit when the microphone gets turned off. Now, finally, uh, for you over here, how does it feel being here, playing in front of this massive audience? Uh, it feels amazing, like it's just a dream coming true. Thank you. And for you over here, you've traveled all of this way to just be here, be at the World Cup. Is it surreal? How do you feel about it? It's an experience. It's, it's really nice. It's yeah, amazing. and we love Spando. We love Spando. Yeah. <laughs> all right, well, we'll talk about that. You guys got to educate me on that. I'm not sure what that is. Thank you guys so much. Congratulations on taking the first game. Castro, it's back up to you. 
Thank you so much, Llama, Record Co., Hand of Blood, Spenos, Alex, JJ, and Carnifex taking the very first match of the creative finals, the first match on the stage. I mean, it was an impressive format. They clearly had a strategy they wanted to execute on. It took them a little bit to get there, but over the course of the game, they were consistently accruing points. Yeah, I should have known last night they were going to do good. Saw them all in the hotel lobby. They were hanging out literally as a crew. One of the only creative teams that I saw sticking together like a squad. Should have put my money on it. Like I said, bandwagon. It took less than <laughs> one match in an interview, and he was like, oh, yeah, I'm fully on board. I'm no so problem. convinced. Hey, it's all good. This set has been so exciting. I mean, who are you looking out for? Who can contest them? And what do you think the next step is to shut them down? They say, hey, we have a game plan. We're going to do the same thing. And I agree. If it's not broke, don't fix it. Like, yeah. stick to that if you're going to keep winning. But what do the other teams do to now make them uncomfortable? How do you go challenge them? I mean, honestly, we saw a lot of that team play out of the Fish Fam, right? You wait for your Infinity Blade wielder to come up and then get the team to back them up. You have to work together. And, and remember, when you catch an elimination, you get uh, mats for it so it can help you build. Yes, Matt and the health back, but the first match is done. The second match is kicking off right now, and we will have a pretty good idea of where we're going. I'm excited to see if they can repeat, and now the second match is underway, and right away you can see some players sprinting out, some opting to take some hunting rifle shots as Lachlan grabs that Infinity Blade and goes straight up. And you can see you can actually make it to the top if you hit the vent, jump, and then jump again. Two jumps right away, fish fam and chicken uh chicken contenders, but uh, God, awful chicken, chicken champions, chicken apologies. Tenders, chicken, what are you trying the to eat some tender defenders, Let's chicken go. tenders, I know, my fault. <laughs> All right, here we are. So this time around, the Sunshine Soldiers actually managed to get some points off the bat. Very good for them, but Little Whip Warriors, same thing we saw before. How to take, you know, a little bit of, of the first big step here. I mean, and Ninja, it knows those jumps. He's able to get around incredibly efficient up to the top right away. But the early tack fights coming out, Tomoya able to ruin that one there. But then Tyler trades it right back out and what really is important here is about establishing control as a team you want to stay together and just get your momentum rolling as ninja goes up followed quickly by the little whip warriors ninja goes first gets one elam gets two elam as they swarm from both sides so ninja was up two from the back one from the front that was a very well coordinated retake love how they did that and now they're all holding it together kaz holding down the back side keeping these players off the ramp but it's gotaga squad who's coming up the top here it's chappy and gotaga dives right on up into it and doesn't matter, he just gets taken right down. This is what you need to do here. Six, six eliminations already coming out from them. Taldak with one, Kaz on four, and then two for Ninja with the Infinity Blade as Taldak is immediately spraying down shots, making it just a little bit more difficult. But boom, there come the hunting rifle shots, and Taldak is taking shots as well. Out of builds and needs to back up and use his team there, and Gotaga goes straight up. Oh, they need some builds for their backside because they are getting sniped straight out of that spawn point there. It's Raven's Revenge who they're just kind of gatekeeping at the moment, right? Look at Chappie's like, dude, I can't even go up right now because the team is up there. It was a good challenge and he did some damage, but Ninja was all over it. Now already up to four Elans, opening up a 60 point lead, but have to keep an eye on the other parts of the map as the chicken champions are doing their best to hold the top but get pushed out. Kaz finally gets taken down, but five elips on his first life there as Ninja challenges Magma. Will he be able to clean that one up? Yes, and he, he does. does. But Chappie's on the other side. Slam goes down right away, but now we're over on board with your match one winners, the Llama Record Co. And they're already slaying out as well. 12 elips for them, but zero on Hand of Blood, which is actually efficient. Assuming he doesn't need the health, will have the sword regen going through, but he can't use the builds, right? So yeah, other he, people need them. He can't build. He also can't get hit right now, so he needs to be careful because he is one shot away from getting taken out here. But someone dies right on up. He has to put that pressure down, and it's the chicken champion to make a quick end of him. And it's their turn to start accruing points, but no. Chicken champion leader goes down there. Good attempted defense from Carnifex. It was able to trade out one, but now we have two swords up top. Gotaga and Lachlan just trying to beat each other up, and Gotaga comes out the winner of that one. Other Cuddle Crew team does pick it up there. Just remember, it's three points when you're standing in the circle. Uncontested, it has to be the VIP in there. When we hit seven minutes, there is the fourth circle that is 12 points per second. Yeah, this is definitely very intense for Tomaya here, who again has no health. The Funky Fighters are trying to get that dominant lead they had in that game one. Can they get it? Ooh, knows he's on camera there, gives a little, little bit of a taunt. 
and uh oh, is he gonna challenge? No, just stays back. Says, you know what, points are more important right now. He's just focusing in on the points here. And you can see the Funky Fighters trying to prevent that ramp coming up. It's very efficient to just immediately as soon as you come out, have two team members ramp up into the left or up into the right so you can get up to the first level. However, the Infinity Blade will break that in one shot and you have a ton of rifle ammunition. All of these guys being maxed out on ammo. Let's see here. All These are all the spawn points. You can actually see the banners hanging. So you know if you really want to focus in and kind of shut down a team, you totally can. And Lava Lords are not doing great this game. No, and this was the double jump I talked about. Ninja goes straight up. That's the first Elam. He's going to be able to point his camera, go up, and challenge as soon as the team decides. But instead, going to save that jump to be more impactful. Raven's Revenge trying to get pushed out right here. Gotaga and crew doing everything they can. But Taldok is going up the back. Chappie gets taken down for Ninja's eighth Elam, and he jukes him out, going straight back up top. Gotaga, does he have the health to take it? First swing comes through, and Ninja goes down. Yeah, he just needed another Elam to put him back in the game. You got to get that siphon bonus. You don't get the heals. It's really rough, even with the Infinity Blade to heal up, because you know the heal time is kind of slow. It's very slow. It's, you can see the tick going up there. It's not something that you're going to be able to rely on, particularly when other players are getting the siphon off. If they're the ones trading out the shots, they can quickly change HP. And those are long animations. But look at the challenge. The three different teams going up, and now it's just the Fish Fam and the Cutter Crew. Lachlan doing everything he can. Zan goes down, but tries to create a little bit of space. Eats the headshot from Suzuhu and disengages. Cuddle Crew finally getting a couple points here. It's been pretty rough for them so far on this map here. You can see this struggle just a bit. The story has definitely been Ninja's supreme dominance so far. He's doing pretty good right here. And even with no health, says, you know what? I'm not going to give away three points. Might as well go for it. He was so close. Yeah, you can see him calling out the whites there on the sword, knowing they only need a couple more shots to get it as we switch back on over to the Cuddle Crew, who've established themselves there, but are still struggling to kind of get the points. The first time, we're really seeing them all together, but Clytex immediately gets ripped from the spawn. Yeah, Lachlan's team needs to represent. And there they are. They're finally starting to score it up. He's got couple of eliminations. You can see X Sandy here. 16 Elim, so definitely has some Slayers there. Yo, I, they need to figure out their game plan because they're getting Elims and putting things together. They have solid numbers. They're just mm -hmm. not getting the right hill time. Maybe it's go somewhere else. You don't always have to go to the point that's directly in front of you. Go contest someone or maybe just go mess with somebody at their spawn. Delay them so they don't rotate towards you. Like a number of times, as you said before, you can see where people are spawning. If you want to go deny a team, you can send somebody to deny them. Just know that player is coming back over and over and over with likely more resources than you. Every single time. And look at this. The Little Whip Warriors approaching that 400 point mark. And in just one minute, that new point capture D will be unlocked in the center of the map. And while they have a solid lead right now, just under 150 points, that disappears in the blink of an eye. That's about 15 seconds uncontested in that middle hill. That's just how valuable it is. But we saw the shift in gameplay that happened. Everybody tunneled it right away, and then the uh, Fish Fam were able to get back up. But after that, kind of cycled it back in, and the center point became the focus and where the win was taken. And right now, Llama Record Co., you said they were struggling at the start. They're doing fine right now in second place, Monster. They're, they're definitely creeping their way right back up. They're about to hit that 300 point mark there. Here we have Svenos just on the point by himself right now waiting for Hand of Blood to come on up hopefully. And again, no surprise, Ninja and his crew has found himself another point. And the way they've angled this build is brilliant because if you come up the steps, you're pushing into somebody's right hand, and on the other side, you're blocked off as Ninja then just drops down Stuart 0 and he gets picked up with the alley from Gotaga as Gotaga comes up with Magma. One, two, three. Raven's out of nowhere, but the Little Whip Warriors don't care. They're cutting down in three. Two, one, you can already see MSYB is down there. Alex JJ down there. Carnifex down there. Oh. They're trying to set up control right away. Lava record go. But the impulses are raining from everywhere. Hand of Blood really trying to get in there early, too, as did every other captain. But it was, to no surprise, not effective. 
and you can see that the chicken champions are committing to the three points right now. Little Whip Warriors as well, while contestion is happening down in the bottom. No Infinity Blade wielder is in there, but the steady climb of points coming out of the chicken champions is going to be beneficial. But also, just like that, Rama Rekiko is a little bit off the pace. They need to get the center uncontested. However, this game, they have a lot more attention on them. Yeah, but look, Fish Bam's doing the same thing they did last time, just slowly, or actually, sorry, the Chicken Champions have adopted the yeah, strategy. Fish Bam are doing it too, you oh, can yeah, see, yeah, they're yeah, getting they're points up. there. So there's two teams who are just hanging out up top, no problem. All the other teams are in our contesting. Raven's Revenge has control of, the, uh, of one of the other side, so every hill is occupied and full controlled by a team, not being contested. Everyone else is looking at the middle. Yeah, and it's actually working. The Chicken Champions are right behind the Little Whip Warriors right now. They're almost in the lead here. They just have to kind of hold it down. Honestly, the Little Whip Warriors have to identify what platform they're on and go take it. Well, and this is this is what happened to them last time. They yes. kind of had a good lead and then stalled out. You need a game plan with the middle platform goes, and you either need to stick to it or, depending on the score, be adaptive. Because right now, Chicken Champions, they're being fine. As long as somebody isn't controlling the middle, they're going to be able to have that lead. And you can send one person to just throw impulses down there over and over. Just be annoying from yep. the top. Your scissors. Six Elims looking good on this other point, and now he's in the top three. They weren't even close before, but just by slowly, consistently gaining points here, you can see they're breaking those thresholds slowly but surely, and Little Whip Warriors are no longer in league. Yeah, Little Whip Warriors actually unseated the Chicken Champions there from their control point. They're taking it over. They're trying to get it back, so that's a battle right now. But the Funky Fighters out of nowhere, Middle Hill, and all of a sudden, just like that, into first place, going to pass 700 in just a second. Nope, get pushed out, and now they're back in there. Tamoya going off right now, Lumberwreck and Co down there and trying to push him out. And you can see they're contesting it over and over again, but they're not getting the points they saw last game, falling off the pace. Yep. They are slowly just battling for this number one. Chicken Champions kind of overtake it now as well. The Fish Fam, not too far either. Everyone's so close here in the top four. Don't forget. You take a victory, you win 55,000 bonus in prize. And right now, Suzu is going off. 21 eliminations, and right as I say that, apologies for the cast of curse, but 21 eliminations from the Belgian. He loves practicing, practicing his builds and creative, and is showing it off here with really clever defensive cone edits up there. But right now, Little Whip Warriors are going at it. Tomoya gets the better ninja, and he gets cut down, but Funky Fresh Riders then get sent all over the place thanks to the impulses from above. I love this strat. He kind of sends out for a second there just to kind of catch a breather, see if his teammates come back. But unfortunately, the timing was just a bit off. And the Llama Record Company now control the middle point for how long we will find out here as this is their comeback story because they need these points desperately here. Hand of Blood still alive just long enough to get a couple of more points. But Scissors is playing the long game here, just eating away at the threshold here at the top. So, Suzu isn't grouped with them. I'm assuming they've sent him to just go either watch middle and be their middle control. No, he just came up the backside. There you go. And just like go flying at people as the Kudoku come up in a very well coordinated pinch. Three from the side and Scissors gets taken down. But the funky fresh. Oh no! 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 They got one stopped! Point. <laughs> well, one point! Yo, so if you are the Fish Fam or Little Whip right now, you have to send somebody to stop them. If that Infinity Blade wielder gets out of spawn and goes anywhere for one second, they will win. Somebody has to deny him. It is all on Tomoya. Anywhere he goes, it doesn't have to be the one near him. If he touches the middle, a singular uncontested second will be the victory for them. These are the final moments here, Sundown. Look at him, he's got a slight grin on his face. He wants to do it. Is this the point that he's gonna make it? Here it goes, he takes the stake, he does miss. He's going back for it now, his team's up there. All he has to do Don't is swipe out. just a couple of times. Can he win this straight? He does not. And as you watch, check the points on the right hand side. Nobody is climbing up by the 12s. And as they did, Vama Record Go gets the control there, but Little Whip contesting them right back. Funky Fresh Tomoya will be back and looking to find it, but the contestant is going for the middle. Here's Tomoya, he knows just a second in there. A contestant will oh, be Ninja. enough. Can he get it? Oh, no, he doesn't. He has knocked out. The impulse grenade at the second he landed knocks everyone out. No one's in there. Can he find it? And he does. That's it. His feet touch the ground. The impulse doesn't go off. Tomoya takes it for the Funky Fighters with some brilliant teamwork.
what an intense end game to get taken out at 999 points. Really, anything can happen in those final moments. I'm telling you, I love the Sky Station Showdown. Can't wait for more people to start playing. And the funky, fresh fighter right there celebrating with his team. You can see them just so excited, so happy. Let's take a look at this final replay. Now, again, we talked about it. The impulse is being a great denial tool. Right there as the player goes down, sent back out, goes in, but misses the jump monster. He almost had the flashiest ending ever. Just kind of diving in, wrapping it all up. But it was just good enough. Like you said, he only had to stay there for a, a bit. And even with the impulse bumping him out, that's it. And I mean, you saw the impulse explosions the second after going off. The team's doing everything they can, but it was not enough to shut down the funky fighters. Tomoya, Kutu, Huzi, Drassius, incredibly well done to take the second match of the first set at the Creative Finals. Yeah, you know what? I am a funky fighter uh, rooter and supporter now. I'm rooting for them. I really? Can't, well, I can't really? do it. Yeah, okay, just gonna bandwagon right after. Yay, the next team who won, I'm, I'm their fan. But no, great performance coming out from them. And it's one thing we talked about, right? The adaption that happens from match to match. Lama Rekiko was like, oh, we're gonna stick to our game plan. That didn't work out. Yeah, it really didn't in those end game situations. They really just kind of crept up and, and snuck and took the entire competition. They did, and they were able to make sure that they got time in the middle when Little Whip and that team weren't able to get there. Llama Rekiko and Little Whip were going at it constantly. Funky Fresh were just able to step there. Yep, and that's just kind of how it happens, you know? Now they find themselves one step closer to taking the Silver Llama for this set. Because remember, at the end of the day, these are just the games, but they have to take the entire set now. Now the pressure's on. The pressure is on, but the Funky Fighters have a little bit of pressure off of their shoulders because they know they got that top spot. And we have Pookie standing by on the top deck with the Pooks. What do you got for us? Thank you so much, Sundown. I am down here with our second game winners here. Congratulations, guys, first off and foremost. Now, I, I got to talk about the moment where you guys were just sitting. You needed one point left to win. What was that like? Oh, it was, I was really nervous. Like, I was just imagining, like, it, Losing with one point would be terrible, so we just tried to get one more point and we did it, so. It was definitely devastating. I was screaming in my seat. I heard all the fans in the audience screaming for you guys as well. So going into the next games, what do you guys think your strategy is gonna be? Are you gonna are you gonna keep doing what you're doing? Are you gonna mix it up a little bit? I think doing what we're doing is fine, because first game we got second place, second game we won, so yeah, we're gonna try and do the same thing and hopefully win again and hopefully have more than a one-point buffer, right? Yep, yeah, definitely. For sure. Now, just coming over here to you, what has it been like to be here at the Fortnite World Creative Cup, just playing in front of this audience, you know, hearing everybody cheer for you guys to win? What is that like? Um, it's fun. That's the only thing I can think of. It's fun to compete against everyone else, meet your uh, teammates, and just have fun. Yeah, and have you guys had a chance to play together before? Is this your first time playing together as a team? Uh, I don't hear it, sorry. Is it your first time playing together as a team? Yeah, it's the first time. Well, you guys definitely make it look super easy. Thank you all so much for being here and talking to you. I'm going to let you get back, get your synergy back together. Sundown and Monster, back to you up at the desk. Thank you so much, Pookie, and the Funky Fresh Fighters. I mean, their game point has been solved. Second place, first place. Now, I, I understand why you might want to bandwagon a little bit, but I'm still going to hang out with my Llama Record Co. But I want to talk about the changes we saw from match one to match two in terms of gameplay, and was it what you expected? Uh, definitely not what I expected. I thought Gotaga's team was going to come out here and crush it right behind the Fish Fam. But as you can see, huge upsets. Anything can kind of go either which way. And I mean, talk about like kind of beginner's luck or something like that. You just put a team together. They didn't practice. They're just coming out here and wiping players up. So a lot of talented players here at the Creative Finals. I mean, Tomoya talked about it. He was like, hey, when I pick my team, very confident there with their death run ability. Want to see what they do in the elimination race during World Run. But doing incredibly well so far at Sky Station, that's going to be a confidence booster because if you can get the Silver Llama there and you're confident in your ability on the world run, you're set. 
Yeah, you're just one step closer. So with the first place and the second place, they're clearly having a good set so far here at the uh, Sky Station Showdown. Yeah, it's been very well done from them, but it's still anybody's game. Don't forget, the winner of the Silver Llama is the one who has accumulated the most prize money across, which equates roughly to placements, but you don't get punished if you're placing in that bottom half, fourth through eighth, all receiving the same amount of prize money in each one of the matches. Yes, everyone is a winner. So you, you really have to fight till the end, regardless if you're in the lead or not. This is why these guys are going for it, because this is life-changing prize money on the line and i mean we've seen the difference 10 seconds in that center circle 120 right there it makes a huge difference but enough of us breaking it down we're gonna throw it outside to bala because he's gonna show us what's up with the tactics bala what do you got for us i'm out here at the fan festival and i don't have a bandwagon here but maybe after this set i'll have to hop on somewhere with monster we got a ton of awesome action i've been watching it and i have to show you guys what went down in that first and second games it was awesome first stop the llama record company started off with an amazing take cohesiveness on the point. Every single time they went up here, they were going from two sides, two angles, and the sword approached at the center, but made sure that he was the most important person not to go down. You see there, Hand of Blood and his teammates all backing up. He's gonna have an engagement on the side. These sword fights are really easy for him to just mow it down, but immediately as he realizes his teammates are up on the point, about to get up, about to push the ramp, he comes up from the side, slices and dices, but meanwhile, they ended up falling down the leaderboard. If you look at right now where they're at, they're only in second place. Fish Fam was ahead of them. But all while Scissors was dancing and talking all the smack, telling his teammates to try to get the crowd involved, it was Llama Record Company making the plan, making the play to get in towards the center. Absolutely amazing take in the center on this first game. Led to Hand of Blood staying in that point and absolutely dominating with the super point there. Guys. Two matches down on Sky Station Showdown, one more to go. We'll see where Monster lands at the end of this because I will maybe join you on that bandwagon. Guys, take it back. I mean, it's that's starting to get a little awful crowded, man. Real quick, you guys hopping on those bandwagons. But as you said, there is one more regular Sky Station Showdown match in this set. We will see it again later in the remix version during the Golden Games. And as I, it's been so fun to watch the difference of players, who's able to be very strong with the Infinity Blade, how the pinches end up coming. And now in this third match, it's only going to get better from these guys. Yeah, I definitely want to see some more of that kind of team work happening here. And why not just hop right into a game right now, right? Let's go see some more action here because this last game of the set is loading in right now. Yes, and this will be the final match of this set. Set one after this, a Silver Llama will be awarded and we are in the match. It's Sky Station Showdown, set one about to be over and here we go. All right, gotta love those players just kind of beelining out. And don't forget, you know exactly who your neighbors are. You know who is to your left and to your right because you can see the banners and the designs on their spawns. A nice look at our captains right there. And right away, you can see a number of teams finding ramp paths where they're able to use their first five materials. Next five, Sword does a double jump. Boom. Right to the top. Chicken champions excellently executed. Yeah, this is this is what matters right here. Is stopping the funky fighters because clearly they have been doing some good work together as a team so far. Tomoya is off to the races here though, sent to run away. Can the Sunshine Soldiers come back? Can the Cuddle Crew make a big appearance for themselves? Because they can really shake it up here. Any it can go any which way depending on who has the most uh, victories really in the best placement. Yeah, so currently you will see the fact that they're able to be pushed off right there. Llama Record Co. putting shots down towards the spot. You don't want to peek though because the hunting rifles will be coming out in the shot. Just misses Carnifex right there. They trades back down. Ninja firing it off but gets pushed out by Raven's Revenge right there. Yeah, Carnifex having a tough time kind of listening in there. Carnifex was sniped from the side. Now we have Taldak here jumping right in from the Little Whip Warriors. He's going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Otaga's down and out. So, if I'm the Llama Record Company, and I know I've won a match, and then I did okay in the last one, they were in fourth, so they were there, they are close. Funky Fighters have a win in a second place. Do you send somebody 
to just hard deny the Funky Fighters the entire time. You don't get the Silver Llama if you don't, right? If the Funky yeah. Fighters finish above you, they're going to be finished off. Do you think they can spare somebody to do that, though? Because it's better off to deny them than it is to push up the top. Yeah, but the problem is then, the Little Whip Warriors have been so consistent, you literally allowed them to snipe the competition because you over-focus. So I think the play here is play your game, and if anything, stay away from them. Let the rest of the server do that, you know, gritty work for you, and dominate the other side. Take that victory. There you go. I like to hear it, Monster. That's fantastic analysis. That's why we keep you around. The breakdown and making sure you challenge the initial opinion there as the Ravens Revenge are able to get on the top and in a fantastic spot of control right now, building up a 40-point lead. Yeah, even, like, Gotaga's team is still in this. They've been doing, like, relatively well so far. Here it is. He just kind of goes toe-to-toe, -to -toe and Ninja strikes him right down. Oh, but... Hey. His teammate comes on in, Raven's Revenge. Who is that? Uh, Magma comes right up to the top. And I'll give you guys a little fun fact about Magma. He's from Australia. He started playing in Fortnite Season 2. His favorite aspect of creative mode is actually speedrunning. He always finds uh, new ways to kind of play the game. I mean, good on him, man. I get incredibly frustrated by that, but then watching these guys do the speed runs and how quickly they go through and how efficiently, it just reminds me why we're up here talking about it and watching them do this creative Absolutely. madness as Scissors cuts through the competition, goes straight up to delay and right back down. Cuddle Crew not quite able to get him. It goes up again, so right now just denying the Cuddle Crew the points, but we talked about how we want to see more from them right now pushing into the top three. Yes, the Cuddle Crew, come on, make a big appearance. Every game is worth so much. You, at the very least, want to be up in that top four contestant so that you can take a little bit more home with you. Here it is, Ninja disengages, actually just takes down Magma. And hey, I like the strat here. He says, you know what, I got low health. Let's just get back on this respawn wagon. Doesn't even give anyone the satisfaction of stealing the siphon. I was about to say, no siphon, no materials. Quick reset, knows he can get out there, was basically in his spawn anyway. That is the type of competitive edge Ninja always looks to give himself. I love that. That was like 200 IQ, <laughs> low key right there. It was very well played. But back to Gotaga and Hand of Blood here in the same shot. Hand of Blood just, he can't do much. He knows there's a team up there. Waits for his entire squad to go up the ramp and then hops right to the top. But now back to Gotaga who's on this point by himself. He wants to kind of bait him into the close. Can he get the hit? And he does. Tao goes right down, straight to the top. That was sick, using the jump right as the animation had started to make sure he clipped Ooh. him from the bottom. Dodges the Funky Fresh Fighter out. Gotaga now getting pinched from the side. Three of the Funky Fresh Fighters up there doing everything they can. And the shots will come out, trying to find it. And Dracius is coming back up to try and get some defense there for Gotaga. Instead, just going to disengage. And it's actually prime movement right there as well. You just see him baiting and switching, going back and forth, trying to get in there, see if he can kind of sneak in and get some extra damage. And here it is. Someone's in front of him. He only needs two sweats. He goes down. He gets the siphon. Oh, cannot convert another, which would have kept him in the game. His teammates are here, though. We're seeing a lot more points being absorbed. It's a little more top-heavy this game, going towards the 10-minute mark right now with Raven Revenge and Llama Record Co. 100 points clear of the rest of the field. Unfortunately, though, the Funky Fighters have fell to the bottom of the totem pole. If they can't come up to the top, they actually are pushing themselves way out of the average running for the win of this set. So they really need a massive comeback here. But Savenos is showing why he's here with 13 eliminations already. And bye-bye. Falls down. Lucky for him. No fall damage. Yeah, it does reset. And that might be one of those moments where you opt for deny. And in fact, he does saying, hey, I'm at 5 HP anyway. I'll see you in a bit. I got to respawn. Smart play for him. Sunshine Soldiers having a spot to themselves as well right now. Not quite sure who they pushed out here, but the impulse are flying overhead. And Gotaga, they're doing so good at holding the point here. And this is why they're in the number one lead. But they don't have too much cushion to play with. No, particularly went 12 points per second on that central point. He is open. Gotaga checking his surroundings. No shots coming through. And Arte actually using the door edit and just a little counter edit to make sure that nobody is able to come up and contest him and just starts raining shots down towards the Little Whip Warriors. Raven's Revenge making their lives difficult this game, but up comes Ninja. Arte goes down. Chappie goes down. Ninja gets the slam. Gotaga, will he be able to find the last hit? Ninja intelligently backs away and strafes it out. Teammate picks that one up and they get control. Yeah, I love how he played that stepping and sidestepping so that he can just stay alive because it doesn't matter if your team successfully wipes a point. If you don't have your captain there to seal the deal for the points afterwards, then you cannot earn anything from it. Here comes Gotami's throwing himself into the fire, straight into the point there, and he gets taken out. 
Here it is. Tomaya's team has fallen to last place. Can they make a miraculous comeback here before the seven minute mark? Maybe kind of get themselves in the running. They're trying their hardest. And I mean, generally we talk about caster curves as it might be like player jinxes going on right now. Everyone's saying, yeah, we're doing well. We're going to stick to our game plan. Uh, that just shows you no one is safe here. These guys are evolving and they're playing a better game after game. Here goes Scissors. He needs one more swipe there, but Clytax wins the small engagement. And Clytax has been fragging out. He's been playing so incredibly well, being aggressive, hitting in players' faces, and doing it all with that rare tag. But he's been consistently highest up there in terms of the Elam. You see Porto trying to get some pressure down, but good defensive building there from Cororo. Ryan Franta comes out the side and cleans it up, but there is Hand of Blood coming directly down. Danya is also up there. We got a three-way battle, but it's four chickens saying, this is our roost, get out. That's right, coming right up to own it all for themselves. Rubius doing so good right now. He's from Spain. He actually has a record on, was it, YouTube for live streaming? 1.1 million viewers, imagine. Yes, one of the biggest content creators in Spain. Will they be able to push down towards the middle? As you can see, Little Whip and Lava Record Company already down there. We've seen this story before as the Funky Fresh Fighters go in, but you can barely even hear the shots over the impulse grenades going off as everyone's like, no, 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 we've seen how this goes. The Funky Fighters need this. The Llama Record Company need this. So many of these guys, it's riding on this game right here. They have to get as many points as possible. But even with the 12-point one, we haven't seen a lead like this from Gotaga and crew. They are nearly 300 points clear of the next team. Nobody else is contesting there. The Cuddle Crew has now been able to catch up a little bit, but they both just established control in their top zones, and Cuddle Crew won't pass Raven's Revenge by just sticking with three points. They're in a fantastic spot to win this match. Yeah, they've actually been very consistent as well, right? They've been doing okay in that top four, just doing a pretty good job at staying relevant after all of these rounds. So for if Gotaga's team takes this, we actually don't know who can take this set right now. It's actually that close right here. Little Whip Warriors have kind of fallen down a bit here, but Funky Fighters clearly in last place is not good. And now, right now, you can see Tomoya coming in, doing everything he can to knock it down. Carnifix challenging as best he can, and Lachlan is just hanging out inside the cone. Lachlan's doing a great job here. He's just kind of hiding, loving the low profile, kind of position and take here on the point. He was hidden, but hey, he has to come out now and defend himself. There's three chickens who surround him and take down that Cuddle Bear. Oh, man. They're supposed to be the tender defenders, but that was a whole bunch of aggression coming out from them there as they now immediately look and start to take shots. And the Ravens' Revenge have now finally been unseated from their three-point game. So a little bit of room to start for the catch-up, but it is utter chaos at point D as Tomoya gets taken down and the Funky Fighters are still in eighth place. There's still 55,000 minimal on this game alone here. You want to win this one. Ravens Revenge, can they hold it? Or will Cuddle Crew find themselves a big piece of the pie here? Because we're in New York City, you know, you got to make pizza references. That's how we're doing it. Here comes Gotaga kind of hopping on overhead. And all right, he wants more points. He's hungry for it. Oh, it's unfortunate they're just clipping off the side as Magma goes down, sitting on 23 eliminations right now. And Kodaga doing his best to find where they want to go up, waiting for his team, but knowing that time is running short since that middle hill is still open and being constantly contested. But the Cuddle Crew are catching up with their steady three-point game. But now Kodaga goes up right around the back, able to pick up the Elim, and control is rested. This is scary because the Cuddle Crew is also getting points right now. So yes, they're getting a lead, but the Cuddle Crew is keeping up and keeping it very close. They're keeping it very close. And this is what we were talking about. We wanted to see a strategy come out, something defensive where you can get your control. They have now walled them off on each side, thrown a cone on top of them, and they have firing angles towards the other two platforms and towards the spawns behind them. Nobody wants to go contest them, but right now, Gotaga, oh, we saw what happened when Scissors did that. Don't count your chickens before they hatch because they're catching up right now. You can see that 12 points ticking over, but they do still have a lead as players are trying their best to deny Raven's revenge. Yes, you have to keep him safe. This is the protect the president strat at its finest. Cuddle Crew still gaining points. Llama Record still getting points. In comes the fire from all the other platforms. Cuddle Crew's putting on pressure. They don't want to give him the freebie here. 
You have to look at Raven's Revenge, though. Everybody is so focused on the middle. Nobody is going and challenging the top team. You know they're over there. You know they're uncontested right now. You have to be putting shots down there. You have to find the tags. Undergo Tiger. It is. And they got him. They got him the difference now. Look at the Kuroku climbing up on their consistent three. But they still have control of the top. They just don't have their sword. It's two hops to get up there. That's right. And now Lackland can just sit here. He can just hang out, earn these points. This is what he needs to do. And it's he's almost there. He is almost there. The first place can be his right now. He can take this lead, Sundown. But they got control at the same time. It's literally ticking over oh. a half second away Yo. from each other. The shots are going. Cuddle Crew has the lead, though. Will the shot be able to go to? Yes, Cuddle Crew can take shoot. it down. 999, oh. 1000. Gotaga and Raven's Revenge in the closest nail biter yet. Edge out the Cuddle Crew in two teams who we said we wanted to see more. They brought more. Are you kidding me? The Fish Fam step up and shut it down. Just the fact they stepped on the point, they couldn't earn points and they lost the lead. They were just a tick ahead. That could have been their game. I mean, it's just, let's oh check my. out the replay. You can see the counter in the top right, but the Fish Fam going up and challenging on the other side. You can see them hopping up there. No one was at the Raven's Revenge as soon as they were there. And the celebration too. You have to be excited when you see that Victory Royale screen pop up when you're up there. I mean, what's it like to win a game on that stage? I have no idea. Those guys do though. We, we you know, at some point before the day's over, we really got to recap the other point of uh, a point of view there because they had it. They were one tick ahead. They were there, knocking on the door, 55,000 away from bonus prize on top of this entire competition. It was right there. And it got taken away. And this is why I love Sky Station Showdown. The clutch little moments, the interactions that happen, very similar to Battle Royale, where every single thing that is happening on the map can affect the overall end result of the game. As you see there in Raven's Revenge, closing it out. Gotaga, the competitive veteran, able to clutch it up in the final moments. Magma, Arthur, and Chappie as well. Just a great performance out of them, taking the top spot in the final match of the first set. Now I get to say, I, you know, I was right the whole time. I started off with, you know, Raven's Revenge kind of making me feel like, hey, these are my guys. Let's go with your gut, guys, all right? Raven's Revenge, that's who I said when I started this whole thing. I told you. Uh, you know, he's not wrong. They were able to take it there, but we're going to throw it up top to an interview with Raven's Revenge with Zeke. Zeke, you there, buddy? I am here, Sundown. Thank you so much. Fun fact, Monster did, in fact, say Raven's Revenge would win. I've got your back, Monster. I am here. You guys got your revenge. I gotta ask, first question to you, Gotaga. How's it feel to be here in the stadium, the fans, the, the roar, and to be facing off against your peers? Was it what you expected? Uh, honestly, it's crazy, and I have a really strong team. We are leaning a lot from our mistakes, and I'm so glad to be here, to be honest. That's, I, I don't know how to describe it. Like. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, it's pretty it's crazy, crazy being here. I'm, on, I'm right there with you. All right, so now who's the overall shot caller? Is it Gotaga? Is it you? Who is it? Uh, kind of all four of us. We were playing too afraid at first, so we just had to just go in there and just kill them as fast as we could and then spawn trap. That was our goal. Okay, what's the strategy like? Are you guys, you know, talking through at the beginning? Are you guys waiting for someone else to make a move? Or are you guys like, no, we're going in first? Yeah, we're trying to, you know, really pressure Ninja's team. You know, we're trying to put pressure on that green point. And uh, yeah, we were able to control it over them. They ended up wussing off over to the center. And uh, yeah, we were able to play our game and play what we wanted. Awesome. All right, final question. What do you want to say to all the fans that are here watching, cheering you guys on, and from home? I don't know, it's just incredible. I'm happy that so many people are here. I don't know, just enjoying the show. It's amazing, honestly. Well, congratulations, guys. Now, I believe for now, we're going to send it over to Golden Boy, who is standing by. going on there and now what we're doing right now hanging out as they walk back over just brilliantly done there from rta magma chappy gotaga the teamwork from them was just on point you talked about it all four strong players from gotaga and they're happy with the final result and that puts them immediately into contention because it's cumulative prize point to find out who will take that first silver llama and kind of get a leg up for the rest of the creative final I actually want to touch on something that, you know, was kind of interesting. He called Ninja's uh, capture point the green point. These guys are 
like that focus here. He's like, okay, we know who's kind of farming which ones, and they're shutting players down, shutting down their competition so that they can take these sets. Well, that's the next step, right? As soon as you're immediately in there, and that's the big part for Sky Station that I enjoy, is you have the ability to see where the other opponents are in relation to you for score. So if you want to go and try and make somebody's life difficult, you might not be maximizing your points, but you can effectively help your team the most by just denying the other guys and being like, hey, you don't get to play this. And occasionally, if you put enough pressure on them, maybe they default to rotating the other way. Maybe they go somewhere longer. Maybe they have to wait and only pushes four. All of those are advantages you can get by just putting pressure on another team. And there's so many different layers. And I think when we see the remix for this, it's going to get even more exciting. Yeah, don't forget, guys, here and at home, there's a remix version. We have some nice twisted surprise that we will see unfold as the day goes on. That was just our first iteration of this round. And honestly, it was a great set. But that just leaves us with the question, too. The Funky Fighters, they had an amazing opening, right? Second place is great. You get big prize bonus for that. You win game two and then you kind of flop game three, depending on where they went, their average might have really been anchored down. Yeah, that ends up being really, really, really harmful. But luckily there, if you're in the fourth to eighth range, there's no additional, I don't want to say penalty, because mm -hmm. they're all getting $10,000 for the match oh, in yeah. of itself. So you're, there's just no additional gain after that fact. You're still able to uh, stay par. So fourth would have been just as bad, but eighth, you're kind of looking like, oh, that'll really bring down the average. It's not oh. the worst case scenario going on there. So they should still be at least in the running, but you can't be comfortable. No. Like, not at all. It's so incredible, and now we are going to go over the stage. We have the results, and your set one winner is the Funky Fighters. The last match was not enough. The singular wow. win in the double goes over to them. They will have that first Silver Lava, and there he is throwing it up. And I mean, you got to be happy for him. They did it. I thought maybe it wasn't enough, but it was. Love this celebration right here. It's it, you kind of are like it's a little I don't want to say like bittersweet there, but it's like oh you kind of get, like get pushed out in the last game and then boom you get it. But now the silver lava, but they're happy. They realize and the big thing that gives them a leg up for the rest of the competition. If they can win the next match, another team has to win both of them. But such a great job from the Funky Fighters sticking to their gun, staying with the strategy, getting two top two plays, uh, finishes, one of them being a win. I actually love this right here, Lola. They're all getting together, showing team harmony. They're clearly happy. They take the first set. That's amazing. They're off to the right start, really. They can get another one or two of those, and this entire creative finals is theirs. Well, and again, we talked with Tamari beforehand, and he was like, yeah, we're really confident when we can get in the races. We want to be on that world run. We know we can do there. We have some really good runners. And then they turn around and do that? I was, I was just going to Yeah, I was just going to touch it. I was like, you know what? Yeah, this wasn't even their uh, strong suit, right? He did a death run at some point as when he recruited his people for this creative challenge. So for him to take what might be one of our, you know, toe-to-toe -to -toe PvP sessions. That's actually crazy. And here's the team standing, Sundown. Yeah, look at the final team standing. So Llama Record Code do just get edged out by $1,500 there. The Funky Fighters, you can see on the right-hand side, have been awarded that Silver Llama. Rounding it out, you have Raven's Revenge in the top three. Cuddle Crew and Little Whip Warriors both at 55, sitting in fourth and fifth. Fish Fam, Sunshine, Soldiers, I almost got that one, 6th and 7th, and then 8th, there are the Chicken Champions, but this is set 1 of 4. There's yes. still tons of creative games to be going on, I mean, it's been so good, and like we talked about earlier, we have a never-before-seen map and game mode for you guys. Now, I know we released Prop Hunt, it's something that's kind of similar to that. How many of you guys have played Red Light, Green Light? at some point in time, right? You've been there, you've done it. I know weather might have been a little while ago. Junkyard Juke is a red light, green light prop hunt version where you will have two teams sitting up as guards, six teams running. It will rotate through every single one of the rounds, and here you can see how to win. You have to dodge those guards, sprint into the center, and incinerate yourself in order to get those points. There are four rounds per match monster, and how do they score? 
Yeah, but also, before we get there, you only get to be guard once. And while you're guard, you do not accumulate points. But yes, the points come in through the props themselves. So when you are on the prop side, you uh, you want to choose small, medium, or large objects and try and get it to the incinerator under the guard tower. So it's actually really difficult. And like you said, it's a hybrid. It's a red light, green light, slash prop hunt style. And this is a pretty tough game mode. We've played a fair amount of it. I got my hands on it. This is actually a lot harder than it kind of sounds. So it's something that is just completely different. I don't know how many of you guys have fun. Prop Hunt, definitely check it out. It's on the Creative Islands. It's a lot of fun, but this brings an additional aspect to it. The guards are able to have the denial. You're able to plan routes out, and you can have strategies, right? So hey, maybe I want to run all big props the don't, whole time. Don't give it away. Don't uh, give it like away. Say, no. There's tons of different things. Let's check out the format and see what these guys, how they're going to go through, what the map looks like, and really get an idea of how the game is played. Get ready for more creative Fortnite with the latest competitive creative map, Junkyard Juke. This new game built off the fun of Prop Hunt with a twist. Eight teams will rotate through different roles on the map. Six teams will transform into props and attempt to make it into the center of the map, while two teams of guards try to keep them away. Teams will rotate their roles over the course of four rounds, each team getting one turn as the guards. Their objective? To defend the incinerator from the other teams, armed only with revolvers and their keen attention to detail. During each round, teams of props will earn points by reaching the incinerator in the central pit. The bigger the prop, the more points. But be careful. Being bigger means you're easier to spot. To keep themselves from getting eliminated, prop teams need to time their movements very carefully. Every few seconds, the guard teams will be blinded for a short time, and the center point turns green, giving the props a chance to rush to the hills, or rather, the pit. Once a prop reaches the goal, they respawn at their home base to start over, running as many props as they can before the match ends. If a player is eliminated, they also respawn at their home base and need to start the trek all over again. After four rounds, each team's points from their prop rounds will be combined, and the team with the most points wins the game. So keep an eye out for those moving bushes, crates, and gnomes, and enjoy the Junkyard Juke. Thank you so much, Zeke, for that update. That's Junkyard Juke, something that has never before been seen. It looks kind of a little simple, but it's wacky, it's fun. There's a lot of small little minutia that go into it, things you can min-max on, and also there's just a level of ridiculousness that I enjoy so much. Just seeing somebody turn themselves into a literal dumpster and then try and weave their way past, it's a lot of fun. Let the memes come to life here as your favorite. Whoa, you talking <laughs> about my gameplay teams. again? God, that's so rude. It turn them into dumpsters, literally. Uh, we'll get to see that unfold here as, I gotta say, this is a frustrating game mode. It's very uh, difficult. You guys are gonna see why. It is gonna be tough for some of these guys to bring in those big point objects, and that's just gonna be the name of it. Who can score the most here? Who can score and how well are you playing defense? How well do you coordinate? Who is watching the right angles? And it's again, it's gonna be interesting to see, do they switch up their strategy after from game one to game two? Because there's so many different things you can do, but we are about to have the world premiere of Junkyard Juke. We are getting into set number two. The Funky Fighters have one Silver Llama. Who will get the second? We now are in to set two. Match one, and right away, you can see Chapa, Gotaga, Magma, and RTA of Raven's Revenge, and then the Little Whip Warriors, Ninja, Taco, Taldak, and Baze Kaz taking their shots off. Now, fun fact, the screens are there. You can't see, but you can shoot through them. So don't be afraid to take some shots. I mean, we know the trick shot as well. Yeah, some people are already shooting. They figure that part out. It looks like Chappy hasn't quite yet. He's kind of looking. He's just blind shooting. Oh, there it is. Now he's firing through. He's noticed, hey, these are not ricocheting off of this curtain here. I can fire right on through. So you want to stop him. You want to force stop him. You want to also kind of memorize the map in the lanes. And right away, you can see as soon as the blinds go down, people go. But the first points are starting to come through as Lachlan is able to get in. 
and Blood's team, the Llama Racket Co., also able to get a 10-pointer and then a 5-pointer, following it directly behind. Oh no, it was another 10-pointer. So we already see some of the props having successful look runs. At, look at him go. <laughs> there it is. You saw a big old truck kind of sneak on by, and these objects are slipping right underneath. But who knows how long that'll last. Here's scissors. You got to park it. You got to stay still. Ooh. Oh, can he blend in? And one other thing you can note there, the props will clip through other objects that are there. So if you see something that isn't sitting perfectly naturally, like oh. Scissors was <laughs> right there, clipped into it, boom, got him brilliantly done. Lachlan hits one of those bounce pads that are stuck in there. They will launch you up in the air. But great run coming out from X Sandy and Tamoya, utilizing the air conditioners to find their way to the end. Ben Sorn, Alex JJ desperately trying to get it. Alex JJ with another 10 point prop, and Hand of Blood gets picked up just before that would have been a huge swing but right now sunshine soldiers in first place with 35 points and they are finding their rhythm here sunshine soldiers taking the lead right now this is a hard game mode to break free in because you got to think about it these guards are not playing around they are shooters right at heart and at the end of the day if something looks off something looks odd like this white vent right here you're just gonna get popped, so you gotta be careful here. And there it is, nice job of, you know, kind of hitting the brakes here, and oh, he hits one of those trap doors. Let's talk about that sundown. So you can actually see it, there is the little tiny springs, they launch you upward. There's a couple that can be chained into each other, but if you are one of those bigger objects and you get sent up, you are just quite literally sometimes flying garbage. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, it, it would be too easy if we didn't lay traps around, right? So you know, gotta kind of spice it up for the people that are turned into props too. So you can also, actually, the people who can turn into props, there's one pathway where you can chain two of them together. So if you can get there, you almost land directly in front of it. So as long as you time it correctly, you can like use them slightly to your advantage, but most of the time, they're a little bit more annoying. And That's boom, you can huge. see that rusted truck going in. And now the Funky Fighters pulling out another lead, 60 wow. points so far. And this is something important to know. Guys, you have to get it into the incinerator, fully processed before the timer counts down, or else your point will not be processed. Which is a big thing on the min-maxing. What we mean by that is maximizing your efficiency. So if you were to get the most points possible, you run only 10 points the entire time, not only because they're worth more, but they take less time to sort because they're the first one that goes through. The two uh, two-point props are able to run I don't want to say relatively easier, but much easier compared to a dumpster and a car, particularly because you have cover. With that being said, take about an extra three to four seconds to sort. So it makes it that much less efficient, plus being only 20% of the point value. That's right. So Clytax there has chosen a big object. Achin and Zond over here, smaller objects. They're kind of blending right into all of the dumpster trash, clearly harder to track down and kind of, I guess, I, uh, uh, how do I say this? Sword out, right? Yeah. Uh, amongst all the, uh, the the clutter here. Exactly. You want things that don't stick out, or you want some. You want to find a path for an object that you can take all the time. So you notice how there's a section where there's like four or five rusted cars. Grab a rusted car and go park yourself with those. Because yes, the guy knows. Oh, there's a bunch of rusted cars there. Screen goes back up. Oh, there's still a bunch of rusted cars there. <laughs> I'm good. Next thing you know, the problem walks his way up. You can also, as you're running, walk rotation. So if you hit your crouch button, whatever you have that bound to, whether you're playing on controller, iPad, PC, all of them end up completely stopping. So it will send you totally naturally, just like what you would see. And this is also those moments, right? When you're in the guard, oh, someone spotted there, popped him. Tomoya, nice job seeing something out of the ordinary. But notice, he gets a, an elimination on the object. You don't earn points for that. So it's just your top uh, job to stop everyone from getting any kind of points. You don't break away with the lead. When you're in the guard tower, you can't allow the group to score, and you're not scoring. Which can end up being very interesting if the team in the lead, which generally happens because you have three chances to score, is shooting last round. Right, because that is all about how good are your pressure. And one other thing you can see, starting to fire through the screens, very well done for them, picking up an elim there. But right now, Kudoku already resting the lead away. All three of them sitting there at 60, but they're five point processes, and it goes through as two more dumpsters throw themselves into the fray. Yeah, and that's because the Funky Fighters cannot earn points here in the guard round. The Sunshine Soldiers using this opportunity once again to just break away even closer to taking lead. And the Chicken Champions can't earn anything either. I love that from Clytex right away. 
hides himself behind the box and you see his hands, he's like, please, yeah. please make sure it's not there. And then boom, gets the point, gets a nice little selfie going in. And you can see all of them getting sorted there. Another way, I'm, I'm all about the min-maxing, point your camera towards the end. You go just a little bit faster. Mm, sundown pulling out the strats here. The question is, can our competitors figure it out fast enough with their limited amount of games here? But 20 seconds on the clock, can he get this in in time? Remember, you got to grab the dumpster, drop the dumpster, and get it processed. That was perfect. That was so good by Stuart000 because he dodged the uh, little springboard there. You saw him look at it and be like, oh, no, 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 I'm good. And that was the last run. None of these props are going to be able to get, and get sorted. Lockley oh. gets picked out at the end. You can see three, two, one, but not going to be enough. You need to get all the way through and sorted on the point as the rest of the denial comes through. And we're going to rotate the guards up again. Yes, so we will have some new guards take their place. This is honestly Chicken Champion's opportunity to start scoring some points and hopefully close up the gap here. The Sunshine Soldiers are now at the bottom layer of the guard tower and the Fish Fam are at the top. So it is time to kind of mix it up. My eyes are on the funky fighters right now. They are Doing great. They're very close. And on top of that, they're the team with the Silver Llama. Yep. As we've talked about, they are so incredibly close, doing everything they can to push towards the top. And you can see they got a lot of Elims, too, in the round where they were playing defense. So not a ton of scoring going past them. Only 35 points off the pace. But what I'm shocked about right now is there is nobody running two-point props at all. Zero. Tamori is a genius. He was already spotted out for the statue. He kind of hit over to the side and said, you know what, I kind of got to wait here. I can't park this statue on the open. He's going to be hunting for me. And that's exactly what he does. Kind of sits it over on the side there. And that's how he earns himself another point. So they're actually playing very, very smart here. And that's why they've been doing so good at these competitions. I think the guards need to be slightly more aggressive. They, yep. uh, there's no, you, it's unlimited am ammunition. You can't run out. Oh. If you think something is suspicious or if you just want to take a shot at it, shoot That's a it. shot. Yeah. yeah. What's the worst case that happens? You, you miss? There's no accuracy stats going on there. If something looks suspicious, don't let it through. You're the guards and you want to deny as much as possible. And again, every match is for $55,000 for the winning team. You want that, and that will lead into the Llamas as well. You don't want to end up in that fourth to eighth spot. You want to push past your competitors. As we see a whole mess of air conditioners going in there, the water heater's in. It was fantastic for Raven's Revenge, and Llama Record Co. are also climbing their way up the leaderboard, 110 points so far. Great job for the Llama Record Company. Alex, JJ, Carnifex, Ben Austin, Hand of Blood. This team is doing great right here as they seemingly inch their way to the top somehow, overtaking the Cuddle Crew, which, by the way, Lackland's team has been showing up here. It's good to see them, you know, catch a little bit of domination here in this uh, junkyard juke. Well, like we said, the creative finals is all about celebrating the different types of creative skills. There's different ways to express that. We have the world run where it's there. We saw Sky Station Showdown, which shows our building in Team Tactics. And right now, Prop Hunt is all about mid-maxing efficiency, working together, and hitting your shots. Yeah, absolutely, because when you're in that guard tower, you don't have opportunity to miss. You let them score, they're going to break free and break away with the lead. Here's a look at Svenos here, who's that a bullseye just kind of blending right in. The archery target, there's a lot of them out there, but you need to be careful because they're slightly harder. And oh, come on. Uh oh. Really? He's floating up really? there. <laughs> <laughs> you can see kind of like the look on his face. He's like, there's no way this works. And one other thing to talk about is orientation of your prop. So you notice he actually swapped his camera and pointed in the other direction. Oh. Unfortunately, was clipping into the trash bag there. But if you're running forward, your prop faces backwards. So you need to run and then turn, settle yourself. That's the best way, or you orient yourself around the stuff that's near you, because if you're facing in a totally random direction, that'll earn a bullet in most circumstances. I love how aggressive they were at the final moments. The, the clock was You gotta ticking. go. Yeah, the clock was ticking. They're like, you know what? We gotta get in here. But that was round three of four for this first game right here. And, yep. uh, you know, it's kind of going either which way. So if you've already had your shot at the guard tower, you're safe. You're good. You can keep getting points. but. If this is your last opportunity, you're in a guard tower, that's all the points you got. That's it. They have to hold strong. So this is where it 
really comes into mind who is running, who is in the tower, and what does the scoreboard look like. So right now we can see right away Llama Record Co. is up there, and I believe it's with, I didn't see who that other team was. When we pan back over, we'll call that out. But Llama Record Co. is in first right now, and I think Cuddle Crew is with them as well. So it's typical that the top two would be up there, and it is. The top two teams are in the guard tower, so right now, Everyone needs to unseat them, otherwise they will take this first match of set two. I'll be honest with you, it's a pretty big lead. That's a substantial lead. Whoever is left in the game, the Sunshine Soldiers, the Funky Fighters, the Chicken Champions, you gotta bring these big items through and do it successfully with the limited time left in this round right here because if not, it's gonna be hard to catch up to that 150. We're starting to see a little bit uh -oh. more consistency right there. And look at Spenos just shooting. He's just shooting everything. He's not worried in terms of going through there. Does hit one Elim, fires the shots off going through, trying to look at just anything that he thinks doesn't look normal. Anything that maybe not have been there before. It's like one of my favorite things, watching him just shoot the boxes like, what's that? Was that there? Was that there? Was that there? Was that there? <laughs> He's just taking his shots. That's exactly what you got to do here if you want to hold this lead here. And that's why they're dominating. You can see the no hesitation really coming out of them. And that's why they have the lead right now. And it's great. It's great that they're hitting his shots. It's great that Svenos is holding it down. But the funky fighters, we talked about it. Eyes on them already up to 120. One more 10 point prop will put them past. And unfortunately for Ninja there, does get hit on the springboard, but gets in anyway. So just a little bit of time loss. A great shot Whoa. from Lachlan. My lord, I barely even saw that. Four turtle from Austin. Australia hit a springboard and Lachlan shut that down his fellow, fellow Australian brother right there very nicely done you don't want to hit those springboards man and now you can see 125 from the funky fighters they're doing everything they can to overtake they want this match victory they want to keep the momentum rolling but the cuddle group is doing a great job of picking up targets and running their timeout, getting some both right as they get out of spawn and before they're about to score, which the waste of time is even that much more efficient, but unfortunately not finding anything there. Yeah, Lachlan is really not timing his kind of rotations and reloads properly. Notice he's not also utilizing the shooting through the curtain factor there. He's kind of holding himself back. That's why you saw him with a couple Elims right there, but you got to put that pressure down, lock down these lanes so that they don't, they don't just get like free rotations through, right? And again, we talked about it a little bit. I'm very surprised nobody is just consistently running two-point props. You can get them in close to every run if you pick the right path and you take the covered angles. It's very difficult to stop them, particularly with the smaller hitbox, but so far we've only seen two scored. Yeah, and I like that. Cuddle Crew right there, 130 points. This is their time. Cuddle Crew is still doing really good defense right here. Oh no, but you know, cast his curse. I feel so bad. Chicken Champion comes up out of nowhere, takes that one right away. Able to get him there. And now the Funky Fighters, five points out. Anything going in will be enough. And the time ticks over. They didn't get it in there. Oh. Did they, they get it in there? They might have got the five point right at the end, but no, wasn't enough. Lava Record Co. on the defense says, lock it up. We good, brilliantly done from them. And that's what I'm talking about. When you're sitting there on defense, you know exactly how long you need to keep them out, exactly what you need to do in order to take the victory. And no surprise there, the guys who are all about that apocalypse game mode during the creative trials, able to take home the very first match ever on Junkyard Juke. That was well played. Valiant effort for everyone that participated in that run right there. And it was a close one. 150 points to the contender having 145. Just just one point. One small radiator. And this is this is what I'm talking about, where if you had one person who is running just two point props there and got their successful runs at the end, they would have it. That's three successful runs that takes about a minute and you could have collected to it. So go ahead. Nobody maybe, opted maybe, to it. maybe some of these guys need a little help here. Let's let's redo this. What, what would you suggest here, Sundown? I, I don't want to say suggest, but I had an opportunity to play a decent amount of it. I'm a big fan of kind of adjusting based off of the scoreline. So if you're seeing you're able to consistently keep running two point props, get the guaranteed points. If somebody's playing really good defense and you're not getting 10 point props in, you need to pivot away from that strategy because getting any points at all is better than none. And particularly if you waste a run on a dumpster where the entire time you're going and then you're stopping and then you're going and then you're stopping. Eventually, even if you get all the way to the end, sometimes it's not enough, right? And then you've wasted that 35, 45 seconds, three rotations to get 
just there, whereas you could have grabbed the burger, grabbed the bucket, and ran the entire time, weaved around, trying to like, catch a good area, as we saw with the statue, able to hide around the corner. So we'd love to see in the next match a little bit more, I don't want to say like determination going into it, but be a little bit more deliberate. That's right, but let's go in here from some of the deliberate actions over with Zeke, down with our winners. What's up, guys? I'm hanging out with the Llama Record Company. They took away the prop hunt five-point lead. You guys locked it up at the very end. And I'm going to start with you. Uh, and one person I want to call out specifically is this man right here, Svenos. Very tall, tallest man on the planet. Uh, it feels like this guy is a very good pick for your team. And, and I want to know why him, and then also why you picked these other two. Yeah, I mean, I picked all those guys because uh, this game mode is all about skill. Uh, you have uh, There are no random things in it. You need good aim, you need uh, decision making for sure. And Svenos, I mean, he's, he's like a Spano. He really likes Spano. That's kind of the best city in the world. And that's why I picked him first, for example. Okay, now Svenos, I'm going to put you on blast for a second because we've known each other quite a while. Uh, you know, I'd like to believe that your creativity is what allowed you to win. Let's think back to the time where you wore an entire green outfit and you danced and had a galaxy over yourself. Do you feel like that galaxy uh, and that kind of creativity helped you get this dub? I don't know what you're talking about, mate. I think people at home that watched, you guys probably know exactly what I'm talking about. Let's go over this way now. Uh, what did you think about that game? Did you, was it what you expected? Was it different? Did it catch off guard? Were you ready to just jump into it? It's enjoyable. Once you get the hang of it, it gets a lot easier. Um, you just got to work out who's good at aim and which team's on the, the tower. And in the, after that, you're good. All right, final question. Do you think you have what it takes? Are you going to, is the, is the Llama Record Company going to be the team? You think someone else is standing in your way or is it, is it all you guys? I think it's going to be all us, yes. There you go, man of few words, that's all they need. Gentlemen, thank you so much, best of luck going forward. Back to you guys on the desk. Thank you so much, Zeke. Another brilliant performance there coming out of the Llama Record Company. We talked about their versatility. We talked about how quickly they pick up competitive matches. But this is what happened in the first set, right? They were there. They were confident. They're like, yeah, once you get it, it's easy. And then all the other teams immediately caught up. So it'd be very interesting to see if that same story from set one is what's happening in set two. Yep, that's right. Alex up there said it best. You know, he had the confidence. He felt good in those final moments. Hey, you know, once you figure out who's aiming, maybe just avoid him. Yeah, I mean, if somebody is hitting all their shots, you need to take a different route. You can't go and continuously challenge them because, again, we talked about that. If you waste all the time to run through and the guy hits a lucky, or I don't want to say lucky blind fire, but a consistent blind fire through there, don't keep running that way. But like we said, this is the first time seeing the Junkyard Juke mode. And we talked about the Prop Hunt mode earlier, but you can play it live right now in game. There's an LTM that's available only for this weekend. Let's check it out. Like we said, you can check that out live in client. It's an LTM that is available only for this weekend. And Monster, have you had a chance to play Prop Hunt? Well, all week long now, I finally really got to experience the Prop Hunt. And before this, I kind of heard you guys talk about it. I was like, hmm, is that something I want to try out? But no, it honestly was very fun. There's so many just fun moments, but the ability to then push it to a competitive level. These guys are doing great, but we're now going to get into match two of set two. The second time you will have seen Junkyard Juke, and let's see who is able to push on. The match is about to start. Here we go. The creative finals at the Fortnite World Cup set two, match two of Junkyard Juke. That's right. So in the tower. We have Ninja's team, the Little, Whip, Warriors, Taco, Gaz, Taldoc. We're jumping straight into their POV. So notice Ninja firing right through those blinds. He saw something moving back there. He's trying to pinpoint what was it. He does, of course, track him down to Sport Turtle, who just a little pixel. You know, you stand out, you're going to get popped here. He needs to make sure he's still watching his left-hand side, though, because there is a whole run on that corner right now where people would be able to come out. And now, all of a sudden, you see Alex, JJ, Tyler, Ryan Fanta, MSYB all heading in that direction. Nobody is checking that corner. He's checking it every now and then, but he's primarily aiming on the right. And right, as I say that, now looks back on over as the rush comes through. But MSYB and Rubius are able to get in. 
brilliantly oh. done from them, getting the first points on the board as the Funky Fighters again are able to pull out to a decent lead. What do you think? Uh, would you rather be up in the guard tower first and kind of get that out the way? Or would you prefer to kind of jump in as a prop and get your points first? Um, so for me, it depends if I can get a lead. If I have a lead, obvious, I want to be a guard tower at the end because I'm very confident in my ability to just spam shots in the right direction because I know like I can find the sight line and all that. With that being said, if you can get in the guard tower early and you do incredibly well, it gives you the bonus. You know how many points you need to get. You know how consistent and fast you can run. And right now we're seeing a lot more five-point props than last round. People consistently trying to get those in, recognizing, hey, they're a little bit quicker. People are finding their angles now. But as I say, that Achi for the Sunshine Soldiers gets in that truck. Ten points going over to them and 15, actually, as a five-pointer got sorted right at the same time. That was perfect. Yeah, and the Sunshine Soldiers had a great last run. Achin and his crew really pulled it together. They were at the top for a while there, but in those final moments, we saw the Chicken Champions take away and kind of break away. And now, look, no surprise, Chicken Champs, they're feeling it. They found their rhythm towards the end of the last one. If they carry that over, this is going to be a close one. Yeah, and you can see Carnifex hits the jump pad twice over there, doing everything he can to not get hit. And he does get the teddy bear in. Oh. 10 points going through, and Clytex gets picked right at the end. Right through the curtain. Taco is like, you know what? I'm going to check the close area. Look at, <laughs> look at how Chappie's doing it as well. He's actually eliminated nine props so far. So he is really firing away here, trying to see if anyone's trying to make a mad dash while the curtains are up. And, oh, Sandy gets caught right there. Good shot right away. 20 seconds left, so players need to start running if they're going. Good shots coming out from Trappy to get it there and get the reload off. Saw the truck over on the side, is able to pick that one up, and now is looking for the smaller props towards the side. Knew there was movement, just wants to fire it off. Only 10 seconds left. They should be able to get the defense, but there goes a bucket. Look at it. Oh, the cactus are hard oh, to hit. Oh, was able to pick it up just at the last second. Good attempt from Kutu, and you can see the points already coming across. Players so far sticking to their game plan. Five and 10 point props all the way. That is the way to go. Inch your way up and over to that victory there. But that was just the first round of four here. Round two is going to begin. What's going to happen now is, again, the guard tower is going to mix up. We're going to see new players in the guard tower and then the other players that were previously in the guard tower back on the prop hunt floor. Yes, you get one round in the guard tower, three rounds of running as the props, and you can see right away now you have the funky fighters up top and the shots go out as soon as the blinds go down, not letting anything happen as the props march their way out of spawn. This is fun right here. I love watching these, these trucks waddle about, really trying to find their way, and they see the light go to change, plant themselves down, and back, they were back out to the, uh, to the field here. Yep, and desperately trying to avoid, oh, there's no way. You're stacked on top of each other. Come on, you got to oh, shoot one the of the shots two. Are shots close. are going towards it, but right now, Zan trying to get that cuddly cute teddy bear into the incinerator. Not a sentence I ever thought I would say there, as the archer is now doing everything he can. Hits the bounce target twice and is able to convert as Magma gets another good run and sneaks in under the shots of Dracius. That's right. This is just getting closer and closer as we have a three-way tie now. The Fish Fam. Llama Record Company, the Cuddle Crew, all at the top here, and it's still a very close game so far. Dan Yan right here from the Sunshine Soldiers, peeking around, using that camera angle, trying to see when it's time, wants to waste no time here. Bat, it goes down and off to the race as she goes. But will it change? Yep. Actually, stops early too. Says, you know what, I'm gonna play it safe, I'm gonna stop before the curtain comes up. And she has to be having a blast right now. She says one of her favorite things about creative mode is kind of the wacky and wany and situations you get into, particularly like prop hunt. So this must be a game mode that she's doing incredibly well and enjoying herself in. As you can see there, her team is able to get a couple of props in there. Go Taga and Clytex try to make the final little sprint. Hand of Blood gets another 10 points over, as does Taco with a five point statue there. Scissors is hanging around on the side there. Will go through. No, I did not mean to call you trash. You just are a dumpster now, quite literally. Quite literally, but oh, the rage. <laughs> I read the lips, he said I was so mad. He got taken out right there. And I like this, let's see how he decides. He's going for those 10 points though. Notice he went straight to the right for the big objects. That's the risk. 
That's what it was about. That's what happens. You need to be careful, not only of the fact you're bigger, easier to see while you're moving, but you need to find a blank space in order to set down. Can't be clipping into anything else with 45 seconds remaining in round two. And you can see Spedos a minute before the guard looked at him. He's like, I don't, <laughs> nah, I'm out. <laughs> right there. And he, uh, right now, relatively top heavy. 70-70, and as I said, Fish Ramp does get their 80th point, but Lachlan hanging out on top of the rubble. 28 seconds left, does find an angle Oh, that you know, no he actually really didn't watching. park either. He just jumped on top of it. You know, I haven't been to this section here where all the, the, the vehicles so are. This is the section I'm talking about where you can grab a burger in a bucket, go out, and not expose yourself except for during one period. And as long as you either full run the time through or you opt to uh, sit still during that time, then you're good. You will score literally every single run. It's just you have to be a two-point prop, and you have to go to that exit. Oh, Danyan right there, unfortunately, couldn't push through in those final moments there. And that was round two of four, as we are looking to get into round three next. So they can earn some more points. And every single set matters, right? Every game matters because there's a lot of prize on the line. Yes, every single match is scored. The top four will receive a gradient of money going from $55,000 down to 20, and then you have the fourth through 10th all receiving 10. That prize is then decided who will receive the Silver Llama. The Funky Fighters currently have one, but who will be able to press with them? Clyde tax that vehicle is way too big, buddy. You can't just be trying to squeeze it behind that and not think someone's gonna see the tail end of it. Here we have Bensor and Drakias close by one another. Bensor gets popped through the blinds there. And wait, so he's going to take a couple shots. He said, does this truck belong here? He did miss, though. So lucky for him. The bad aim in the, that moment right there is going to allow him to sneak that big 10 oh, point. No! no! He gets taken out <laughs> right there. That's no points for him. 10 is huge in this mode, too. It's very difficult to get it a vehicle all the way through. I mean, it's swinging, right? If you think about it, the last round was one with 150 points, right? So if you get a singular 10-point profit, that's not an insignificant percentage there. Like, that's going to be able to help your team, but you also need to set your feet there as Kororo did and not, didn't hit the crouch button. It was like, I see you wiggling a little bit there, yoink. And there's Ninja, Ryan, Franta, Chappie, and many others still in the running here. Kind of peeking around, you see Tyler shooting straight through the curtain. It almost looks like he's beelining his shots down the aisle there, trying to see if he can get anyone trying to exit out. Zan sees one pop up in the air, and I think he might have clipped that person out. Nobody was watching that side. Oh, Fish fam needs to communicate better right now. Nobody was covering that other side. We saw two teams able to get a decent run out, but right now, Llama Record Company still holding the lead, sitting at 100 points. But don't forget, Fish fam are up on top right now are the guards, which means they're not scoring points. He's so fast. Ryan Bronze is so fast here with this prop. Even moving it, he doesn't care. He's going all the way for it. But he's got to watch for traps. See the fear? He's like, uh, you know what? I'm not even going to risk it. I'm going to wait here and get the secure point. So one important thing to notice, too, is Ryan is taking paths consistently that take him to the corner of the guard tower because the corner provides you with a little bit of natural cover, and it breaks that sight line up. If you're only staring out in one direction, it's super easy to be like, no, that car was not there. I know it wasn't. If you're flipping back and forth across that corner piece, it just breaks up your field of view a little bit more, and it's that much harder to try and figure out what's actually going to hit. That's right, and oh boy, is MSYB going to be able to sneak this huge truck in? Oh, he actually hit something there. He's going to sneak it right on the knee. Lucky for him, the shot did not come back in time. But just that big archery target was almost enough to kind of block him right there. Venos gets another large object in as well. That's another 10-pointer for the Llama record. It was fully processed here, so now he's at 130. Can the Cuddle Crew hold the lead here, though? Can they secure it? All the Llama record company needs to not score right now, and they'll continue to kind of stay in the lead. And you can see Scissors is hitting a ton of shots. They're trying to get the retribution as the guard. And now we're heading in to our final round of match number two. So we'll see who the guards are, see what the stakes are, and who will be able to take that number one spot. Again, first place, $55,000, and that much closer to Silver Llama number two. And again, we have the Cuddle Crew and Llama Record Co. up on defense. Let's check out that scoreboard. And Cuddle Crew, Llama Record Co., first and second, who will be able to overtake them, and they are so 
both two five points separating us. A battle for first and second now. Yes, Lachlan and the rest of his team are trying their hardest. They have to stop people from scoring. The chicken champions get up. They can just easily snag this away. But for now, they know the Llama Record uh, Company cannot. They can't take them over. Oh, I thought he was going to shoot that car. He knew it wasn't there. Nice. Finds the box right around the corner and then gets another one right after. Blind fire through the shade as El Rubius is looking to post up there. Spanish YouTuber trying to find a way in, trying to lead his team, and they've overtaken the Lama Record Co. with plenty of time and are tied with the Cuddle Team. Any singular point now will put the Chicken Champions as our match two winner. They They're need so close. one prop. That's right, they're so close here. Magma trying to hop on over. Who's it going to be for the chicken champions? Who's going to be? Do you think they get a two-point prop? Do you, they have the scoreboard in front of them. They know they need only that. Do you think they run one in, or do you think they stay with what they're doing right now? Honestly, I think they're just going to stay with what they're doing. It's working. Why break the formula here? They have over a minute to do so. And just like that, they are going to stay in here. And that will be it. Yes, brilliantly done. And they're overtaking them. And now the question is, can the Little Whip Warriors get enough in to catch them. It's a 25 point spread, but you can get that. You have four runners. Yes. You can get that in a single run if you're well coordinated enough. Will they be able to catch up or can the chicken champions edge it out and be our match two victors? That's right, because the Cuddle crew is now bumped out. The chicken champions are holding it. Little Whip Warriors have scored though. One minute left here. Uh oh. Raven's Revenge coming up as well, as is the Fish Fam. This is actually getting closer than we would have thought. They're close to pushing out the Cuddle Crew and Alamos. Yep, and Little Whip Ninja also getting the five points there. Will be able to overtake. Don't forget, you don't want to end up fourth to eighth. It's all about at least breaking the top four to get a little bit of the differenti a differentiation there in the prizing. But the Chicken Champions are pulling ahead. They're keeping that 25-point difference so far between the Little Whip Warriors. Little Whip needs to find a coordinated run with 10-point props in these last 30 seconds, or they're not going to get it. Meanwhile, Bensor running that statue in, trying to lock up everything he can for the lead and he's being extremely patient with it. Taking a corner run, finding everything he needs to do. Little Whip does get a 5 and a 10, and there's still now only 20 points behind, but Bensor is going to be able to lock that one up from there. 5 points, 25, 15 seconds left. The Chicken Champions are sitting pretty. Yes, that's right. If the Little Whip Warriors don't score big right now with all big props, it's going to be all over in 3 seconds. And it's not going to be enough here because the Chicken Champions, they actually pushed the lead even further. Did you see what happened in the last second? They did score. No, no, no. Raven's Revenge grabbed a two-point prop, hard ran all the way through, got it in, right? And then that pushed them from fourth into third. When we talk about every little interaction mattering, yep. that was it. But the Chicken Champions, one might be able to say that was excellent. They were able to tend to defend that title for the match two victory and putting them in a good spot to contend for the set two lump. You can see the excitement there on their faces as they just realize, hey man, we got this. We're in the running here. The Junkyard Juke could be ours. And you can see they're still talking gameplay right now. Like they want to know what can we do more. That play you did right there was awesome, but they want the next one because there's three matches for each one of the sets. And a win there would put them in a fantastic spot to get the second Silver Llama. You need that in order to be in contention. And if they're able to split it up away and deny it from the Funky Fighters, it feels wide open. Yes, it's not over yet. That's just another team who takes the victory here, making it that much closer of a running so far. And we saw the Ravens' revenge kind of sneak up too. You need as many points as possible. The bigger the placement, the better the prize as well for the round. So you can't just give up either. You got to push it all the way to the final moment. And hey, hats off to whoever's call that was on Ravens' revenge. That was a brilliant decision, showing exactly why you're able to qualify for the Fortnite World Cup Creative Finals. Why you're playing on that stage. Those are the big plays. But again, brilliantly done from the Chicken Champions. Consistent runs, stuck to their statues, stuck to their routes, and took the corners and now we're actually going to have a chance to talk to our chicken champions the match two champions zeke has them up there on the top floor zeke what do you got for us what's going on guys i'm hanging out with the chicken champions guys that game was insane feathers were flying and you guys clutch it up did you figure out the strategy because you guys were well and ahead of everybody else yeah uh we practiced yesterday and everything is thanks to this guy this guy always goes for the 10 points always and he always gets it so 
thanks to you, man. All right, then I'm coming to you, Mr. Carey. Uh, how, what was the strategy? How did you get the 10 points in there? Was it the same every time? Did you switch things up? Yeah, I go for the 10 points each time and do the same strategy, and it seems to work. So. <laughs> so in this intense game of red light, green light, were you like stopping early, or were you just like going as far as you could go and then waiting for someone to spot you and stopping, or what was, what was your plan? No, I'm taking it uh, very patiently. Yeah. <laughs> All right, now over to you guys. What do you guys think of this game mode? Has it been everything you thought it's been? Yeah, yeah, it's great. Um, we had a game plan. We definitely did what we came to do, and yeah, that's what we expected. So, Very well executed. You did not lay an egg. All right, final question for you. I want to give you the chance to, to tell the world, you know, all the fans something. What do you want to tell them? Uh, thanks for the support uh, from uh, Spain, for the other world, and uh, my team is uh, it's good in this mode, and I, uh, will we win the next uh, match? <laughs> there you go. The excitement is real. Gentlemen, congratulations. Best of luck going forward. We're sending it back your way. Brilliantly done there from the Chicken Champions. Thank you so much, Zeke. They're excited to be there. They stuck to the gameplay. And shout out to Bensor. The one thing he was looking forward to on this trip, he wanted to play in front of a big crowd. He got that moment running through, securing that for the Chicken Champions. And immediately, El Rubius turned to him and was like, it's all him, man. He put the team on his back or put the team in his dumpster. I don't know that normally that wouldn't be a good thing, but in this circumstance, hey, it worked out for him. Yeah, another prop to uh, Kyoto as well. The only or one of two controller players here, you know, in the creative final. So very nice of him to kind of represent for those guys as well. And again, just showing that he's got the moves out there. He had the moves, was able to find the right angles. And now we've seen some developments from match one to match two. Yep. What was the big thing that stuck out from you that was different? And that last one, honestly, finally seeing someone pick up those two-point props, right? Using those, those are points right there. But with that, we'll jump over to Bala and take a fun look at some of the things that developed in our last few moments. Thank you so much, guys. Yes, the Junkyard Juke is developing nicely. Everybody's starting to figure out what all the different tools and props they have available to them. So with that, we're going to hop into some of the tips and tricks that I've seen from the Junkyard Juke so far. We can roll the clip right now as all these players. The first thing I want to point out is there are these springboards. Fortunately, Dan Yen gets picked out of the sky there. Not too happy about that. But moving on to Tomoya using the statue. This is one of the interesting scores I saw with the statue, those higher point objects being useful. Scissors here with the springboard, the recovery, and just barely doesn't get into the, the incinerator at the last second. And then here we have Tomoya. No, sorry. We have, again, just an awesome run towards there, looking like a scene out of everybody, you know, crossing the street at the same time. Here's Tracius hitting some amazing shots through the black. And then he just continues shooting, just hoping that he can get a shot. This is the other team, the Cuddle Crew, doing the same thing, but then also synchronizing, making sure they have coverage on all angles. Finally, Tomoya made some amazing calls. We'll listen to them in a second. But this is what he did, always timing it perfectly so that he can get in and make sure that his teammates also go at the same time and make it into that incinerator. So we're going to head and listen to what those communications were like from Tomoya and team. In this one, they made sure the count was perfect. One, two, three, four, ten, I got ten, I got ten. We are nice. both, we are both, yes. One, two, three, four, five, tap. Oh, they kill me. If they don't kill me, I score ten. Don't fight. One, two, okay, three, I got five, I got four, five. I got ten. No, he kill me. Oh. We are, we are strong, strong team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We sc I score zero in the second round. That's the problem. I score zero in the first one, so. Uh, like we are all close points. It's there you go. The Funky Fighters, you know they won the first Silver Llama. We're going to see if they can win the next one. We've got one more match here on Junkyard Juke to go. And we'll see who will come out on top with the Silver Llama from this. Guys, back to you. Thank you so much, Bala, for that great breakdown. Listening in the comms, that's one thing I hadn't considered. I always just kind of like, yeah, it's going to come up now. But these guys all on comms talking, have one guy counted out. That guy's just like a metronome. Make sure he has it on the dot every single time. Brilliantly done from them. But will 
they'd be able to take back that top spot. We've seen them do it. If they can grab that Silver Llama, they'll be in such a good spot. But right now, they aren't seeing the same success they saw before. Yeah, you want to get the Silver Llama, but to get there, you got to make a new strategy. I think that right there, that was a, there was a lot of information in that bit right there. You kind of noticed the team uh, synergy, and he said something very important in his interview there. Talked about being patient. You really have to be patient. You can't let the frustration get to you. You saw Scissors very expressive on the cam. Just it's hard to get the point through. And that's what I talked about before this whole thing started. I said, trust me, this is a lot harder than you guys think. You might just, you know, oh, yeah, I'll turn into something and run it through. Nah, man, you're going to get shut down. But I mean, it's just like, if you think about it, it's the mental aspect that really comes with it. If you're able to frustrate somebody else, then they're that much more off their game. And these guys are all great at that coming through from some of the death run qualifiers. It makes it that much harder. But thank you guys so much for joining us here. And again, don't forget, there is a fantastic, awesome, event-specific merch starting here right now today on the 26th. You can also get it on retailrow.com. Make sure you celebrate the event. Remember it, grab some from your friends, your brothers, your family, people who couldn't be here and celebrate the first ever Fortnite World Cup. Yeah, you saw some of your favorite pros and competitors here rocking that new swag. Definitely loving it. All types of collaborations going on here. I, I, I love it when Fortnite releases new gear, you know? It's kind of allows me to always spice it up. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm always a fan of anything Fortnite swag. That's pretty much like 98% of my wardrobe at this point. I mean, I love the logos, love the bright colors, but enough from us. Match three, set number two, the final one on the original version of Junkyard Juke before we see the remix later on. Are you guys ready? That's right. And let's begin. The first round is on their way. Match number three, set number two. Who will be able to incinerate the props the most? Who will push out to the lead? And can anybody upset the funky fighters who took that first lobby? You need to make sure they don't get this one here. And basically, everyone's first place. Yep, and you can see there, Taldak did land a shot straight through the curtain. Very nicely done. Another kind of lane, right? You want to look at your lane, see which lane is available to you that's easy to maneuver the objects you want to bring through. Clytex, for example, here is using a bear. There are no bears in this section, but he says, you know what? It's all good. I can sneak this around. So the big thing with the bear, though, that you don't really consider is the coloring of Ooh. the background. You're in the junkyard. You're a little bit in one of those desert biome situations. There's a lot of kind of muddled browns and oranges around there. It makes it that much harder to stick out. However, if you uh, kind of, if you're grabbing the uh, snowman, you're just really flexing on everyone. It's like, yeah, I'm a snowman. I'm a snowman in the desert, and I'm going to score on you. That's pretty hilarious because, you know, we haven't seen anyone pull out the weird objects in the back end. For good reason, there are a couple other fun ones back there. If we get a pan around later, you'll probably notice a big old snowman or something like that. But with all this money on the line, there's no way anyone has time to play around like that. You can't play around because every single one of those runs matters. And right now, we see Sunshine Soldiers swapping over. They've already put in two two-point props. So need to be slightly more efficient on those runs. But good job getting on the board consistently. And as we say that, five-pointer goes in. Boom, they're ahead of the funky pressure. We've had a singular 10-point run. So trying to get every possible point. It's all about min and maxing efficiency. Honestly, the Little Wimp Warriors are doing a great job at defending here. They all have a ton of eliminations. Taldak at six, Taco at five, Kaz and Ninja both tied at seven. That is pretty good. They're shutting down all of their lanes. These guys are not here to play. Remember, as you're a guard, you don't accumulate any points. So it's good. They're knocking this out the way, and they're doing a great job defending. Keeping them out, making sure you find the right lane angles, and also sometimes just putting shots out in the right spot. You just need to be able to consistently deny as much as possible. And Taldor, that was sick! I was like, are you behind that? Yep, yeah, what's that? Didn't see that there before, didn't see that either. Taldor doing a good job so far, spotting things through the curtain. Let's see if he can find another here with a random shot. Oh, something landed. That's why you don't want to hit those spring traps there. They make, it, they make it so difficult when you're a larger object coming back down because it's just so much motion on the screen. When everything else is still, if you see that thing falling through, like, it's an easy shot. And particularly for all of these players up there. I mean, Gotaga and Gru, everyone on Raven's Revenge, him, Magma, RTA, and Chappie all have been able to hit their shots. And then, I mean, Little Whip Warriors is a team of pitcher shots. That's right. And there it is. 
Last opportunities to make a point have just concluded. And that was the first round there are four of these. So we're going to switch up the guards now. Little Whip Warriors get a chance at, you know, trying to earn some points. And as do the others, the next round will begin. That dragon's so cool. That's so cool. Look at that. Oh, yo, almost looks real. Yo, shout out to the observers. That shot right there, that's really cool. Big fan of it going out. And as you can see now, round two is underway. This is the final match on Junkyard Juke of set two. And right off the bat, two archery targets and a water heater marching on out. Yep, that archery target is worth 10 points, though. So if you can bring that all the way through, it's one of the, I guess, smaller, large point objects. Magma doesn't even care. He's Impatient, he saw the blinds open up, he just kept going. Zvenov did pump the brakes, so even right here, notice, stops very early. He's just trying to blend in, get as many points as possible right here. Ooh, oh, he did get picked up. It might have been the book there. That's the one thing that you need to note that makes it very difficult about the bullseye or the archery target is the fact that because it has those placed legs, you have to be deliberate about where you're setting down. Otherwise, you're right, like, boom, right there. That book would be a giveaway if somebody decided to look down and double check that box. But there's six other boxes around. So relatively safe, good path chosen there from Tyler. And opposite stop and being, you know, a little bit of patient and might have cost him there. I think he would have had it if he had just go full send. And I think he thinks so too. Yo, it makes me laugh to see him scratch his head, his jaw just like, oh, being so close and not making it through is so unfortunate. Taudak is going to find a little bit of success there as the Suezo. And you saw Alex J. J for a bit is very close to scoring as well. Here's Zan from the Fish Fam representing Hugging really close to that cactus. So long as he's not pushing through it, yeah, he is going to be able to sneak on out. He kind of hiccups there. He's going to go all the way. He doesn't care if the curtain comes down. He sneaks right underneath Tomoya and his team up top. Funky Fighters are at 35 points now in the guard tower. They can't earn any more. And that was a great run there by Zan Knight. You can see Svenos waiting for the blinds to go down, making sure he can find an angle, and then pushing in towards. Needs to be careful of that spring right there, but it doesn't matter. It gets picked up anyway as he's like, hey, there wasn't a car there before. Alex JJ now looking to find a run. You can see Fish Fam and Llama Record Co. currently hanging out at the top, but again, haven't had the chance to be up there, so can be expected. Alex JJ now two targets, both running out good stops at the same time. But particularly if you have two people taking the same path as the same item, it kind of has a little bit more of a benefit because you're like, yeah, those were both there, but mine. There's, there's no way those are both props. That's what I was going to say. I was like, you know what? Honestly, if you see a bunch of the same things, they blend in a little more. It's when something's an oddball that you really start to shoot. So maybe it is a good idea for to time it, right? But the, so there's also to... there's split spawns, so you don't always mm. consistently, there's different spawn points around the map that have the different exits as you go out. So you can coordinate with a teammate, or what you can also do is sort of bait somebody else to do it, right? So you see somebody is running an archery target, and you're like, okay, I'm just gonna grab that too, and then you follow their path. And if they get picked up, oh, well, you look slightly more natural, particularly if you're that much more patient. And you can see Svenos is actually doing that right now with Carnifex, both of them going into the box. Svenos does hit the spring, is hanging out behind the car, and will get the score. Boy, that was a great run. Yeah, he actually recognized where he was not looking down in the right direction, so he took advantage of that. Funky Fighter let his guard down for just a second there. He did manage to sneak on through, so that was the big point there in the final seconds as this round is now coming to a close there. Next round is going to begin. We're going to switch up the guards. Take another look. And no dancing, just props and shots going out from the guards. Round three kicking off in the final match of set two at the creative finals, who will be able to take that second silver llama in right now. You see Bensor is going in for the 10 point prop right away. Kutu does get the mimic, but then opts to go for a different route as players are starting to feel a little bit of the pressure here. You can tell they need to score points. It's the first time we're starting to see some gnomes out there and another teddy bear on the run. That's right, Can Taka represent here. He's putting himself straight behind every object that he can. I love that they're using the smaller objects. It's so much easier to score with those. When you bring those big ones out, it, it really is hard. <laughs> he actually put himself inside the truck. You see that? He's following Kuta so close here. He's got to use him as bait, really. As you get behind him, he's safe. Yep, because they don't think they're going to fire twice in there. That's the benefit of it. But right away, you see Kaz, Taco, Chappy. Great little run there from the Little Whip Warriors. That's going to push them back into contention. There's 65 points currently, but a dumpster going in from hand to blood. There's wow. another 10 points for Llama Record, though, pushing them up to 90. 
and they were the winners of that first match. So if they can hold on, they know they'll be the guards in the final round. They need to build up as much of a lead as possible here. Car Carraro actually has 15 eliminations, so he had a super successful guard round. But the chicken champions need to get picked up here. They need these points. And there it is. He's doing a lot of work for his team, showing that, hey, I can, I can push this up here too. Just going to go ahead and take that five-pointer, throw him right over the fish fam now. And they're in the top three running. That was a great run from him. Corner peak the entire time, made sure nobody was looking for him. Like, he was barely threatened. But right now, Benz are coming through. The chicken champions, can they overtake in the last minute? That's 10 more points. That is going to go through for them. And it starts pushing up. Llama record for needs to get in yeah. some runs. The chicken champions will not be on the defense with them for the last one. So they're pushing it through. Right now, it is the Sunshine Soldiers and the Fish Fam up there. So they're doing their best to delay everyone. X Sandy gets picked off by Tyler, and now Carnifex is chilling in the back on that rusted out car. Hand of blood just barely avoids the shot. Oh, oh, oh. oh, saw the hitbox going through there. The Tracers finding a way through the window, but not enough as Dracius gets in. Two more 10 point props also going over, and we're seeing, I think, a little bit closer of a score here, minus the fact that the Chicken Champions haven't shot yet. Yeah, this is pretty rough. Neither have the Llama Company. The, llama, the llamas have not shot, uh, went, went into the guard tower at all. You can tell because when we go to their uh, POVs, they don't have any limbs. So they have not taken a run yet. Yes, excuse me, I misspoke that, meaning the uh, chicken champions had already shot. Oh, the okay, fact okay. that they're already yeah, up so they, the they're doing great. Llama, yeah, doing llama, great. llama needs to press on it. The only team who really has a definitive lead right now is the chicken champions. Effectively, they're up 30 points on the rest of the field because Cuddle Team and Llama Record Code both have to shoot next round. Oh, boy. So if they can't secure a big lead here in the last couple of seconds, if something can't get processed, oh, the poor burger at the very end. Burger did not get processed. We like it. Never frozen there. Brilliantly done. Doesn't find it. Great work from coming out. And Carnifex doing a great job. Round four will begin. It's going to be the last match, and we're going to see what the line is going to be. Who is up in the tower? Who will be able to defend? And can they hold them off? Again, it's Llama Record Co. and the Cuddle Crew up there. And Go Taga. It's already Go up there. there. You can see the chicken champions were able to connect. So it's all about can a little whip in them catch up. They need a fantastic run and they have to do everything to the night. And you can see right away already tunneling in on those 10 point props. Yeah, the cuddle crew cannot earn points. The chicken champions already have the lead. They just kind of kind of continue to press on here. Llama records are up at their run, but it still matters. There's so much on the line for depending on each each game, right? Each game is worth so much. You still want to hold your placement regardless of what. This is still a fantastic game for all the teams in the top three right now. And I mean, we saw the Ravens come up huge in their last match, yep. pushing all the way from seventh into third because of clutch last minute decision making. Right now, Little Whips are trying to do everything they can to catch up with the Chicken Champions and not deny Ninja still sticking with the water heater runs, trying to get as many of those in, but the Chicken Champions are still stretching out their lead. They have a 25 point lead, which means the Little Whip Warriors have to either start fast running with the 5 point props or switch to 10 point props. They cannot catch them doing a patient 5 point strategy right now. They won't have enough time with how good the Chicken Champions have been. They have been the prop masters so far. Yes, they have. They were doing so good. And oh no, Ninja hits a huge spike there. He's trying to dodge and he's so close to making it through. Very, very close. Here comes a 10-pointer from Taldox. Sneaks it right in. That's great for the Little Whip Warriors. That's actually going to throw them over the Llama Record Company right there. Cuddle Crew actually is somehow up. Look, the Little Whip Warriors actually went to second place now. They're so close to overthrowing the Chicken Champions as well. It's going to come down to the last final moments. Can the Little Whip Warriors get the runs they need to? You can see Kaz is taking the corner route, trying to find whatever he can, and he's doing it very well so far. Avoiding the jump pads there. Pretty sure Ninja called those ones out on the run since he hit them on the last time. You can see they're only 20 points down. They're all on five point props right now. They will be able to do it, but all of a sudden, Fish Fam is right Fish there as well. They're only 25 points up. Here comes a rotation of prop. Five points will be coming across for the Little Whips. Fish Fam also getting it, but Cuddle Crew does finally get pushed up there. Brilliantly done 
15 points now separates them, but Ryan gets one in for the tender defenders, pushing it back up to 25 with only 30 seconds remaining. Rubius knows if he can get this water heater in, if he can be safe. Oh, apologies, hidden so well. He was the statue going on there. And as you can see, hits the jump pad, stays on the corner, will get it in. That's going to push them 30 points clear. But as I say that, Fishfam catches right back up. 19 seconds left, Monster, in the final match of set two on Junkyard Juke. Can the last minute scores come through? 25 points, they need a run of 10s. Kaz got in, the box is coming just behind. Fishfam gets picked up. The Chicken Champions have done enough to round out the final match. Brilliantly done in match two, repeat in match three. They are the chicken champions, excellently done, and they defended their crown. That's right, and you have to give props to everyone else that managed to kind of hold a top three lead, especially right there in those final moments. A little bit more as the Fish fans really coming up at the end there, you know, bumping up their prize earnings, because every round everyone's a winner, but you can earn just a little bit. You can win a little bit more. Yeah, it was just brilliantly done there. And these are actually the creators who helped with this. Brilliantly done from them. Some fantastic gentlemen. Thank you guys all so much for your help in making this mode come to life. Some fine gentlemen up there. The creative builders were at that game jam out there, spent hours and hours, and it really blows my mind to see what they're able to do in this creative mode. Cause like, I'll go in, I'll play some stuff. Yeah, I think I'm pretty good. And they're like, oh yeah, after 20 minutes, I have this full game mode. Here's how the scoring works. Here's the barriers. I'm like, and that, that's the magic of creative, right? These unlimited uh, possibilities, really, when it comes down to coming up with these game modes. We've seen tons of fun ones, obviously developed not only for, you know, the creative kind of fun side of the community, but the comp side as well, right? There's plenty of great game modes out there. Yeah, shout out to all the guys out there playing Storm Wars. We know you guys enjoy it, but that was a fantastic way to close out set number two. And a brill honestly, I enjoyed Junkyard Duke. It was fun to see kind of the definitive play styles come out. Patience ended up being key, but players started finding the diagonal runs, knowing that like, hey, I'm going to stick with the statue because this is my comfort, or like, I know on this run I can be blocked by this tree and this dumpster and I only show myself once. But again, brilliant from the Fish Fam and Little Whip Warriors to push up and pass those guys in the last moments, pushing them into the top four and earning just a little bit more of that prize money. That's right, because they want it all here at the Fortnite Creative Finals, and it's going down. So, you know, you, you love to see it. We've seen a series of, you know, I guess, different people succeeding, right? And, and all of these, the Chicken Champions really kind of came out. Well, that's what, again, I love about all of this and about creative. There's so many different skills that Fortnite isn't all about one individual thing. You see these guys and what they're doing is incredibly well, able to execute the game plan, talk with their teammates, come up with something new, and the Chicken Champions elevated. They were clearly better than the rest at Junkyard Juke, but the question is, will that continue when we get into the Golden Games? Right now, we're going to get a chance to speak with the Chicken Champions, who's up top with Pooks. Pooks, what do you got for us? Thank you so much, Sundown. I am down here with the Chicken Champions, who surprisingly didn't fly the coop. They put on an absolute clinic today in the creative trials. I'm here with Rubius. Now, you guys won the last game as well, so two in a row. You guys had a pretty great strategy. Do you want to kind of talk me through that a little bit? Oh, what can I say? It's the power of Norway, the power of Spain, and the power of Detroit. Like, we're crushing it. On and we're a chicken, so we're good at hiding. Like, uh, we're not good at shooting and stuff, but at hiding, we're the best. The best strategy, I think, is, well, let him take the big stuff, and we are like the supports. Like, we take the small stuff, the five points and stuff, and stuff like that, and the trick is, don't tell him anybody, but the trick is to go in the corners. Like, go in, no one is watching the corners, it's insane. So no one is watching the corners. I hope all of your competitors did not hear you just say that. Now, he said that you were in charge of taking the big items. Does that put a little bit more pressure on you? No, it's good. It works good, so. <laughs> so you guys have a ton of confidence now. You have won two games in a row. I'm so excited to see how you all perform in the rest of the day. Going into these next games, do you have anything you're going to change? Or are you going to keep things the same? Uh, we're just going to keep things the same, stay consistent, keep a little ahead, play slow. That's really it. So. And finally, just for you there on the end, I just want to talk a little bit about you touched on the diversity of this group. Yeah. Now, I know you guys have really not played together much before. What has that been like, coming together, playing here with your teammates from all over the world? Uh, it's amazing. Uh, I share these moments with my team, and the next mode, uh, it's amazing. And, bueno, 
eh, this parkour. Eh, I think eh, my team is very good in parkour. I, uh, and I win. <laughs> we win. <laughs> You guys are so confident. I love it. Hopefully that carries on into your next games. Congratulations again, guys. Thank you so much. Sundown, back Can to you. Can I send you. some love to Twitch chat? Oh, Let's go. Twitch chat. <laughs> Twitch chat. There we go. No. YouTube hey, laser. It's, it's, hey, it's everywhere, man. Thanks for the plug out there, El Rubius. Fantastically well done. Love to everyone all over, no matter where you're watching, whether it's Fortnite.com, backslash watch, on Twitch, on YouTube, in client, you're loading up all that stuff. Thank you guys so much for all of this and being here. Set two is done. It's wrapped up, but I mean, we saw a big shift in the gameplay. We saw a lot of different changes going on, and it's going to be interesting to see what ends up converting into the Golden Games when we see a little bit of a remix on it. Not going to spoil any surprises. I know it's fine, but I'm just curious to see who is able to then take their gameplay and enact it when you get to think on it, because you get to then process and be like, okay, we were this close. We were right there if we had maybe like a little bit more aggressive or like maybe if we were a little bit better on defending or maybe one person picked a different lane, the result could have been different. And these guys have been so good at adapting to the circumstances that I I have no doubt that the chicken champions aren't just going to comfortably sit on top. Yeah, not only that, they gave away some strategy, so we'll see if Bala outside can, you know, kind of break that down and see if he can give us a little more insight on everything. Thank you so much, guys. The action is heating up. It's also heating up outside. I'm trying to cool off a little bit here at the Fan Festival, but awesome games of Junkyard Juke and Chicken Champion seems to be racing away with this one. We're going to take a look at some of the moments from that last game and how they won. So here, first off, just having a good time in the front and also maybe also flexing a little bit their trophy that they may have just secured in terms of a llama. We'll find out that later. But their strategy the entire time, they said it before in the last game, they're just trying to go for the high points. They're just trying to score these, at least getting not those two points that Monster was advocating for, but go for the statues, go for the boilers, all those things that net you tons of points, and that's how they came out to a lead. Here it is again, them just cheering on. We have the reactions from the Chicken Champions on their win as well. Nice trophy lifts. Maybe they'll be doing that later on here. The statue using that to get above the opponent's vision, their field of view, so that they can't see, they can't hit their shots, and the reactions of the win. Just bliss as they win their second game there on Junkyard Juke. Absolutely amazing stuff, guys. I can't wait to see who's gonna earn that and who's gonna continue on towards their path to the Creative World Cup champions. Thank you so much, Bala, for that in-depth analysis. Now, I know you guys want to see the standings. We want to see them as well. Unfortunately, there was a slight little hiccup. We want to make sure everything is right because this is a huge moment for all of these guys up on that stage. So while we sort that out, we're going to go to a quick break. And when we come back, we will have the standings after set two and then move into set three, which is the world premiere never before seen world run. So if you need to go do anything, go do it now. Take your bio break take care of everything you need, and then we will be right back. Hey, my name's Magma, and today I'm in New York because I qualified for week four um, of the creative trials for Godiga's map. I'm really looking forward to showing my skill set off and meeting all the players and showing everyone what I can do here. When uh, it was first announced that there was going to be creative trials, I was really looking forward to it because it was all I did pretty much 24-7. I looked at it as an opportunity. I find after playing Battle Royale, when creative first came out and Scissors released his first death run, I just instantly sort of, you know, took a liking to it and I enjoyed playing it. And I guess from there afterwards, when I found there was money involved with doing death runs and stuff, that sort of caught me and caught my attention and I started playing more. So with my team, my captain is Godiga. Uh, he's a French content creator and my teammates are Chaps and Ardia. I think we can do really well at the Creative World Cup. I think our team has a good combination of the death run skills, but also the like shooting and building and the good uh, chemistry we have in the team, I think it can really make our team do well. 
I'm Magma and my team Ravens Revenge is going to do really good in the World Cup and we're going to smash the rest of the competition because we have the Battle Royale skills, building, death run, we have it all. I am here in the production pit. I am in engineering row right now. I am joined by my friend Peyton, and he does the robotics. Let's talk a little bit about that. What do you do specifically here? We have a bunch of robotic cameras around the arena that we shoot different angles from, and we're able to pick up shots of the players that are playing the game. We also do a lot of crowd shots, so we're able to shoot the audience and uh, get some really great reacts for both the stream and for the front of house feeds that go up on the screens. You guys heard it. If you're out in the crowd this weekend here live for the Fortnite World Cup, show us some energy because Peyton is going to be looking for your reactions, and you could end up on stream. Um, you want to play with it, see how it goes? Of course I do. That's not even a question. Like, I'm so into this right now. This is amazing. I'm Scarlett. I come from Japan. I'm happy and excited to be playing with so many players that I've seen uh, on the internet. My favorite place to drop is Fatal Fields. It uh, if I win the Fortnite World Cup, first I'm gonna buy a house, and then I'm gonna eat a lot of food. It's <laughs> 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 so heavy. <laughs> World Cup Ponce. I'm definitely gonna win the Fortnite World Cup, so keep cheering for me. Hi, I'm Fortuddle and I'm here to compete in the Creative World Cup. I competed in most of the trials and I was really excited when they announced the bonus weeks after the original five were over and um, I competed in the JD with 100 level map and I had to speed run 100 levels as quickly as I could. I really enjoy like, all the different styles of maps and death runs that there are and I really enjoy speed running them and trying to get as good as time as I, could, as I can. The moment I found out that I qualified, it was just insane and I wasn't sure if I was going to before that and it was just crazy that I am here. I'm four title and the Sunshine Soldiers are going to win because we have two captains so we're twice as good. <laughs> what is going on? We are getting some good practice here for the Fortnite World Cup Creative Finals happening very, very soon. Uh, a lot of first thoughts, first looks at the uh, Sky Station Showdown, which is an incredible map. It was a great map. I mean, it mixes a huge new element into the game. You know, you got to protect the person with a sword, capture the objective, but my team, great team working, you know. We kind of pulled through right at the end there. It was awesome. A thousand percent, you know, so being able to you know, kind of get your hands on the map, um, you know, before obviously the big moment. Yeah, no, it's nice. It's, it's nice. huge. It's huge. And so, like you said a second ago, this is a brand new way of, of viewing Fortnite and playing Fortnite, which is incredible. Exactly. It's super exciting to see what people come up with and then also turning it into a competitive aspect and put it in the game and make this tournament. So It's amazing. So any, any general kind of thoughts, concerns maybe about, uh, about strategy? I don't know. Um, you know, I think we won, so we know the strategy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Listen, this is practice still. Uh, course, we, we've, we've got the big moment uh, coming up very soon, but uh, do you want to shout out your team real quick? Yeah, no, we've got um, some speedrunners in our midst, actually. We've got Tyler, we've got Zand, and Suzu. Um, they are all speedrunners of death runs. And as you know, later in the Creative Cup, there's going to be a death run involved level, so we're going to take that one home, too. Inspired by the creative man, Scissors himself has made many a streamer, many a content creator very angry with a death run, myself included. Uh, great job, great job with the practice round. We'll see you very soon. I'm excited. Love it. <laughs> Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Fortnite World Cup Finals. We are here in day number one where the creative finals are going down. The stadium is jam-packed with fans from around the world who have traveled here not only to watch us crown World Cup Creative Finals champions, but also solo and duo champions as well. I'm Zeke, this guy right here is Bala, and we're getting ready to hop back into all of the action. 
Now, uh, I, I think, you know, we've seen a little bit of the first two game modes. You know, we got to yep. see a little bit of the Sky Station showdown. We got to see uh, a little bit of that Junkyard Juke. But there's actually something that Sundown teased, and that is the World Run. Yep. The World Run coming up next. It is an awesome, you know, it's it's something that I think a lot of these players are used to. Yeah. And I think they'll be very, very comfortable here. We'll have to see whether the challenge of the obstacle course will be, you know, anything that these guys can balk at or if they're going to be able to just cruise through it. We'll see. It's going to be fun, though. Well, it's going to be really interesting, right? A lot of these players are very familiar with death runs, and it's very, like, mechanical, right? Yep. If, you, if you know how to execute, you can get through these, these obstacles, but you have to kind of get your eyes on them first, figure out how they work, and then make it through. So uh, I think it's going to be very interesting, very fun for everyone here and uh, all the players as well. I'm, I'm hoping to see someone make it to the end. I don't know that anyone will, though. We'll, well see. 30 coins, and from what we've seen in practice between us and other people, it's very difficult. So we'll see. We'll, we'll hop into the overview and stuff like that later. But just to give like some examples of the things that there are, there's you know the, the, the trap trying to trigger them, making sure you move impulse grenades are in, in play in this. There's some lava, all sorts of treacherous things you have to get across in this world. Run. A lot of Neo jumps as well. And again, massive shout out to the 17 content creators that helped put these maps together. Mad props to you. You know, their hard work is being shown here on the stage. And these guys are at home, uh, here, of course, playing it as well. Uh, in case, you know, you guys forgot, I'm Zeke. This guy right here is Bala. We're getting ready to jump into these next few matches. We'll get you guys up to speed with all the format and all those things. Um, you kind of tease it, but we'll get there in just a moment. And very quickly, the Chicken Champions were actually the winners for set number two, Junkyard Juke. Uh, let's take a look at them right now. They were overall victorious of that last set, and there you go. The Tender Defender is there in person to congratulate them, Bala. Rubius and his team, uh, they worked hard for it, and they are the victors. Yeah, they're warming up for the next run, but they know now they earned the Silver Llama for that set, so it's 1-1. Woo! Chicken Champions earning their Silver Llama right now. They're surprised because they were getting ready, but here it is. <laughs> Ruby's is like, wait, do is I actually mine? get that? Is that actually mine? <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. So, you know, they are the current set winners. They have a Silver Llama for themselves. So that's uh, now two different teams that have a Silver Llama. With only a few set matches left to go, I believe, you know, if, if the Chicken Champions can secure themselves a second Llama, that would be huge for them and their team, but we'll have to see how things go for them. And the timing of the Silver Llama couldn't come earlier because they're about to hop in. This is definitely a, you know, a, a booster for them in terms of their emotions, in terms yeah. of their confidence going into the world run, because it is precise, it is difficult. You have to make sure that you hit it, otherwise you're wasting time. It's gonna be a race between these guys to get as far in as possible, so that confidence boost is gonna help dramatically in this last normal set here. Yeah, for sure, and it is actually a race, the world run. It is similar to a death run with a bunch of obstacles. Let's go ahead and talk about that and everything that surrounds it. So there's actually 30 coins in the map. Whichever team gets all 30, the fastest or as many as possible until time runs out will be the victor for that round set. Um, you know, like I said, these are uh, insanely difficult obstacles. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be forthcoming. I'm going to be vulnerable with you, the Fortnite fam. Listen, uh -oh. the farthest points? I got was 14. That's not bad. Okay. It, it's actually really difficult, and I'm by no means yeah. a death runner. By These no guys means. are the best of the best. Best. These guys are going to fly. There's a death through. runner in terms of this map specifically. It's going to be absolutely awesome. We're going to go ahead and take a look at some of those obstacles right now. So go ahead. We're going around the world in this new creative team, Death Run. In this challenging new creative game, eight teams of four, led by some of your favorite content creators from around the world, will compete to collect all the coins in their lane faster than everyone else. The first team to collect all coins in their lane wins. If they don't finish, the number of coins they collect will determine their placement. If a player is eliminated, they'll respawn at their most recent checkpoint. Any team member can grab a coin for their team, so players will have to work strategically to gather all of the coins before the 10-minute timer runs out. It might sound simple, but it ain't easy. Players have no mats and limited items they can pick up along the way. Each team will have to use teamwork, communication, smarts, and speed to make it to the top of the leaderboard and take home their piece of the $3 million creative prize pool. Ready, set, run.
Zeke, I do not know how you just did that while you were here. That did not sound like you here at all, and I didn't see your mouth move. I'm magic. <laughs> That's just how it goes. That's just how it goes. Uh, but yeah, World Run, you got a little bit of sneak peek there. We're getting ready to hop into these games right now. Speaking of which, let's just go ahead and do that. I think this is going to be very, very fun. We are getting ready. If you guys here in the stadium are ready and excited, let these teams hear it. Let's hear you right now. Man, that's so weak. No, no, no. Okay, let's pretend the first one never happened. Like I was saying, if you guys want to let these teams know how you're feeling, let them hear it. Yeah, that's what I like to see. And now the game begins. Here we go, the world premiere of the world run. See how they do out of the gates. They are open now and it's all up to these guys to start hitting their first jumps and people are falling left and right. A couple of first coins are taken and everybody seems to be off to a hot start. This is really like off to the races here. Man, Four Turtle and Zand are already flying through these first set of challenges. Again, you know, these are the very, very top of the, the best of the best of the creative world, right? They, they've worked all eight qualifier weeks long. They've made it through with their team captains and now they're here. So once they figure out these uh, obstacles, be prepared to watch them fly through them. And the first couple are relatively simple. Here's the double doors, I think, are probably the, the first like one that you have to kind of know or see it in advance. And then here, the impulse jump into the tire, into the castle, and three players have already made it all the way there. It's neck and neck between most teams right now, 10 to 8. Bro. I'm so mad. Do you understand? I literally had to play this to completion, all 12 minute rounds, four times to make it halfway, which this is the castle. And these guys got it in like three minutes. I'm upset. Oh, this is why they're the World Cup creative players and you are not. You're here casting. <laughs> That's cool. I'll, I'll hold that L, I suppose. <laughs> I'll hold that for sure. So these are there's there's a few challenges here in the castle here, Bala. But as you saw there, Karora actually took a little peek at it. There's these little bumpers, and that'll actually send you upward into the next basically tier. So the most optimal strategy here is actually to leave two two of your teammates behind, send two up to try and gather more coins faster. Because otherwise, you're just going to dedicate too much time, and you, you really want to maximize uh, your time in this world run. And there's definitely a couple coins that you def want to get as fast as possible through here. They're trying to get the half slides through with the chiller traps. Right now, nobody seems to have figured it out just yet, at least in the view that we're watching. But meanwhile, the Fish Fam and the Sunshine Soldiers are up to 13 now, but still neck and neck. I believe all teams are now inside of the castle, and we call this basically the first kind of tier of the difficulty for these obstacles. As they move up and go past this, they will become progressively harder. Yeah. And, and again, this is the first time these creative players, qualifiers, have seen the world run. They've never seen it before. They have just, you know, they are mad. There Their is. skills are insane. And look at this, Taldex already up on the next tier. So he's probably telling his teammates, all right, look, up here, I just used this bumper. What do I have to do? So he's already trying to figure it out. I like it, because that's not me. The moment I hit that pad, I was like, I guess I just keep moving forward and I, I keep running. This. I love this experimentation. He's actually also communicating back to his teammate at the same time, because he went over that bumper and he's looking. Do I have an opportunity to go back here? Or is this it? Do I have to go forward? Yep. Just like you were alluding to before. And now he decides, OK, he tells what, exactly what's going on to his teammates, Ninja, Kaz, and company. And they move forward. Alex JJ, though, is off to. Really, the races, he's, he's way ahead of everybody else, I think. But no, there's a Raven's Revenge. No, it's Svenos, it's his teammate. They're oh, moving. Yeah. They are moving. So what's, what's tricky about that last jump there is you, those, those little uh, directional pads will give you forward momentum. But in jumping, you lose some of it. So you actually have to make it in a straight run. There, you have to trigger the trap, get the impulse to make that precise jump, land on the other side, trigger the trap in one fail swoop, while also taking a step back to keep yourself safe. Now, there is a little few... Uh, secret ways to kind of trigger certain traps or get around certain obstacles. We'll have to see if these players discover them. But like you said, man, Svenos is oh my goodness. destroying Svenos. the game right now. Svenos! Just unbelievable. And this isn't even a team that qualified from a death run or elimination run or even a speed run. They qualified from a survival map. And he's doing things like this. He is leading the pack. There's a fish fam up ahead of him, though. Yep. They're not hitting this just yet. This is so precise. You have to change the altitude. Is he going to hit it? No. Second try. Here's Suzo. Here 
we go. First jump. Now this is the impulse you want to sit you a little bit forward. Now this is one where you want to get height. You got to throw it, try to get on top of it. No! Just barely Suzo. And he's at 21 points right now in third in terms of coins. And it's all up to timing, I think. Zeke, we might see this end in the first match here. In the first round, they might end up completing everything because they still got five minutes to go. Well, we'll see, Bala, because here's the thing. That, that obstacle there is called the ice jump. But this next one that Four Turtle has had, uh, we call this the double danger. Let's just look at this real fast. Uh, this he is really tricky. It. He already knows. He, re he, he's already downloaded. He already knows what must be done. So you actually have to double hop, double bunny hop, land on the edge, take a step back, trigger the trap without being eliminated, right? Then you can walk up this small ramp. Then, depending on how you want to go about it, you can just go forward. Yes. He actually makes... Okay, I'm a Third fan. try. I'm leaving. I'm done. Four turtle. Incredible. And he gets the coin in one swoop. Oh, my. But one thing, we have to look at the scores right now. Five minutes to go. Fish Fam is at 26. They only have four coins remaining. But everybody else is starting to like fall behind. We're starting to see the Fish Fam come way out above here of the rest of them. That's because they probably have the majority of their players through. The majority of the players are collecting those coins. There's Four Turtle. He makes it suit through the double danger. Collects the coin. Now, what do you do from here? They get up. Man, this guy is absolutely insane. It is. And you know, for four, tur uh, four turtle, it's funny because he's just excited about being here, able to compete on the stage in front of like thousands of people and all of his peers. And bro, he is just slaying it right now. Oh, you gotta be careful. Okay, all right. Yep. Everything's fine. Now you gotta make the jump. You got the one hop. You gotta be careful. <gasps> that is. Gotcha. That Get is trap, baby. That is the first time I've seen that. I've seen the theory. I mean, I've heard it. Theorized, but I haven't seen that yet. But Fish Fam, I was wondering, it's Scissors and Company. 26 points. They're not at the same point that the Sunshine Soldiers are at, but they're at 26 total. The entire team. They have clearly synergized with Scissors here, but looks to be that even the Ravens' Revenge are stuck at 26, so this might be a difficult one to get past. Yeah, this this one, so the tricky bit about this one is there's actually no checkpoint in between here and where you need to get to. That's what makes the double danger that double dangerousness. 26 points Ooh. across, and there's only about three minutes left, so these guys really have to focus up, try to get through. Now, the key thing going forward is, again, this is a, a test of speed, right? So a lot of these players are seeing the traps, they're making it through, memorizing kind of what they have to be doing to make it through these obstacles. Zan's already through. And that means when they get to come through next time, it's going to be that much faster, right? They're going to be just tearing through all of these obstacles like they're nothing. Hand of Blood, Lachlan, here we go. Two Does Lachlan make it? Oh, Hey, this is, this is important, too, because they still have coins to earn on their own. Right. They're, they're, you know, they're all the way in the back. They're not earning the coins. They're not helping their team out in front trying to figure out the obstacles, but two captains back there. <gasps> Ooh. Okay. All right, trigger the other one. Yes. All right, land on it. Trigger that one. Dude. Is he going to get it? Nice dodge. Ooh. This is insane right now, and there's the second player to make it through for Turtle into the door. No! Nope. nope, and look, you have to you drop back down. So that's the challenging part. We call this thread the needle, right? You have to make it in one go. This is extremely difficult, and this is where a lot of these players are going to get caught up. But Turtle is a legend. Just look at how methodical he is. He's insane. Look at these wow. the precision jumps, man. He's not going to miss this ever oh. again because he already knows that trap, unfortunately, was timed at the wrong time for Clytax, but he's up above. Let's see what he can do here, going to try and attempt this again. Trap above. When he lands on that, he has to jump at the right moment, then slow himself down for Turtle from up above. Still back. Nobody has passed this point just yet. All right, first trap, second trap. Hop across, take a step back. Nice. Jump across, take another step back. Oh, okay. He was trying to be a little greedy there. I respect it. You know, you want sometimes just want to land on that without having to kind of hop back out and kind of just risking that. So it's good that, you know, well, it's not good. It's bad that he messed it up, but it's okay. This is Turtle. He's an MVP. We're watching him. This is crazy that it comes down to this. There's a minute and 30 seconds about to figure this out. He got up here before, and he didn't make it through the door. He's not going to make it again, unfortunately. Everybody is hard stuck at 27 coins with one minute left. I believe whoever is going to be the first to make it through here might find themselves the first winners on the world run. One minute left. 
got to be thinking, are they saying Raven's Revenge? Wait, they just got the 28th coin. They might be through Thread the Needle. Next up would be, I believe, uh, Bump Jumps. We did get through. We saw the end results up there. Made it through the door. Okay. Yeah. Ooh, nice catching yourself. All right, you got to do the trail. That okay. boost pad on the side. <laughs> it's just disappointment and frustration in his face. Ooh. If he wants to secure this, he needs to try to get one more coin in the next 30 seconds because I think <gasps> Four Turtle is going to be able to catch up. Here's the All jump. Right. This is the first time we're going to see this. 25 oh. seconds. Okay. So this is where you risk it all, man. This is it, the leap of faith. Watch these precision jumps. We've got 18 seconds oh. left on. So these are these Neo jumps, right? You jump out and around, keeping that momentum. 10 seconds left here. One coin remaining for the Re Raven's Revenge oh. to find. He just got to get around that corner. I don't know if he's going to be able to climb these staircases just now. No, he's given up. He says no. Everybody else is left in the dust. Raven's Revenge take the first world run with 29 coins. Not quite finishing the map, but I believe next time they might. Man, these legendary birds of the sky. They made it all the way up there, man. They were on the leap of faith, that last little section there. They had 29 coins, and if they had made it up, especially if they made even just two people up there, they could have been kind of starting a rotation, right? You jump first, see how far you can make, I will follow. Um, but the big key for them is now they know what every single relay is, right? So going into this next round, they can say, we know what we have to do. Don't forget, make this position, jump up here, do these little things to try and get through. And that could pr prove to be a very good advantage for them. Yeah, and they don't have the Silver Llama yet. They don't have a anything in terms of Llama, so this is important. Any of those teams that don't have a Llama right now, they need to earn it if they want to be in contention towards those Golden Games. Of course, every match matters, Zeke. They are earning prizes every single match. And that's got to feel good, right, to have a, a stellar game here to get some of that prize pool, pool for yourself and your team. That's huge, right? Like, like, so much respect to these. Also, Turtle, what the heck? Yeah. What is this kid on? Yeah. I, <laughs> ridiculous. He was one of the first to, to, to achieve every single obstacle every single time. Finally, he got stuck on that one at the end. I don't know what you were calling it. It was a nice twist of the tongue, but Which just one? amazing there uh, from Ford Turtle to be the first every single time and then getting overtaken at the end. But, you know, next time, he knows it now. He's probably going to be the fastest to get ahead of everybody. Because yeah. no, he knows it all now, and you saw how mechanically good he was once he figured out the obstacle. So I think all signs are pointing towards another Ford Turtle performance like that. I mean, like you said, he's downloaded it all, right? He's got it up here, and now just put it down on paper. I mean, again, though, Raven's Revenge have got a little bit of that, uh, that advantage, right? They've seen the other plays. I think the big thing, though, is trying to get more of your teammates through to the challenges, right? Like, it's, it's very difficult to try and get all four, you know, in one fail swoop. Yep. Raven pun. But if you can make it even just that second person, like the moment you start to miss a jump, you're like, all right, I'm going to be eliminated. Just go forward. And maybe that person sees where you went wrong. And is like, okay, I can make the jump. And then they go forward, right? And then you're just kind of constantly yep. frogging through, getting more coins and getting where you need to be. Yeah. And there was also an aspect of covering for others as they made yep. it through, especially as that castle point happened. We saw Lachlan and Hand of Blood, the two team, team captains. Uh, all the way back in the back, but their teams are still up there because they were covering for them. They were getting those coins. But next time, they definitely need to be trying to make the effort to get all the way through and collect those coins as time progresses. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, I think what, what would be only fitting is to hear from one of these teams. Specifically, I want to hone in on the Cuddle Crew. We've got none other than Monsters standing by with them to hear their thoughts. What happened here? Okay, yeah. All right, so here you have it, Lachlan. I know I've heard from the Grapevine, these guys and yourself actually qualified for the creative finals through a death run. And boy, oh boy, I just got to know what happened here. How did this translate? This is a death run. What happened, Lachlan? Look, uh, the qualifying map was a bit of a puzzle death run. So, you know, they had time to work with it. It was our first attempt running through. So it was a bit rough. I don't know if you guys caught me sitting on like an impulse level for like 10 minutes, but that was fun. Uh, so we're not going to do that this time. Uh, Clytax over here, he's our designated uh, carry. So hopefully, you can carry us harder in the next round, and uh, yeah. <laughs> I hear that, I hear that. So now I gotta come this way. Lachlan is dependent on you guys. What what, what was going on? Was was the death run, uh, did it catch you by surprise, or was it just certain tricky moments that kind of choked you up and, and had you hung up there? There was a bit, of, a bit of confused in their castle because they didn't know where to go. And then the impulse jumped to the, to the, um, to the, yeah, at the beginning, it just messed me up a bit. 
and at the end, we, I didn't know where to go. It's <laughs> just a bit of confusing. And I have one more question here. So you guys have not seen the DEF run prior to this. Do you think that kind of held you back? And if you have another run at it, which you will, do you guys think that that second time around, you'll kind of have the strategies now packed? And I'm going to come down here with this. Yeah, I think that the first time around is always the hardest because, you know, you're kind of going into this environment. You don't know where to go. And, but the second time around, I think we'll, we'll be a little bit stronger and hopefully we get better time. Absolutely, I bet it. So once again, this is the creative finals here. You guys, like I said, Lachlan pulled through with the puzzle deference, but just showing the difference here. So we're going to set it back up to you guys at the desk. And again, thank you. You know, uh, Lachlan, you are good at many things, but apparently you're showing the world you're not the great at impulses. But it's okay, you're going to have another shot and showing them that the original thought we had is wrong, because I know you can do this. I know you can. We had a chance to talk earlier, and you are like, bro, I'm the best. And I was like, I know that. Show everyone that. <laughs> you just got to show them, Bala. You know what else we're going to show them? We're going to show them the standings after that first game in this set right now. Who ended up where in terms of the prizing and where they are on their journey to the Llama at the end of the set. So it's Raven's Revenge, obviously, in first. They earned themselves $55,000 and that much closer to the Silver Llama. That's right, but don't forget, Funky Fighters and the Chicken Champions both have those Silver Llamas. That is going to be a massive uh, determining factor going forward. You know, if you're Raven's Revenge, you are absolutely looking to try and snag that Silver Llama if possible, because that's that's going to put you in contention, right? Then you have to set your eyes on the Gold Llama for the tiebreakers. But all in all, to be able to kind of come through and, and win that prize money for you and your team is massive. They have confidence, right? And again, I think the only other team that stands right in their way right now is for Turtle. This guy is a maniac. He's showing us that he is. Let's see if that happens here in game number two. The Sunshine Soldiers fell short, but for Turtle showed us all what he was made for. And I think we're getting ready to go into the match. As all the players are loading up right now, there's the Fish Fam. Scissors and company, they're all about to start. The gates are about to open. Guys, let's hear it for them. Ah, there you guys are. You're paying attention. I respect it. Here we go. Ten minutes. Countdown has begun. The gates are open. And now here we go. Fusey is first out of the gate, immediately just flying. You can see this is completely different than before, right? Before, people were kind of taking their time. Hey, what's this? I can't see where this ledge, what's going here? Let's sit here and inspect everything. That's not the case now. Everyone is just flying through these obstacles. Yeah, a couple of these guys have not gone down yet. Here's Magma making his way through with the Ravens Revenge. This was the team that came out on top and was the player that led them all the way up to those treacherous sta stairway that we saw at the end there, almost getting up, almost getting up around the corners. And here it looks like we are almost to the castle before Turtle. And this is the player we were talking about so much, Zeke. That's right, man. A legend in every way of the word. Stewart almost making the jump for the Sunshine Soldiers as well. Unfortunately not. So this is uh, this trap, this this obstacle, very precise jump. You actually have to impulse a very specific way at a specific angle, at a specific distance away from you to make it all in one jump. You can also, I hope they're not listening, but you can turn around and actually impulse backwards, right? So you impulse, you face away from the tires and impulse yourself backwards while jumping. Again, even doing that though, very precise. You know, you have to make sure you're doing this in one go. Look, Hayozi's already here. He's already trying to collect the coins. Already towards the half pipes in the castle. Wonder if he already triggered all the traps down below and grabbed that coin or if he's leaving that for another teammate. Gonna grab that coin perfectly. Nice job by Hayuzi. Now he's moving up even further. No, he's going to go back to get those traps. Oop. Oop. He made it. There you go, Suzu. Nice. All right, trigger the trap. Take a step back. Impulse forward. He's already Too through the shallow. castle. He's I mean, look. the castle. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually surprised. So don't forget, the castle is open. So once you do make it to that halfway mark, you can just send someone forward, right? Like, even if you're the first one and you're really confident, you could say, hey, Bala, I know you made it first. Just go. Go up to the next round. I'm going to stay behind. I'm going to pick up the coins, right? So. Quite a bit of teamwork going into this. But look along the way, man. <laughs> These jumps are crazy. Susan, what are you? <laughs> okay, what a legend. Yeah. What a legend. Showing everybody that he can hang. He's led uh. on the team of Scissors with Fish Fam. We saw them not too far in the prizing. 18 points right now. They're leading the way. But no, it's actually Fort Turtle again. Already towards these varying distance impulse jumps. And is he going to first shot it? No, not exactly. You know he's going to hit it on the next time. 
Yeah, absolutely. I, again, you know, it, this is kind of one of those things. The more that you, the more that you do this, the easier it is the next time around, right? Once it's like you throw it here, you're like, nope, that's not correct. This might be it. Okay, closer, closer. I like it. Will, will he make it on the third jump? Don't forget though, we got the funky fighters at 20 coins. We've got fish fam at 20 coins. Sunshine soldiers that need to try and pick it up. Uh, here we go. Nice, but get across. There it is. Nice. Perfect play from Four Turtle now towards the lava jump and what you were dubbing as double danger. So you get a first shot. Does dodge the traps. Oh, okay. This is from where he went last time, gets the coin. He's going to double try. back. First try. Oh my goodness. He went through those. I would have gotten scared there, but no, Four Turtle knows exactly what he's doing. Gonna get all the coins in first try on the double danger, but doesn't make it through, so he has to still complete it. And Suzu and Sand, meanwhile, from Fish Fam, are taking the lead. And that's what I kind of talked about, right? Trying to send two through. If you and your duo partner can make it through these jumps and get there, then you can start watching, right? Because, like, you as a player, you go to do it, you mess up and you're eliminated, and you're like, what happened? What exactly did I do? You kind of go back and then kind of relive that moment. Not here, right? This is the moment that they were all stuck on for so long. Suzu knows it now. He's not going to hit the first time. Zand also attempted it at the same time. Not going to work out just yet. Here, they're going to give themselves the opportunity. Suzu trying again. Triggers two. The third, yes. The jump. All right, yes. nice. Oh, and Zand. He was worried there that he might have pushed the door. him off. Not sure if you made it. I don't see him falling down. Yes, he did make the doorway, and now he's back towards this thing where he has to go under at the same time as triggering the trap. He does it. He's back to the stairs. The fish fam only need one more coin, and they're about to do it in five minutes. It is so fast here. The last time we got here, it was one minute and 30 seconds. So one more coin oh. for him to complete the map. He makes it farther than any player has yet so far. Where is the next pad? He actually found it first try. I don't believe it. No, that was not where you got to go. You had to go back inward. It's OK, though. He's going to get another shot. Man, that, that was very impressive. Honestly, I would have been like, where am I supposed to go? But that's why this is called the leap of faith. You've got to jump around that corner and hope that something will be there to catch you. Faith he has. And with four minutes and 50 seconds to go, not a single person, not a single soul oh. in vision. He's going to have plenty of time to work with. We'll see if the Ravens' revenge can repeat and get back to where they were. But it looks like Sand is also going to join as well. But no, he falls just before. Yes, Tyler too. So the Fish Fam is coming through in big numbers at this last leap of faith. And you know what could be huge here for Fish Fam? If they can make it through the Leap of Faith and they can actually get this coin, they're going to stop the timer, right? So uh, less time that everyone else kind of has around to, to observe what's going on and try to get this practice in, the better. Here we go. Nice. All right, you got to jump in and out and around. Out and around. Yes, use the wall. Okay. All right. Yeah, look around. Uh-huh. Yes. All right. Okay. All right, here we go. Wait. Last jump. Ooh. And he needs to hit the coin. Go, this go, go, is going to be go. it. No, no he didn't touch it. <laughs> Just barely missed there. Finally hits the bouncer and he's gone. There it, there is. it is. The first players to complete the world run in five minutes and 52 seconds. An unbelievable time compared to what we saw last time. But still, the remaining teams have to battle it out. Back to the Ravens revenge. They're still on the double danger. And they are going to get through. He has to hit the door, though. With the Oh, he almost fell all the way back down. Here we go. Not finding the speed, not finding the bounce there. Threading the needle. No. Oh. You hate to see it. Now, don't forget, remember Ravens Revenge was the first team from last round. They made it here, and they're already kind of right back where they need to be. You've got the Sunshine Soldiers also going for the Leap of Faith. But look at their how many coins they have, right? In theory, they should be at 29. This should be the last coin that they need to pick up. Huh? But someone hasn't picked up coins. Now, where? I'm not sure. But that's gonna, that could make or break their performance right here. That absolutely could. We know Sunshine Soldiers had a great performance last game. Fort Turtle has completed the map. If you see him up there, he's just watching on down. But the Ravens' revenge seem to have completed just a little bit more. Everybody now, I think, going to be trying to attempt these last couple of jumps. And they must try to complete the match. But important to note is the Ravens' Revenge in second place right now. They need one more coin as well. That 
puts them in a huge advantage for yep. that Silver Llama when we go into the third game. Oh. What just what? happened there with Stewart? He just climbed to the top with the tires. That's right, the secret tires. See, these are little things you discover as you're... Oh, it's okay, Stewart. Don't worry. Take a deep breath. Line it back up. You've got this. Two minutes left on the clock, Bala. Taga all the way in the back. He's catching up with his team. He's going to hit that. Can he hit the last one? He lost a little bit of speed, but he does. So he's joining up. Maybe he can collect any coin that he missed. No, it's actually going to be Arthur up here. He's got to finish the Leap of Faith as well. So a number of teams here. Man, you got to think, if you're everyone else, you've already seen the Fish Fam stop that timer at 5.52, right? Just under six minutes. So you're thinking, we have to go. We have to be hitting these jumps, and that's just applying more pressure, right? Especially with a crowd here roaring as well. You know, there's all this pressure on the line. Nice jumps here. All right, keep looking around. Yeah, you see it right there. Bounce off the wall, out and around. Oh! So difficult. So challenging. He's learning the reasons why right now. He's going to continue to get more attempts. Meanwhile, the Funky Fighters have gotten their last coin up to the final one. Kuto being the player who gets there. He's on the leap of faith as well. So it's just head to head against these two. And this is it. very important for Funky Fighters. They need to stop Raven's Revenge. If anything else, getting second obviously important, but also because it's head to head against Raven's Revenge, this is such a meaningful final jump. And I mean, don't forget, they were the, the winners of that first round. So they already have points built up from that. If they could secure this, this last coin, that could be massive heading into the standings. But again, we've just got about 50 seconds left here. There's, you can just tell they're just trying to hit these jumps with everything they can. Okay, Kuto, right, yeah. a little bit further than we saw him last time. He's okay, got to right. make the lip. Yeah, this is the one you have to go oh, out yes. and right, right? Uh, there okay, you go. Okay, now the bounce off the wall. So okay. looking exactly, seeing if there's any more opportunities. He makes it. Okay, this could be clutch. Bounce. This could be clutch here from Kuto. Just gets to the top here, and then he needs the bounce pad. Yes, perfect. Plus the coin now. He gets it! There it is! Nine minutes and 23 seconds ahead of the Ravens' Revenge. Still time on the clock, though, for the Ravens' Revenge to collect that last one. And what's impressive, too, is that two players have actually completed for it. The players up above, but now the rest of them, one second remaining. It's still going to be the Fish Fam. Five minutes and 52 seconds who take that one. That second map of the world run is down and done. Man, mad props to the Fish fan. They did it in almost under five minutes, right? They came out at that 525 mark, five and a half minutes. Now, Funky were right behind them, a little longer, right, at that 923 mark, but still, they got all 30 coins. If we have to go to tiebreakers, they, these two teams have one more coin than everyone else up at that 29 mark, so that could make, very well make a big difference heading into tiebreakers. But again, Fish fan, way to show up. I respect it. It's crazy. The, the the improvement from game one into game two. Yeah. It's just awesome. Raven's Revenge obviously in the first match coming out ahead, but Fish Fam clearly improving all across the board. And it wasn't just one person. It felt like it was the entire team because that time was unbelievable. That's going to be hard to beat. Yeah, we'll have to see who else can do it. Again, you know, Raven's Revenge had a fantastic showing. Funky Fighters showed up there at the last moment. And then, obviously, the Fish Fan. But don't forget, you still got players like Four Turtle over on Sunshine Soldiers. Everyone, all of these teams have someone that's going to get them very, very far, right? We've seen that. But now the question is, heading into this next match, what does that mean? Fish Fam have already completed it. Funky have already completed it. Raven have gotten close. Does that mean they're gonna? we're going to see another five-minute timer? Could we see it even faster? Good question. And what I, I they Ravens Revenge needs to figure out how to end the match because if yep. they don't, then they won't be able to get ahead. They won't be able to close out, especially as other teams go ahead. Fish Fam knows how to complete it. They've proven that they can complete it, and Funky Fighters as well. Yeah, for sure. Well, for now, let's send it over to the stage where Pookie is standing by with the Fish Fam and uh, Pooks. Real quick, ask them what their favorite uh, fish stick is. You know, we can't always make it all about you, but I am down here with the Fish Fam. It is, dare I say, official. They're the first team to take a victory in the death run. I'm going to start here with Suzu. So you were the one that essentially clutched that victory for your team. How did that feel? It felt great. Like, at first, I choked the bouncer, and I thought I choked the level as well. But then I figured it out, and I picked up the coin. I was like, wait, this is it? 
Let's go, baby. <laughs> it definitely looked like you were in a little bit of a precarious situation there for just a second. Was your team coaching and helping you that whole time? Yeah, they kept track of the coins that we picked up. They kept motivating me, like, you got this, this is easy, we got this, we got it in the pocket and, and stuff. So yeah, that felt great. Awesome. Now, I'm going to come over to you, Scissors. We all know you are the veteran of death runs. You have been doing this from the very beginning. It must be an absolute honor to be here on the stage today competing, being able to help these guys out, pulling through to a victory. Are you going to continue the strategy going into the next game? We've got the strategy on lock, and obviously it's awesome, you know, helping these guys, but they're helping me win. They're the real speed runners. <laughs> well, I mean, it is a team effort at the end of the day. All of you have picked up coins. Sand, I'm just going to go over here and talk to you really quickly. Now, I mean, this Creative Cup, what does this mean to you as, you know, a creative champion? I mean, I'm not a champion yet, but maybe, maybe, yeah. Maybe one day. Well, thank you guys so much for staying here, hanging out with me. Best of luck in the next run. Zeke, back to you guys. Look at that, the Fish fam ready to go back in. They're already getting their heads back in the game. Also, great pun, Pookie. Also, I'm upset with you that you think this is all about me. What is wrong with you? All right, though, anyway, what kind of takeaways do you think these players can make heading into the next game? Well, I, what, the takeaway that I take out from that is that they were all supportive. The interview, they said they were supporting each other, keeping track of the coins, yeah. and pushing their Suzu ahead, making sure that they're encouraging him. But for, for everybody else, I think the takeaway is how do we beat that leap of faith? Yeah. That's, that's the one that everybody's gotten stuck on. They've, they've wasted a little bit of time at the, the double danger, but the leap of faith is really where everybody needs to close out, especially the Ravens' revenge if they want to get that silver line. Well, we'll have to see how things unfold for them. Very quickly, though, let's take a little break here. Let's send it down to Cam for his inside. Sundown, what you got? Zeke and Bala, and we're going to take a look at some of the kind of strategy that goes into it. But first, all of these competitors who are here, who are competing in this world run, have had an opportunity to get there. It's been incredibly stressful. There's a certain amount of kind of mental edge you need to get through it. So let's kind of take a look in and how these competitors prepare for what was a world premiere and first appearance ever. Let's take a listen in and how these guys are talking and getting ready for the match. is absolutely amazing there. You can tell Ninja and then the trendsetter right there throwing the peelies in the air, but also a big shout out to whoever that was on the Llama Record Co. I saw you there hitting the Llama Bell. I got you. But now let's get into some of what happened during the world run, some of the kind of cooler straightaways and, you know, some of the tough challenges that you face. So first, right away, here's a run coming out from Chappie of the Raven's Revenge. And this was one of the first obstacles you hit. So you can see he's on pace with everyone else. But what makes this so great is how efficiently he transfers this over into the castle jump. Is barely able to delay. This is one of the toughest first things to get when you reach it. This is his first time ever seeing this jump no problem hats off to you there and then what does he do right away gets into the trap trigger and he's able to get them notice how as soon as he goes he is quick flicking his camera back the other direction and gets all of those so consistently able to get it now we saw a smashing success on their first attempt unfortunately the uh, cuddle crew had a a little bit of a harder time when it came to that castle jump. It's okay, this could have been my replay and I wouldn't have been lying. So many of these, they're so incredibly difficult because you think, oh, I want to maximize my height up, but you have to get it out with the correct trajectory. Now you can see Ninja able to get through the speed part of the run and then over the top. This is towards the back half and look how well he's able to then trigger those traps and get through. But the Fish fam were the ones who were able to make that incredible run on the back of Suzu. Now this was from his first run when the Ravens Range were able to get it. And if you look at the timer, next time he faced this, he about finished the course. So an incredible job from him to make sure he is pushing the limit with what they're able to do. And you can also see the level of communications. He knew he messed up right away, and then he immediately communicates to his team. He's like, hey, you gotta run and then go up. Now you're in kind of that double trouble area trying to get the triggers. And this is where they got held up for a significant amount of time. A lot of the competitors not being able to bait the chaps correctly, and now 
now we're over with the Ravens Revenge, who were able to power through this. Again, this was from the match number one, and you can see how he's using quite literally every single space available to him, including the rock, including the jump off the side with the air strafe to then get up to that leap of faith, which is such an incredibly hard challenge and only having two teams full completed it after the two runs when all of these players are such strong death runners. You can see the fish fam. Look at the timer on the clock, five and a half minutes, and he's so quick going through it and he's precise. He lines it up, he takes a step, and he goes. My question is now, between Suzu and Zen, they were so incredibly good last game. Can they beat that time? Can they keep pressing the pace? And will they be able to do it better? Because when you get up here, you have to do everything right find the lineup, not miss a single one of your drops, and then get the final coin. Was able to then double back and grab it there off the launch pad for that 552 time in the number one spot in match number two. This is now the second time we've seen the world run, and we asked the question before, what happens in run number three? Can the Ravens Revenge get over that last obstacle of the leap of faith, or will everyone else start pressing up higher and higher and being able to challenge him? Match three is about to be underway. We're gonna throw it back inside to Zeke and Bala. Gentlemen, take it away. Thank you so much, Sundown, that insight. I mean, he's asking the tough questions. What happens in match number three of this set? You know, again, Fish Fam, you saw, I kind of touched on a little bit earlier, you want to have as many people up on that Leap of Faith as possible so they can just sit there and rotate around. But before we hop into this next match, Bala, I think we probably want to take a look at the standings. You want to see how yes. things are going for all of these players together. And of course, you want to take a look behind us. We've got Fish Fam up there in first place from that last match. Walk away with a nice chunk of change. Ravens Revenge there in second, Funky in third. Don't forget, Funky Fighters and the Chicken Champions both have Silver Llamas, and that's going to play a big factor later on. Everybody needs to make sure that Funky Fighters do not get that last Silver Llama, because then they are out of contention if they don't have a Silver Llama. Because Chicken Champions don't really mind, because they have another uh, place to play. They are kind of out of contention for this Silver Llama right here, but still, so many different teams have an opportunity here. The Ravens Revenge, the, the uh, Funky Fighters, Sunshine Soldiers with uh, the Four Turtle, yep. and then the Fish Fam as well, able to collect it. So we are going to get into the next game of the World Run, the last one of the set. Here we go. The timer is counting. We've got 10 seconds before the gates open, and they start the run. Scissors, you can see the focus in their eyes, a little bit there of Turtle, and here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, the world run commences right here, right now. The players are out the gate, here we go. The first run, Taco, Taldak, they're right out. Ninja falls, unfortunately, so does Kotu. Zan there looks like he's making over with Tyler, Magma, Kororo, they are just neck and neck. Again, you know, it just goes back to once they figure it out, they're just going full send. I want to see who gets out to the early lead here. Suzo, the champion of the last one with Fish Fam. He's a little bit behind, but again, he has the opportunity to catch up when he get, starts getting to those more difficult obstacles. Right now, it's not looking like anybody really taking a huge lead, a huge advantage, because we all saw how proficient they are in these early stages. Really, the first obstacle that stumps most people is this impulse jump. Right, here we go. Don't forget, this is that precision impulse jump. You can do it forward, you can look away. First jump, unfortunately too shallow there on both sides. And both from the Fish Fam will be going down there. I saw there on the left, there is actually a team that has made it across. You've got Raven's Revenge, who is in the castle. And I believe it was actually the Llama Record Company that are also at the castle right now. Fish Fam, the Cuddle Crew, Raven's Revenge, Sunshine, and the Punky Fighters. And now the Llama Record Company all have 11 coins. See, the castle run, how fast they can get through there as a team. Also very important, as most players are now getting through this first difficult impulse jump, looking for anybody rising up, looking for anybody completing this trap uh, obstacle course inside the castle. If they can collect those coins fast, the, the, the players who get fastest through the castle and really collect all those coins are, in my opinion, the people who are leading the pack. Yeah, I almost think, like, should you lead, should you just, like, as a, as a squad, grab, like, send one person to each thing and just, like, yep. very quickly grab all four, and then as a squad, go up, right, so that you have more chances going through every single uh, challenge. Obviously, it depends. 
on how many of you actually what? get to the castle. What a time there from Scissors through that one. Is he going to be able to finish out that impressive performance? He's got a couple of jumps still to go. One. No way. I will. Two. Three. <laughs> Scissors showing off why he's one of the best at these types of maps, but way ahead of him, his teammate Suzu leading the pack again. So this might be a better time here for Fish Fan. All right, man. Scissors. That was insane, dude. Again. Like, these guys are so good, right? Once they figured out, they can just do it. It's almost like muscle memory. You see Suzu here. Now, if Suzu's smart, he waits here for Scissors to get across. And then once Scissors gets across, he can start triggering the trap. He's going to opt to say, look, you know what? Let's just go. I'm trying to get the coins. We need to rack up as many and as quickly as possible. Because don't forget, last game, they got that five and a half minute time on lock. They still have another minute and a half going off of last game, right? If they can do it again, it's going to be huge. Waiting for the chiller on his feet to get off before he goes forward. Now he has full reign onto this one. If he one-shots this, he's putting himself in such an amazing time. He's kind of letting his team do the rest of the work. Oh, one shot here from Suzu. Is it possible? Getting through the door. No, just short. Yellow. But he did not go all the way back. Ooh. He's continuing the recovery on this run. Not quite enough. Man, Suzu putting everyone in his fishbowl, saying, don't worry, fam. I've got this. Gonna jump down, first trap. Second trap, hop across, take a step back. Nice. Oh, there's actually someone else there. Is Scissors there with him? This is huge, though, if Scissors is there. Because look, they can hop through together. Suzu can trigger this and then get Scissors there where he needs to go. And then there will be two members trying to get these traps. Unfortunately, too shallow. Making the same mistake there on that bouncer. The speed pad up into the bouncer. You see, he's trying to keep his back towards it so that he can make sure he hits the bouncer on the right point that he wants to. Kind of have it me memorized at that moment. But a lot of teams starting to catch up right now. So, you know, starting to lose the pace that they had in the first game. Oh, don't slide off, don't slide off. Unfortunately, he slid off. Now look, Sunshine Soldiers, they're already at the 28 point mark. So are Raven's Revenge, but Fish Fam right behind them. Everyone else is tied right around 25 coins. Oh, and look, they actually sent Flytax forward. He's trying to make it to the Leap of Faith. He, so he's left his teammates down behind, saying, look, just gather the coins. I'm going straight to Leap of Faith. That's the one coin we know we need. Magma up ahead as well for the Raven's Revenge. And the record of the map by Fish Fam has gone past. That was five minutes and some. And we're now down to five minutes left total. Magma making sure that he makes this jump. He doesn't want to waste time, I think. He might have the confidence here. Just got to bounce off the wall. No. Short. Not yet all the way through. If he can do this, he is clinching himself that Silver Llama. Stewart, OK. Yeah, these momentum jumps, very difficult. Or Neo jumps, as they are also called. You got to be really precise, really. I mean, you have to be very calculated with every single one. You got Chappie over here. You've got Stewart across the way as well. Look, you can see Suzu there too. I mean, there's so many people here that are already at the leap of faith. And look at the rest of the teams, right? Even the Funky Fighters, Little Whip, and Llama Record Company, they're at 26 points. They're closing in on that leap of faith. Sunshine Soldiers adding their name to the hat of people who are trying the leap of faith. Stuart, not quite making it through yet. Magma right now feeling a bit of frustration. He feels the pressure. He knows that he has to try to make this, try to get this last coin ahead of anybody else. Clytax has joined the fray as well from Cuddle Crew. So you can see too that Clytax is, uh, while Stewart is using his camera, while you jump forward, you whip your camera in the direction you want to start moving. Clytax is doing the opposite. He's actually just using the momentum from his movement abilities, just like his keys to get him where he needs to go, not even touching his camera at all. Two different ways to approach it. They're both about the same. It just depends on which one you're more comfortable with. Magma here, he's in a good spot. Brave Ricochet there. All right, just take it easy. Nice. nice. All right, good Almost. Lane. The tires? He's just going for it. Yes. He's just going for it. Could he be the first one? No, Sunshine Soldiers have actually already done it with a 623. And Raven's Revenge there with the 636. So Sunshine Soldiers sneakily got it, but still a great time from them. Don't forget the first round, they were the only ones at 29 coins. What a close race, though. 
All four teams who were up there on the leap of faith have now completed it. The Cuddle Crew still need one more coin to actually finish the entire thing. Glytax feeling a little bit of pressure. He needs to start supporting his teammates. And then the Llama Record Company sitting at 27 right now. I think this is one of the first times we've seen them towards this double jeopardy towards closer and closer edging their way at the leap of faith. The Cuddle Crew have completed, meanwhile, just past seven minutes. So the standings right now are shaking up with all of these teams being so close together. Can't wait to see where it is. Still, every single placement here matters. Chicken Champions, Funky Fighters, Little Whip Warriors, and the Llama Record Company all at 27. Who is going to come out on top in this four-way race? And, and don't forget, this really does make a difference, right? They're all competing for prize money. So being able to come out ahead of another team, that's going to secure you more of that pot. So they have to be very careful, right? They have the two minutes left. But man, to see all these other teams, four of them already get that third coin. It, like, you know, we saw that first game, it was like, oh man, Raven's Revenge, the only one at 29 coins, everyone else is not even close. Second game, the story is Fish Ram and Funky Fighters. Now, we've got four teams that have gotten that 30th coin. Insane, especially how close it is. Like, even look at Raven's Revenge and Fish Fam, right? Just a few seconds difference. And all that could mean a huge amount when we look at the standings at the end of the match. But meanwhile, nobody yet up to that leap of faith. Oh, actually, Kuto. But we saw him finish the game last time for the Funky Fighters. See if he can do it again. He's got one minutes and 15 seconds to do it. Came in second just behind the Fish Fam. And their record-breaking friend. Can he do it now? All pressure on him. And I mean, you gotta, you gotta look, right? All, all of his other teammates are still being eliminated, right? They're trying to get up there because, again, just more shots you can take at the leap of faith, the better, right? The, the more chances you have of securing that 30th coin. So many teams are approaching this leap of faith now. And you can see in the background, there's at least three teams up here total. Could be also some players who have not yet finished the map from the other teams. As Chappie sits there, Chicken Champions making their approach. I'm wondering, Kororo. If you do this, if you do this last one, you are going to beat out the Funky Fighters. And that could mean huge placement in terms of the prizing at the end of this. 30 seconds to go. All right, wait, he's made it. OK, Ooh. look back down. OK, it's fine. Small jump. Got it. Last jump, and he's got the coin, too. There you go. So the Funky Fighters finish up ahead of the Chicken Champions. Karora, fortunately, is going to fall shy. But at 29 coins and five seconds remaining, I think that's going to be the end there for this. These are the standings as they are. The Chicken Champions come out there. And what an amazing run it was. Wow, six teams. Six teams secured themselves the 30th coin. Night and day situation coming out of that first world run. We got to win this. But look, smiles all around. Again, in case you're just tuning in, welcome to the Fortnite World Cup Creative Finals. These are the very best of the best from the creative side of Fortnite. And they're all joined here by their team captains and basing off for a prize pool. And these games have not disappointed the world run. Honestly, I take it all back. I thought <laughs> we weren't going to see a 30th coin. I'm a liar. I don't know what I'm talking about. Nope. They smashed it. These guys are the best of the best. Fish fam. Raven's Revenge, these guys showed up hard on this world run. Absolutely incredible performances, two-time finishers all the way through. And now we also have to be able to, to think about what these standings are going to look like at the end of the day, because it was close, right? Raven's Revenge, that first one, and then getting second, and then getting second again, could mean that they are in contention for that first place here in this set. Yeah, I mean, so Raven had plenty of 29s, right? They, they came in second, I think, just about every game except that last one. You got Fish Fam. They had the fastest time of 525. In that last game, we saw Sunshine Soldiers, though. They had a 623. So it depends where they place in those other matches, right? What does that mean for all these standings? Don't worry, we're tallying all, everything up. We're breaking it all down, and we'll have that for you as soon as we have are ready to do so. Uh, but man, the world run was dope. Uh, it was, that was super fun. Uh, it was like we were like uh, casting golf. Like, oh, takes a shot. <laughs> and he sinks it. Sinks it first. Absolutely crazy. The, the tension at the end when everybody realized that they needed to make that last jump it was just awesome to feel. The crowd was feeling it too when you made it towards that last one, when they finally made it through that last tire or making their bounce all the way through, just like flying through the sky for that last coin. 
felt good. It's got to feel good for these guys. Yeah, and I think, too, being able to just, like, key in on, on different players, right? It wasn't like it was four turtle. We saw in that first run was yes. dumpstering everybody Ooh. else. Then it was like next game, there was different people that were really showing up. Even that last game, right? Scissors, the straight back-to-back -back just crushed three or four obstacles in a row. It was insane. But for now, let's go ahead and send it over onto the deck with Pookie Face. She's standing by with the Sunshine Soldiers. So, Pooks, what you got? Hello, Zeke. I am down here with the Sunshine Soldiers. They're the most adorable team, in my opinion. They are coming from all corners of the globe. They've come here to compete today. Now, so far, you guys have, you know, there have been a couple of struggles, but the day isn't over. We still have the remixes coming up, so keep that in mind. Do you guys have a new strategy going into the remix? That's top secret. Had an information. Yeah. Information, that's it. And, and you, coming all the way from Spain. It's so lovely to have you here, Daniel. Um, what has it been like to... I'm actually from Mexico, not from Spain. From Mexico, sorry, from Mexico. What has it been like to be a captain of your team for the Creative Cup? Yo amo a estos chicos, en verdad creo que no puede tener mejor equipo. Estoy demasiado contenta de tenerlos conmigo y estoy súper feliz por la experiencia. I feel really, really uh, happy. I couldn't have a better team. And I'm super excited about this experience. That's incredible. We love having you here. Thank you so much. And I'm going to come over here and talk to you super quickly now. You're one of our youngest competitors. So being here, seeing all of your idols today, that has to be exciting. You know, when you told your family that you were coming here to compete at the Fortnite Creative World Cup, what did they say? Um, they were just super happy for me and they like was really excited and yeah. <laughs> do you, do you want to keep competing in these massive Fortnite events? Do you love this? Yeah, it's really good. <laughs> and finally, down here at the end. Now, again, all of this diversity is incredible. Now, you're here just essentially to compete at this event, but not only for that, but you're, you're representing your country. So how does that feel? Is that a lot of pressure? Yeah, there is a lot of pressure and it feels amazing, even though it's, uh, even though there's the pressure, it also feels great. Well, you guys are doing an incredible job. Best of luck to you in the remixes. Going to throw it right back over to the casters. Man, Pooks, you are not lying. They are adorable. They're all so happy to be here. You love to see it. Man, the Sunshine Soldiers again. Mad props to them for coming in with that 623 time in the last set of that match there. Again, though, six different teams, yeah. all with 30 coins. What does that mean for the standings? That means basically it's anybody's game, right? That just means anybody can take this because everybody really was pushing the pace. Everybody was making sure that they were in towards the top. It was basically shaken up from top to bottom, except maybe the top three, right? Yeah. Raven's Revenge, Funky Fighters, Fish Fam, all these guys completed their, their, their runs and, and placed highly in the other ones. So I think that they have a good opportunity here, but still, anybody's game, just like you said. Yeah, I mean, for sure, we, we have to look at things like Raven's Revenge, right? They they had fast, uh, they, they were 29th in their first game at 29 coins coming in first. Mm -hmm. They had a second place as well, and then they managed to get themselves to 636 time. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at some of these replays that we kind of watch over the course of these games. This one specifically is coming out of the Sunshine Soldiers. They did, in fact, win this last match here. But again, just look at Stewart. Look at the, the precision again. The leap of faith. You know, it, it's crazy because, like, in just looking at it, you're like, that doesn't seem so bad. Oh, it's so but difficult. It's, it's insanely difficult, the precision jumps you need to make. But to maneuver yourself through that, he actually made that in one hop. Everybody else was stopping before that. He went all Whoa, the way nice. to the tire yeah, good. and jumped they over. The reactions there in the background from that team. Absolutely incredible performance to come out on top in that one. Just perfect execution on that last one. Yeah, for sure. Especially with these, these precision jumps, these tight jumps like the one around the wall that you can't even see. You just have to know in your head, I know where I'm going to land when I come around this corner because it's not something you have eyes on. And once he's been able to do it, he's like, okay, I know the jump that I need to make every single time. But ladies and gentlemen, you guys got to get ready because we're coming down here to the wire. We are very close to knowing who are the set winners 
from the world run. Everyone gave it their all. Man, did they show up huge. I'm not disappointed. That was so much fun to watch, especially coming off of Sky Station to then Junkyard Juke to this. Just three almost completely different creative game types we got to see today. Yeah, we're putting them through the ringer. They have to do all sorts of things. They have to show off how versatile they are. And in the World Run, they showed it. All the teams who did compete and play in the World Run to qualify for here ended up showing off really well. Obviously, the Fish Fam with Scissors and company, they had yeah. probably one of the most difficult uh, elimination runs ever. Yeah. So clutch to be able to perform here. I think we have the standings. I think we have the winners of the set. It's going to be Fish Fam. Congratulations to the Fish Fam. Look at them. They just want to get back in. They're not even ready to celebrate. They are the winners there of the world run. And there he is. Fish Stick is walking out with a Silver Llama, ready to present his team this coveted. Look at this thing. It's so shiny. All right, I'm going to go down there and steal this, actually. I want this. I mean, anyway, uh, there you are. The Fish Fam are being presented with the Silver Llama. Look, they're like, yeah, baby, let's go. We got that. That's ours. Well, congratulations, guys. There's the Silver Llama for them. But all focus for them is on to the next matches because we've got a couple more to go, and it's not over yet. We've got your remixes coming up next. We've got your golden games. Now, first, long, oh, hold, on, hold on, ball. Let's take a look at the standings, I think, first. After that last set, look at this. Fish Fam come out on top, going out of tiebreakers. They are the ones that are victorious, and they walk away with the Silver Llama. But the Ravens Revenge Band, they were putting in a lot of work there, also getting themselves some prize money as well. Sunshine Soldiers there in third. And then the list goes on again. Keep an eye on those Silver Llamas. These are the guys that are in contention for that final prize pool. Now, if you're one of these teams with the Silver Llamas, you you need to secure the Gold Llama because that is going to come. That's going to be the ultimate tiebreaker. If yep. your team has that Gold Llama, you walk away with the win, especially because it's kind of divvied up, up, divvied up amongst other teams. Yeah, the Golden Llama being that ultimate tiebreaker. So the next team to claim it, the first team to claim it, as we see the Fish Fam with their Silver Llama, the first team, the only team to claim the Golden Llama is going to walk away as the champions here. Yeah, for sure. I mean, look, you kind of teased it a little bit. What are these remixes things that we're kind of talking about? You know, what, what does that mean for the games? Don't even worry. We got you guys covered. We're going to break it all down for you. So remixes. We're basically going to go back through and play a match of every single match type. Yep. But there's going to be something different about them. So starting with Sky Station Showdown, the remix for that is that all players can earn points, not just your sword bearer. That is going to be playing a big factor. We've also upped the uh, typical 1,000 points needed up to 3,000. Bala, we've also got Junkyard Juke. Do you want to talk about that one? Absolutely. In Junkyard Juke, we're going to be playing it again, but you can only use large props. So it might look a little bit silly, but what it means is that it's going to be all the more difficult to score. But at the same time, each large prop is worth 10, so we're not going to see those you know, small increments between each other so leads right. can get large or they can just stay very small because it's so difficult. Yeah, for sure. And finally, we're going to hit the world run one more time. But the remix is that players do not respawn. That's right. They're going to have one life. Brutal. <laughs> that I is so hard. We saw how many people struggled even, you know, to get past that first towards that first you know, a couple of obstacles, so difficult. If they have one life, it's going to be so difficult. But we are going to be hopping into the first game of the Golden Games. It's Sky Station Showdown with a remix that everybody can earn points. Here we go. Go ahead and count us in here. If you're hanging out at the stadium, we've got three, two, two one. one. And the remix of Sky Station Showdown is underway. 15 minutes counting down. So don't forget, we have a new total cap. That is 3,000. And the remix is that anyone for your team can accrue points. This also stacks, by the way. So if you and your squad are sitting on a point, you're getting three points per person per second. So what does that mean? Will that mean players try to try to push points and lock them down? What will that mean for that center point at seven minutes that opens up? We'll have to see as the game goes on, man. So we'll have to recall all the different strategies that these teams have because a lot of players took it very slow. The Fish Fam tried to contain the one point. 
Same thing with the Little Whip Warriors. Same thing with also the Cuddle Crew. But they also had the Llama Record Company all trying to buy and really push for that center point when it opened up. Right now, the initial control point fights are going down. Raven's Revenge has got one. Sunshine Soldiers have gotten one. And the Funky Fighters as well, but not before getting contested. Here's all the second wave. And the blood going in, gonna start swinging the sword. Can he chop them up? Danyan instead says, not today, friends. You have all been eliminated. He's gonna shut down one there as well. Ben's are gonna be shut down. And you've got the Llama Record Company like, hey, uh, what's going on up here? Nope, Danyan is prepared. She saw you coming. She heard the DJ scratches. Back to the island you go. And remember, it does accumulate no matter who is on the point, and also it stacks. So all four players are able to grab and stay inside the point. So you'll see at sometimes 12 points at a time going through for a team if all four members of their squad are on the point. That's right, Ninja racking up eliminations and will be picked up there, the team's VIP being eliminated. Uh, so this is going to drastically change the way you approach these things, right? For example, if you decide to go in and a, a, a assault another team, especially if you can get that that surprise angle and you eliminate all of them, you by yourself can actually lock down that point for any amount of time and start racking up points. So you can look to contest, you can look to leave a team behind, you can break up into groups. There's so many different things, so many different variables to keep in, in, in mind as we move through this. Already some an, an innovation here from the Llama Record Company and a couple of other teams. They're hiding their, a couple people inside of cones so that they will continue to contest. But I think in this mode, it might be more viable to just stay and all fight at the same time. Nobody hiding at all. And we'll see too. It kind of lends a little bit more credence to the strategy that people were employing in the first set of games when they pl first played the Sky Station Showdown. They would have somebody go off and clear, try to clear a point or at least take out their sword bearer. Yeah. But if they do that this time and they manage to clear out a point, they're now going to be accruing on both sides. Yeah, and that's going to make a massive difference, right? Like, let's take a look at Raven's Revenge. They are sitting on 564 points, double of Little Whip Warriors, but they're still racking up the points right now. Ninja going to go ahead and slap Chappie back to the island. Gotaga here wants a cut of the action. It's not enough, but look, Magma also jumps into the fray. Ninja needs to get out of there, or he's going to be eliminated. Use the walls. I like this, but you do not have the HP to try and make this work. A 25. He drops Magma down based on that little jump. And look at this, Magma's like, Ooh. no, 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 friend. You get him, Kaz comes in the oh. back. Oh. But at the same time, another player comes through and Ninja goes down. And Raven's Revenge are holding on on all the corners. I don't see them controlling e any one single point. Here's the Cuddle Crew now in second place. They're in a battle with the Funky Fighters. This oh. is important for everybody. The Fish Fam joining the fray as well. I think the Fish Fam might have overrun. There's cool. A fish are taking out the funky fighters at last, but no, Suzu gets taken out too. The Cuddle Crew is going to abandon the point and maybe come right back. Suzu finally does control. A brief moment, but not too long later. Tamoya says, Hello, I would like the red point, please. And now we've got the fish fam over here. Suzu is by himself. He's got a bunch of eliminations. Oh the ball of the Cuddle Crew is coming up. They're trying to wreck him. He picks off Sandy, but unfortunately, he does fall as well. That was terrifying. They all came over the ramp at the same time. If you're just joining us here, don't forget, we did increase the score limit up to 3,000. So if you're wondering, the Raven Revenge, they still got a ways to go, even though they are in the lead as it stands. I'm also keeping my eye out on the Llama Record Company. They're down at 300-ish points. They're going to claim 300 right now. And what they do, they always wait until the last moment, until that D point, the last point that opens up in the center, and they make a concerted push. I think that may be very, very strong because in the first couple of games, as the Fish Fam, or uh, as the Little Whip Warriors try to make a push here, they're going to get shut down. The first couple of games, they just controlled it. Every single person was on that D point at the same right. time. They built their entire base out at the perfect moment. They were waiting for the time to pounce on that last point. Still three, two minutes until that starts to spawn. Oh, he's gonna launch the Little Whip Warrior. He is, in fact, gonna shut down Taco. And look at this across the way. Magma gets picked off, and the Little Whip Warriors are back on the green point. Dude, I'm, I'm very curious to see what happens when that middle point opens up, because don't forget, it's 12 points per player of your squad on that point if you're uncontested. So you can very well see an entire squad say, the moment that's ready, jump down. We're just going to try and get a massive influx of like 48 points. Could happen every single 
Second down there. He's going to net you that, so has to put, put to an end immediately. It seems at this point right here, keeps getting under contention by like multiple teams. The Fish yeah. Fam, Funky Fighters, and of course the Color Crew who get cleaned out. So they're not earning anything really from all fighting at the same time. One team ends up coming out on top, but then it all happens again. So maybe some timing issues here in terms of synchronizing the push on this point specifically. Yeah, I mean, th this gets way more hectic when anyone can score points, right? And the Fish Fam have been doing a great job sticking together, going in as uh, pairs, duos, if you will, and trying to shut everyone down, but yep. that's only going to get you so far. It kind of breaks down, too, when everybody can score because there's so much that more important. If you're by yourself to stay on the point in the previous iterations, if you're by yourself, you get off the point because right. you can't even score. Now you have to stick around. Look at the slaps coming out. Lachlan does take out scissors, but does fall as well. Now Clytex is just trying to get back into the fray. Get himself those height with the impulses. And now don't forget, they have a limited number of builds. It's about 100, I believe. But right now, man, you just need to be turning your attention left and right, trying to eliminate as many players as you possibly can. This remix is shaking the very foundation of this mode. And Clytex goes in, he's going to start trying to take him down did not go his way, though. So this is what I'm talking about. Finally, the Fish Fam control this point that the Cutter Crew and Funky Fighters were fighting for so hard. And they control it with all four players, so you can see their score rising significantly every second there. At the same time, the Llama Record Company with an evenly timed push as well, but Rubius comes in. Chicken Champions take out one, but I don't think that's going to be enough. I think the Llama Record Company, no, they don't hold. Or do they? <laughs> or do they? That is the question. It looks like, unfortunately, the answer is no, as the Chicken Champions are rolling in on the Sunshine Soldiers. Attacks are going off left and right, but Danian is just where... where uh, it's just not falling. Just keeps eliminating left and right, getting a little bit of excitement. The timing of that push from that took out the Llama Record Company might have actually worked out in their favor because they're all going to respawn together. Five seconds for this deep point to spawn. You can already see they're hunting. Land of Blood, Rubius, Carnifex, they're all going for it because they know the importance. If they can all stand in there at the same time, all the impulses come through before anybody can even build a base, build some protection against them. It's pure chaos down here on the deep point. And look, if you're, if you're another team on the outside looking in, as all these players are just jumping in toward that center point, you do what Gotaga is doing. Let them all fight it out. Let's just sit on the point. No one seems to be paying attention to the fact that we're about halfway through what we need to win. Let them all fight it out. Don't, don't, make, any, don't make any sudden moves, right? Don't make it, don't be the distraction to have someone go, oh wait, there is a point up there. That's the, we need to go get those guys. I, I love what they did just there. They forced the one player there, but hold on, the Funky Fighters are all in. They have a base, there's no impulse. They are climbing the leaderboard hard. They're at third right now. They're going to overtake second. second. If this does not get shut down soon, the Ravens' revenge may have trouble looming. And look at this Llama Record Company. Hand of Blood is trying his hand and slaying these players, but it does not go his way. As Tamoya comes in, no Llama Rocket Record Company. They stay strong. They're still racking up the points. Scissor says, no, 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 friends. This is not allowed. You cannot continue to do this. Clytex also wants in on this as well. And Scissors meets an untimely end. Meanwhile, the Ravens' revenge have not They're stopped climbing points. If they have three, four members up here, it's about even to one player on that D point. So just continuing to stay there, finally, the Little Whip Warriors, Ninja, and crew are going to clean that up and put an end to it just before they hit 2,000. But on the other side, Chicken Champions are looming. They have four players on a single point, not the Mega Point in the center. See what's going on with them. They're all lurking. I don't think anybody really is too worried about them, but, you know, with all four players here, it could all of a sudden become a nuisance. Back down on that center point. You've got Hand of Blood trying his hand again. Did not go his way. Kotu is here, though, for the Funky Fighters. He was able to rack up a small amount of points, but still, every little point you can gather is going to make a difference going in the end. And look, Otaga and Raven's Revenge are back on the point, but so are the Funky Fighters. There was three for just a moment. Chaos is down, just breaking out down on the center point right now, Bala. What is this? Literally every single sword bearer and almost every single player here from the Llama Record Company is using those tactical shotguns and getting in. But again, the Ravens Revenge are on point with four players, just shooting down, throwing impulses where they can. 
and just making sure they're accruing all those points. Meanwhile, the D point, nobody has gotten anywhere since the Funky Fighters were left there for so long. It all depends how this all unfolds. Hold on, they're trying to get a base. I think they might finally break through. No, they lose and trade off evenly every single time. Four minutes left on that timer and follow. These guys have been uncontested. It's just now that the Little Whip Warriors want to try and make the push. But look at Gotaga. He's literally just slicing through all these ice cream cones. I was going to try and say a hot knife through butter, but the, this is ice cream. It doesn't quite work that way. It's crazy how nobody except the Little Whip Warriors are trying to contest the Ravens' revenge right now. They are sitting on the point by themselves with four. But again, the Funky Fighters in the center with four players. They are not even making any noise. They're not showing that there's anybody there. They are rising so fast. Finally, Four Turtle comes in. He spots them out, but that's not going to be enough. They shut him down immediately. They're still on the point. They need to just box this up. They need to bunker down. Look at this. They just overtook the first spot. Someone needs to do something about this. Guys, they're taking up this again. Could you have to go in the this center. Could be they the get they it. Get it. Oh my God. Funky Fighters again take the win here on Sky Station Showdown, the first match of the Golden Games. And that is a huge victory leading into the rest of these. Just unbelievable. For, for so long, Gotaga and Raven's Revenge sat on the green point completely uncontested. And then for a moment, everyone forgets about the center point, and that's enough for all four members of the Funky Fighters to sit on the point and just rise above everyone else. And by the time everyone could kind of figure out what was going on, it was too late. They stole away the first golden game. Ridiculous that nobody was able to spot that out. It seemed like Four Turtle was going to say, OK, guys, they're all on the point. Everybody start doing everything you can to stop them because they, he saw all four members. They went from less than 1,000 once the D point was out to all the way up to win. And it was 400 points between them and the Ravens' revenge at the end there. Right. But you do have to also think about who else came very close in second. Ravens' revenge, who's in third. We'll be able to find out in a bit with the standings. but. Just an unbelievable performance there from the Funky Fighters to realize exactly what must be done. That was the second time they completely boxed up that entire D point. Yeah, and just completely uncontested. But that's it for the first of three golden games. And for the Funky Fighters, they secure that win. But for now, let's send it back over to Pookie. She's standing by with the winners. Pookie, down to you. Thank you so much, Zeke. I am down here with the Funky Fighters. Another victory. I feel like I've been talking to you guys all day, but how did you find that remix game? Because those rules were a little bit different than what you were used to. So what was your strategy going into that one, Huzi? I mean, everything was so like unexpected. We were last and we came first because we got the middle. Uh, the point system, because every player gets points. And so we've been, like, it was so exciting. So exciting. So exciting indeed. Now, Raven's Revenge was in first place for most of that match. You guys knew that you had to come up from behind, which you absolutely did. But I kind of just want to talk a little bit about how there are three teams tied right now for first place. And the winners of this set will be taking home that additional million dollars of prizing. So I don't want to put too much pressure on you guys, but what is your strategy going into the next game? Are you going to stay the same? Are you going to change things up? Are you going to go for the middle again? Um, probably. Yeah, we're just gonna keep doing what we're doing, and uh, as long as this works, we're just gonna keep it up. For sure. Sounds like a great strategy. Finally, over here to you. When you heard that there was a remix uh, kind of blind side come in, what was your first reaction to hearing that? Yellow. Go to Yellow Circle and win. <laughs> just win. I love it. It's so easy. It's such a great concept. You know, we talk about it all day, all of these things we break down, but at the end of the day, you just got to win. Back to you guys at the desk. Pookie, with the most insightful knowledge you'll ever need in your entire life. It doesn't matter if you can just win. Just win. I'm doing it wrong. I'm doing it wrong. You're winning. I'm trying. Winning. We're doing all the winning best here at the World Cup. We all are, in fact. But so are these players that have taken the stage. Now, don't forget. Those llamas are going to be playing a big factor in how these the, pri the final million-dollar prize pool is divvied out. And Pookie touched on it perfectly, actually. 
right now there's a three-way tie. Yep. All right, and that's something we need to take a look at with those standings, just to give you the refresher. So, Funky Fighters, Fish Fam, and the Chicken Champions all have that Silver Llama. Now, don't forget, every single match they play, they're also walking away with the prize pool that they're splitting four ways. That part's awesome. But man, that extra million dollar prize pool at the end will be huge. So either the Funky Fighters, Fish Fam, or Chicken Champions need to win that Golden Llama for one of them to win, or if you're on the outside looking in, you just want that Gold Llama. Because if you win that Llama, that means you and your team actually win that pot. Yep. You win the one million dollars final prize for the Creative World Cup. So all is on the line right now. Those prizings as they shake up into the next sets are going to be so crucial to keep an eye out. The Funky Fighters taking a good first lead, yep. but it's not enough. We've seen it time and time again in these first matches of the set. If people who win the first game don't end up coming through all the way at the end. So they have to have a consistently good performance into the next game, which is the Junkyard Juke, and then into the next game too, which is the World Run. That's right. And they're all golden. All the golden games with the All the golden games. Not the golden boys, just the golden games. I love you, buddy. Uh, now, don't forget, if you guys are watching and maybe this is the first time you're tuning in, don't forget you can watch also at Fortnite.com slash watch. If you're watching in-game, you can do that as well. There, If you go to Fortnite.com slash watch, you can actually kind of hone in on a specific team. There's 10 different feeds to take a look at, and you can say, like, you know what? I'm all about the fish fam. I'm just going to watch their perspective. You can do that. Head on over to Fortnite.com slash watch. Take out the Funky Fighters taking a good first lead. Yep. But it's not enough. We've seen it time and time again in these first matches of the set. If people who win the first game don't end up coming through all the way at the end. So they have to have a consistently good performance into the next game, which is the Junkyard Juke, and then into the next game too, which is the World Run. That's right. And they're all golden. All the golden games with the All the golden games. Not the golden boys, just the golden games. I love you, buddy. Uh, now, don't forget, if you guys are watching and maybe this is the first time you're tuning in, don't forget you can watch also at Fortnite.com slash watch. If you're watching in-game, you can do that as well. There, if you go to Fortnite.com slash watch, you can actually kind of hone in on a specific team. There's 10 different feeds to take a look at, and you can say, like, you know what? I'm all about the fish fam. I'm just going to watch their perspective. You can do that. Head on over to Fortnite.com slash watch. Take a look. Here are a breakdown of your feeds right there on screen. It's an incredible new feature. I love to use it. I checked it out on my phone earlier. And just unbelievable, seriously. To see all the different POVs, to see the first and second place POVs, and then also to be able to pick who you want to watch. You can yep. watch Lachlan in feed eight. You can watch Gotaga in feed four. So just an awesome feature. Go check it out. It's amazing. Yeah, for sure. Now, don't forget, guys, we are one third of the way through the Golden Games. First one, Sky Station Showdown is in the books, and the Funky Fighters were, in fact, the winner. Now we move on to the second game, and that is the Prop Hunt, AKA Junk Yard Juke. And don't forget, the remix, 10 point props. Only, only the large ones. You can't go with the, you know, little crowbar. You can't go with the wood planks. You can't go with any of that. And there is one of the prizes for the teams that won before. We've got 10 seconds until the game launches, Zeke. It's the second game of our Golden Games here, guys. It's time. Two, one, the game begins. Now, just a refresher. We can only be 10 point props. So let's just, well, let's break down what these 10 point props are. You've got a snowman. By the way, there's no snow anywhere else on the map. You've got a Christmas tree with a gold bomb on top. Nope, that sticks out like a sore thumb. A giant gnome? Well, I mean, it kind of blends in depending on where you stand. You know, if you hide something that's uh, behind something that's blue, you'll, you'll, you can make the hide. A giant teddy bear? You've got the target. You've got the rusted out car. I mean, you've also got the giant dumpster. So, you know, as you kind of scan your eyes across the map, you know, you can see things like the dumpster, the rusted out car, the target. These are things that could be... Whoa. All right, Kaz. All right, this guy is... Uh, guys, he got the eyes of a hawk. But these props are going to be... They're going to stick out like sword thumbs is what I'm trying to get at. Yep. And a little... Ooh, Kaz, awesome. You see his reaction? <laughs> yeah, even Kaz realize. is like, ooh. He's like, wait, Scissors was there. He is finding everybody right now. Good vision. And it is interesting. You got to make sure you know who the guards are at the beginning of this. It's the Little right. Whip Warriors on the bottom level. They're clearing out the house right now. They're making sure nobody is approaching. Only three, four teams have scored right now. Oh, trying to 
go trying to find people that there was definitely someone back there that was there's not supposed to be three trucks back there i don't think uh but uh you know in playing this uh, the best way to kind of go about this is every time that those those uh blinds come up you want to instant reload right then on the spot yes you can try to make blind fires Unless you're certain, you're like, no, I know where my crosser is. That's a player. Take the shot. Absolutely. But when those blinds come up, you want to reload. You want to have as many shots as possible before that next, uh, I guess, shade comes back up, right? And the Ravens' revenge being the other guards, by oh. the way. Nice shot there from Taldak. Yeah, you mentioned when the, when the blinds, I've been calling it the black, when the black comes up, take the time to reload and make sure you're taking the time like Taldak to stop and try to remember exactly what you saw. Don't move your POV, don't move your camera at all. As you try to recognize exactly what changed, you gotta use the uptime of your vision to take as many shots as possible to clear out what you think is possibly a prop. That player came down from below because he hit one of those springboards. I use it moving forward, Zand as well. They're all going with the targets. I use it gets in just barely because Taldak missed his shot. Man, this is really good for the Funky Fighters. They've taken themselves a nice early lead. It's only 20 points, nothing substantial yet. But if they could do this every single round, again, another round, another big prop going in. They're at 50, 30 points ahead of the pack. And the only three teams behind them, Fish Fam, Cutter Crew, and the Chicken Champions. And look, time is done. So that's it. So don't forget, Raven's Revenge, they have already been guarded. So going forward, all they have to do is try and rack up points. This is going to be huge going forward. The round is going to reset. We'll get two new guards on deck. You've got the Chicken Champions and the Funky Fighters. So now they can try to lock out other players from scoring. And it depends on how well they do, right? Because again, these these are big 10-point props. There's a lot of them as well, you know. They The props outnumber you pretty substantially. And if you recall the first game where the Ravens Revenge were actually in second to the Funky Fighters. So like you said, being able to take your time and make sure that you know exactly what you need to do kind of gives them a little bit of an advantage. But the Funky Fighters really did come out to a huge lead in the first scoring five points or five total. See if they can hold it down right now and keep the lead as it is. The Chicken Champions at 20 are not going to be able to close the gap. But we'll see if the Fish Fam, the Cuddle Crew, and everybody else can approach the Funky Fighters right now. They're trying to stop that from happening. Well, Scissors did just drop in with that 10-point prop. So he's closing that gap. If they can get another 10-point prop in, they're going to be tied with the Funky Fighters. But they actually have to make it there to the center to make it into the incinerator. That is going to be make or break. We have two minutes left on the clock. And, you know, my first instinct for this would be, you know what, I just got to go. I just got to try and run out as much as I can. That's actually counterintuitive. Right now, you want to just be taking baby steps, right? Just making sure you can secure those points is crucial. All the players right now, you can see them down below trying to get the shots as possible. They're racking up the eliminations right now. I don't think they... Fish fan may have... Gotten one through. Taldak gets one through. That's going to even the gap a little bit. Here's the Funky Fighters again. Just blind shooting through the black. And remember, 130 to go oh. on this guard. Fish Fam has tied it up with that score right there. And so has Cuddle Crew. They got through two props in. So they're one prop behind right now. Oh, that's it. Uh, you got to be careful, buddy. One Jeffy prop behind. Has... There's a little whip coming through as well. So all of a sudden, these teams are letting a lot of props through, or maybe it's the props who figured out their timings, figured out their tendencies, figured out when they stop shooting. One minute to go here. Here's Ninja. He's got a car. This is one of the most difficult obstacles or props to get in. Uh, don't, don't stack on top of each other. Oh, so dangerous. Because when you see things like that tight together, you're like, uh, oh, yeah, no. oh no, the bumper. Got to land. <gasps> He was moving. Oh. Unfortunate there. You've got to press that control key at the last second to be able to make sure you get through. Scissors makes it through. Dude, That's they... a lot of points racking up. They're at 80 yep. now, 30 points ahead of the Funky Fighters, which is unfortunate for their guard watch. They've, 30 seconds to go. They've taken the lead here, 30 po 20 points now. Uh, excuse me, 30 points ahead. That, make that 40. The numbers are changing like crazy. But right now, Scissors and the Fish Fam, they've got the lead. And this is huge right now. Don't forget the Funky Fighters are in the center, so they can't rack up points. We've got 10 seconds left. These, whoever's out in the field, they need to make it into this incinerator right now. 
Are they going to have any more points accrue? It doesn't look like anybody's close. That's going to be the round. As the Funky Fighters and the Chicken Champions end up closing out that guard watch. We'll see where the standings end. I did notice something, though, Zeke, is that the Ravens' revenge were at zero for that run. They didn't get a single prop through, which is a far cry from their performance on Sky Station Showdown. They were second. They need to band together right now. They need to rally, and they need to make this happen. Round three begins. You've got the Fish Fam and the Sunshine Soldiers in the middle. So now the Fish Fam, you know, we saw this before. They got this lead, but now they have to try and lock everyone else out from getting points. And as we've clearly seen, it is actually way more difficult than it sounds. And judging by the first run of the Funky Fighters, they got 50 early on. We'll see if they can get and double their score, essentially, to tie up with the Fish Fam. But Sunshine Soldiers also being a guard, and the first two right now ending up on guard watch. Two and a half minutes left on this timer. You see people hitting these hidden little bumpers. So a little surprise in case you've been wondering why have they been flying up. There's little secret uh, bumpers that are buried. You can see one right there that looks like a little silver dome. If players touch that, they're actually launched into the sky. And it's a very clear, like, hey, this is a person. They have disguised themselves as a prop. You should probably eliminate them. Two minutes here on the clock, and Fish Fam are just tearing it up. But look, Funky Fighters, they were guards last round. They were behind pretty far, and now they're starting to close up that gap, right? If they can get another three pops, props in within this two-minute timer, they're going to be in a great spot heading into that final round. Uh, Tyler trying to hold it down before he gets his last opportunity to go with the props. But here, the Cuddle Crew, and they're going to be on guard watch next. So if they don't oh, solidify oh, oh, oh. this lead very strong right now, it's going to be so difficult. Meanwhile, the Ravens Revenge did finally get a prop in. They could have a final round that could be amazing. We'll continue to watch here for the Cuddle Crew. Llama Record Company and Funky Fighters all earn a point in just a second there. One minute and 20 seconds for this guard watch to end. Cuddle Crew is only a single prop behind. The Funky Fighters are only two, and so are the Llama Record Company. Raven's Revenge is now on the board with a single. That's a Raven. Look at that. Scissors, he's got this on lock. He's got the entire map laid out in his mind, and he is he can tell the difference. Ooh. Wait, does he does he catch two? He did not. Wait, these other two trucks, are they actually going to make it in? They're making it in. <laughs> yeah. That's unfortunate. Scissors, they snuck right under his nose. They get in. But it doesn't oh, he hit that person from the blinds. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> he heard you, Zeke. He knew. Listen. Flexing he, a little bit on everybody. He knows I'm a big fan of his. All right. He knows. He knows. Cuddle Crew, they're nice and hidden. All right. Got to watch the bumper. There is one hidden. You see it right there in front? Be careful. You can see it. It's right there. Don't do it. Nope. Never mind. That was, uh, looks seconds. like that was Fish Fan. And it looks like a lot of props are making it towards the center right now. I think I just saw three. Very close. Here's yep. the approach from high. Who is he? Remember, they have to get sorted to get scored. So Tomoya, I think, will be the last prop here. Bensor making a push Ooh. for it. No. But what a push there at the last second. They do all tie up. Three, the top three are tied up at 100. So that means this wow. last round of Junkyard Juke is going to be so crucial. This is very scary heading into round number four. So take a look. In the center of the map, you've got Svenos and his crew. So don't forget, there's three teams tied for first. You've got the Fish Fam, you've got the Funky Fighters, and you have the Cuddle Crew. So basically, they are well ahead of the pack, but they're they're fighting each other right now. Little Whip, or excuse me, sorry, the Lava Record Company, and now Little Whip and the Cuddle Crew, they're at 90, so they could close that gap, but they have to work so much harder to do that. You've got the Cuddle Crew in the middle, and this means they're not racking up any points for this round, right? They're just trying to, to keep everyone else from accruing points. They're in fifth place or lower at this point. If they don't have a good performance, even the Sunshine Soldiers, the, oh, oh. and the Chicken could go through. Nice shot there from his team. Uh, joining them as well as the Llama Record Company in second place, so second or lower is all they can yep. achieve. So for right now, Llama Record Company, remember, this is they can't accrue points. They literally have to try and stop Fish Fam and the Funky uh, Fighters from racking up points. If they get even one through, they are going to be edged out. Everything is riding on this moment right now. How accurate are they? How 
quickly and how much do they remember the map. Look at all these props here on the left side of the screen. One just got through with the quest. Little whip, look! They took over, so did Fishfam. Nice shot there from Great Alex shot the for black. sure. He knew that there was a prop approaching. He knew that he didn't find anything in the last couple of seconds. He knew. Is he going to be able to find this one? You can see he's pre-firing through the black as they all try to approach. What a nice play from Alex. A nice strategy. Now remember, now that the Little Whip and Fish Fan have taken the lead, the Funky Fighters fall to three. And since they got first in the first game, that means it's just more close when you think about the overall standings here. Yeah. Look, Little Whip again, get another prop in. They're pushing ahead, man. These guys are pulling away from the pack right now. Llama Record Company, they've got to just start trying to pick off these props. They've got to keep the Fish Fam and Little Whip down. Maybe have someone else potentially contest, but right now, man, the Little Whip Warriors, Ninja and his team are just destroying this final round. And all the rest of the standings, oh. so important as well. Svenhaus and Co. And the Llama Record Co. doing a very good job on guard duty right now. And besides the top two ending up getting a couple of points, they're not letting anybody below them really earn anything. A lot of props approaching right now. The timing is going out. Ninja gets in with the car, scores, and that just solidifies the lead even further. But I think Fish Fam scored. No, they didn't. Look, oh, first place to Little Whip Warriors. Now there's no tiebreaker involved. 20 seconds to go. Can anybody else score? You just gotta go, do not jump, you just gotta go, that's right. Oh, okay, there's another round of points coming through. Little Whip at 150, and look, Taldax right here. That's gonna put him at 160 with 10 seconds left. That's the win for sure for the Little Whip Warriors here, and Junkyard Juke as the timer expires, as Ninja scores in the final moments, as well as Taldax. The first win for the Little Whip Warriors, and it couldn't come at a better time here, Zeke. That's right, man. Look, don't forget, those Silver Llamas are scattered right now. This puts them in a great spot. If they can get this World ru uh, Run win, they could secure themselves that Gold Llama. And out of nowhere, they could steal away the victory from everyone else around. A fantastic showing of the Little Whip Warriors, man, dude. They came out of nowhere. They were just on it. They flipped the switch and they said, you know what, we're getting all these props in and we're just going to get pulled away from the pack. That's what happened. Perfect play at the beginning. They had the guard defense. They didn't let anybody get over close to, I think the, the Ravens are, no, the Ravens had zero. I'm thinking of uh, the Funky Fighters had 50 in the first run. Yeah. But nobody else really did anything, and the Funky Fighters ended up starting to slow down. They didn't manage to keep up their pace. Little Whip Warriors took perfect advantage of that. Yeah, and I mean, you could just kind of see that they were very calm, coolly collected in the whole thing, right? They just kind of navigated the map correctly. You, you kind of saw it happen a little bit, but there was almost like this clustering that happened. You know, when you've got three rusted cars right next to each other where there clearly is no rusted cars, cars at all, you're like, okay, well, these guys are very clearly props, they, right? They figured it out eventually, though. They did. Separate, approach all in different waves, yep. use the props at the front to kind of, you know, protect so that the guys who are just barely behind you can then make their approach and get two points at least, or at least 20 points in this remix version. Yep. But great performance for Little Whip. Again, couldn't come at a better time because that puts them in contention for this Golden Llama. And yep. that's the bonus. That is the win. That is the win condition for this Creative World Cup. Well, I think the only thing that we need to do right now is send it down onto the stage. I want to hear from the Little Whip Warriors. So let's go over to Monster, who's standing by with them right now. All right. So, all right. So I'm going to be honest. I thought early on the Sky Station showdown, Ninja Squad specifically, was going to be dominating because of the fact that, you know, the way the qualifiers worked, you guys were out there running shooter trials, and you were struggling. But you guys are finally finding your stride. So let's just touch on it. How does it feel to be in the running? Now you finally got a victory. You're so close. The Golden Llama's on the line. You guys are so close. What do you think about this? Honestly, kind of relieved, to be completely honest with you guys, because, I mean, we were kind of nervous the first three sets. I mean, we were yeah. not doing the best, yeah, but now should. we're here. So, I mean, hey. We're in the running, and that's all that matters. All right, so you're in the running. You want to hold this lead, but more importantly, what team do you guys feel you need to shut down? I think it's the Funky Fighters. Is there any other team that specifically, I know we started off, Ninja said the Ravens Revenge, but I don't know. I think things are really shaking up. What squad out here is surprising you so far? Dude, those Ravens, man. Like, 
Yesterday we were fighting with them all day. We got the edge on them yesterday, but today they came out and really surprised us. And there you guys have it. So as you can see, easily things can really shake up here. And just like that, suddenly it's anyone's game to win. Ninja Squad can take it for all we know. Well, we'll have to see because we have a single golden game left. And in case you've forgotten, it's the world run. And the remix yep. is a single life. That's so brutal. You can't even, <laughs> like, we can't understate how difficult that is going to be. I mean, especially when everything is on the line here. Everything matters. Everybody wants to get first in this last match. That's right. And don't forget, I mean, we've, we've been bouncing around, right? We, we started on World Run and we saw six teams of eight rack up the 30 coins. Yep. But then we moved to Sky Station Showdown. So now you're like, okay, my mind has to go there and be ready for that. Then we moved to Junkyard Duke and you're like, okay, we'll have to move again. So these guys may not be in a, you know, once you've been doing it back to back, you've almost built up that muscle memory. They may not have that based on this. Yeah, we'll have true. to see, man. Very true. You're kind of rusty when you move on to the world run after these last right? two. Right, right. There's no, <laughs> no mechanics in Junkyard Juke are the same at all in the world run. So we'll have to see if they still are warm for that. Yeah, but hey, you know what? If you want to play these things, don't forget, they're actually in-game right now. They're available as LTMs. Play them through the weekend. You've got until Sunday. You want to check them out? Give them a try. I'm telling you, they are super fun. If you get more coins than me, I got 14. Hit us with the hashtag or tweet at me. That's fine. I'll hold the L. I, I respect it. I respect it. I'm not, a, I'm not a death runner. I'll be honest. I'm not much of a BR player either. I'm pretty bad, actually. That's why Sundown carries me pretty much the entire time. But Again, man, let's let's focus in on these games. Don't forget, uh, let's not talk about how, how terrible I am. The Gold Llama, that's what's on the line right now. You know, I think Ninja just actually found out what the, what the remix was there. It looked like he had something he was surprised. He was like, wait a minute, <laughs> wait a minute, what? No, definitely should have known before, but here we go into the world run. All the players are loading up and getting ready. It's so important to make sure that everything is perfect because you have one chance one opportunity here to make a difference. If you mess up, it's over. That's right. So I'm looking for four turtle. I'm looking for the players like Scissors, Suzu, Suzu who completely clutched up for the Fish Fan, both of them yep. together. And really, it's not on the shoulders of one player. It, even more so, right? We were talking about it earlier. The entire team needs to perform. But here, when they could be going out early, Everybody needs to step up, every single person. That's right, this is it, the final opportunity to try and claim the Golden Llama and take a slice of that final million dollar prize pool available to the winner. And of course, let's not forget, the World Cup Creative Champions. The time is now. Here we go, the game is about to begin. If you guys are here watching from the stadium, let them know you support them. Let them hear you right now. Let's hear it for all these teams. That's what I'm talking about. They need your energy right here, right now. 10 seconds before we hop into the game. Don't forget, it's World Run. That remix, a single life. Who is going to come out on top right now? It's anyone's game. We'll see who out of the gate as they open right now. Who out of the gate is gonna go down? How slow are they gonna take this? You can see everybody does not want to move. You can <laughs> cut the tension with a knife right now. Here, MSYB is gonna be the first to go. Danyan in the back as well. Everybody staggering their players so that they know what they need to do one by one. I heard some traps, MSYB, there he goes. Gets the first couple of coins and everybody at the same time. Funky Fighters have six right now. What a run so far from MSYB, not missing a beat. And the Funky Fighters are already off to a strong start. Oh, <gasps> no! MSYB, oh, an error was made there on his part, but it's okay, he's still got his crew, they can still make it through. Funky Fighters are still racking up the coins. Here we go. They're going to pick up their 10th right here, Tough right one. now. This is literally, I'm telling you, man, this is where this precision jump comes through. Come on, Koto. Two players. He made it. Two he made players it. made it. Oh, so okay. here through. Actually, right, no, no, no. Let this, don't even. Just let the whole thing reset. Yep. 
Take a step back. Is, let it reset. Is every single one of his teammates down in the bottom left? Yes, it is. It is all on the back of Kotu right oh now. Goodness. He's got to make it through. The, the tricky part of this is he's going to get this coin, but now he has to go back through. That's not the coin to go for, then. That was not the coin to go for, but it's okay. He's committed. Come on, you have to guarantee trigger these. Do not fall. Third set. Fourth set. He's, he's through. through. Okay. Oh, dude, my heart is beating <laughs> out of my chest right now. This is so just tense. What can you even, like, he is by himself. This is the only chance. He has 11 coins right now, but that's just tied. In the castle, there's not too much danger after those spike traps. Right. So he can move forward. They have to make there sure they go. grab every single coin. Meanwhile, Chicken Champions on the other side, he's got He's by himself as well. I wonder how many different teams have anybody alive right now. Is it really up to the Chicken Champions and the Funky Fighters right now? We'll see. They have plenty of time to work with. They can take it as slow as they possibly want. My There's the Cuddle Crew. Right They've got two. They have two. Raven's Revenge looks like they have one player as well. Okay, nice. The coin is picked up. There's only one left here. So remember, 14 is the max amount you can get before heading up to the next level. And the castle is the halfway mark. Just got word that Fish Fam actually has three people up. Only 10 coins for them. Oh. So maybe taking things slow, letting things play out, and seeing how the other teams do. Because really, the time is not of the essence in this case. Until the very last player. There's Fish Fam. One did go down in the meantime. This is Tyler. Suzu is down, which is crucial because he yep. was the player who was a speed demon. But again, it's not speed that matters. It's execution. Here he's going back through. Can he make it? Most dangerous part oh. of the castle. Nice re-trigger. He's through. Okay. All right. We haven't seen Cuddle Crew pick up any more coins. Maybe they're still alive. Maybe they've been eliminated. The castle, I mean, it's pretty hard to be eliminated in the castle. The only way really is in the traps there. You've got the funky fighter. Look at this, Lachlan. Oh, oh, no. He's crying his eyes out. Wait <laughs> guys, guys, if you want Lachlan to go for this, you got to give it up to him right now. If you want Lachlan to go for the jump, Lachlan, you got to go for it. There has to be a Lachlan chant. Lachlan, Lachlan, Lachlan. Come on, you have to go. Look, but the thing is, he's talking it through his team. He's like, look. What do I have to do? What do I need to make here, right? And this is good, because remember, they have six minutes. They, like you said, they can take this as slow as possible. But again, this is going to come down these last few minutes. So Fish Fam actually, right now, they're leading the pack 15 points. That means they're up on that next tier. And there's some pretty treacherous things happening up there. There you go. <laughs> it's Sand and Tyler. They're through the castle. That's why they're all dancing right now, because they know they're starting to be at the hardest part possible, and they know nobody else is here. Based on their coins. Here we go. His teammate did okay. fall up ahead. Gets one, though. There's the trap trigger. This is so difficult. He's going to start getting towards the variable impulses. Remember, he's got to make this in one. Oh. See, you see him take a he's step, waiting. step he's back. Waiting. He's like, look, the trap's not right. Look, this isn't right. I'm way farther ahead of anybody else. He's going to wait until anybody else goes. Here's the Raven's Revenge. He's going to tie it up. There you go. In terms of place that there are, but the Ravens Revenge don't have anybody else, so he can't get to that other lane to collect those coins. Right. Which is and crucial. I mean, so, and, and don't forget, if he got here by himself, too, that means there was that extra coin, remember? Because there's two lanes. He left one behind. So there's more pressure on him right now. Oh. The scissors. That's what scissors oh did in that game before. He's going for it. He's not stopping. He does need to make sure he does beats the fish fam. You can see now Zan going at the same time. Here it is through the jumps. He's waiting a little bit. Jump. Nice. Yes. Okay. Pressure's on right now because don't forget there was a single coin behind. Sand going at the same time right now. Well, he's going for the variable impulses. One, two. Okay, makes Sand it. makes Here we it. go. Yes. One more jump. Magma makes it through the variable impulses. One of the most difficult breath. jumps. And the deep breath does come in. Magma is putting the team on his back right now. And oh. from what I can tell, Lachlan. It's everybody, Lachlan's going, guys. He's going. He's got to make this jump. Does he make it? There you go. All right. Oh. So look, he's <laughs> he slides out. He's like, Ooh. At the same time, Ooh. Magma in the top left did end up getting another coin. Here goes Lachlan. Guys, give him your energy. He's going for the jump. 
Look, Magma, for a moment he's doubting himself. He can't. Magma, get your head in the game. You know you can make this jump. Here we go. The jump comes out. Yes. One, he, two. He doesn't go for the coin. the coin. He doesn't go for the coin. What? Wait, you needed that coin. That can make the difference. Why is this team not telling him? It, it's too risky. He's Maybe he feels like it's too risky. See, he's thinking about it. Should I... Should I maybe try to double back? I mean, if he gets down the ramp, he's going to have his little icy toes. He's going to slip right off. This oh. could be it. This could be the moment that makes or break their game. There's Zan, too. Look, he's thinking about the same thing. He's like, should I go for this? Is this coin worth it? He has to come back through there to get up to the next stage anyways. Magma taking a huge breath. We'll have to get, see if, if you know, the status on everybody else. I, I believe these are the last two players. This is, this is tough. We're getting word Lachlan has actually made it to the cat. He has not actually not made it to the castle yet. I misspoke there. All right, here we go. Magma, great trigger. No, wait, it's okay. He used oh, the rock. The recovery. Great. They knew Gets about the it. the coin. No! And Magma is out of the game. And with that, the Ravens revenge too. Lachlan bouncing. He's unfortunately out of it as well. He's not eliminated yet, but Zan going for it at the same time. Here we go. He's going to go for the coin up top. He has to. He literally has to. Magma, though, he left this the coin behind. No. He set up. He didn't grab the coin either. If he had grabbed that coin, he's thinking about, do I double back? Do I try to make that? So the, the reason he doesn't want to go is because if he, has, if he goes for the coin, he is not going to be able to get to the next thing. So they thought ahead of us, Zeke. They knew. Lachlan playing with fire. He is definitely not in this. Can he really make this with an impulse? No way. No. He's out. Yeah, he has the to. end of Lachlan, the oh, end of the huh. cuddle crew. And it is now 21 to 21. He just needs one more coin. He needs to get that which coin. Which is more easy for him? Is it the one on this trap? Or is it the one See, back behind? You can tell he lifted the finger. He said, we need one coin. Just grab this coin right down here. If he can do this Zan, without being eliminated. Here it is. The win. Oh, he oh. missed it, but gets it with the trap trigger. The fish fan. Zan clutches up for them here. Scissors and company. Absolutely dominate in the last set of the world run. It wasn't domination, really, though, was it? But a clutch performance from Zand. They lost their man Scissors and Suzo early on, but everything fell on the shoulders of Zand, and he does it. This, this is shaking me to my core, because what does this mean for the standings? In all three Golden Games, we saw a different winner. Funky picked up round one. Little Whip picked up round two. And now the Fish Fam picked up round three. But don't forget, Fish Fam, they had that an unbelievable time earlier on with 525. But I mean, also Funky Fighters, they got themselves the coins as well. So they they all have wins. It's I'm trying to like think I'm trying yeah, I'm trying to think back. To like all how the does... different standings because Fish Fam, they had a good performance in Junkyard Juke. Absolutely, right? Right. Hands down. Here's the last moments with Zan. This moment could have won him the Creative World Cup. Think about that for a second. This could be it, man. That literally could have very well. But then the question is, what if that doesn't get them the win? Should he have kept going, right? But he just decided, look, you know what? We've got the coin. Let's end it here. What if they needed to keep going? What if they if they had gotten one more coin? Could that have made the difference? Are they already in, in, in the lead? Is there someone else? Tiebreakers matter. We'll see. Uh, okay. We'll you see. know me, man. I stress out way too hard of this. I get way <laughs> too into this. I'm sitting here with my pen, just like, what is the calculations here, Zeke? I don't even I'm know. The numbers. <sighs> Nail biting finish, that's for sure. All right. That's we could all agree that. Guys, did you like that finish here today? Zan clutching up. Guys! They're, they're asleep. They're asleep. They're, they're asleep. asleep. They want to know what's the happening. They don't know what we're asking them. I Come mean, on. guys, here in the stadium, was that not insane? There you go. There you go. That You just had to ask them the right question. You asked them the wrong question. That's all it yeah, was. Yeah, I had to stick the word insane there. People yeah, go yeah. crazy for that. There it is. There it is. But first off, let's just say across the board, all of these teams performed incredibly well. Again, you know, just calling out, there was never just like one team that kind of was ahead of the pack the whole time. Fish Fam was starting to get there, right? Like they were that one team that was like, wait, they were the only ones that had that insane time. but. You know, everyone really showed up in massive ways. We're going to calculate the standings uh, for now, Ball. I think we're going to send it actually down on the stage. We've got Poogie standing by with the Fish Fam. So let's hear from them. Thank you so much, Zeke. I am down here with the Fish Fam. Again, I feel like I've been talking to you guys all day. Zand, you were a little late coming over to the interview. You had to put your shoes back on. Was your performance so great that you knocked your own socks off? Is that what happened there? 
It's all about like getting comfortable. Like if you play like you play at home, you'll play better. So that's what yeah, that's what I did. So just being completely comfortable. That's why you took your shoes off. Yep. Yeah. 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 I mean, it definitely works for you. You were the last one alive. What was that pressure like for you? I mean, I just took my time and did what I've done like for like the half past year to the front, and it worked out. And were your teammates coaching you through that whole yeah, thing? Yeah, they were talking to me, like, just telling me to chill, like, do whatever I want, take my time. Yeah. That's awesome. It definitely makes a difference when you have such a supportive team. Now, Scissors, I'm like, going to come to you and talk to you for just a moment. Sure. Now, this has to be an amazing moment for you, winning the death run like this. Now, how well versed are you in just having one life to live on these death runs? I mean, I feel like I did very well, but these guys are, they're the goats, they're the best. I make all these maps and these guys are the ones breaking the world records, so I had them on my team to carry me to the victory. <laughs> well, that's what I love to see. Amazing team synergy, amazing teamwork. Thank you guys so much. Congratulations again, Zeke. Back to you. Man, what a humble team leader Scissors is, but you know, mad respect to Zan. I, I like that he pointed out specifically, you know what? I just got to play like I'm at home. I have to get comfortable. For me, I'm the same way. You're like, right, you know, just, just take the shoes off, right? You can get comfortable, but there is no way that this feels like home. <laughs> <laughs> there is no way that this feels like home. And with the pressure, you, you never have that kind of experience. That is a once-in-a-lifetime thing to do. That's just yeah. crazy. But also to have his team there, right? They had his back. They were yep. lifting him up saying, look, Take your time. In fact, speaking of team, we actually have a listen in. Let's go back and relive that moment, but from their perspective. Get up there, left side. Left side? Left, left side, left side. Yep, left side. You're AF good. AFK. Nice. Yeah, Point. I like that. No, I like that. Okay. I like that. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. Coin, yeah, wait, no, go back. Get that coin. No, 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 that was pretty hectic, but uh, as a you know, as a resounding, hey, leave the coin yes. seemed like that was the play. Absolutely, he was he was considering. You saw him circling his mouse. On yeah, that he was like, one. he was like, but but I left it. I had to right, go back. But, <laughs> but it's right. I just I'll go back. But that was so genius for all the teams who got that far to to realize that that coin was not worth going back for it right. or even going for it in the first place. Remember how we were so shocked that they didn't go for it. And we realized later that's because if you try to go for it, you will end up getting eliminated. Right. Because it's too difficult to make that bunny hop to the coin, grab the coin, and then continue forward. Yeah. You have to lose your momentum. Those bunny hops are key to making that jump over the double danger. But man, we're calculating those standings. We're going to see who's winner. I, honestly, I've, I've been trying to, to do this in my head, but... We need the experts. We need the experts, all right? <laughs> I, I've, I've got stuff written down, but like, I can't read the code. All right? It's just, it's not coming to me. This literally could go anyone's way. And again, because those silver llamas are scattered, any team so, that wins that gold llama is going to win. Let's recall the couple of games that we had in this Golden Games. Right? Okay. So Sky Station Showdown came yep. down to the Funky Fighters in that final D point, all being pr pretty much uncontested. Nobody realized that they had their two opportunities, and they took them. They took right. them both. Skyrocketed from last place to first place. That put them in first in the first game. But also, don't forget, Raven's Revenge were close Raven's that Revenge game, right? Right? They came in the second place. So, Junkyard Juke next. Mm -hmm. Okay, Junkyard Juke, we know for sure that Fish Fam did well and Little Whip Warriors did well. Yep. So, Fish Fam is the ones who won the last one. Just unbelievable, you know, world run in, in total. Who was in second in the world run? Raven's Revenge. Raven's Revenge. So, Raven's Revenge in the first game. In the second game, they had a poor performance on Junkyard Juke. They did. They actually were in last place. But that's what I'm saying. And like, and then I think back to earlier games, right? Because this is kind of like a cumulative thing. So, but Raven's Revenge had those three. Ba the the first match from World Run was the first place with 29 coins. The second, they came in second with 29 coins. But then in third, you know, everyone had kind of figured it out. They still did manage to make the second time of 636. But like, what does that mean for all? Of, I'm getting. Okay, all right, I need to take a, I'm getting to take a deep breath here. Well, okay. what we can all agree on was that this was an awesome, like, whole thing in general, the entire Creative World Cup, all three of those maps. We gotta give props to the uh, map makers. What was it, 17 builders yep. in total? All these maps, they came together to make them, and they're beautiful, and they're amazing to play. So huge props to them. 
The builders here for the Creative World Cup, just awesome. All huge, from the community huge props too. worth 10 points. Oh, uh, come on. Got him, baby. Uh, yeah, you know you like that. You know you like that. I got him. As soon as he said it, I was like, this guy set himself up. I have to pull the trigger. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, but, you know, seriously, again, just to, to echo everything you said, man, like, this was so much fun. This was so much fun. And to think, too, this was the first half of the day. I just thought about that. So we stopped <laughs> More coming. We stopped pro right after this. We might have just broke Zeke when he realized that. But regardless, just all around, I, I'm curious. I want to recall our favorite moments here. What were your favorite moments here, Zeke, from this Creative World Cup? Was it the Funky Fighters taking the point? Was it that la that last moment with Sand? Um, okay. The fish fam. So the little that was definitely, absolutely. If that wasn't your favorite moment of the whole Creative Finals, I'm not sure what else could top that. Maybe there's something I don't, I'm not thinking about. Uh, I think back to when, uh, you know, the Fish fam, they had to clutch up that win and they come through with the 525 time. We watched Scissors in that run. He just tore through four obstacles, literally back to back in one life. Now, eventually did, he was eliminated, but still like, that takes so much precision and he made it look easy. That's not something that you just do. I mean, I'd argue he's the grandfather of creative, right? Like he's the, the guy that stepped forward and said, hey, you want to do this thing called a death run? And people were like, what? He's like, hey, do you like traps? <laughs> do you like respawning? How, how iconic for that moment to be Scissors and his team. And how iconic would it be if that world run ended up being the decider? But besides that, I know a lot of people here were interested in Lachlan's final performances. <laughs> we're going to go ahead and take uh, a listen in with his team at the end of that run for him. Sandy, uh, I'm going to start playing, OK? All right, yeah, yeah. Or Go actually, for it. no, I'll stop playing when you get to the impulse boss. Boy, nice. There's a point above you. Let's go. Well, lucky you got this. I'll try, I guess. Oh, yeah. Damn. <laughs> oh. This is the jump that I don't think I can. Yeah. Oh my God, heck. Well, here we go. No. Oh. Okay, that. No. no. He actually he almost hit that line. I, I, I think if he had thrown that impulse the moment he went up, he actually would have impulsed over. Like, I it would have been a little wall. hop. I was thinking the wall there. Yeah. Right? Just bouncing himself off the wall at the last moment. That yeah. would have been crazy. That would have been clutch. That would have been insane. That would have gotten everybody out of their seats because uh, it was those last three teams. Yeah. <laughs> those last three teams. I'm glad we got him to, you know, get the confidence to go for the jumps. Look, it's tough. Like, honestly, like, and then that kind of goes back to what I was saying earlier, you know, when, when you've gone, you've been doing this world run over and over. Because don't forget, even in those, when we were in that big section, like, he was killing it. Absolutely. But then when you're like, okay, we're going to the Golden Games, these things have remixes. We'd have to change kind of the way I'm thinking and approach these things. Go from Sky Station to now, like, oh, we can all earn points. What's our strategy? Then we go to the Junkyard. You, wait, we have to be 10-point props. You know, maybe I've been running around as a two-point prop. Maybe I've been that guy that's been rolling in with the two-point props. And then being like, oh, yeah, world run. We've got it. No problem. Oh, we have a single life. Oof. And, and that face that he made when he made the jump, that needs to be made <laughs> into an emote for sure. Exactly. Zeke's got it perfectly. Just unbelievable. The <sighs> pressure that these guys were under in those final moments. Still calculating his standings, of course, right. Zeke. It was just too close. It was so unbelievably close. We have to make sure this is correct. Because, I mean, at the end of this, we crowned the first ever Fortnite World Cup creative champions. They are, they are creative world champions. That, the idea of that in itself is insane to me. Yeah. Insane. And it's true too, because how many countries were here? Like more than... More over, than over these uh, 32 players, there was 19 different countries represented across all eight teams. That's, uh, that is a World Cup. That is awesome. It's really cool to see. And again, I'm just holding my breath. Because it could even be the Little Bit Warriors, right? Remember them yeah. in the Junkyard Juke? They came out on top. They had great guard performances. They had great runs, the props, the timing that they had. Everything matters. And when you look back at it and you're really reflecting, all those single props, the timing that Ninja had when he got into the those last couple of seconds, remember? Because it was yep. Ninja and Taldak who ended up getting those props at the last couple. It was literally 20 seconds to go in the map. And they clutch up and make sure that their lead is solidified between yep. first and second. Yeah, I mean. This, this seriously could go any way 
and you're, we're getting closer and closer to finding out who that is, who will ultimately take home that Golden Llama and be the Fortnite World Champions of Creative. I mean, we hope you guys here in the stadium have been enjoying all the action. I, I know it's tense. I know. I'm right there with you. My heart is racing. I I'm, I'm tense too. I feel it. Trust me. And I know for sure these guys on the stage are feeling the exact same way, okay? They're, and they're now feeling, we're getting closer. They're feeling so tense. Just ridiculously tense. Yeah. Unbelievable. I, if I'm them, I'm literally just, my heart is beating. I don't know what to do. I'm twiddling my thumbs. I'm doing that right now with my pen. I'm not even playing. All right. Ooh. We have calculated the final standings. The, the votes have been tallied, and the winner of the Golden Games and the overall winner of the Fortnite Creative World Championship is the Fish Fam! Scissors, the grandfather of the death run of Creative itself has come through. Zan put the entire team on his back and said these coins are nothing. We will claim the gold llama bala and we will claim the million dollar prize pool. Iconic that this team scissors the first World Cup trial that was put out. These three guys were the first qualified players to come through. San clutching up in the final moments. Suzu just getting the first record on that map, on the world run, and for it to be in that style. And then of course, Tyler, we can't forget him. As we see them celebrate together, there's the Golden Llama. And remember, that's a $1 million prize bonus. That's right, they're splitting it four ways. Absolutely massive. But just like you said, I wanna just echo this again. Mad props to the entire team. It was not just one person that carried, it was a, a, a team effort and Zan there in that last moment came in clutch. Scissors tearing through all of the, the traps that needed to be. Tyler back in uh, the prop hunt, needed to just find those shots left and right. Suzu being the first, hitting that massive timer of 525. The Fish Fam come out on top, and, and here is just another breakdown. That Golden Llama being the tiebreakers, and Funky Fighters, let's not forget, they were so close if they had picked up a win there that might have been enough to put them over the edge. But again, every single team here showed up. 19 different countries represented over eight teams through eight weeks of qualifiers, Bala. And it's all culminated right here in this moment. And I have to just see the top four and the top five, really, because Chicken Champions with the Silver Llama, that was pretty much what everybody was calculating. That's why it took so long. I mean, this is, that was close. That was so close within, $30,000 between second and third, and that's how, of course, you do earn that llama depending on which set, but all that prizing cumulative. So there you have it. Creative World Champions, it's done. And it's not even... Ugh, this is only half... By the way, this is day one, and we're halfway through the show. We still have Pro-Am. Oh, by the way, we still have duos tomorrow on Saturday. Oh, by the way, we also have solos on Sunday. Yeah, are you already exhausted? Me too. Me too. What an unbelievable day. It's going to be a great weekend. I can't wait to see what it was ahead. And already this day has started off fantastic with this creative action. I was expecting amazing things, and we got it. That's right, man. Well, of course, we need to crown them the creative champions. So that's enough from us on the desk. Let's actually send it down to Golden Boy to crown ourselves some champions. Thank you so much, gentlemen. What a grueling, grueling run this was, but we have finally come down to it, and we have crowned our champions. But we got to make it official, baby, and there's only one way to do that, and it's right here in the winner's circle. So why don't everyone here in Arthur Ashe Stadium, let's welcome to the stage the Fish Fam. Congratulations, guys. One more time. Give it up for the Fish Fam. 
Gentlemen, those trophies right there, they're yours. Lift them up for the crowd here to see. You're known as the granddaddy of the death run. For you to be able to win this competition off of the thing that you made your name off of, that must have felt incredible. It's amazing, man. I came up with the death run or tried to bring it to Fortnite. These guys support it and love it and so good at it. So I'm just glad they were on my team. <laughs> hey, man, I, and I, I respect that, you know what I mean? Because obviously this is something that is a long, long time coming for you. But I got to talk to you, my man, because I want you, you realize that that one jump that one jump won this group here an extra one million dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you got yourself a million dollars off of a jump. Yeah. How does that feel today, my man? I can't describe it. It's unreal. Like, I don't know what to say, to be honest. What, what, are, you, what are you gonna do, what are you gonna do with the money? Probably, I, I, I don't know. I didn't plan for this. Responsible, he's gonna be responsible with it, right? That's, that's what we're gonna go for, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, sounds good. All right, well, guys, gentlemen, congratulations once again. Your winners and creative world champions, the Fish Fam! It's time to play some Fortnite. And one more goes over and that's it. While the record co takes the first match. Oh, oh that was it. Gotaga and Raven's Revenge. Come on, let's go. That's it. His feet touch the ground. The impulse doesn't go off. Tomoya takes it for the Funky Fighters. They are, they are very close. Yeah, don't. The chicken champions have done enough to round out the final match. Barely missed there. Finally hits the bouncer and he's gone. There it is. Oh, he's holding <laughs> a trophy. Fish Stick is walking out with a silver llama. Let them hear you right now. Let's hear it for all these teams. The cutter crew is keeping up, keeping it very close. They're keeping it very close. Lock, lit, lock, lit. Come on, you have to go. Oh, he hit that person from the blind. Wait, it's okay. He used the rock. The recovery. Right. They knew Gets about the it. the coin. No! this coin right down here. If he can do this Man. without being eliminated. Here it is, the win. Oh, he missed it, but gets it with the trap trigger. The fish fam. Hey guys, I'm Bloom Falconer. I'm from uh, the South Bay in California. My city is called Redondo Beach. Hello, my name is Arkham and I am from California. I'm really excited to come here because the Fortnite World Cup is a great opportunity to show like you have all the best players around the whole world. So I wanna see if I can prove myself to be the best or not. I think our competition is probably, the biggest one is probably ourselves. 
Yeah. Other than that, probably cease and elevate. Yeah. They're really they're, good. Yeah, they're pretty nuts. Yeah. I think the biggest moment I had was finding Arkham as a duo partner, actually. It wasn't anything that really happened in Endgame. I went through a rough patch. I didn't have a duo. I ended up like not working out with my previous duo, and I was kind of nervous because World Cup was coming up, and uh, I ended up finding Arkham, and we played a few games, and we knew it, it, we knew it was clicking, so. Oh, shoot. Holy. All right, I would just like to thank my family and friends for supporting me all the time. I really want to shout out the boys back home. Thank you so much for all the support, my family too, especially. And we're really excited to be here at the Fortnite World Cup. Hey guys, it's Kitty Plays, and I'm in the player lounge right now. And I want to know if these guys could describe Fortnite in three words, what would it be? For me, it's cool dance moves. Sweaty, fun, and colorful. I feel like the, the most common one from me and my friends when we play Fortnite is he's one shot. So, yes, and he's never one shot. It's, yeah. <laughs> Wild, creative, and fun. Those are some good words. Um, unique, challenging, and, uh, and creative. Yeah. Four, nine. Amazing, amazing. <sighs> Clapping bots, bro. I appreciate that one, yeah. If you could describe Fortnite in three words, what would it be? Super, hyper, entertainment, yeah. 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 <laughs> like that. Run, build, bush. I don't know. <laughs> Fingers crossed, man. That's my three words. Fingers crossed, man. Yeah. <laughs> My name is Aiden. I'm from Ohio, and I'm a professional Fortnite player for Ghost. My name is Sean from British Columbia, Canada, and I'm also a professional player for Ghost. Sean and I were both looking for a partner. We just tested it out, and we ended up uh, taking fifth place the first duo week of the Open Qualifiers. He is more of a passive player, and I'm more of an aggressive player. I think we really like just combine, and we help each other out a lot. Like, if I'm gonna push a fight, and it's a bad fight, he'll just, uh, he's passive, so he'll make sure I don't get eliminated. It's an honor to be here, really, with all these players. There's people here that I've never heard of, and you know, they could be millionaires by the end of the week, so we just stay confident we're gonna do it. We just full send it. It's a really good feeling just to be able to play against everybody, and you gotta be elite to get here, so it's just a good time. Stay on your grind, and don't let anyone stop you. Island, I have taken over. This is where our observers are. So the guys in game that are following all of the players around, getting their perspectives. And I am joined by one of our observers here. Tell me a little bit about, about yourself. Who are you? What are you doing? What's your job? Sure, yeah, my name's Teko. I'm one of the head observers here. So we like to capture the in-game portion as well as we can. And we really want to make sure that we're showing off the game correctly. So we have to organize the teams properly and then my job specifically is to make sure we're covering the action that we really want to see. Makes sense. A huge fan experience that you are essentially having to capture with all of these screens here. It can get a little bit hectic here, I've heard. How do you guys keep calm? Yeah, uh, really, we're just a huge team atmosphere here. Like, we have fun. It's kind of just, you know, like us, any old sports team, really. Like, we're all best friends. We hang out after. We have fun on the way out here. We have fun when we're here. And it's always a good atmosphere in here. People come here to relax. It's the island. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day to talk to me about this. Fortnite is all about fun first and foremost. So while you guys are out here in the crowd at home watching the World Cup this weekend, you have Teco to thank for all of those awesome observer shots. Hi, uh, I'm Kat and I'm from Australia. I think Salty is definitely by far my favourite drop spot since there's a lot of loot and it's uh, central of the map so it's easy to rotate. Uh, right now my biggest competition is definitely my duo partner Soz. He's also competing in the Souls competition. 
Wow, it's pretty, yeah, it's definitely heavy, but yeah. Wow, it actually looks really cool. Can't wait to see you at the Fortnite World Cup. Lachlan, I'm here in New York for the Creative World Cup and the Fortnite Pro-Am. The Creative World Cup is a lot of fun and actually very excited for the Fortnite Pro-Am with Liam McIntyre. So I actually met Liam at the Pro-Am last year. Uh, he was Muzelk's partner, super cool dude, down to play some games, looking forward to it. We haven't had any time in to play together yet, but I think it'll be fine. So the charity I've chosen is the Logan Pediatric Hospital. Uh, and this is like a local hospital back home in Queensland where I'm from. My brother broke birth in his arms, had to spend like two weeks there back in the day. So I'm just trying to get back to the local area. My favorite weapon right now in the current meta, probably leaning towards the combat shotgun or the pump. Uh, I switch between both of those. Probably gonna lean more towards the combat for the Pro-Am, but with the recent nerf, maybe the pump, I'll see. It depends if I'm taking long range or close range fights. Probably more long range because I'm playing a bit more safe today. So for the last prom in LA, I actually dressed up as my uh, codename Elfskin. Uh, unfortunately this time, won't be looking as cool. I got a nice little kit from the whole team. We got uh, all of our flags on one side from each country that we're from. And of course the Creative World Cup logo and our names on the back. Because you know what they say, you look good, you play great. What's going on guys, Jordan Fisher here with Ewok, Sundown and Zeke, and uh, Ewok and I wanna show you guys some, uh, some ASL that we use to communicate when maybe where we're dropping, certain things that need to happen late game in competitive, uh, in competitive situations. Uh, are you guys cool to yeah, no, learn that some of that with good. us? You guys can try this at home as well, maybe if you're in the stadium here. So it's very important obviously to be able to call out where it is that you are going, maybe where you're gonna drop, right? You wanna talk about it a little bit beforehand, it's very important. It's really simple, actually. You're you're gonna have the letter that you uh, like the beginning of it. Maybe it's Salty Springs, right? You're just gonna have salty an S, springs. and okay. then show what it is on the other side, right? Gotcha. Okay, there's there's a handful Spring. of them you can do. Oh, do Lucky Landing, Lucky Landing. right? You do Paradise Palms. Paradise Palms. Those are some okay. some general POIs, right? That are very important. Uh, some late game tips, right? Maybe you need to tell somebody. Okay, tunnel, tunnel, tunnel. Tunneling, gotcha. Tunnel. So, oh, so you like make a tunnel. You literally just make a tunnel, make a tunnel gotcha. with your hands. It's that simple. It's right here, right? This last one is, is interesting. Um, I don't really know how to explain it per se, but we're just going to show you and it's gotcha. this right here. So that looks like a neo tilted. No, so he said it was situational, so it can't be neo tilted. Look, can you show us one more yeah, time? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's gotcha. this right here. It's, So it definitely, that to me looks like high ground retake because it's like he's going up yes. and then they're able to get it and then they're good. So they start shooting. It's definitely a high ground high retake. Ground re so now you guys know sense. how we say high ground retake. I mean, thank you so much. Yeah, for absolutely. It's, it's, it's our pleasure. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Jonesies, Bonesies, and everyone in between, welcome back. We are now into the Pro-Am pre-show in just a little bit. You are going to see 100 of the top Fortnite players and celebrities battling it out on the Battle Royale Island. My name is Sundown, joined here by Bala TW. Bala, how you doing today, man? I'm doing Amazing. Literally, we couldn't have a better ending to the creative finals. And to top it all off, we get to go right into the program. We paired 
a lot of our favorite Fortnite personalities with a celebrity figure, and it's, as it proves to be many times, it's going to be awesome again. It's a lot of fun. We've seen a ton of great gameplay coming out of the summer block party back in LA, and we're excited to do it again. And there's actually some pairs here who have played before. We'll get into that a little bit later, but excited to be here and excited to see these guys take the stage and also to get BR kicked off. But let's talk a little bit about what we saw in the creative final. I think it's almost poetic that Scissors was able to take it away on the last world run, his team known for the death runs, known for being one of the first major pioneers of creative as a whole. It was a game mode people hadn't got, and it took the Fortnite world by storm. And to see them clutch up in the Golden Games in the final moment, and it was the team decision too. We got to listen to the calm. Yeah. Iconic. That's basically all you can say about that. The first to even have their creative trials to qualify in and then, of course, the first three players to qualify for the Creative World Cup. So that's all I can say. Iconic. That's it. It, it. Like it has to be, and you know they're celebrating after the fact. The Fish Fam able to get out there and do it, and it was kind of a come from behind because they were there. They're relatively consistent over the course of it, but they really caught up to speed. And for me, that's largely about what Fortnite and Creative, in particular, for this final was about. How quickly can you adapt to what's going around, uh, going on around you, and how are you able to work with your teammates to maximize your potential? Fish Fam able to do that. Congratulations to all of you guys. It was a pleasure to watch that and also just the fact that they beat the world run so fast we spent weeks testing that before that moment there had been three people period who had ever finished it and we watched them absolutely destroy yeah. the course the second try they even attempted and they completed it faster than they even did in the next one so just unbelievable performance and it's got to be also the rest of those guys who played in creative unbelievable there but it's not over here We've got the program coming up. We're here at the Fan Festival. People are hanging out. People are having a good time. People are hanging out, having a good time, and filtering inside as well. The players are getting ready. We're almost to the point where we're ready to go, but we still need to talk about what's up for grabs here in the pro -Am. $3 million on the line, but per usual, all going to charity for a good cause, for some fun. Actually got to go up to the players' lounge, talk to some of the guys, and they're incredibly happy to just be here, meet the other players, have the positive interactions all around gaming. It's about those shared experiences, getting out there with your friends, interacting, having the time, whether it's on BR, in real life, whatever you need to do, that's what video games are all about. Yeah, that's what it is all about. And I've seen actually a number of World Cup qualified players who are gonna be playing tomorrow and on Sunday, just hanging around doing some, you know, fan meets, doing some signings, all sorts of stuff, and just overall having a good time watching the games, playing in the fan festival. I mean, you need to get used to this environment. If you haven't been down here, if you have a ticket, come on down, come hang out, check those out, because there is so much going on, so many people to talk to, the players are around here, we're hanging out. And also, don't forget, if you're at home, you can tune in and join the fun. You can use the hashtag Fortnite World Cup. You can go to fortnite.com backslash watch. There is so many ways for you to get involved and just be a part of this. This entire thing is a spectacle. It's more than just the Battle Royale and the stuff that's playing and it's about these players and celebrating the awesome stuff that they do. The interactions, whether online or in person, are amazing. I haven't yet gotten a chance to take a look at that hashtag after that Creative World Cup, after Sand hit that jump. I can't wait to do it later. Go back in time on Twitter and see what that's, and see what the reaction was. Well, just see, because during one of the tests, I mean, we had like a relatively similar moment. The entire stadium was empty, and I thought I was about to pass oh out. Like, I hit the castle jump, and I literally stood up, and I was like, I don't know what to do with my hands. Like, I'm good. This is the most amazing moment. So then to watch Sand have that moment, have his team surround him, and know that you lifted yourself above in what was literally their last chance. That decided it. if you don't take that home right there, you don't get the golden lobby. You don't have the thing you need to then be the first ever creative world champion. And that moment is just the start to an amazing weekend. We're going to have so many more little moments like that that will define people's gaming careers, or maybe it'll just be the kickstart of it. Yeah, it will be the kickstart of it. I'm pretty sure for a lot of these guys, it's gonna be the kickstart. It started off in the Fortnite World Cup all the way back in April. They played for 10 weeks. They competed. Prime's gonna be a little bit of a preview of that. It's gonna be amazing. All the preparation, all the hard work, all the friendships and 
you know, the heartbreaks, everything. It's going to be so cool to watch. And one thing I'm particularly excited about with the Pro-Ams is seeing the evolution of just kind of, I don't want to say the casual game, but these guys really kind of press it. You've seen every single time somebody is bringing something new, whether it's the pressure of professional players or the celebs who are coming. I mean, just Joey Bosa last time was doing this like reverse ramp top rotation and it was gorgeous, but the players are ready and out on the stage. So enough from us. We are going to kick off the Celebrity Pro-Am with a pair you probably saw before. It is Robert Abisi and Ghost Aiden. Robert now being one half of the electronic duo known as Lost Kings. You know them from their songs Bad and You. And before they were famous, their first paid gig was in a bowling alley. Him and Aiden competed last year at our last time in the Pro-Am and were one interaction short of taking home that top spot. Yeah, they came in second, lost only by four points in a 1v1 that went Symphony's way. Aiden against Symphony, what a memorable moment from that Pro-Am. And Aiden is also one of two controller players who has qualified for the duo portion of the Fortnite World Cup. But now on to our next duo, Mario Hesgonza and Nick Marks Mario, of course, being the professional shooting guard for the Portland Trail Blazers. He has also represented Croatia on their national team. And then Nick Merckx, all about the MFAM rep in there, had a fantastic barbecue last week. Definitely recommend you check that out. Did some awesome stuff for his community, and he's excited to be here. Originally competed in Gears of War, made his name through streaming, and now has a very thriving community. Yeah, Mario Hezonja on the Portland Trail Blazers. hails out of Croatia. We're going to go ahead and continue on inside the Arthur Ashe Stadium. We have Nick Shanholtz and Ghost Sean. Nick Shanholtz being the other half of the Lost Kings duo, of his brother being Robert Abisi. And of course, they are best known for tons of awesome remixes by Imagine Dragons, Vance Joy. And then standing next to him, there is Sean. Fortnite Pro who's, you know, competing with Aiden. You talked about it. Yeah, he was one of the first original young lords coming out of North America. The Canadian player, so incredibly strong and gifted and known for intelligent decision making at all points in the game. If you're able to eliminate him, congratulations, because not a whole lot of people are able to do that. Yeah. We continue on again. It's going to be this time somebody that we all know. It's Nav and Tifu. And you can see them excited to be here. Don't know how much of an introduction these two need. Nod, the Canadian rapper, singer, songwriter, and record producer. And then Tifu. I mean, come on. One TwitchCon qualified week three of the solo competition in first place. You watch him all the time because he streamed all of those games. No delay. Live saying, bring on the world. Nothing is stopping me. And he is here to upset the status quo at the pro end. He wants a title. Wants a title. We're going to go ahead and listen to see if they're prepared to take that. Let's listen in. Okay, Nav, do you have any messages for your opponents today? Um, just don't be surprised if um, I box you and uh, trap kill you or something. So, yeah, and I think we'll, we'll, be, we'll be pretty high up in the rankings. All right, get it. Did you expect anything but confidence from that duo? Nav has been in there with the scrims. Now on to the next one. We have uh, some more veterans here. Wit Lowry and Cloaksy. This is now actually Wit's third time competing on the Pro-Am stage. Him and Cloaksy have been there. Wit is ready to play. He's excited to be here. Best known as the American rapper. Before he got into music, he was a big fan of graphic design. He got his name coming out from Witty, but he wants a victory on the stage, and I mean, what more do you need to know about Cloaksy? Yeah, Cloaksy wants one too. He was at the summer block party, didn't manage to break top 20, but this time, who knows? He won the, the tw TwitchCon fall skirmish with Tifu. He's experienced, he's played in plenty of skirmishes, and he's played in programs before, so we'll see what he can bring out today. And he's used to playing on the main stage. And on to our next duo, we have Ashley Rickards in Exile. Ashley, best known as the actress for her roles on One Tree Hill in Awkward. She also rides and trains horses and works with a pet therapy program that helps special needs children and the elderly. That is the best fact I've heard. Big fan of that as well. And then Exile, one of the famous Russian Fortnite streamers. He's a big fan, wanted to be on the stage, wants to compete among the best of the best. And honestly, he looks ready, busting out the floss emote right there. Looks ready. We'll see if he is ready when he takes the stage and gets ready to compete. And now it's time to hear from them. Of course, 
from Ashley Rickards. Let's listen to see what she had to say ahead of the competition. All right, Ashley, do you have any words for your opponents today? I'm coming for you, and if I'm not, I'm, I'm hiding from you. But I'm coming for you first, so watch it. But, like, not too hard. If you cannot see me coming, that'd be amazing. That doesn't seem like ind indecisiveness. That seems like a solid plan. Hide or go for them. We're going to go continue inside the stadium. We have a duo that I think a lot of people are going to be excited for. We're going to start with Sagala and Dr. Lupo. And I mean, what more can you say about these pair? Dr. Lupo, of course, you know him, one of Time's top 25 most influential people on the internet. Let's see if he can be influential in this game. Sagala, the English DJ record producer and remixer from Norwich, Norfolk. He's had six singles charts in the top 10 on the UK singles. That's incredibly impressive. They want to have a positive showing here. Lupo, you know, after the last promo, he's got a little bit of a chip on his back. He wants to show up and I'll play the wrestling show. He's not too old to hang with the best of these kids. Yeah, he is not. We'll see if he can perform. I've been playing all sorts of games with him this week. He's ready to play. We're going to continue forward with Dante Basco and Tim the Tatman. And I mean Dante Basco or Rufio. You also might know him as Prince Zuko from Avatar The Last Airbender. And then Tim the Tatman, one half of the Girthquake, has been there forever all about the Twitch stream involving his community, the Tatman Army, they're about it. And when you see him on the stage, like, I wouldn't want to run into that duo, whether it's in a back alley or in the kitchen, they look scary. I wouldn't want to, but when I see that picture of Tim, I just have to say, that is so adorable. I mean, you look like he's got, like, got the hands out there, 70, uh, 72 hours pose, ready to fight, and then just the most adorable, friendly smile. Like, I just wanted to give him a hug. But now we're going to go on to the next pair. We have John Ha and Wade CN. Wade being the Fortnite streamer all the way from China. He says the Flintnock is how he is able to capitalize on the island. John Wan is a dancer and choreographer to the dance group, the Kinjaz. He makes appearances on World of Dance in the Dance Arena competition. And sometimes he even teaches dance at their dojo. So we'll see if the Chinese competition out of Wade is going to step up. We're going to get a taste of that also in the World Cup tomorrow. But here in pro -Am, we'll see if they can compete, see if they can hang. And I'm all about the flint knock plays, man. If you're bringing that out and you're going at people, I've seen some ridiculous clips that he's pulled out with it, but some more players who are capable of ridiculous clips, whether it's on the basketball court or on the Fortnite Island, it is Aaron Gordon and Ali A. Ali A being one of the original Fortnite content creators. In July of 2015, he's awarded two Guinness World Records for his gaming channel. And then Aaron Gordon, the American professional basket player for the Orlando Magic. He plays as both a power forward and a small forward. And as you can tell, he's not that small. He's six foot nine out there looking to tower over and dunk on the competition. And we've seen him do it so many times in the dunk competitions. It's awesome to see. And Ali A does something that I didn't even know was possible, which is get Guinness Book world, of World Records in YouTube. That's insane. Record breakers all around him. Now another pair you're probably familiar with. Chandler Riggs and One Shot Girl. You saw them at the Creative Showdown. That is the most adorable wave. And Chandler broke first, but Chandler Riggs, the actor and DJ, best known as Carl Grimes on The Walking Dead. And then One Shot Girl, the Fortnite YouTuber and streamer, previously had a PC world record for most Fortnite squad elims in one round when she was playing with some of her other competitors. Tfue, Cloaksy, and Nick A30. Let's have a listen in with what One Shot Girl said ahead of the competition. All right, Julie, do you have any messages for the other opponents? I do. I have the best teammate, Chandler Riggs. Our communication, our teamwork is on point, and we are coming for every single person in the lobby. So we will see you guys out there. You love to see it from One Shot Girl. Awesome there. We're going to continue forward to introduce our next pair. It's going to be Sarunas Jackson and Action Jackson. So a Jackson pair. The Jackson duo there. Also, big congratulations to Action Jackson. Just going full time there with his stream. Paul, you're well on your way. And Sarunas Jackson is an actor and writer who you might recognize from HBO series Insecure. He has also played professional basketball in Asia. So you know what? He might be able to dunk on him too. Uh, that he might. The Jackson 2. See if they'll show up here today at the Pro-Am. 
Of course, such an awesome duel. See if there's action ahead for them. We're going to continue forward. Freddy Stroma and Yoshi. Freddy Stroma, an English actor known for his roles in movies like Pitch Perfect or Harry Potter movies or as Dick on Tarly on Game of Thrones. Yeah, big fan of all of those roles and then paired up with Yoshi, the coach slash commentator slash manager slash do all for Solari. We've seen him on the World Cup broadcast. If you've watched any of the French streams, you know him incredibly analytical and intelligent when it comes to Fortnite. This duo is going to look to break down their opponents. And the next pair is a pair that might be tough to break down. Tons of experience coming out between Cody Walker and Toypey. Cody Walker, the American actor who starred in the show in the rough. He's also known for his work in the Fast and Furious movie, Furious 7, where he helped complete it after his brother's passing. Join me, he was part of Millennium Team on League of Legends, so another one of those former law pros who have been over here, and he's been a part of that roster also as a coach, so I mean, a lot of knowledge being brought to the stage. Cody was also at the summer block party, so he's got the experience. And I gotta give some love to Cody because I just found out that he's been a PC gamer since 1996, and he played games like Mech Warrior 2, and that's where I started too, PC games, FPSs, and it's just awesome. We're gonna continue forward, always. We're just moving in the pace here. Max Carver and Nick A30. Max Carver, the actor who's had roles on shows like Desperate Housewives, Teen Wolf, hold on, what are they? Oh, little flex from Nick A30 and Max Carver. They're ready to play, they're getting exercise even. They're getting their body flowing, their blood flowing. Excuse me, did you see Little, did you say Little Flex? Did little you flex. see Nick's arm? He's got better, guns! Yeah, you better have a permit or something. I don't know who let you loot before, but like, you have to get on the battle bus. Like, you're not allowed to walk around with two legendary ARs like that. And then Max Carver on the side, like you said, Desperate Housewives, Team Wolves, The Leftovers, and he actually has an identical twin brother who stars in many of the roles. But now on to the next pair, because we're excited to get them out there. It's Graham Rogers and I Ferris. Graham is an actor known for his TV roles on Revolution, Ray Donovan, and A Atypical. He's originally from Pennsylvania and moved to LA when he was 18 to pursue acting. Well, looks like it worked pretty well. And then I Ferris was born and raised in Saudi Arabia, came all the way to New York City to compete, has been around the Fortnite scene from the very beginning, and one of their major streamers and content creators. We'll see if that T pose from the both of them is going to be very, if, if it's gonna hold up. Continue forward, another duo that I think a, people, a lot of people are gonna be excited about, not that we're not excited about everybody, it's Sean O'Malley and Courage JD. Wow, listen to that roar, the other half of the Girthquake, and Courage just got knocked out. Sean did compete in that first Pro-Am as well. He's there, he's on the stage. These two towering, wait, what's, what's going on right now? Excuse me, who, no. Hey. Hey, Why do you listen up. I know this is a very exciting time, but there's something very serious and near and dear to my heart that I think we should take a listen to. Roll the tape. Hey everyone. As you know, streaming platforms like Twitch and YouTube have been around for ages. And very handsome, talented, good-looking gamers like myself need to take the necessary time to look after our old and brittle elders. One day, you get up out of your gaming chair and you're just not as quick. Or your jokes, well, they all turn to dad jokes. Hello, my name is Courage JD, and today I'm extremely excited to announce my brand new charity. It's a cause near and dear to my heart. It's for our good friend, Dr. Lupo, who gets older every single day. In the past six months, hand-eye coordination, eyesight, and his hearing has completely gone downhill. So please, join me in supporting the Geriatric Gamer Foundation so my friend, Dr. Lupo, can get the help he so desperately needs. Thank you. All right. Wow. Yes, Just, good. I mean, you... Uh, he, do he doesn't look particularly happy about that, but he looks like he has something to say. He's going to type it on in there and, oh, just going to fire it right back on Adam. Let's zoom on in. Punch on that, and he says, oh, <laughs> what, what was that? 
was able to, you know, get Courage back a little bit, give the opportunity there. But you know what, Jack, I appreciate the foundation. If you are going to start it, Ben could use all the help he could get. Now we're going to go on to our next duo, and I'm going to need you guys to do something important up in the stands rather than clapping or yelling for them. I need you to put your hands up high in the air and wave them back and forth for Jordan Fisher and Ewok. Make sure you get a nice and loud, give them that applause. Jordan Fisher, the American singer, dancer, actor, quite literally does everything. I'm not even sure he's human. And then Ewa, the 13-year-old Twitch streamer, is completely deaf, uses ASL to communicate both with her partner and then uses the visual indicators. She's best known, well, for chasing down that man right next to her in the Pro-Am and making him pay. Yeah, the most memorable moment from the Pro-Am at, at the summer block party when he, she chased down Jordan Fisher and Dr. Lupo, just unbelievable. And uh, we did see a bit beforehand, they might be the actual best Fortnite duo ever, .com. You can check them out there as well and see them on the stage. They're going to be looked to pressing it, but we're on to the next pair because they're excited to be here. It's Jordan Jones and Alexia Ray. Alexia being the social media star who originally became popular on Vine. So Vine, there you go. She's now a member of the popular YouTube channel Glams and has her own popular YouTube channel as well. Jordan Jones, she finished fifth on the dance reality show, Abby's Ultimate Dance Competition in 2012. Since then, she's grown her own YouTube fall by making vlogs and music videos. Uh, just an awesome pair together. We'll see what they can bring to us today on the Pro-Am. Continue forward, of course, introducing all, we're gonna have a sort, we're actually gonna listen in to what Jordan Jones had to say ahead of the competition. All right, Jordan, do you have any words for your opponents today? Oh yeah, I got my game face on today. And me and Alexia, my partner, we got the girl power. All you boys, just watch out. We're gonna be sniping. We're gonna be getting that victory royale. So peace out, boys. Go to sleep. Hey, get it! <laughs> Good level of confidence there coming out of Jordan. And Alexia will also be confident having been in this environment before, having been around major Fortnite competitions. She has no issue battling with the best of them. Now on to our next duo. It's RJ Mitty and Moyers, 87. RJ, best known for his role for, as portraying Walter Jr. in Breaking Bad. He also has cerebral palsy, as his character does on the show. Had an opportunity to talk with him last night. Just a fantastic human being and really, really involved in gaming. Wants to be out there. Moyers, 87, is a Spanish YouTuber who has brittle bone disease, but he says, hey, that doesn't stop me from competing with the best of the best on the top level in this pair is here to show that they will not be held back. They will be taking names and going after everyone. Yeah, and part of the reason I love this duo so much is RJ Mitty does such great things, but also Moyers, I love his reasoning that he likes gaming is because it gives him a window into doing impossible things, which is just awesome. So we're going to continue forward, of course. It's Oak King and Sinu, who traveled all the way out from South Korea. There they are, and they're known for this. Sinu. One of the players who played at the World Cup, or the uh, Open, the Korea Open. Are you watching that? That was the sickest that? intro I think I've ever seen. One props to the cameraman too. Props to Sino as well. One of the players who came over and traveled out of the Asia region to compete in NA West and came so close to qualifying a number of times. People were looking like, wait, who are these? Why are they on the scoreboard? Who is this? And he was taking names and now he's here to compete on the main stage. On to our next duo, we have Dead Drevel and Oscar Lot. Dead Drevel is the Mexican YouTuber who currently lives in Chicago. He creates content across three uh, channels and is a gaming and entertainment streamer. His three daughters are watching him today from Houston. Shout out to you three daughters and everyone out there with family in the crowd. Oscar Lord is an Argentinian YouTuber who plays Fortnite and recently started getting into his own music, trying to sing, and has found a lot of success and help there. And on to our next duo. We have Wermuturo and Chelsea. Wermuturo is a YouTube vlogger, gamer, and sketch comedian. He's been nominated for a number of awards for his channel. As this year, one of them was the top 10 Mexican YouTubers. And then Jelty, a com Mexican competitive player that came so close to qualifying. That's also his little cheeky face reveal there. Got to talk to him last night. He was just like, hey, I'm happy to be on zero ping. Nobody is stopping me now. Yeah, Jelty had an incredible rise throughout the World Cup qualifiers. You touched on it a little bit, but a strong performer all the way through. 
He plays Fortnite every day, he says, so who knows? Maybe he'll win a lot of money for his charity of choice. I think he has the penchant to do it. He's one of the most aggressive players there. And now on to our next duo. We have Greer Gamer and the Slayer 360. Greer, an actress and former beauty queen, best known as her role on Lisa Miller in the hit TV series, Awkward. She held the title of Miss Teen Malibu for two consecutive years. That's the back-to-back, -back, and she was Miss Regional California Teen in 2011. She also said she will never not play as Peach in Mario Party or Toad in Mario Kart. The Slayer 360, a YouTube from Mexico who says that he cannot say the letter R correctly, but I bet he can roll it. Yeah, I bet you he can. I definitely can't, so we have something in opposite, I guess. We're going to continue forward, of course. Zorman and Jerry. Jared Abramson are joining us on the floor. There they are. Ooh, I did, that, that's an awesome hair flip right there. Come on, Zorman, do it again. Just about to say, Zorman, all about the hair flip there. A famous Spanish YouTuber and magician. He studied programming and computer science. Jared Abramson is the Canadian actor known for his role in American Animals, Hello Destroyer, and Travelers. But I think the more interesting the facts, he's a trained mixed martial artist and Muay Thai kickboxer, has a record of 110 and 200 in each. But his MMA name, ready, Bala, get this, Wolf Blood. What? Really? Wolf Blood. That's Dude, That's crazy. terrifying. Like, I want, don't want to run into anybody like that. Now, our next duo, Robles and Chigua. Robles, a well-known Argentinian YouTuber who lives in Olvaria, a province of Buenos Aires. Fun fact, he likes arugula and struggles to not eat it with every meal. And his partner there is Chigua, an Argentinian Fortnite player who used to play a lot on console, but now that he's wanted to up his game, he's gone to keyboard and mouse, and he's seen a lot of success in rapid growth. That's awesome. A lot of players are doing the same thing, making the switch to controller to PC, so maybe some people will become fans of him. Next duo is David Williams and Wildcat. David Williams being the professional poker player and popular Magic the Gathering player. He also competed on tons of awesome shows, such as season seven of the popular Fox cooking show, MasterChef. And honestly, if you want to cook for me, let me know, because he's looking to try and open up a restaurant. I'll come through, and then Wildcat has been around the scene forever. He's been playing games forever. You can check him out. We have a soundbite from both of these guys. Let's listen in to what these two competitors had to say. All right, guys, what message do you have for your opponents? Marksman and JT Brown need to stay on the far side of the map. Avoid us if they want to have a chance to do well. Come the other teams are in trouble. Uh, most of the celebrities usually are pretty bad. I've seen a lot of these pro-ams. Unfortunately for them, I might have more hours playing Fortnite than most of the pros. I mean, I play all the time, but they're lucky. I get handicapped. Uh, I usually play on an iPad. Today I have to play on a, a controller, Xbox controller, but luckily I brought my Xbox with me. Been in the hotel grinding. He's been exploring New York City. He doesn't need to practice, but uh, I'm ready. All right, good luck, guys. Wow, wise words from them there. And also calling out their buddies a little bit, saying, hey, JT and Markson, don't come anywhere near us, but our next duo, we have Michael Dreyer and Myth. Myth being one of the original builders in the community, all about it, getting a little bit in there, all about the dance moves. Myth was the one who pioneered a lot of the initial meta, encouraged people and pumped positivity into the community. Very popular streamer. And then Michael Dreyer is the American actor best known for his roles on Mr. Robot, Deception, and Sneaky Pete. In 2018, he ran the Honolulu Marathon, and he'll be running the New York City Marathon in 2019. Next up, we have Max Wax Motif, apologize for that, and Musilk, the Australian players. The first one, Wax Motif, the Australian DJ and music producer. He, he has influences from R&B to disco to UK bass, so all over the place, really, for Wax Motif. Yes, of course. Musilk, the American YouTuber who's actually based in Sydney, in South Wales. He likes to keep his content humorous. I always think of him as the player who tried to knock somebody off the mountain with a shopping cart in the first pro end. He was not successful, just to let you know. But on to our next duo. Alexander is the Japanese-Peruvian actor and model who has so many names that are amazing, but the last of which is Diablo. And then you have Vodka, the Japanese YouTube personality, whose skill level, he says, is as good as some of the best pros around the world. He says sometimes he has a bad mouth, but a gentle heart. It's okay, we'll help you fix up that filter here with a family-friendly audience, but they look excited to be here. And look at those shades on Alexander. Yeah, those are stylish. I wonder if you could see inside, though. We're going to continue forward. The Japanese players, it's Ellie and Nekukun. 
Ellie, who joined us at the last prom. He's a Japanese dancer and performer for Jap Japan's number one boy band, Sandaime J Soul Brothers. Yes, and he also has a solo rap project where he goes by the name of Crazy Boy. So let's see if he can get crazy on him today. And then Nekukon is his partner, the Japanese Fortnite streamer, who is pumped to be here, excited to take it on. Let's hear what Ellie had to say before the competition. All right, Ellie, do you have any message for your opponents today? Okay, uh, I'm from Tokyo. Watch out for Crazy Boy. Sayonara! Bang! Like we said, got to watch out for the crazy boy. He's on a mission, wants to make it happen. Now our next pair is Claire Grant and Jacob. Claire Grant is the American actress, model, and producer who co-founded Team Unicorn, which has made a web series and music video parodies, including Geek and Gamer Girls and All About That Bass. Fun fact, she says her burps have been known to rattle windows. Hey, we got that in common. And then Jacob is a YouTube personality all the way from Poland, here to play some Fortnite, tear up the stage, and he says he wants to win some money for charity, but he's also just looking to have a good time. And that he will have for sure. I'm absolutely amazed by that. We're gonna continue forward. It's Business Boy and Frizz. Frizz, another Polish streamer who, you know, he enjoys Fortnite. He and his, look at that pink hair, it's awesome. His girlfriend has some as well, so awesome duo there. We'll see if this duo, though, of Business Boy and Frizz can do anything on the stage. Business Boy, the music producer who has worked with artists like Lil Nas X, Party Next Door. He's extremely athletic, as you can tell. We'll see if he can do anything with that athleticism on the stage. Yes, and he has been called the basketball, basketball Dre before. And now, just after them, we have Symphony and Vinny Pergola. Vinny Pergola being one half of the Phantoms duo who's competing today. He was also an actor turned DJs. You might recognize him from shows like Not So Raven, The Bernie Mac Show, and Misbehave. Now, Symphony looking fantastic today. Definitely showered, got the gel in his hair. All about the streams, the content, and the fast edits, originally known as the best editor in the West. He pioneered some of those quick resets and go making people look foolish. Yeah, still did it through the entire time in the summer skirmish. Gonna continue through Kyle Catlin from the Phantoms as well. And you heard Sundown say his brother was a teen actor. He was also a teen actor. He played on shows just like the Bernie Mac show, which we already talked about, and 10 Things I Hate About You. And they became the duo that you know them about. It's the Phantoms. Moving forward as well, his duo partner, Kay. We just saw him perform in the Creative World Cup. And he's a British YouTuber, Twitch streamer, org owner, all this sorts of stuff. He's also known for the meme, you know it. That's insane, bro, that's crazy. That's crazy, bro. But now our next duo, all the way from down under, trying to prove they're here for you. It will not be easy, but they're hoping that one day they will find peace on the Battle Royale Island. Alice in Wonderland is the uh, Australian electronic dance music producer. She has been best known for, well, her most recently, her single, Peace, her album, run in so many amazing things. She sings, plays the cello, and is also just a genuine human being. Likes to stress that it's all about positive mental health and being there for the other person. Loser Fruit, a very popular Australian streamer, part of the Click House, which is, includes multiple of Australian content creators, and she was one of the she was the first Australian Twitch streamer to hit one million followers. In fun fact, she can do a perfect cartwheel. That's amazing for Loser Fruit there. On the floor still, they're gonna grace us with their presence. It's Desmond Chiam and Mr. Fresh Asian. And we have a lot to say about Mr. Fresh Asian because he's somebody that participated in almost all the World Cup qualifiers and had just a fun time doing it and really plays highly in some of them too. Yes, and he was screaming it the entire time. Got a chance to talk with Desmond last night, the actor, writer, known for the Shannara Chronicles, Magic Camp, and NCIS Los Angeles. He also break dances under the alias B-Boy Desmond. And back in the day, he used to min-max on EverQuest. We talked about min-maxing earlier in min- Whoa, 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 Excuse me? Let's introduce your new champions at the end of the day. I am WWE Superstar Xavier Woods. And I am YouTube sensation Chris Danker, a.k.a. Chris Danger, a.k.a. Dank Ops. I have a YouTube channel called Up, Up, Down, Down, and we're almost at 
2 million subscribers. So I'd appreciate if everyone watching would subscribe right now. Thank you very much. And a long time ago, I was on America's Got Talent, and I didn't win, and I'm still salty about it. I am a six-time and current reigning WWE World Tag Team Champion! And not even three hours ago, I bought this title at Walmart. Now, the teams that you're gonna see here today all have one celebrity and one professional gamer. Oh, but not but not us, baby boy. See, no, no, what, no, 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 no. What, 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 what you're looking at is not one, but two celebrities. Two. And not one, but two professional gamers. Two. And that is the advantage that we are going to use in order to run wild through our competition. And at the end of the day, you are looking at the 2019 Fortnite World Cup Pro-Am Champions. Now hit our music. Oh, oh y'all ain't got music for us? No, no music. Oh, y'all got, okay. We don't need no music. I don't, I don't, I, you know what, Xavier, thank you so much. It seems to now be a tradition. The first Pro-Am, he walked in with CDN the third on his shoulders. The second one, he crowned himself king before the competition. And now he just hops on the line, grabs a microphone and declares themselves the champs with belts. And also the disparity between those belts is moderately hilarious. It is hilarious. And for the next time, can we get them some music, please? Yeah, I was like just about something. to say that definitely, we need the music. Cause if Xavier's gonna be up there, like I can't, you don't even see anything happening, but yeah. Ooh, that was a lot going on, but enough of the interruption. We need to get into the last fifth of the players. It's Liam McIntyre and Lachlan. Lachlan, of course, being the Australian gamer known for posting Fortnite and Minecraft related content on his self-titled channel, which has earned more than 12 million subscribers, has been around the scene from the beginning, played in the creative before this. And then Liam McIntyre, the Australian actor, best known for playing the lead in two of the Spartacus series. He has also appeared in Legend of Hercules, The Flash, Gears of War 4, and Pulse, amongst many other roles. And fun fact, he's never tasted Coca-Cola. Well, you're not messing a whole lot there. D4, it's Pai Tamben, Joga, and Detonator out of Brazil. Pai Tem Tamben Joga is the Brazilian YouTuber. He told us he actually only played Battle Royale and he uh, he won his very first match. But then, I, wait, what is that beard is amazing. The, the, uh, you're looking at the beard. I'm looking what at the outfit? Brazilian national team, like almost Fighter Lord Detonator having none of it. They are, I just, you know what? I just want to hear what Detonator has to say because that is incredible. Everything about that is amazing. And please tell us more. All right, Detonator, what is some trash talk you have for your opponents? If you are my opponent, you'll be eliminated. Don't cross me. Don't do this, because you'll be eliminated by the power of the heavy metal from Detonator. Looking to eliminate everyone in his path, that was the complete opposite direction i thought we were going with that so let's get on to the next pair another brazilian representative is edukov in flakes power edukov a 28 year old brazilian youtuber recently moved to the u.s to improve his english and currently lives in florida on top of his hyper successful daily vlog showing his day-to-day -day activity he streams games like fortnite and minecraft and then flakes power content creator who also came from Brazil, has played in a number of big competitions, has been around and he knows his way around the competitive community. Moving on forward, it's Kao Mora and Kalango. Kalango, the Brazilian YouTuber, so we're continuing on the Brazilians and Fortnite player, obviously, otherwise he wouldn't be here. He's only been a pro Fortnite player for four months, but he says he's somebody to look out for. Yes, and then Kyle Murray is the businessman, podcaster, and musician who's been creating content for almost 10 years and recently just did his own talk show. Just after them, we have PC Siqueira in seven. PC Siqueira is the Brazilian YouTuber, presenter, and comic book colorist. He makes a lot of content for the TV and online, and he has a famous chihuahua, and his name is Lunina. 
and now after that you have Seven, the Latin American YouTuber who looks pumped to be here. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know if you're going to need that crutch, but oh, his back hurts? Oh, okay, uh -huh. I got you. It's an old joke. Dr. Lupo, you, maybe you got that, but it was a little over my head. But you can see Seven looking to rep, excited to be here. I've seen they've been putting time in the practice room, so they're taking this seriously. And gracing us on the floor with their presence, it's Jeremy Ray Taylor and Slavo Man. Jeremy Ray Taylor, the American actor, known for his role as Ben Hanscom in Stephen King's It, and as Sonny in the film Goosebumps 2. I absolutely loved him in It, plays a fantastic character. We'll be back as well. And then you have Logo Man, they're an English content creator who makes gaming videos and posts real life videos such as challenges and QAs. As a kid, he hated slugs, so he made his name Logo Man all about it. He calls his fans the Slugs, Slogo Army, and Sloganators. And he has a big interest in psychology and played rugby in college. And the guys that Wildcat warned to stay on the edge of the map, it's JT Brown and I'm Marksman. I'm Marksman, one of the players who has been around the competitive scene, playing a number of skirmishes, but opting to, you know, do some stuff at the Pro-Am here. And now this is JT Brown's third Pro-Am. The pro NHL player is looking to make waves. He's become a big Twitch streamer and being involved in the community. And he gets a lot of the other NHL guys involved and has done a great thing with his organization as well. We're bringing athletes into the world of competitive gaming. They are a pair to look out for because Marksman has competed on basically every level of the game and he knows how to pull out some tricky plays. Speaking of tricky plays, another duo that's experienced both at the Pro-Am and the competitive scene is Mackenzie Borg and Fear Itself. Yes, Mackenzie Boyd is the American singer-songwriter originally from Lafayette, Louisiana. He competed in the last creative showdown on the Chicken Champions, had amazing plays, also known for his song Roses and Little Half Moon, competed on American Idol. Fear itself, the former retired professional Halo player, somebody I grew up watching and seeing like, wow, competing on that main stage, has played on teams like Final Boss. He named himself after Franklin Delano Roosevelt's speech because he thought it sounded cool. Now on to our next duo. Bala, it's Joey Fatone, an expert thief. Joey Fatone, a lot of people. He's the American singer, dancer, actor, and television personality, best known as the member of the classic boy band and sync. In 2007, he came in second place on the ABC reality show Dancing with the Stars. Joey says he loves VR games and plays them with people all over the world at 3 a.m., but let me tell you here, this ain't a VR game, and it ain't 3 a.m. No, but he has great footwork and expert deep, the YouTube gamer and rapper who does gaming commentaries. His adopted name is Kevin, while his birth name is Dante, with the latter being his stage name. He's been creating content for 13 years, doing vlogs, skits, and more. And we had an opportunity to catch up with him and hear what he had to say before they took the stage. All right, expert thief, do you have a message for your opponents today? All I'm going to say is watch your back because I'm gonna be right behind you, and I know how you build, and I know how you play. I've been studying, okay? And I'm really sneaky. That's all I'm gonna say, all right? This is, this is especially to you, Tifu. What I find funny about that is as he's calling out Tfue, I don't know if you saw it, Tfue was right over his shoulder and he started nodding when he said, that's for you Tfue, it's like Tfue's like, yeah, come get some, let's go. But onto one of our last duo pairings, we have Edwin Hodge and I Rap. Rap is the German YouTuber, he's been around the scene for a long time, makes a ton of content. And Edward Hodge, the actor, best known as playing Dante Bishop in the Purge film series. Break the dance moves out right there. It is the only actor to appear in all of the first three films, and he says he is addicted to golfing. So we'll see what they have to do, and whether those golf skills translate, whether Fraps can carry through with his experience on YouTube and creating content and all sorts of creative stuff as well. And I mean, he has been around since quite literally the very beginning. We're talking season one, season two, making content over in Germany. He has been all about it, impressing forward. And I mean, this group, this entire pairings, all of them are so fun to be around in their own way. And when they all will interact on the island, it's going to be ridiculous. I mean, we've seen some of the starting island shenanigans that happened before, and I'm just pumped for when we get out there and to see how some of these players interact because you can already tell 
there's some bad blood out there. There's some people calling each other out. You got Marksman and Wildcat right away. Edwin Hodge calling out Tifu. Like they're saying, no, we're coming for it. I've also seen a number of these pairs. Hey, One Shot Girl and Chandler, they were in the practice room. Every single opportunity they got, they were down there, they were playing duos, they're doing everything they can. Call outs were there. And I mean, you know, Nick is going to bring his all as well. Nick A30, who played and competed with One Shot Girl yep. in the creative showdown. I mean, he's pumped to be here. Yeah, he's pumped to be there. We also have all sorts of uh, players who competed last uh, last month at the summer block party. Aiden, his partner, uh, a lot of other people as well. Tons of pro players, tons of celebrities. You're going to have a blast watching this. And I can't wait to get in the action as well. And I mean, one thing you think of just like some of the DJs who are out there, yep. Lost Kings, Phantoms, Alice in Wonderland, Wax Motif, just like all of these guys. I know just naming some of them who I'm a little more familiar with and listen to, but I just am so excited. And plus all the actors, you got basketball players, and I don't want to say more importantly, but all of the Fortnite players as well, who are so incredible. And oh my, what is, what is that? Oh, that, okay, so that, is your reigning Pro-Am champions. Pro-Am number one, Marshmallow and Ninja, and then Airwalks and RO Grime on the other side, the winners from the summer block party. And I mean, they, hey, they're allowed in the winner's circle. They are allowed in the winner's circle. Zeke there too. See what they have for us, of course. Everybody ready to get the Pro-Am started. They're ready to get it started, but not without these two marquee pairs. And just listen to the crowd. They're excited to be there. They're ready to play. These are people who are at the top of their game. Aerox qualified for the World Cup. RL Crime is out there. Ninja and Marshmallow, the original pop-off pair. When they're able to take the first pro in. Zeke, what do you got for us over on the stage with our reigning champions? Gentlemen. Fortnite fans around the world, we couldn't do this without our reigning Pro-Am champions. The Summer Block Party Pro-Am champions, Airwax and Grime. Gentlemen, any words to your competition? Good luck. Good luck. Great, great, I like it. Your 2018 <laughs> Pro-Am champions, Ninja and Marshmallow, the duo is back together. Ninja, I'll come to you, because, Mel, I know you don't like to talk, but any words for your competitors? Uh, you know, we just want to say good luck to you guys as well, to everyone who's participating, and, uh, you know, I hope we end up meeting in the finals, you know, in one of the last games. There you have it. Gentlemen, if you'll take the stage, the Pro-Am is about to begin. I'm coming for you. They're going down. I'm coming for you. Bert, watch out. Right. Me and you. Here we go. I'm ready. Here we go. I'm ready. Wombo Cowboy, Wombo Cowboy, Wombo Cowboy, Wombo Cowboy. Watch out, watch out.
and gentlemen, welcome to the Fortnite Pro-Am Part 3. I'm Golden Boy alongside with Monster D-Face here, the Boniqua Boys, back in our hometown of New York City. And we couldn't be more excited to call the action here today because it's going to be a good one. The players loaded up on the stage. Monster, I think we're going to be in for a, we're going to be in for a banger today. Yes, we are. Banger like that track. Mike Realm just dropped some beats on us. That was so fire. Yeah, it was pretty good. I mean, uh, you know, a little, little warm for me. Good thing I had some pancakes standing by, you know? We got all kinds of stuff in, in, ready for you guys today, that's for sure. I, I've known Xavier Woods for a very long time, and I've always asked him, where do you keep getting these pancakes from? So I finally decided to steal some for myself. They're going to go bad eventually, but might as well. Have a stack of pancakes, because yep, you you're my friend. And we got them here, and we're ready, so <laughs> just all like right. that. Well, let's go through the format and see how this whole thing's going to work. Get you guys up to speed in case you're joining us for the first time. This is how it all plays out. When you hit 15th place, you get yourself three points. When you get to 10th place, you get two additional points, making it five points total. When you get to the top five, you'll get seven points there. And a victory royale will grant you 10 points total. But here's the big one. Each elimination will be one point. So players can look to really rack up some points in these games, kind of like what Airwax did in the last program at the Summer Block Party. That's right. We watched Airwax come out here, which I had the pleasure of being on the mic for, and it was super intense, showing that he is here for a reason at the World Cup stage. It's not only that, he qualified. That's right. He qualified. His, his talent is something that we all have to take note of. He certainly is going to be one of those players that we look at on that stage and you think is going to be a threat to each and every one of the duos that are going to be in that island. But you got some formidable threats out there as well. You know, they, you know the crowd, they cheer for Tifu, they cheer for Aiden, you know, Cloaksy as well. There are some great players that are going to be out there. And to top it off, they got some great duos to support them as well and that's going to be the difference maker here monster that's because right. every time we do one of these pro-ams it's always about that duo partner right yeah. like how do they complement their teammate exactly and with that is it going to be enough because they're fighting for a lot of prize here so we're going to jump into that and see if that duo can carry you all the way through that's right the money that they're going to be playing for here today is for charity keep that in mind so let's take a look here first place is going to get a million dollars toward the charity of their choice second through, t through 50, everyone's gonna get money, okay? And no one's gonna walk away empty-handed here. 500 grand for second place. So the difference between first and second is half a million dollars going to charity. That's huge stuff. Fortnite constantly giving uh, back to the community. And I, 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 here's the deal. The reality of it all is that we could very well see, given how this format works, a new champion. There could be a new duo that is going to be walking on that winner circle. It may not be Marshmallow, may not be Ninja. 2018, Fortnite was played in a very different way. That's right. And then Airwax with that dominating performance last time. One has to wonder, Monster, could he repeat that again? Look at the people out there in the crowd chilling out. Having a good time. They don't want to be seen on camera. I respect that. Wave. I feel bad. See us on you. I feel bad because I know, I know a lot of people don't want to see me on camera. Uh, because his shirt's probably, uh, you know, killing your eyes right now. No, the word, our, our, both of our clothes are just screaming out. You know, I look good. Here. My mama told me I look good. She's in the house, so I, I figured I'd do that there. Have fun with it, right? Why not? We're going to get started with the game here in a little bit, folks. And we're uh, obviously looking forward to seeing these players take the stage. But before we do that, we actually have Aiden standing by with his duo. Pookie, what you got for me? Thank you so much, GB. I can assure you, you guys both look great. I can see you from all the way over here, but I am joined by Aiden and Robert Avesey from Lost Kings. They came in second place at the Summer Pro-Am, so you can bet they are here to take first place today. Have you two practiced at all? Yeah, we, we talk a lot, so we have a good idea what we're gonna do. Uh, and especially playing in the last one, we're familiar with each other, which I think helps a lot. Yeah, definitely. Having that team synergy definitely helps. Now, Aiden, you are no stranger to playing in LAN environments, but this one's a little bit different. Who do you have with you here today? Um, I have my mom and my dad, my girlfriend, and my five mods. I hear him screaming back there. I love you guys. That's incredible. You have such an amazing support system now. You guys are playing for charity. This is a massive event. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, um, it's an honor to be here, and the fact that Epic Games provides everybody with the opportunity to play and, you know, for charity and just make money for themselves, it's crazy. So, um, yeah, I'm honored to uh, be, uh, you know, playing for Wounded Warriors, and uh, I'm just going to enjoy this moment. It's great. Perfect. Thank you so much. And just one more for you. Now, you are a DJ duo. Is your counterpart at home watching right now, or is he here? Oh, he's, he's playing. Oh, he's 
So my duo partner is playing with his duo partner for the World Cup tomorrow, so uh, we're about to take over. Interesting how that worked out, isn't it? Yeah, it, it, it may have been set up. May have been, definitely. Well, good luck today, guys. I will definitely be rooting for you. GB and Monster, back to you at the desk. Always a pleasure to hear from him. I remember meeting uh, Robert Abisi last Pro-Am, and he was so into it. He said, I, I, I just want to go home now and just practice. And we, we talk about picks to win. And second place last summer block party at that Pro-Am, as we had mentioned, was Aiden and Robert Abisi. You know what? I'm going to make a bold proclamation here, Monster. I think they're going to take it. I think Aiden and Robert Abisi are going to take this year's Pro-Am. Well, I'm going to have to, you know, stagger that and bring back, I don't know, maybe an old rivalry because this time, yeah, we have Nick Merckx here. How about I put my money on Nick Merckx and you put your money on Aiden if you want to do that? Okay, interesting stuff, interesting stuff. Well, one player here that everyone obviously wants to see succeed is Tifu. We actually had an opportunity to get some words from him. Let's check it out. Hey, my name's Turner, aka Tifu. I'm playing the Prime with my teammate Nav. Uh, I've been kind of friends with him for a while. I've only played with him a few times, but I'm feeling pretty confident, pretty hyped. I'm excited. This is not wait, 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 wait. Trying to sneak him in. Can you get him to drop oh, it? Oh, 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 God. God, is that angle? Basically, we're just going to try to take down everyone we can. You know, we're going to play really aggressive throughout the whole thing, looking for the weaker players, I guess you could say. The biggest threat is probably, once again, Cloaksy. I said this last Pro-Am. He's really the only big threat that I see here. Uh, Airwalks, that guy's a bot. Ninja, he's a bot. Cloaksy's height, but I'm just, me and Nav are going to stomp him all, so. <laughs> My current favorite weapon is probably the combat, just because it's so versatile. You can use it close range, medium range, even long range at some instances if you need to, you know, pick somebody's health off little by little. I'm donating to the Action Sports Foundation. Basically what they do is they uh, help special needs and handicapped people with, you know, physical therapy, action sports, like whether it be skateboarding or riding, you know, in a skate park on a wheelchair or anything really. My experience in New York so far has been pretty uh, dope. You know, I've, I haven't really met too many people yet, but I'm excited to meet all the people coming from different countries, even people that, that just came up on the scene that are new that I've became friends with over the past few months. So pretty excited to meet all of them, have a good time. Other than that, you know, I'm ready. Tifu had a lot of strong words for his opponents. And, it, you know, calling, calling Ninja and uh, Air Rocks uh, a bot after they had won Pro-Ams and he hasn't. That's some bold words there, Monster. You gotta love Tifu. Always ready to paint a story, <laughs> create a rivalry, right? And then just make it interesting. I mean, you know, look, look the way he's dressed. He's, he's got his whole his vest on. He's ready. Seems serious. He's, he's clearly ready. And I know everyone here wants to get ready and into the games. And we also want to let you all know as well that there are going to be numerous ways for you to watch this very competition, Fortnite Pro-Am. All you got to do is go to fortnite.com slash watch. And there you can actually pick a variety of different POVs. You can see the map. You can see a bunch of cool things. Definitely check it out. Once again, go to fortnite.com slash watch. There we go. You can level up your viewing experience. And then, we also have a lot going on here as well. So here are the feats. This is what you're going to look at, right? Uh, so you'll, in feed one and feed two, you'll get the first and second place players. Uh, but then feed three, you're going to get Ninja and Marshmallow. And then in feed four, you're going to get Airwalks and Arl Grime. So this way, you can see our defending champions in their perspective and how they're going to coordinate. You also got Nick 30 Max Carver. Let's not forget about Courage and Sean, Oma uh, Sean O'Malley, uh, Doigby, and Cody Walker. And then for the Latin American community, you're going to have Flakes Power and Anderson Silva. So lots of great perspectives there. Also Asia as well. It's going to be Ellie uh, and his duel. So there's going to be a bunch of perspectives for you to check out. Fortnite.com slash watch. Don't forget about that. Uh, and have some fun. Have some fun watching this event. It's going Which, to be a good time. by the way, I love because if you're a fan of any of those guys, you can literally see their points of interest, which is super dope. Yeah, I exactly. You can learn from some of the best that play this game, especially uh, the Fortnite content creators, see where they go. A lot of the players now are going to be on the island, loading up, getting ready to go. I'm, I'm pumped, man. I'm pumped. I want to get into this already. And I know we're going to get there eventually. Uh, but, you know, a little anxious, of course. And I have to wonder, you know, what other duos are, are, are going to be standing out? Because Tifu had mentioned uh, Clopsy. 
him and, and Whit Lowry, they have the potential to be able to, to upset some people here, but it, he didn't really do it at the last prime. It was, Pelosi was kind of quiet at that event. I want to see him, I want to see him turn up, especially here in New York City, because you know, he, he lives like right here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, and I'm, I'm also excited for Yoshi. Yoshi represents, you know, on the on the team Solari cast. It's a pleasure seeing him come out here. We always see him commentate. But you know what? Someone representing from a commentator stands out here playing. So I'm going to be rooting for Yoshi and Freddy Stroma as well. And yeah, the French community loves him. Always got to give him some extra props. Uh, you saw for a second there, Courage and Dr. Lupo right next to one another. Uh, so perhaps there could be some shenanigans, maybe sabotage, oh, if you boy. will. I think uh, Lupo's probably insulting Jack in a variety they, of different they actually, ways. They actually even slammed uh, Tim the Tatman over to the left of Lupo as well. So that's an interesting lineup right there. You can never keep careful. them separate from one another. Nope. You know, you can never keep them separate. We're also going to have a lot of controller players playing out there too. And while controller players, obviously a controller gang, always going to represent, uh, I want to see that how they play out. I think we got a few pro controller players like Aiden, who I had picked before. That's right. Get into a box really cause ruckus, especially for the pro players. Aiden has qualified for the Fortnite World Cup in the duo side. Uh, Airwax as well, another dominant player. We have a lot of players here that have qualified for the big event, and they're going to look to prove a point, I think, which is going to be the best part. Not only because they're going to play in that competition, uh, but they're, they're also going to get this warm-up opportunity in front of this crowd here at Arthur Ashe Stadium. It's kind of a little bit of an advantage. You know, at the end of the day, as long as they feel prepared, that's what we love and want to see. But like you said, there is a lot riding on the line here, right? It's all about earning that respect and or keeping it, because uh, at the end of the day, these trophies are super nice. Yeah, pretty awesome trophies there. The, the golden crate and pickaxe that we've given out in the past. We see players warming up, getting ready, getting comfortable. A few other duos uh, to talk about was uh, Pi and Detonator. Detonator, I don't, I don't know what that video was, but it made me mildly uncomfortable. So, <laughs> yeah, and, and, and the fact that he's not wearing a shirt yeah, also you know, disturbs me. Came out, you know, got, got the uh, couple buttons down in the front, you know, yeah. just letting it breathe. Yeah, letting it breathe a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that was, I don't know, that, that one uh, certainly threw me off. There's Marshmallow. You know, uh, he, he doesn't really like to talk that much, so I, I wonder how he's going to communicate with Ninja. They've done it once before, though. They've done it once before. Certainly, they could do it again. A couple emotes right there from Marshmallow, so maybe he'll just be playing right there, showing off the controller. Yeah, that's right, give him a little ring. Uh -huh, making sure it's all good. <laughs> he's going to let the gameplay and the moves do the talking. I like appreciate that he's also going to be using his own skin as well. So. Oh, you have to. Yeah, you have to. If you have a skin in the game, you got to go for it. A little ego boost right there, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's some protection. Here we go. Oh, Nick Mertz. Yeah, it's your pick. Hey, I had to. You went with Aiden. I that's figured true. we. we I know, and I know, and I know, rivalry. I know Papa Nick Mertz, who's out there, probably got really mad at me that I didn't pick, that I didn't pick uh, Nick to win. But it's okay, though. It's all for the storylines. Hopefully, he understands that. <laughs> Nick, Nick 30 most positive human being. You play with Nick 30 a lot. All the time. What does he bring to the table? Oh, he's a legend. I mean, as long as he can keep his cool, not get in his head. Nick, I know you hear us from here. Just stay calm and, and do what you do, man. He's, he's such a great player. Would love to see him come out and shine. Yeah. You know, one, once or twice in a pro-am today would be pretty fantastic. Correct me if I'm wrong, you won the creative showdown at the uh, summer block party. He's had his moments of greatness. He has, he has. So clearly capable of being able to, to do this, being able to win on the big stage in front of a crowd. There's Detonator again. Just, you know, it's, it's... He looks so ready. And you know, I'm actually impressed playing with a keyboard and mouse. I, I thought that Detonator would have his own custom <laughs> controller with spikes on him. <laughs> Okay, there's a lot of there's a lot of dialogue being exchanged there. Also, talk about Detonator's banks. Man, nailed that one. I'll never be able to have that. Ever. That's a heartbreaker. Looks like he's uh Is he coming at his own teammate as well? Yeah, yeah, definitely. At some point. At some point. There's uh, Ewok Jordan Fisher. This is a duo that actually I think is gonna be very, very good in this one because they uh, Jordan told me yesterday they've been practicing, they've been putting in the work, and I think I think they that's a squad that can go very, very far. Very, very far. Well, while we get ready and get things started up here, folks, we have 
another interview on the stage. We got Mackenzie Borg along with my buddy, Fear Itself, with Pookie. What's going on, Pookie? Thank you so much, Golden Boy. I am just all over the place today. I'm having the chance to talk to some incredible players. That is absolutely right. I am down here with Mackenzie Borg and Fear Itself. Now, I have to be honest, you don't really put off a very fearful vibe, so we're gonna have to work on that. You gotta get the, gotta get the eyes, you know? It's all about the eyes. But you are no stranger to events like this. Going into today, how are you gonna carry your previous experience into the event today? It is true, I'm a little bit of a, an old man, a veteran in the game. I mean, I was doing this 15 years ago in much smaller stadiums, but it's, it's, it's all the same. Having like in-person LAN experience is very key in this atmosphere. So I'm just gonna like channel that inner professional gamer from when I was a young buck back in the day and hopefully it shows, you know. Love it so much. Now you, Mackenzie, on the other hand, you have performed on the big stage multiple times. You are a contestant on American Idol, so you are not nervous at all. But I want to know, have you ever played Fortnite? I mean, you were in the other Pro-Am, but playing Fortnite in front of all these people, it's got to be different than singing. Yeah, it's much, uh, much different. It's, I feel like singing in front of a lot of people, I'm comfortable. It's, it's what I'm, with a guitar, I'm like super chill. But here, it's like, just don't want to let fear down. And we're just, we're trying to do well. Well, we have a few musical emotes, so if anything gets a little bit too crazy for you at any moment in time, maybe you could play those for him and calm him down a little bit. That might help. Now, have you two played together at all? Do you have any kind of strategy going into today? We practice a total of about an hour before this event. So we got all the practice, all the strats in the world. Don't you worry about it, Pookie. Oh, and you just, I guess, don't want to tell me about it, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Top secret stuff. Oh, my goodness. All right. I might be able to get a little bit out of you later. But in terms of, you know, taking your experience from the previous program that you just played in, in the summer, uh, what are you going to do the same, differently? Anything you're going to want to tell me about? I think I, I just, I'm more prepared now for the, the chaos and the hecticness between, like, the crowd, the subwoofers in the stage and just you know just the overall volume it's not like sitting on my couch at home playing Fortnite. it's a completely different experience it's definitely different i mean if you want to put your feet up at one point we can get you some cheetos or something it'll be great i'm, I'm trying to get into the more serious uh, mode right now i'm flipping the switch fear's got the switch too we're switching it my goodness, well you guys heard it here first. These guys are locked in, so I'm gonna let them get a little bit more practice. Golden Boy and Monster, back to you guys at the desk. Thank you so much, Pookie, for that one. Fear itself, uh, I've had opportunity of commentating many of his victories in the past across a variety of games. Uh, he, he, he's humble, he goes up there and he, he's humble, but this guy, when he needs to pull off the big wins, he certainly can do it. Uh, and then I think it's also interesting to note there what Mackenzie said, this is a very different vibe. When you're playing out there, the bass, the, just the, the feeling, it, it is substantially different than chilling at home. But honestly, he, he has the experience. He's been here before, you know, maybe after a couple times in the ring, you can pull it all together. That's what I'm hoping for someone like Nick A30 as well, right? You've been exactly. in this situation before with enough experience. I really think they can overcome anything. Yeah, very true. Look at that. Positive guy. Positive monster. You love Ro to see I'm it. Rooting. I'm rooting for the other dogs. Yeah, that's right. This guy. Oh, and, then, and then, obviously, I heard you in the creative showdown just blindly picking whoever was winning at that right, time. We're not going to talk about we're the past We're not going to go back to that. We're okay. not going to go back to the past. We're living in the present now, buddy. I respect that. I respect that. I respect that. Well, folks, I know you guys want to get into the game. I do as well. And I was told by our team in the back that the game is getting ready to go in just a little bit. We're going to jump right into the island. It's going to be awesome. And I just want to get out there and, and see some Battle Royale. That's really all I care about because these players, they're about to throw down. It's going to be awesome. You see Xavier Woods there. He does not have any pancakes, but what he does have is that SmackDown Tag Team Championship right by his side. He's got to let everyone know that he's a champion raising it on high. And I picked it up. It is actually a very, very is heavy, it heavy belt. I, it is you a know, heavy I had belt. The, had the opportunity right here. I, I should, totally should lift it. You totally should have. And then Dank also has his uh, fake Cruiserweight title belt, so low on that one. All right, folks, here we go. It's time to jump into the game, the moment you've been waiting for. The countdown is about to begin. Here we go. It is now time for the third Fortnite Pro-Am. The players are loaded into the island. The battle bus is ready to go. It starts right now. Here we go. I love that. That looks awesome. Battle bus it looks so great right there. It's just 
take a look. Take a look at all of your competitors today, guys, because it it's going to be crazy. We're going to crown one of these guys either a new or returning champ of the day here at the pro Hey, it could be moment. one half of the Girthquake. Courage, could JD, be. he'll never let me live that one down. So I uh, hope it's not him. You're kidding. You have to be careful. They're on the same side of the stage now. You know, it might <laughs> just <laughs> plop. <laughs> sure. And uh, as, as my buddy Shia Wager says, could be a, could be a young, right? Totally Shia, Shia's could be a me. young. Shia's going to hate me for using that. <laughs> All right, here we go. So, and then the other half of the Girthquake, there's Tim the Tap Man. So you're gonna land over by Paradise Palms. Paradise Palms, a great spot to land monster. Tons of loot, tons of resources, great rotational opportunities from there as well. Talk about that. It clearly looks like Tim the Tatman and Dante have a plan here. You don't just choose the back side of the map for no reason. This house specifically, known as the John Wick Mansion, down in the basement. There's a little secret stash, if you will. Now hopping over to the West World is what we like to call it over here on the other side of the map. Oh. Bit of a skirmisher. Yeah, you got uh, Oscar Lords looking right over at Sean. Sean choosing to disengage from the fight. We'll have that green tech SMG and has full shields as well, but oh no. Dead Rebel's gonna be in a bad spot. Very weakened there by Sean. Sean's gonna take some damage as well. This is gonna be a first engagement. Sean is gonna go in for the fight. And then we switch on over to Dead Rebel, who's looking around. And Sean's gonna be out of the game. One of the first eliminations. I think that might be the first Elim no. that goes through. The first was Sinu, who actually got fear itself. I wanted oh, to touch man. on it, unfortunately. But that was the first Elim. Fear that itself was... went out? Yes. Oh, right man, away. we really shouldn't have interviewed him. I feel <laughs> I'm sorry, Justin. Hey, but, but it's not over, right? You can always get the, the reboot card. He can, he can come back here. But for now, Lost King Nyx is in, a, is in a pickle. This is rough. Rough for Nick to be in here. Now we're going to make our way to Ninja and Marshmallow, who this is another great spot to chill by. You get a ton of loot at the Lazy Lagoon. Uh, and on top of which, you know, it, it, it has, it ha I think there's a, I believe there's going to be some ballers close by. I, I, if you want to go for that, you also have the cannons you can use, I believe, to get out of there too. Yep. There's a lot of options for mobility here for sure. But, you know, what I like that's going on here, at least with Ninja and Marshmallow, Ninja straight up adopting, you know, his scrim and or competitive strategy, right? L Lazy Lagoon. That is his most... Uh, known spot for landing. So for him to land here, it, they mean serious business. And yeah, he, and he, he lands here relatively uncontested. There's going to be a duo over to the north, I want to say northwest, and also someone all the way up at the tippy north there. As we make our way now down forward toward Lucky Landing, we're going to have Sinnoh here along with O'King. We're going we're gonna to be seeing a lot of Sinnoh and O'King. Let me tell you guys right now, do not sleep on this duo right here. They are so Good. Had the pleasure of casting and seeing them at the South Korean event that we, you know, flew out to and covered over there. They are oh. dangerous. Uh, well, you're hyping them up here, but unfortunately, they're going to be taking some damage from the Stinks having to push out of that fight. So when you throw down that Stink Grenade, it goes right through the damage. It does not hit the shields. It hits the green health bar. Not what you want to see happen here. Player, though, is going to be tucked away in the corner. And King of Sinnoh, they're, they're the two top players. So they know how to work together here try and pin their opponents into a bad spot. Here are a few shots as well. More eliminations starting to go through. Nick 30 gets one onto Claire Grant. Aiden as well picks one up. McKenzie's out of it. And then King and Sinnoh, they're just going to get out. Oh, King's just going to get out of there. Yeah, I just wanted that pressure, but you know what? Figured the, a team that's working together is definitely a dangerous one. And oh, we touched base with Yoshi a little bit earlier today. Looks like his partner, Freddy, is down here. He's off. He's on the. He's on a quad. Can he get away? No, he has to. Get away. Oh, no. Got okay. fights here. Marksman. Oh, and he just tagged up. He tagged up the quad a few times. Did manage to hit him. If he would have picked up that infantry, could have had that uh, pinpoint accuracy with that weapon. Probably could have provided a little bit more for him there, but it's also going to be a player up above. There goes the infantry rifles I mentioned before. He just, it's such a precise weapon to take advantage of. JT Brown, they're looking around. Going to have Jeremy. Jeremy Ray Taylor up above in that box there, Monster. And they're going to be split up a little bit because they want to clean up this player around, see if they can get any of the resources. And they did convert it right there. And a little nifty trick Marksman used there, pulling out his pickaxe to reset his reticule so that his crosshair kind of tightens up just to make sure he can be as accurate as possible. So many nifty tricks. And this is why this is the pro 
AM, right? You have the pros, and then you have your celebrity counterparts helping them out. And Marksman is showing that he knows what he's doing. Yeah. Looks like he's confidently ready to push as well. He might. Exactly, and then we saw Ninja and Marshmallow there on the corner of your screen for a moment, continuing to loot up. Players pushing around the side here. This is going to be coming from the west. GT Brown, we can get vision. He has that snipe out. Maybe he can get a connection, perhaps, but it's going to be Marksman looking for the opportunity to take advantage I love of this. that heavy AR. Yes, I love this. JT Brown ready to back him up. He's got extra shields and everything. He's got that legendary sniper. He knows exactly where this player is at. Just looking for a small peek right here. He might take his face off. We will see. He's playing with a lot of confidence, too. You can tell in the movements. JT Brown has played in multiple, I think he's played in every single Pro-Am that we've had. So no stranger here to this big stage. And then they're not really going to go for that fight. There wasn't really much of a reason for them to try and push in for that fight, Monster. That player did have that natural high ground. If JT Brown would have gotten the connection with the snipe, that would have been great. But you got to think about this, the storm. As it pushes on in, now these players, they're, you're going to take a little bit of damage here. But you have a lot of bodies scattered around. Junk Junction, Polar Peak, Happy Hamlet. Even Lucky Landing. There's a lot of players that are going to be on the outside, but this circle is going to be pushing in, centered more toward Dusty Divot. So you're going to have that big circle around here. You're ticking for one damage per second as well. You got to start to make moves quickly. Yeah, Slogo Man does not want to play around here. He does not have anything to heal with in this moment. He has a Glider Redeploy. I mean, he can use it to get away, but with that one person trailing behind him, that was that Bai Tham Yang. <laughs> you, kinda, I, you did better. I, I didn't right even there. try to. Yeah, I didn't hey, attempt. it's a little bit of Spanish right there, but <laughs> hopping over to Ewok and Jordan Fisher. You got the accent. You got the capability. I respect that. I can, I can pull it. I, I know you can. All right. <laughs> so Ewok and Jordan Fisher. This duo at the summer block party. Ewok hunted Jordan Fisher down. Enemies have become friends here. And with the baller and the shadow bombs, they're going to rotate on out, get to the safe zone. A few players are going to be around here as well. And Ewok just tagged him. Take full advantage of the ping system, right? When you're able to do that, that helps so much. Sometimes you don't even need to use your words. You can just use the ping system to relay where the threats are going to be. Exactly, and that's what Ewok used as their primary form of communication here. Just going to lay down some fire. Didn't quite connect, but it's all good. Can she get a couple more shots? If they catch an advantage, we saw what she did last time to Jordan Fisher in the previous 2019 Pro-Am, right? The last one that just passed by where she made her debut. She pushed all the way across the field, she showed. Ewok gets very aggressive. Very she much. will get down. Living up to that Ewok name. You know, Ewok will just go and bite your ankles. So that's what, that's what Ewok did in that last Pro-Am. But now we're going over to Neo, Neo Tilted. One shot girl Chandler Riggs. See Kyle K and Kyle Kaplan up above. And there's K. Crowd popped for him when he had come out. Kyle Kaplan as well. I like how Kaplan's got his marshmallow fit on as well. Not trying to throw us off at all. You know, honestly, that, that's like, I wouldn't use this, right? If you wear this fit, you're tempting other people to be like, dude, that's, that's marshmallow, isn't it? it right? And then they just want to push. You're not wrong there, buddy. I'd love to catch a highlight, right? Yeah, it's yeah, like, you, dude, I'll push him right now. Exactly. Right? Like, You're not wrong there. I mean, that, that certainly can be a, a thing that players see and are like, wait a minute, maybe? But if, if a lot of people who have uh, studied Ninja's gameplay know that he is going to go over to that Lazy Lagoon area. But we make our way now to the lava areas near Pressure Plant. This is where Marshmallow and Ninja are. And there hasn't been a lot of activity right now, right? It's been a little bit of a slower game, but that's what I like to see, right? We, you and I, we've been casting end game after end game after end game in the Fortnite World Cup online qualifier. So it's nice to see some, some strategy, some rotations go into place here, and players really being methodical where they're going to push and what point in time. And Ninja, he's getting ambitious with these shots, managing to connect that infantry rifle, the purple infantry rifle, so good. Yeah, Ninja actually one of the advocates for playing with weapons that are not necessarily popular or cool at the moment, tends to play with things that are different. So before the infantry kind of, you know, rose in popularity after the changes, he was already running it, you know, deeming it one of his favorite weapons to kind of play with. He's always been like that in any game that he plays. I remember many times casting him for the Halo or any other title. Oh he, he always goes for the, the road less traveled and does a lot of damage there with that infantry rifle. Look at these players as they 
fly about through the jet streams. Myth on the other side as well. This, this duo there. Myth's got to be. Oh no, Tim the Tap Man. No, Ooh. Tim. No, no, Tim. And you know he landed extra quickly. He got picked off from the sky. I don't want to say it, but he was literally swatted like a fly right there. Oh, that <laughs> this was is too easy. Taken right out. Tim the Tap Man goes down. There's no friendships here in the pro am, people. Ninja makes Tim the Tap Man pay. It was a wide target, and he's going to hit those. <laughs> All right, so there he has his ball. He's going to get a bunch of extra goodies. And oh no, Ninja's ball actually flew off into this, the steam vent, and it, it's gone. Yeah, <laughs> I think he ended up going with it. Hopefully he did. Yeah, so he ends up getting the ball right on back. Just looking around. So he doesn't know, obviously, that there's going to be a duel right next to him. A lot of players are starting to convene here by Pressure Plant. This is where the circle is going to start to collide. And then keep in mind, this lava, when you get to those final circles and you have to go over that lava, it can be your worst enemy or even your best friend because you can traverse the lava very quickly, but sometimes it can throw you off. And for more unexperienced players or inexperienced players, apologies, that could certainly throw them for a loop. Yeah, it can definitely end up also just like splitting up a team, right? And then causing some chaos that way. But man, the fact that Ninja's able to just openly hold this area right outside the mech ball. wrecking look, people with this. Yeah, yeah, look, there's another, another player right out the sky, right there. David Williams goes down. Time to go collect. Time to go collect. Go get that, go get that expensive NYC rent right there, Ninja. Go pick it up, because he's collected right here. Oh man, he's been just swatting these players out of the sky. Tifu's gonna be in a fight right now, though. Having to deal with this, gonna use a shockwave grenade to get out of the engagement, reset himself. We'll have plenty of builds to work with as well. We'll also have those chug splashes for him and his teammate if he needs to Ooh. use it. It's gonna be Ewok and Jordan Fisher. This is a huge battle that's gonna be taking place here. Tifu has the angle, he has a perspective, and with that combat shotgun, he can hit him from a distance as well. On the screen, you see Nick A30 gets eliminated, so he's gonna be out of the game. But for now, all eyes are gonna be set here on Tifu and this engagement with Jordan Fisher and Ewok. Yeah, he actually had to back up. Someone stormed flipped right at him, forcing him out of that area. But luckily for him, he does have plenty of shockwaves to make a ton of moves. And Ewok actually gets pelted down this a few more times there. Yeah, that's not good because they're going to go down low and they know exactly where they, where they are. So they just can wait this one out. Let me tell you right now, for every little bit of advantage Tifu gains here, the more unlikely it is that Ewok and Jordan Fisher are going to get out alive. And that's it. I think he's got his confidence all the way up. He knows he needs this, this loot here. He has natural high ground. Their backs are against the storm wall. They're going to start to push up. But, oh, they're going to use the shockwave to fly out of there. That was just one, though. He only saw one. So there it is. Uh -oh. oh, no. He's kind of trapped there, pinned. And he's waiting for him. He's going to tag him. With the oh combat, gosh. so much damage being put forward. Tifu now gonna be on the run. This is what Tifu does best when he's in your face. Oh, but he gets chunked. He's gonna lose a lot of health there. Now gonna be sitting at 35 HP and had to get out of there. Gonna use those shockwave, gr shockwave grenades. The movement that you get with that utility is huge. It was actually Jordan Fisher who came back to rescue Ewok, and it was just enough to back off Tifu. And now the entire battle's been reset. Everyone's in a danger zone here. He really is the perfect human being. He really is. There goes the jet stream. Ewok gets out. Jordan Fisher's taking damage, people. He's got to get out of that. He manages to fly on out of there. Now, the, the concern I have for Ewok and Jordan Fisher, they got to get back together. Yeah, but not only that, Tifu knows he has to get an elimination here. They are desperate. They're in shambles for gear here. And an artillery strike actually being rained down. Tifu is forced to be on defense. He's far from his teammate, Nav. But look, Edwin Hodge and Props right here. They don't have health either. This is the perfect opportunity for Tifu. A lot of players are going to be very, very he got him. weak. And he gets an elimination on Edwin Hodge. That's going to be Tifu's fourth elimination. Nav has two of his own six points total. Oh, there was a trap there. I, you never suspect the trap, Tifu. Oh, my word. He is disgusted with what he just saw. Nav should be able to get him, though, and they'll get back into this. He does have launch pads, so they can use that to get back into a safe position, but they don't have heals, Monster. Yes, he does. He, ha he actually has two campfires in his inventory. Oh, well, he doesn't have shields. Yeah, yeah, he he, have but shields. he has to get to zone ASAP. Airwalks, a previous uh, reigning champ so far, and RL Grime are going to push someone off here. And oh boy, this is the Pro-Am. It's starting to heat up here. That is going to get clipped so many times. Absolutely. Tifu hitting the trap.
Never expect <laughs> Imagine catching a nice little two-piece and then walking into a trap. That was perfect. <laughs> there goes your summer block party winners, Airwax and Arl Grime, sitting on top of their, I say, hodgepodge constructed tower here. Then Tifu, right next to Ali A. Boy, does he have a video for you. Tifu has not popped these double campfires. Ooh. Actually, just keep keeping it going. That shot from Tifu, clinical. Combat shoddy, that thing's gonna tag you from what sometimes it feels like a mile away. This player's gonna be behind this tree here, and Tifu sees it. Tifu, oh my. easy pickings for the veteran. The tree goes down, no more protection for him, but the shadow bomb is gonna be used. You see that player flipping away on out of there, doing all the flippy stuff. I actually love it as well. He sent Nav in because Nav had the materials and the health advantage there to kind of lead the way, but now they're both in a desperate situation. Tifu forced to just get to farm in here. He's going to try and get what he can off the bunker. Ninja still in the same spot just outside the volcano vents. No reason for him to leave when he's hitting the shots the way that he has been with the infantry rifle. Your 2018 Fortnite Pro Am champion. Marshall going in for the shot there. Player's going to be picked off from this guy. That's going to be Sino who gets Muso. Oh man, that's Ooh. rough. Sino makes it to end game with O King. Like I said, they're going to be a troublesome duo. They're still. Tons of excellent players left in the game here. See Wit Lari down below. He's close, see nearby. Uh oh, Ninja's actually super hurt now. I think he just didn't see the snipe. Yeah, so Ninja's gonna be in a rough spot, but we actually did catch one of his other shots earlier on. That was gonna be on Michael Dreyer. That's That was Elim number four. Now, though, Ninja getting back to a fighting position, but he's gonna get hit again. This is rough for Ninja. Does he have a campfire? Saw Myth there, saw Nick Merckx. A lot Tons of good of players. Competitive players nearby, that's right. Cloak is still going to be in this match. Marksman still in the game as well. Airwax, as we had mentioned earlier, Wildcat there. Everyone gathered together here, right in between Dusty Divot and Mega Mall. Nick Merckx only with one elimination. When you get down to 15th place, that's when the placement points start to go through. There you see it right there, the format, how it works. Every elimination that these duos get is going to earn them one point. But when we hit 15th place, that's when you're going to start getting those placement points. And look right there. Myth just ended Ninja up above in a battle. And Marshmallow's off to fend for himself as he impulsed out of the battle. And it looks like he's has to make a big decision here. Yep, he says, you know what? I'm going to get to zone, and it's time to leave Ninja's card behind. There's nothing he can do but play for placement at this point. So he goes straight for the high ground. Marshmallow does manage to get up top there, and some great quick building is going to keep him safe for the time being. He can't get his card. And bear in mind, I mean, look at the circle. We're hitting to that half in, half out circle. Movement's going to start to happen here. Players are going to have to start thinking about those pushes, the rotations, and also who is going to be gatekeeping, preventing these solo players, perhaps, from getting in. Sino, six eliminations. That are that is a ton of elimination. Elims matter for points, guys, just as much as placement does. For every single person that gets taken out here, Sino is one step closer to grabbing a nice lead. There's a great shot there. Someone's pushing up. Oh, it's his teammate. Okay, we'll disengage right there. All right, time to refocus. Off, oh, he's looking in the distance here. He sees Cody Walker, Yoshi, a new cough right there. Yoshi pops something. Looks like he had an impulse. He gets to the zone there. Cody Walker also goes down to Sino. Edu Kopp gets knocked as well. Who's that? It's going to be another. To Sino's placement is so good here. Mr. Fresh Asian. That's eight eliminations for Sino. They're going to be at 21. And I think, oh, I, I think I just saw it there that Marshmallow eliminated Dr. Lupo. Wow. We have a replay of it. There you go, Lupo. Don't say I didn't love you. Oh, he clotheslined him, baby. Hit him with a running lariat. Dr. Lupo, you ain't nothing to Marshmallow. Love it. Way to go, Marshmallow. Keeping the dream alive for him and his duo. So good, Lupo's even with no help. Lupo's going to crap for that, by the way. Even I'm okay with, with no it, help, he's still in it, though. <laughs> One shot girl, poised right above him. Sino 
Could very well take this. He's got this ultimate high ground here with O-King. <laughs> They're playing this one like it's a qualifier lobby, man. They got that high ground. They're raining down the shots. Nine eliminations for Sinnoh. O King providing the support, and they're just going to continue to tarp with the floor, with the pyramid, so that they can own this high ground presence. Any players are going to be flying in the sky, they're going to punish them with their ARs and the combat shotties if need be. So you're going to need a, an aerial license or something like that. They're not going to let anyone fly for free here. No, they're <laughs> so not. Flake's power gets taken out to the zone, but just enough damage from O-King is going to allow him to secure that one here as everyone is off against the storm, trying their best to get to the next spot here. Take a look at O-King's perspective. He's got a minigun way up oh, top. Oh, man, the minigun shredding them. You got to be careful, though, for that storm. Look how much damage is going to be taking O-King. Someone's actually above him, I believe. Look, he tried to break that right there. Yeah, it's it is. Myth. It's Myth and Cloak are going to be engaging in this fight. Sino plays that defense, protecting his teammate. Cloak is going to have a smidgen of health remaining. He's going to go right on top of Sino and O-King. Chigwa just picked off one, and that's going to be Elim number 10 onto Cloak. 11 as well will be registered. That's 11 points. We're also going to be in placement here, Monster. Wait a second. Are we still on the first game? Hold up. It's going down here. Courage is still going to be in this one, as well as Myth. Look at the play field and look who is left Wildcat alongside with JT Brown again have Jelty there as well I Ferris Myth he's taking a lot of damage outside of the storm and Myth is going to be out of it but Courage is still in the game folks uh, a, a possibility for him to get this first game win but I don't know if Sino and O'King are going to let him have it no they're not not for free at least here as Sino's leaning more shots on his opponents here he is running low on materials this time around though 500 mats in comes the pressure will we finally give up this placement we jump down to commit to this battle here. There's only four players left. We're now down to the final moments of game number one. O-King is going to be out. It is all up to Sinnoh here. Wildcat down low. He takes the shot, and it's Sinnoh with a victory royale. Game one domination from the high ground, and they never let him come up ground. That was insane. They, they, they denied them any kind of territory whatsoever. This is why I love Fortnite right there. When you know your players, you just you, you can just smell them from a mile away. They're going to do great things. We saw them way on the southeastern part of the map, the place that we like to call the West, right? They were there. They landed there. He took out fear itself and in a crazy, crazy turn of events. They slapped the entire lobby all the way through to that. Here's the final moment. You know, I've had the pleasure of commentating a lot of esports in my career, and I always say, watch out for the South Korean players because right. they're so good. And Sino showing us why here in New York City, the first win, what a game that was. It was a little slow. It was a little slow, I have to say. Then it ramped up like a good book. That, that's, the best, that's the best part about getting full game lobbies is what we tune in for, right? You get the entire story. You get to paint the entire picture. Mm -hmm. and, and just like that, like the fact that we know where he started, he took out Fear itself. Like, we were just talking Fear itself. We know he's a respected, competitive player. He has that land cool, right? But exactly. It, was, it still wasn't enough. Exactly. And this is going to put Sinnoh on everyone's radar as well. But that was a pretty tough end game there. A lot of great players still left in it. It just wasn't enough. When you have that high ground, that's it. And I, I made the joke, they were playing it like it was a World Cup qualifier. And yeah, I mean, you get that high ground, you deny them any kind of presence to be able to build up to the top. It was very close. That Myth and Cloak could have pushed Sinnoh off. And had they done that, I think we'd be looking at a different winner in game one. But credit to Sinnoh for keeping his cool, as well as O-King for supporting him in that one. Yeah, Cloak seed might have had the high ground, but if, I, if I'm not mistaken, Myth just hit him with a really good shot. Put yeah. his back against the wall. He had no help. Sinnoh comes out with that side peek. And it was all his and, you know, easy rain from there. Yeah, some good moments in that game for sure. And we thank you all so much for joining us here. That was just game one of the Fortnite Pro-Am here at the Fortnite World Cup Finals. Our third Pro-Am ever. We've had some great games throughout the day. The Creative Showdown was a blast to watch. Some really, you know, different experiences for a lot of our viewers. I mean, hey, we watched a million dollar jump. Literally, a that, million was, dollar jump. that was insane. I know, I, I, I realized I made some poor decisions career-wise when I was not in there for the million dollar jump. That was awesome. And then we just saw one of South Korea's best players in Fortnite, Sino, just take game one in dominating fashion. And now I have been informed that we do have our winners down on the floor with Pookie for an interview. Pookie. Over to you. Thank you so much, Golden Boy. I am here down on the floor with our 
Winners, I want to congratulate both of you first off and foremost. We have Sino here, who we've seen play so many times in the past. He was actually part of the World Cup qualifiers. He did not qualify, um, but it has been quite a journey for him. How does it feel to be playing on this stage regardless? 우선 어, 여기 한번 첫 라운드를 우승하시게 된 거에 대해서 많이 축하드리고요. 신우 선수 같은 경우는 퀄리파이어에 아쉽게 진출하시지 못하셨는데 여기까지 오시게 되셔서 이 무대에 서게 된 그런 어, 소감이 어떻게 되시나요? 아, 어, 일단은 소감 일단 제가 여기 있는 거가 믿기지가 않고요. 게다가 첫 라운드까지 우승을 하니까 지금 진짜 기분이 정말 좋네요. Uh, I actually can't believe that I won this first round and it feels awesome to be on this stage. Well, I can believe it. You guys were playing clinically with the high ground, the tarping, unbelievable gameplay. Congratulations. Down on the end, you've, you've done charity events before, so you've done this before as well, but is this your first time playing Fortnite in front of all of these people? 어 우선 일단 하이그라운드에서 잘 이렇게 플레이 하셨던 것 같고 어 이렇게 체리티 어 자선 기부 행사에서 저번에 플레이 하셨던 것 같은데 이 많은 사람들 앞에서 플레이 하셨던 게 어떠셨어요? 아 일단 굉장한 영광이고 굉장한 영광이고 이렇게 또 좋은 행사에서 좋은 사람들과 좋은 성적을 거둘 수 있을 것 같아서 아뭐 미리 뭐 김치국은 아니지만 어. 좀 다음 다음 라운드에서부터도 더 좋은 성적 내 가지고 처음에 들어올 때 우리 아는 사람들 거의 없었었거든요. 한 명도 없었어요. 요 대회 끝날 때 어, 저희를 모르는 사람이 한 명도 없게끔 만들도록 하겠습니다. 마지막 말만 하면 될 거예요. 너무 좋아. 너무 영광이고. It was it was such an honor to be participating in this tournament and there are a lot of good players and um, good purpose of this ch uh, charity tournament. And um, after this is done, um, before, before the tournament began, nobody um, actually know us, the duo. But after this tournament, I hope that everyone here knows who we are. Perfect, thank you guys so much. Congratulations again to both of you. I hope to see you win a few more games. But what we're gonna do now is we're going to throw it over to Sundown, who's gonna break down some of the gameplay. Sundown? Thank you so much, Pookie. I'm standing by here with Nick Merckx and Mario now. First, I gotta say, Mario, what is it like competing on this stage, playing Fortnite, compared to playing in the NBA and competing against some of the best athletes in the world? I mean, these players are here, the best of the best, you know, and uh, in NBA, of course, it's like the best of the best players in the world. So it's kind of same in that way, but I mean, just enjoying um, here in front of our fans over here. I was in New York actually last year, so, you know, I'm kind of home, so. Awesome, man, thank you. Now, Nick, I'm gonna ask you about some of the gameplay we just saw in that last match. You were actually able to catch a really nice double elimination on the summer, key targets, and then get a good rotation out. So let's roll the clip and we'll kind of take a look. What was going through your mind when you were able to catch those? Because you played a little bit slower over the course of the game and then you were able to set yourself up with the angle. So what was going on? Just trying to get on the strong end of the circle using the impulse grenades. We, we both use them at the same time to get, to get on the strong end. So, so what we did was we bounced across, we got lucky with the circle, and we looked for the players that are rotating late. And we got lucky, man. We had a couple players rotating way too late, and we just tagged them off. They were easy kills, you know? Very well done there. And also, I just want to give you a shout out. The grow up from you, we go way back, competed in the Gears of War stage. He actually was the one who knocked me out at my very first tournament ever. So being on this stage, Nick, what's it like, man? What's that journey been like for you? I've been here for a minute, man. I mean, it's, it's really cool to see a lot of our same friends working for Epic and setting all of this up and being a part of this and being in the industry. I kind of feel like a grandpa, you know? We've been in it for a minute, and, and it's a good feeling. Yes, it's a good feeling. Good luck in the rest of your matches. Now, come on, get in here. Give a hug. Give a hug, man, Mario. Thank you so much, man. Absolutely amazing from these guys. As I said, good luck in the rest of the matches. We're going to throw it back on over to the desk with Monster and Golden Boy. Thank you so much, Sundown. That's right. You know, a lot of folks here go way, way back. And uh, that, that's always a fun time when everyone's able to get together, hang out, reminisce on the good times. But we're here and now. And right now, it is 
currently Sino and Oak Kings time because they won game number one. Let's take a look at the standings when we get a moment to see where we are currently because as we know, that victory from the South Korean duo. Hey, let's not forget, Sino, this is a guy that nearly qualified for the World Cup a few times now. A lot of talent. And I'm just glad that people, they said it, right, that we want people to know who we are. Uh, and I, I just want people to know who these players are because they're so good. They're so talented. Yeah, without a doubt, when you guys obviously get this translated, no, the competitive community absolutely know who these players are right here. For sure. And you guys deserve every ounce of respect, especially from the public. But we have some standings. Let's That's see right. Let's see where these players are, Golden Boy. That's right. Let's take a look at the standings. Where we are right now, who is going to be behind in this one, right? So it's going to be, oh, Woo! it's going to be Airwalks and R.O. Grimes. So no surprise. Picked up seven eliminations out of that game. All right. Courage, Sean O'Malley in, uh, in in fifth place. You got, uh, let's not forget about Garber Reaver and Jelty in fourth, and, and Robles and Chigua in third. Tifu and Nav in eighth place. I'm jumping around here, just looking at some of the players that we've talked about. Maybe some have had unfortunate circumstances become them, like Tifu got yeah, hit with we, the trap. Yeah, we saw Ellie earlier today, right? You just pointed at the camera, walked off, representing for you know, JP, Japan, right? That was so a good interview. Good that to see him in the top 10 right here. But as we move on to the second page, and just take a look here, all of your favorite content creators, a couple of Elims on the board. It's not bad at all. No, not at all. It's only game one. You have plenty more to go here. Ninja and Marshmallow in 14th place. We covered them quite a bit in that last game because they stayed put at Pressure Plant and did not really need a reason to ever rotate around. Because of that, Ninja was able to punish a few players flying in the sky, kind of like when he caught Tim the Tapman midair. Yep. That infantry rifle was huge for him. Maybe he's going to be able to do that again. Obviously, let's see how the circle works in your favor. But that's it. Game one is behind us. Now it's time for game number two. Come on, New York City. Do these two New Yorkers proud. Let's start to make some noise and get high. Detonator's excited. I'm excited, too. The countdown is about to begin. Who is going to come out on top in game two? Here we go. The battle bus is flying over the island. And we're going to get a good trajectory here. Going over the ice biome, bipolar peak, making its way over to Lonely Lodge. That's right. It's cutting straight across the map. Straight in half like a fresh New York pizza. It's straight down the middle right That's here. Right. And everyone's going to get their take of the slice. I love Ooh, making I like that it's pizza easy. reference, bro. You just have to. It's too easy. They're just giving out here. You can't be in New York and make and, and not make the pizza reference. Got to make the pizza reference. And also, Chinkin, if you're listening to me, you fold the pizza. You don't eat it. With, you don't the eat the question is, do you flip it upside down on the cheese side or? No, man. No? Just fold no? it straight I'm up. Just, just asking some people. Do. They advocate for that kind of stuff. Those but people are crazy. <laughs> take a look here. You see Detonator <laughs> putting on by Marshmallow right there. No surprise. They're going right back to Lazy Lagoon. That's going to be their hometown. And they're getting landed on, by the way. You take a look at that map. There That's are some the players nearby. Our champs, Sinu and Oking. I think everyone wants to see them here. Yeah, that is a problem. There is a player that landed Lazy. We'll keep tabs of that later. Here's the game one winner. Sinu, Oking, the lucky landing spot. You're going to get a few options all the way in the back, remember. So you're going to be all the way back here by Lucky. You can go to Fatal if you want to get some more loot. Maybe you want to push over to the uh, to the desert biome, go to Paradise Palms, potentially where the, where the circle is going to populate. We're going to find that out in a few seconds here as well. So this is when the key decisions are going to have to be made. And Lucky them that they went to Lucky Landing because the circle literally lands right at the edge. So they're good. They're good for that push. They have a lot of real estate to work with, Monster. Call that winner's luck, all right? These guys right. have the nice there's lead. There's beginner's luck and there's winner's luck. There's this is winner's luck. Winner's luck is a thing, all right? Sometimes things just go your way and then you're the winner. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Never happens to me. Breaks my heart. One day, one day. I've seen it happen to you a few times, though. You've got a few. Hey, I'm here. I'm here, I'm aren't I? Like, look you've, got, <laughs> you've got some shields. I don't know where in chess. When I watch the stream, very questionable. There like, that's go. not fair. Right when you needed it. How's that even possible? Happens to you the dust of us. <laughs> like, you just don't have a response. You're just like, that. Eh. You know, I, I don't, I don't, don't judge. It. I just take my blessings. Man. I respect that, man. Uh, some, uh, some chug splashes there. Going to bring everyone up to a decent amount there for the shields. Some eliminations already. We lost two duos already. Going over now to Paradise Palms. 
Same duos that were here before, sticking to these drops. These drops, you got Dead Drevel along with Oscar, Oscar Lod. Oh, nice shot. Shots down. Did he connect there, though? No, he didn't, but at the very least, so he was on target, that player. Did manage to move around there. Hear that shadow bomb go out. And, and Dead Drevel had to have heard that, which is the reason why he's going to start pushing up here. Doesn't have the resources for a full fight. So he's going to be playing around this natural structure. And he needs to just farm up. Oscar is going to be taking a lot of damage as well. Going to have to get out of the fight. 34 HP remaining. He's going to need to rely on his teammate. Does not land that shot with the hand cannon. But Dead Drevel's there for the follow-up. That's business, boy. Oh, but business is closed down, unfortunately, for him. Dead Drevel's going to be out of this one. But not dead yet. Did get peaked right there, so he has to be careful. Oscar just looking. And Frizz has got such a good, you know, position on them, and he even has shield. This is just like that. Now he's at 72 extra shield, so he is doing just fine. That jump shotgun, perfect for being chest to chest. Get right up in a player's face and, and do a tons of damage. And, and it's early game, so Frizz can get Business Boy's card, bring it back into the fight. Oh, the revive's going through. You see it, the pickup. Oh, but you know, Osculard heard it, so had to get out of the fight. Frizz is going to go for the follow-up, but oh, Frizz is going to take a bunch of damage. Down to 80 HP. Player's going to jump for the fight there. We're going to hope and a prayer, but unfortunately, Frizz is going to get the better. And that's two eliminations, and that duo is going to be out of the game. Two huge eliminations, and just a little fun fact. I'm sure his girlfriend will be proud. He says here, they, they both have pink hair. Okay. Okay. I don't know what it's like to have <laughs> pink hair. Uh, I have to talk to Ninja about that one. I know he did that for a little while. I... It won't look good on me, you know, and also I don't really have a lot of hair. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, I don't want to break it. And speaking of someone with not a lot of hair, Dr. Lupo <laughs> on your screen right now. Just messing around. That was a low blow. No. <laughs> Here we go. As, as, a, as Fortnite's resident senior citizen, I, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll take it. I feel like I'm Ooh. also a part of the geriatric gamer program. Actually, this is our first time seeing the Storm Sniper in play here. Mm -hmm. That's right. Just came out the other day, and it is, uh, I think that players probably want to go with something. Okay, Dr. Lupo isn't actually oh. the oldest caster for Fortnite. That's Grandpa Golden Boy. Really? Really, guys? Really? You had to do, you had to do me dirty like that? Fun fact. In my hometown? Exposed. In my, in my hometown, of all places? It's all right, though. I still love you guys. It hurts a little bit. Just stings. Stings. Stings the nostrils. Just a little bit. I'll Dr. Lupo. I bandied it. Yeah, thanks, bud. He's going for the birthday cakes as well. Another thing that had actually just come out, celebrate Fortnite's two-year birthday. We've been playing this game for a little while. Use that hashtag Fortnite World Cup. Share with us how you're going to be enjoying the event, whose stream you're going to be looking at when you go to fortnite.com slash watch. We want to hear from you. Make sure you're talking about it. Also, you're going to get that fancy little picture on the side when you use that hashtag Fortnite, Fortnite World Cup. Just Fortnite World Cup. There's uh, Sigla along with Dr. Lupo. They're just going to loot around Salty Springs. A lot to get around here. What are your thoughts on Salty Monster? Oh, I love Salty. It's one of my favorite places to land, uh, mainly because that back house, man, it's nothing more rewarding than landing on the ledge, getting a, a weapon through the window seal, and just picking up an easy elimination on someone who goes for the chest on the roof or something like that. Salty is like the bane of my existence when I rotate out of Fatal. I never want to cross Salty, because you always have a player that's going to be so stacked with, with so much to work with. Things have certainly slowed down here. Making our way now to Fatal Fields. Speaking of, oh, wow. there's Sinnoh with King. In the, this is awesome. The strats. This is like a flossing level play here. I'm loving it. Oh, he hears someone they, they hear nearby, it. Golden Boy. Don't, don't, stay down, stay hey, down. Uh-oh. Stay down. It, this is, and you know, this is not the duo you want to move next no, to. This there is not, it is. This, this is not the duo you want to do that to. Okay, so they're gonna try and get around there, uh, right above them. Oh no, but Moyer's gonna be taking so much damage down to 80 HP. He's still going for it, he's going all the way, he wants the top here. He takes high ground, Just it's actually ground. his. Oh, but the bush, the bush manages to repel the damage. It takes one shot clean Ooh, and nothing that else. That was one, can he hit the other right there? He's gonna have that more. green tack, oh no. And it's gonna be the duo that won game one. Oh, King and Sinnoh, that eliminate another duo. I mentioned it. They go lucky. They get all the loot, win the fights out of there, make their way to Fatal. Plenty more loot to grab. And naturally, they're just going to cut straight north to the zone. And we saw how many eliminations they had last time. They want to fight. If you're a competitor here today. You have to be careful being near Lucky Landing. Somewhat clean that spot. But here we have Faris. 
Brandon Rogers, down comes the shots here. Let's see how it's gonna go down here. They're at the easternmost part of the map. Jacob and Therese. Kind of moving back and forth, listening for cues. I think he hears him nearby yet. He's looking for Jacob now. Oh man. Jacob's by himself. Yeah, that's the problem. Jacob's gonna be alone. Inside of the natural cover, there you see the circle favoring Sinnoh and O'King. We, we could see back-to-back -back winner here, Monster, with the way that that circle lands. It's, it's right over Salty and Fatal Field, so that favors Dr. Lupo and Sinnoh. Oh, no, but Graham Rogers goes in for the fight. Faris has got to pick up his teammate here. He's got to have his back. Jacob gets it. Boogie Bomb goes out, but doesn't connect. Probably trying to overtake that wall there. Jacob, wisely enough, is going to get out of that fight. That player's going to be down. The stinks forcing anyone that will hang around. Needs to confirm that elimination. There you go. That's going to be a ton of loot for, for Jacob to get, but Maurice is looking at him right above him on top of the rooftop. He wasn't ready in time there to put the shots on him, so unfortunately he did miss. He goes for that side oh. combat shot and breaks the wall right there. Oh, man, this is not looking good here for Jacob, for Reese. Gets his teammate's card. Does he have to get out of the fight? Oh, Jacob taking a fight to Faris. Do you like to see that one? Go for the fight, but look at the storm. It's starting to push in. Some decisions need to be made here. This fight is going to happen right by that storm. Oh, Popping that early med kit, he knows. He's got a few seconds to work with. Oh, he's actually lucky. The zone isn't quite pressuring yet, so he figures, hey, you know what? I'm going to use this opportunity to heal right back up, and now the advantage is all his again. Slight lead here. He's looking for it, finds right in front of him. Oh, man, you just don't expect that. You're hearing all this movement around you. You don't know where the attack is going to come through. And they're just dodging and dipping around one another. Such an intense battle, and Faree still has minis left. That might have been his last heal there. Oh, the Jacob quad. decides, you know what? It's time to back up. Take the trusty quad, get out of there. Long. Yeah, no reason for you to push that fight. You have your teammate's card. Then we go on forward, and you got Slogelman, who just got beamed. Beamed. Marshmallow with the snipe? Marshmallow. OK. I respect that. Marshmallow's been surprising me. Are we sure? Are we sure that that's Marshmallow underneath the mask? <laughs> I'm, I'm just messing around. I'm just messing around. I was going to say, hey, He puts you know in what? a ton of work in this game. Look at the shot over Marshmallow. Boom, nailed him. Marshmallow, man. What a beast. Marshmallow here to make the highlights, all right? Don't sleep they're on going, it. They're going for, for a two-time championship. I get Absolutely. it. Absolutely. When we saw them, they were in 14th place, mainly because you didn't quite get enough placement points. The eliminations were there. They were right in 14th. So with the way they're racking up more elims, that's going to be, again, just securing a more comfortable lead. If you can get in that cadence of just getting points consistently, you'll find yourself in the late game. Mr. Fresh Asian, we saw in the feed, he actually took out Cody Walker as well. Mm -hmm. Three eliminations for Mr. Fresh Asian. He's got that golden combat shoddy. Such a powerful weapon. You hear the movement around here, some nades as well. He doesn't own any of this. This is a scary box to be in when you don't own anything. It's one shot girl, and Chandler Riggs is just nearby. Another the great Slayer, duo. And the Slayer 360, I believe, is in a bush. Not so, uh, not, not too far either. That's the Golden Boy strat right there. Hide in the bush. Don't do anything for the entire game. Trust me, it works like 60% of the time. It works every time. Every time, 60% of the time. You know, you know the math, guys. Don't count it. You don't have to question me. <laughs> So Chandler Riggs and One Shot Girl, they're going to play this more uh, defensive posture, this positioning here. They have no eliminations right now, and we're at 35 tools remaining. So it's going to take a while for those placements to go through. And then One Shot Girl just gets obliterated. Her health is gone. Now down to 5 HP. Chandler Riggs playing around the corner, trying to utilize a little bit of that right-hand advantage, but it is not coming to fruition there. Mr. Fresh Asian is going in for the push now, and this isn't looking good for this duo monster. Our heroes could fall right here, right now, as Mr. Fresh Asian is looking to get 5 Eliminations on the board, gets ownership of the wall, and what a shot there from Mr. Fresh Asian. That's Elim number four. That was so filthy. Took the wall just like that, an insta edit, no mistakes made. The Slayer 360, he's finally given up his bush. He's sometimes actually not exposed himself. Sometimes you gotta abandon the bush. It's okay. I was gonna give it up. He did take his opportunity to try and pop some shots. Mr. Asian did look over in that distance. He knows there's someone there. Now it's Marshmallow Ninja rotating across here. 
Because they're going to find themselves right outside the box here. Of course, if you're not familiar with uh, Mr. Fresh Asian, he is top 100 most subscribed Australian YouTube channels. It's actually one of the fastest growing YouTube channels in Australia. So certainly check him out. I'm sure you're going to find some fun content there. There's uh, Ninja and Marshmallow who have two eliminations for them. Marshmallow has been playing great. A very different Marshmallow from what we saw at the 2018 Fortnite Pro-Am. I think he, he's obviously put that time in, it's and it, it is better. paying off. It's, yeah, it's paying off big time. Yep, would have known Marshmallow would continue his grind after the years here, but Sean, hey man, Fortnite. He's passionate about Fortnite. Still part of the regiment. There's Myth. Seven eliminations, Golden Boy. What? I, I didn't even look over there. What is? What is Myth go What's going on with him today? He's on something. He's, he's out here to prove a point. Myth wants to pick up a win. How huge would that be for him? Seen him so many times in so many competitions. Also another player that tried and tried and tried for that Fortnite World Cup online qualifier. Came close a few times. Lots of talent there. And here's the format and how it works. Once we hit that 15th place, that's when those placement points start to go online. But because Myth has seven eliminations, that means he has seven points currently, Monster. And his teammate is down right now. Unfortunately, Michael Dreyer was taken out. We do know Michael Dreyer is interested in running that marathon this year. But, you know, he's going to need a little more stamina to keep up with Myth here in the Fortnite world. The idea of running a marathon crosses my mind. Oh my. It makes me sweat. What kind, of party do we, what kind of party do we have here, Golden? Chigua sitting right next to Alexia Ray and Jordan Jones. Jordan Jones at the start of this entire thing said, hey, you do know, they know, she's here for the ladies representing. She's got her gun ready. Someone's out. Oh, Take no. Shot. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> she's in a box. Sneaky plays here from Jordan Jones and Alexia Ray. That player had no idea. That was crazy. He got away. He took the launch pad. He got away. You never suspect the people in the cornfield. Jordan Jones and Alexia Ray, super sneaky plays here. Aaron Gordon's like, you know what? I'm just gonna no. kind of keep my cool here, stick still. It's Ali A jumps back in the baller. He's out. He's like, yeah, you better be careful, man. There's some crazy people in the cornfield. It's like the shining out there. Look out for that. Okay, and they're crouched, so you won't be able to hear their movement. You have to really focus on it. They got their just the eight set. I like this strategy. They are eventually gonna have to move here. Same thing for Allier and Aaron Gordon, which for them, I'm sure that they're a little, little worried about where these players are gonna be. Listen, Ali A might be a famous YouTuber and Aaron might be huge on the basketball court here, but you step to these two ladies right here, they're gonna make you look like little boys. They are ready to fire they away are, right now. I respect they are the so ready. Okay, well, while that's going on over there, and I'm sure that's going to take a little while to come to fruition, we're going to have a classic battle here between Tifu and Ninja. Marshmallow trying to play that supporting role as well as Nav here. Marshmallow taking a bunch of damage, and he's got to get to his teammate. Nav is boxing around there, and Marshmallow's going to try and go toe-to-toe -to -toe here against Tifu, but Marshmallow gets picked off. That seemed like it was coming off from the distance there, and Ninja has to get out of that fight. There's just no reason for him to continue to engage in it, considering that they were getting third party from afar. I think the shots came from Utikov and Flake's power over on, uh, on top of that tower and punished Marshmallow when he exposed himself when he jumped on top of that ramp. Tifu really showing why he's a World Cup qualifier This is still here. happening, by the way. Oh, yeah. They're ready. Looks like Mario's left to save Nick Merckx here. He's going for the revive. Aiden's going to go in for the fight, though. Mario's got to be prepared for this. And Nick Merckx trying to direct traffic. He's got a few seconds here to pick him up. Aiden right outside. He's trying to pummel, pummel his way in through the doorway. Mario, again, setting up the defense. Helping him out. Aiden, very weak. Came second place at the Summer Block Party Monster. That's right. Can the Trailblazer professional basketball player, Mario, bend off Aiden, Ghost Aiden, right here, right now, to save Nick Merckx. And he's oh. going to be hacking around each wall here. He so he does it. Him off and he gets ownership of the wall. You never want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Aiden in the box, baby. He's going to punish you every time. Such a clean wall taking transition. Always using the same rhythm. Hits the left wall, hits the right wall, doubles back, takes the wall, makes the quick edit, and it's his to go here. Sino and O King now hopping back with our previous game one winners here. Still in the running, two eliminations, tons of materials, launch pads, uh, campfire. He's got Rats. everything he needs. 
And what's even better, they have the circle. The circle is in their advantage. We're now in to Storm Phase 5. I'll tell you right now, he's going to build all the way up and start crushing players. When you got zone like this, let's see it. Now, some of you may be wondering what's going on right here. Maybe you're new to Fortnite. What he's doing is he's using the edit to peek through the pyramid so that this way he can get the lay of the land. Fortnite's all about information. What can you get out of players rotating? Who can you punish? If they're going to be out in the field exposed, that can give you some more eliminations. More eliminations means more points. Kind of like what Sinnoh's seeing right here. This guy walking around by himself, and he knows that players are going to be above too because he's hearing the shots that are happening above him. That's going to be Jelty and uh, Garborever over there as well. And I like that. Here comes an artillery strike right on Mip's head. Oh, he no. is in the fray here, but Mip also, tons of mobility here. He's, he's got the minis. <laughs> there you go. He knows he's on camera. What's up, Myth? Yeah. There you go. Okay, so use the launch pad to get out, but he's in the sky, and those players are going to be hanging around him. He could get picked off. Dr. Lupo in the storm, but Dr. Lupo, no, unfortunately for him. Overstood his Through welcome there. in the storm right there. It does manage to tick him off. He secured the point before he was taken out there, but back to her. Back to Myth. Myth's got eight eliminations. He's so close to some placement here. Remember, they just have to get top 15 with the duo. There's only 20 duos remaining in the lobby here. The way this format works, it's similar to your other competitive formats that we've had over the weeks of qualifiers. Every elimination is a point. Oh, a lot of great players are still going to be in this fight here. Monster, Airwax is in the fight. Grime as well. Symphony, Tim the Tatman. Got Marksman Cloak, Aiden, Aiden. He was taking a bunch of damage. He's going to go down from his teammate, Sean, who takes him out. Wow. Now gets Nick 30. Symphony finds Ellie, and here's Sino, game one winner, still living his best life, picking the fights that he needs to take. King gets an elimination as well. That's going to be three points for this duo, and he's letting these guys above him deal with him. Ninja having to take so many shots and play defense. He's running out of materials quickly. When those shots are coming through, you'll be shocked how quickly you're going to lose out on the wood, the metal, the brick. Yeah, it really was a nightmare scenario for a second there. Forced to drop the campfire prematurely and go into the surf juice here. But they didn't forget about him. As soon as he picks, he gets lasered down, and all of his health is now gone. And Tifu, perched up right here, is going to oh. catch Sinnoh oh, straight out huge. the sky. That is huge, Monster. He gets Sinnoh the game one winner. That was the pacemaker for the game two. And now it could be Tifu playing that strategy that we saw in the Fortnite World Cup online qualifiers. Going for the high ground. He's going to be by himself, though. Five eliminations. Player right in front of him. Waits it out. Looking for it. He's just looking for it here, Golden. Trying to see if he can find the shot, find the angle. This is what Tifu's known for. Playing for those early high ground position holds here, and he's not afraid to go for it. There it is. Chucks his way all the way across. Takes the shots. Whoa. Wow, this guy as well. And look, he's just going to 90 on up. Great shots. Has shockwave grenades. Also has shadow bombs to utilize to his advantage if need be. Ninja's still going to be in a fight as well as Cloak. The high ground's been eliminated, but that player does manage to get above him. That's going to be Sean. That was Sean who goes all the way up to the top. Tifu's going to be playing in the mid ground. Symphony right next to him. Jacob still in the fray as well. Saw him in that crazy battle earlier on. He's still in the action. And look at what's going on. That circle's going to be moving toward that mountain, which means players have to start making their way up. You are seeing a truly competitive battle right here between Tifu and Sean, who is trying his hardest to take him off the high ground. But Tifu is now landing on Airwalks, another World Cup qualifier, and he is going for this high ground, truly machoing up with the, the impulses. He wants it. He's going all the way. Look, he just built it back up. That's Tifu's high ground, and no one else is going to take it unless it gets shot down. But he does stabilize there. Air Airwax is looking to punish Tifu, and he does get above him there. There you see, right at the top. And then Myth. Myth is going to snake out out and just get to that side of the circle. Tifu taking damage. He has to be careful. He's in that shadow bomb safe, so he can't build, but he needs to be quick with it. And he does manage to stabilize for the time being. Ninja's going to be in a world of hurt as well. Look at his HP. Uh -oh. Will Tifu make the quick peek right here? He sees someone in the wall next to him. Myth actually forgot to edit, and now he's in the storm down to the bottom right. Oh, that no. might be the end for him. Oh, Fail no. Air. Oh, no, Myth. Not like this. He tries to oh, get no. out. He does manage Still to stay alive. Oh, no. It's gonna get picked off by Airwax. Sean, Airwax is weak as well. Jacob now has a high ground. Cloak and Tifu. Tifu said Cloak was a player he was worried about, and it could very well be the case here. He's looking around. Airwax dealing with a lot. As Cloak, he's gonna lose all his shields. We're gonna have a proper 1v1v1 here, a four-way battle as Tifu. 
Fight's on out. Airwax is going to be out of here. That's going to be Jacob. Who gets the better of him? Look at Tifu just trying to hold this one off. It's now down here to the final three players. Here we're going to see a quick Tifu versus Cloaksy moment or what? And Jacob's up in the high ground. You know he's not going to give him any freebies here. They have to go up the mountain. Jacob is going to be the problem here, not Cloak. Here's Jacob looking for him to push around. He does manage to Ooh. tag him. He gets a sizable amount of damage, but he loses the high ground in no, turn. Nice. He loses the high ground. Jacob, look. Oh! oh! The side shot of Cloaksy as the play. storm wraps up Tifu. Oh, I lost my voice there. I lost my voice there, people. I'm too old for this. What a battle that was. Jacob with the win against two of Fortnite's premier players in Cloak and Tifu. Crazy Tifu. battle. Ninja slides off the mountain, falls to the zone. Airwax goes down to Tifu's aggressive push. Wow. And in the final moments, it turns out it's Cloak versus Jacob. And here's the last moments, fatally leaving the back door open. And that's why Cloaksy goes down. And, and Tifu ended up falling because of the storm. He couldn't get up the hill quickly enough. I mentioned before, that was a concern. When that storm started moving, the players that were down low, those are going to be the ones that suffered the most. I'm just shocked that Airwax got picked off the way that he did. And Jacob, what a win for him. Huge victory. And again, against two fantastic way, players. Two shotgun bullets left in the final moments right there. Wow. Just two. That was crazy. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, okay, I think we had a good time with that one. New York City, what do you think about that last game? Because that was a pretty sick one. I think you can all agree with me on this one. Great matchup, through and through, Monster. I, what, a, what a start. I, I really, I, I thought we were going to see 1v1, Tifu and Cloak, and I was going to lose my mind. I may have jumped off this stage. Was, I don't even know what we, I was going to do with we myself. Were that close to that moment, but hey, let's not take it away from Jacob. No, we're not at all. J Jacob really played it so well there. Airwalk is doing also just a great job of just chopping him down, chopping down Tifu, really yeah. being a pester. That could have been Tifu's game easily, but just pushed the wrong ones. Even Sean was giving a hard run. The, the tone of the lobby changed as well when Sinnoh got eliminated. Yes. Right? Once people saw that pop up in the elimination feed, they knew, they knew that there was going to be an opportunity because you get a player like that out of the fight and there's going to be free reign. There's going to be movement to be had. But it was really the real winner of that match was the hill. <laughs> it was the hill. Because once that hill started moving and the storm started creeping forward, you knew that so many players were looking up and they're like, ah, crap. <laughs> I got to have as, to deal with that. As thing. Sundown likes to say, good old man Mountain Always. claims another. Always <laughs> gets his target. Head. Always gets his target. That was a good one, folks. Uh, we're probably going to get some words from our winner in a little bit. They're probably getting themselves all collected. I think we all kind of need to collect ourselves after that one. I thought Jacob lost that, man. Because when he lost the high ground, I, I'm shocked that the, the wall didn't get placed in front. But I think he probably felt like he had that angle. He wasn't going to get clipped. Yeah, Cloaksy really thought that he had the leverage, being that he just came over the mountain. He knew uh, Cloaksy could not build in those, uh, or Jacob, excuse me, couldn't build in those final moments. He had zero builds. When you see that kind of, you know, you read the player and they're, they're not doing any builds like that, you're like, oh, I'm good. You know, I came up a couple layers. I should be okay. Yeah. But he was at the top of the ramp. It didn't really matter where he was. He was going to get shot regardless, being that he didn't protect himself fully. Yeah, you have to give yourself that wall there so that you don't get punished by those combat shotguns, which we mentioned so many times, that thing has a ton of range. Yes. He was playing that one from that, like, close to mid-range, and it will hit you like a hammer for a lot of damage. Before you know it, you're out of the game, you're back in the lobby, you're going back to catering, you know? So, what a great matchup that was. Uh, great moments through and through. Also, I believe it was Jacob that had that fight at uh, the John Wick house yes. uh, against Ferris. Yeah, it was it was a long, <laughs> exaggerated That's battle. Storyline right so there, people. Close. Yeah, he was nearly taken out at the start of the game. W what a comeback story for him right here. Yeah. All the way from the, the furthest you can go east on the map here, one of the furthest points. From there, to, to take it all the way to the end game and then find Crazy. himself in the victory royale, that's a great game. That's his highlight moment. That's what you travel to New York City for right there. <laughs> that's for sure. It all could have fell to pieces at that moment in time over uh, by Paradise Palms by the, by the John Wick house and then managing to keep his cool at the crazy moments there. Great plays.
and I think that everyone thoroughly entertained with that. Uh, we have two more games, though. They're going to be coming up. Games three and four, we're going to determine who the winner is, and I think we're waiting right now to get some words from our winner. Also, we'll get the updated standings to see where we are currently, and I have been informed that we do have an interview, but it's not just with Jacob. It's actually going to be with Jacob and the two people that he took out, Tifu and Cloak. Pooks, talk to me. Thank you so much, GB. I am down here on the floor. I have a bunch of people around here. Who do we have? We have, we have Tifu, we have Poxy, and Jacob. Our final three in the last game. Oh my goodness. Tifu, walk me through those final moments. Do you mind? Well, basically, I was in the storm and I had no health the entire game. I had about 40 minis, but uh, uh, I don't know. I just got stuck in the storm. Cloak trapped me, he helped me and stormed in, but. He got clapped by Jacob, so it's all good. A little bit of animosity. We're gonna go over to this side here. Cloak, I gotta ask, what do you what do you attribute to that? You had high ground over Jacob. What happened? I thought the zone was pulled down the hill, but it was still pulling up the hill, so I didn't wall off my back and he got a free shot and I died. You were eliminated, exactly. Now, Jacob, you took both of these guys out. You won that game. Congratulations. How does it feel to take out two of the biggest competitors on the biggest stage in the world? To be honest, I feel amazing. And when I was fighting with Klozzi, I was so stressed, but because I haven't got a match, yeah. But Klozzi, fortunately, didn't put the wall behind him, and I did it. So you capitalized on Cloaksy's indiscretion there. But you know what, they're all friends. We can all get a handshake around here. We'll work on that. But thank you guys so much. Best of luck in your next games, Golden Boy. What do you think of these guys? Bringing, bringing uh, I, I think that the, the important thing to, to note here was that you, you're in those moments where you have to pay attention to where that circle is going to be going, and you, you, you just don't know at that exact moment. You are just got out of a crazy fight. You managed to get high ground. You know that this guy's below, and you don't see any builds coming out. So at that point in time, you're like, okay, I got I to gotta just heal up. I got to heal up. That's what I'm focused on. Yeah, the problem is you can't assume anything, especially yeah. in these final moments. You don't know if you're going against a pro or a celebrity. And, you know, Jacob right here traveling all the way from Poland now right. to show up and, and make it happen. They, they, these, these guys, these foreigners are really coming here and putting on a great performance so far. We already seen South Korea make it uh, make that, that right. nice play from, from earlier today. But that will lead us right into our next topic here. That's right. Our standings. And hey, you, you mentioned it, uh, Monster. Fortnite is a global game, and we're seeing it play out now. While he may not have gotten the win, Airwax is in first place. Wow. With 14 eliminations, no victory royale, 28 points total. Sinnoh has been knocked down. Jacob and Claire Grant have climbed their way up to third. Myth now is going to be in fourth place with his teammate Michael Dreher. And then Tifu Ninja also was in 14th place. Managed to have that. Now going to be in seventh with Marshmallow. Courage still going to be in the running here. Two more games remaining. Lots of points. And Looking at the breakdown, it's not it's not that crazy to ha have a big game and, and be able to come back into this one, Monster. No, absolutely not. You can just tell from the points here that a lot of this is placement-based. Placement, based. placement uh, yes, the teams that are catching heavy eliminations are doing fantastic so far. Just taking a look here, a lot of players are in the running. Look at Nick A30 and Max Carver. They have eight eliminations total. They just have in place. If you just squeeze in a couple placements right there, they're clearly catching yeah. the elims they need. That's all exactly. they need. Exactly, exactly. Well, Monster, always a pleasure, my man. Boricua boys represent. But we're going to go to a quick break. When we come back, you're going to have Zeke over here calling the action along with Monster. And we have games three and four. And then we're going to crown our next Pro-Am champion. You don't want to miss it. We'll see you on the other side. Ninja Marshmallow and Tifu and Nav, but let's find out for ourselves. 
Which duo are you gonna be targeting on the field today? Jordan Fisher likes to smack talk. Jordan, I'm, I'm coming for you. Last time, Tfue took me down, so I think I'm gonna try and take revenge on him. Well, I was practicing with One Shot Girl and Nick A30 and Chandler Riggs, and I know that they're going shifty, so you yeah. might catch me there. Targeting every opponent in the game today. Any, any, any chance I get to take a shot and run, <laughs> that's the name of the game for me. Take the shot and run. I don't want to name names. I got a couple friends here who might not see me coming, might see me coming. I'm going to be rolling around in a ball, trying to get some late game points, and then get some e-limbs at the end of the game. So I'm not going to be really targeting anybody. Oh, the 9-9 nine -nine opponents will be eliminated. By me, by the power of the heavy metal from Detonator. Hello, Fortnite fam. My name is Pookie Phase underscore. I've snuck up to the caster's deck to find out what being a Fortnite World Cup caster is all about. And to outline that a little bit for me, I have my friends here, Monster D Phase and Shio. So why don't you tell me a little bit about what goes in, what the process is for being a Fortnite World Cup caster? Well, it all begins with preparation. When it comes down to handling what is the Fortnite World Cup, you have to prepare. We're talking solo and duo competition here. Not only that, we are slammed with a pro-am. So you have to cover bios. That's what me and Shio do. We sit down even today. We go back and forth. We're talking hours of preparation on players, 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 players. And Shio, what are you doing specifically to help the casters? And, and what are you bringing to this broadcast right now? So Monster talked about preparation. For me, it's all about the back and forth. If the caster needs any type of knowledge on a situation going on in the game, I've got that. We have three screens down here. One has the main game on it. The other two just have information and a broadcast alert section. If they have a question, they ask me. I've done all the prep with Monster for you know weeks, days of cramming as well. And we just get to it, questions back and forth, relay the information, and yeah, just behind the scenes work. So you're essentially the Fortnite encyclopedia then, and you are just relaying the information. I hope that gives you a little bit more insight into how our casters prepare and bring the World Cup action to you. Hey, I'm Steve. And I'm Elevate. We're professional Fortnite players for 100 Thieves, and we're excited to play in the Fortnite World Cup. The most fun part of the journey is for me just growing as a human and as a person, like having a good time messing around. The best thing about being here for the World Cup is the experience for me. Uh, like leading up to it, all the experience that I've gained, I can't have thought of something better to have been doing. Like this has been the greatest opportunity for me. If you're trying to get better at Fortnite, just uh, play nonstop. Find someone that you can stick with. We've been, I mean, I know everything about this guy, he knows everything about me, so I think that's what's gonna carry us in the, in the World Cup. If you're trying to get better just at this game, uh, a lot of things are just like, no, you're not the best player out there, and no, you're not perfect at any one thing. The game's always adapting, it's still really new. Just knowing that there's always someone better than you and that you can always be better is very important. I think for duos, we I mean, we're most definitely worried about Arkham and Falconer. They're, yes. they're one of the best on the West. Oh, I don't know if I can pull this by myself. Oh, yeah. There's no way it's this heavy. Let it, let it on me. Oh my god. Wait, good? I got this, I got this. Why is this insane? Let go, it's let go, I got heavy. it. I'm so strong, I'm bro. One angle. No oh way. my. Why did they make it this heavy? This makes no Shouldn't sense. Shouldn't you know we're all like scrawny little gamer boys? <laughs> like, I'm going for it. Oh. <laughs> yeah, if I win, I'll definitely buy myself a Lambo. And then maybe my brother a Lambo. And then maybe my sister a Lambo. And then maybe my grandparents a Lambo. Well, if you're awake. <laughs> maybe my father a Lambo. This is Cease and the world's cutest e-athlete. Make sure you rue us on, on the Fortnite World Cup. I'll see you guys later.
the Fortnite World Cup preview day where all the pro players are here to enjoy the events. Cookie, what are you excited about? I've seen zip lines, I've seen mini golf, I've seen Nerf guns, Kitty. Also saw ballers, I can't wait to get into it. Let's go! We made it! We climbed up the mountain and we are preparing to zip line up into Lonely Lodge. Are you ready? Yeah, let's go on an adventure! I had so much fun here at the Fan Experience Preview Day. So did I. If any of you are going to be at the Fortnite World Cup this weekend, please be sure to come by the Fan Experience and check it out. But for now, we have so much more Fortnite action going on, so let's head inside and check it out. Let's go! Hey guys, it's Kitty Plays, and I'm in the Player Lounge, and I want to know who everyone's favorite skin is and why. I think I like I like I like the hamburger guy, you know what I'm saying? But I, it's a big target, but I like the way it looks. I'd say my favorite skin is probably the default still. I literally just randomize it. The the blow up dude, he's he's got he's the inflatable guy. The surfer dude, because I've been getting more eliminations with him. My favorite's default, because I'm a default. <laughs> the bright bomber, it's so OG for me. Me. The rock skin, because it looks like me. <laughs> yeah, I just kind of want to like look cool and appear intimidating, because at five foot four in real life, I don't scare a lot of people. Lynx, because I like cat. I like cat, yeah, yeah. That's my favorite, too. <laughs> to eat healthy, I usually eat chicken and rice. I think that's why I play in such a high level. He is so innovative! What? So this is what I was talking about! My name is Martin Foss Anderson. I'm 14 years old, and I am Mr. Savage. Let's go, boys! I live in Oslo in Norway. I really love the fact that I grew up here. Most Norwegians spend a lot of time outside. In the winter, I like cross-country skiing and slalom. But I think my favorite activity outside is playing football with my brother. <laughs> He's 17 years old and his name is Michael. My brother and I have always been competitive. We're always hanging out together, play a game of chess, playing ping pong, and it's always fun. <laughs> my brother does a big role when it comes to my Fortnite career. He introduced me to the game, so. Without him, I maybe wouldn't even have started playing the game. At the beginning, we played a lot of games. I was better than him. And then he just exploded and, and took over. He has insane reactions. He thinks really fast. Creativity gives me a couple of advantages. A grenade launcher. He's using it perfectly. You gotta place your structures quick. 
you gotta be fast. Especially in the late games of the match. The best shadow bomb use I've ever seen! Rising to the top of the mountain! Oh, oh no! I love meeting my fans. They're super nice. The fact that I'm probably gonna have over 1 million subscribers by the time I reach 15, it sort of blows my mind. If you picture one-fifth of the race population clicking on my subscribe button, that's <laughs> kind of crazy. He's managed to do something which not many people can do. He's the world's best at the game. I'm really proud of my little brother. Let's go, dude! My greatest passion is playing video games. I'm really fired up for playing in New York. I can't wait to see all my hard work pay off. Welcome back, Fortnite fans. We are gonna do something uh, very special. You know, it's been, a, it's been a really cool day so far. A lot of action, a lot of fun things have been going down. You got a sneak peek at it there. I think we need to, I think we need something special for you. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna send it down to Pugis on the stage. And she's actually standing by with some very special guests for a very special announcement. <laughs> Thank you so much, Zeke. I am down here on the stage. I have Ninja. I have Marshmallow here. Guys, make some noise for these two. Put your hands together, please. Now, I just want to take a moment and talk to you guys both about what the Fortnite community means to you. Now, I know you're not going to say anything, Marshmallow, but we're going to have Ninja kind of answer for you. Now, you've been a part of this journey for so, so long. What has it meant to you? No, it's just been absolutely incredible to be in this position that I'm in and just to, to really experience how amazing Fortnite is and how far it's come from season one, before there even was a season, uh, to, to last year's Pro-Am, to this year's Pro-Am, to the World Cup. I mean, it, it's been an incredible journey and I think it's just getting started, so. But uh, I, I, I love this community. I love everything. We, we love it too. So, you know, we love to give back to the community. We love to give you guys surprises and tidbits. Marshmallow, you have a secret surprise. Do Ninja and I have permission to tell everybody here about that for you today? Yeah? Uh, Marshmallow is going to be doing a amazing surprise concert on Sunday for you guys, so. It's gonna be amazing. So the concert is going to be at 1 p.m. Eastern for you guys here as well for you guys at home. Be sure to check it out. Thank you, both of you, Absolutely. for taking the time to talk with me. Marshmallow, you better go hurry back to your seat. I found a stick, I found a campfire, I have some graham crackers, I just need a marshmallow. So, see you guys over there. And uh, Zeke, back to you over the desk. All hands on deck, Marshmallow performing hey. on Sunday. We get to be there, like here in person? Yeah, no, we're gonna be here, uh, bro. I'm gonna be the guy at the front. I'm just gonna be like, uh, uh, uh. uh. You, hey, you got the moves, I got man. Sorry, I was I'll forward. leave it up to you for the both of us. All right. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. If you guys are here, and if you're tuning in from wherever, you get to view Marshmallow in concert from here, from wherever you're viewing it at 1 p.m. Eastern. You can't miss that. That's amazing. going to be insanely high. This has already been incredible. That's a deal times ten. I mean. <sighs> Oh, also, really quickly, Monster, I like how I left you and Golden Boy here for like two games, and you've already just, like, what is this, man? What is this? Hey, what? Well, you know, we, we need something that's clean. The aroma of pancakes, you know, keep some calm. Wait, can I get this back? Actually, that's actually a really good point. Anyway, <laughs> we'll get we'll get to that in just a little bit. Uh, you know, guys, we've had an incredible day of action. We've already got two prime games down. We've got two left to go. Now let's get you back up to speed, just in case maybe you. Uh, forgotten, maybe you're tuning in for the first time. This is a very classic format, top 15, top 10, top 5, and the victory hour, all the placement thresholds, and every single elimination is, of course, that one point. Let's not forget, Monster, we are playing for charity. That's right, yes, we are here. So, you want to play for these placements. You've seen up until this point, it's been very intense. 
everyone has been giving it their all. We've seen it out there. Shout out to all the regions that have been representing as well because this leaderboard is looking nice. But here are the prizes they're fighting for. The charity, big first place, $1 million can go to your charity of choice. Of course, they're looking at duos competitions, they can kind of divvy that out. But everyone here is a winner, Zeke. That's right. And you know, at the end of the day, that's what this is all about, right? We're playing for fun. We're playing for charity. And of course, and I mean, We've got a, a an insane roster of players from Ninja and Marshmallow, your 2018 Pro-Am champions, to RL Grimes and Airwax. They are your summer block party champions. Also, you're going to see Airwax on uh, tomorrow playing in the duos competition. I mean, we've got people from different walks of life all coming together and putting on uh, Peely outfits, because why wouldn't you, you know? And we saw Max Carver up there for a second. He's had roles on shows like Desperate Housewives and just a ton of celebrities here kind of showing face, bringing support to Fortnite, but also doing it for a right cause, which it doesn't get any better than that. Take a look at Ashley. And Exile, there. yeah, they're yeah. just killing it. You know, those Clo dance moves. Cloak, get off your phone. What are you doing? You're supposed to be dancing. Did you not get the memo? There it is. Give the big wave to Cloak oh. if you're out in the audience. Give him a wave, yeah. Cloak, but if you are using your phone, hashtag a Fortnite World Cup. Tweet at Cloak, see, obviously he'll see it it's right there. <laughs> but you know, show some love. But see, on the other end, you got people like Lachlan, right? Look at that. They're, they're forming a strategy. They're like, look, 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 this is the circle. This is where we're going. And then you've got some people that are just trying to accessorize. You know, do I want to look which back bling do I want? Which skin do I need to rep while I'm eliminating the entire lobby coming out on top? It's this is just Fortnite, right? This is kind of where we're at right now. That's right, it's how it is. Tim the Tapman here. This is a powerhouse lineup we had right there for a second. We saw Doc Lupo and Courage all kind of lined up. Good to see all the buddies able to be close by. This oh yeah, and uh, let's not forget Monster. In case you guys didn't know, it's actually Fortnite's second birthday. That's right, Fortnite is two years old. So hop in, play some games. There's some challenges. There's also birthday cake all over the map. Also, in case you didn't play the last time, there's actually these gigantic presents that land on the map randomly, and you can farm them for materials. Wait, They've got so things inside. Are we still going home Monday and, like, grinding? Yeah, no, absolutely. That's absolutely happening. I need to get the last fort bite. I need another 65,000 experience if we're, I want. We're going to make it happen. Bite. Me, Bala, Shayo, Z, squads, Monday, happening. We're going to get you that. Down. We're going to get you singularity. I hope so, dude. I hope so. Man, but we are gearing up. The players are, of course, getting ready to board the battle bus. It takes a while to get up 100 people on the same bus, especially when you've got people like Tifu Cloak, Detonator up on deck. Look at him. Oh, I'm sorry. Whoa, my bad. He's, my bad. I'm don't sorry. detonate him, all right? Just keep him calm. He's, he's been doing good so far. <laughs> oh, the ultra the zoom fear. right there. <laughs> You got Marshmallow there in the back. I mean, uh, again, Sean there on the left. So many incredible people. Uh, I recognize the pink and blue hair. I can't remember his name. Oh, Ninja. That's right. Oh, that guy. Clearly, that guy. yeah, that guy. Clearly a joke. I mean, what a, an awesome gift. Uh, don't forget as well, we mentioned the Marshmallow concert. That was a big, nice reveal. They did 1 p.m. Eastern. Be here or be uh, in game. You can watch it on Twitch.com, Fortnite.com slash watch. So many different avenues to watch. I know, I know Detonator's been stealing the show, but you know, shout out to Pai Dumbum, a Brazilian YouTuber, told us that uh, he wanted to play his first Battle Royale. He won his very first match, and then he didn't win for two weeks after that. Right, 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 <laughs> for sure. And uh, yeah, man, let's don't, I mean, I can't stress that enough. That, that, that concert's gonna kick off everything, right? The final day of competition, really looking forward to it. Monster, who do you think? Uh, so we've watched two games, right? I mean, we've had, some incredible games. I think in that first game, Sinu just caught me off guard. He had control over the entire game. Then Jacob in that last game, he went head to head with Cloak and Tifu, and he was the one that came out on top. So this feels almost like anyone's game, right? Anyone can come out and win. What, what have you kind of taken away so far? No, absolutely. We saw in game one, once I saw during the, the Pro-Am walkout, Sinu and O-King were in the running. I was like, oh snap, we actually have some stacked up teams here. We already saw what Airwalks and uh, RO Grime can do. They haven't won a game, but they are in first place, as far as we know, the last time we saw the standings. Right. That just shows that consistency. We know these guys are going to continue to be consistent, but you know, at the same time, you saw Myth pop up at the end there. You saw Nick Merckx and Mario kind of pop up at the end as well. Aiden's still making his points in appearance. So everyone still has a fair shot, especially if you're in the, I'd say, roughly top 15 so far. For sure, for sure. There's only two games left. Yeah, for sure, man. I mean, it just takes one incredible pop-off game, right? You just drop like 10 eliminations, you make it even as far as top five, and you're just gonna be back where you need to be 
trying to vie for that number one spot. Um, you know, I think for me, you know, I want to see more Sinnoh. I'm going to be completely honest. Like, we, he's part of D1. You know, we've seen him on Qualifier Long. This guy's insane. Uh, I'm just looking forward to even more action. I, I'm actually curious. <laughs> wow, that's so weird. I was actually going to say, is Nick A30 going to show up? Because, whoa, hey, hey. We saw we saw Nick A30 for a while there. <laughs> I lost. The, I blinked first. The, I blinked first. Death stare. Yeah, there you go. I blinked. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, I was actually going to say Nick A30, you know, people like One Shot Girl uh, and Chandler Riggs, they, they are very... All right, everyone, first one to blink loses. Everyone in the stadium, here we go. That's right, don't blink. Cloak, don't blink. Oh, he blink. did it right there. We saw it. <laughs> he doesn't know how to play this game. He doesn't know how to play. It's okay, it's okay. He tried. It's okay. You've got Xavier Woods here holding on to that belt. I wonder, do you think he would let me hold it, the belt? You know... Hot. It, it might just break something on you. It, it's heavy. It's heavy. Oh, man, uh, it's it's pretty incredible. Pretty incredible. Uh, you know, earlier on, of course. Oh, there. This is the dude. I'm telling you, man. Chandler Riggs, one shot girl, two incredible human beings. Uh, also, I've seen Chandler Riggs several times now, uh, and he's just one of the coolest people I've ever met in my entire life. One shot girl, one of the sweetest people I've ever met in my entire life. Love to see it. Uh, earlier on, though, we did, you know, watch a lot of myth gameplay, like you kind of said. Mm -hmm. um, I'd be curious to go back, take a look at some of the gameplay that he had, kind of see things from his perspective, and see uh, what he's going on. And here we go. We can actually take a look at this. Uh, so check this out. Run me through this monster because you were you were here for this. Yeah, we were kind of looking right through, and actually, no, we actually didn't get this perspective here. So just tell myth, myth in his A game. Kind of see everything he's gone through, his little journey there. Oh, the cone's so clean. All the practice paying off. Oh. No, no hesitation. Oh, my gosh. Myth is in such great form here. That's what I like to see at the Pro-Am. Showing up. Showing why he is DSM Myth, right? He's been around the block for a while. He's no stranger to competition. Good to see him in his zone here. And remember, most of the time he competes, he's under the NA West versus East, right? But now he's, he's on land. He's in the same uh, box with everyone else. So this is great to see him, you know, under fair circumstances doing a great job. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, let's be honest, you know, the only thing that ever gets in Myth's way is actually fall damage. Yeah. He's, he's an incredible player, but fall damage, just like Tim the Tatman, it will claim both of them often. <laughs> let's go, Myth! Get high, there. <laughs> yes. Also, Myth has this incredible dance. Do the dance! Oh. Yeah, dude, let's go! I cannot do that. There's no way. He, I, he is a significantly better dancer. I actually one time tweeted at him. I was like, hey, man, can I get some of those dance moves? He tried to transfer them to me. Turns out that's not how that works. He tried to transfer you dance moves. He was, via he was trying to give me like a, a little bit of it, right? And it just did not work, for, work out for me. But it's OK. That's all right. But you know, we've got uh, more players. We've got Mr. Fresh Asian. That's right. We kind of watched some of his gameplay, tuned into him, see what he's got going on. I'd be curious to see some of that gameplay coming out of those uh, previous two games. There's so many people, man. So many people yeah, I mean, walks life we could look at. You want to see more OCE? We got OCE. We have everything here under the hub. The pro M. I also low key want to see more detonator. Yeah, you want to see I, more detonator? I, we'll, absolutely. We'll get I, that later too. But let's go ahead and pull up Mr. Fresh Asian. Let's see what his journey was like. Uh, up until this point as well. We got a nice little package of him. Look, just diving on players. Hey, you, cross the river? Nope. Oh, that's a nice little headshot right there. And he takes another person down. It was Greer Grammar. Oh, no. And this one, we actually caught this one live in real time. This is such a fantastic play here. Fresh Asian with the proximity launcher. Cracks open the build, puts the explode right inside of it. Catches white and pushes all the way through. That's how good he is. And I mean, he's kind of put in a situation where he has to 1v2, you know? This is this is tough to do, especially on a stage like this. You've got all eyes around the world watching you, and yet he's going to come up clutch. Now remember, it's it's there's a pro and there's a celebrity, but to just do this like as, as if it was just two people who didn't know much about Fortnite, that's actually insane. That's, that's, that's uh, what I say, confidence at its best. Yeah, for sure. I mean, listen, there's, there's great Fortnite players all over the world. It extends way farther than you'd ever imagine. That's just proof right there, right? Uh, but you know, maybe uh, we'll kind of see how things are going. Of course, you guys have been waiting for games. We've been waiting for games. We know. And guess what? Everyone is on board the battle bus. Game number three of the World Cup Prom is about to begin. If you guys here are excited, you need to get hyped right now, because game number three is about to be underway. Count us in!
That's what I'm talking about. Let's go. Game number three. And I mean, look at this World Cup battle bus, man. Here it is. Love that new Fortnite World Cup battle bus. And I love the fact that if you are loaded into Fortnite as well, you kind of see the feed coming up. So there are tons of new faces kind of tuning in here. Uh, Zeke, why don't you just give us a little rundown for everyone who might not know much about the Pro-Am or this, how, how monumental this weekend is for the, com uh, the community in general. That's right, man. I mean, we've had 10 weeks of open qualifiers for solos, for duos across six different regions. Anyone could play. All you had to do was hit 300 points and get the Champion League in the arena format, and then you could duo up, solo games, and try to qualify. We narrowed that down to top 3,000 players, and then from there, we whittled it down to only a handful of spots per region, and that has led us here. And let's not forget, earlier on in the day, we even had the creative finals, right? Eight weeks of creative qualifiers. You had team leaders like Ninja, like Gotaga, Hand of Blood. These guys built these incredible creative trials. People went through, and then we had our finals earlier where Scissors and the Fish Fam took home the W. But, you know, Monster, I think we want to focus in on this game. Detonator is already down. Whitlari has taken down the detonator. It has exploded. It is gone. Xavier Woods, Dank Ops are over here on the left. You've got uh, Dog Doigby? Doigby? Doigby. Huh? Doigby. And, and Cody, Cody Walker. Walker. Yeah, Doigby. Oh, man. Coach for the Millennial team there. But anyways, hopping on over to Dr. Lupo and Sigala here. Who are in that little bit of Neo action we got here. Man, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> I have to give Courage props. Uh, that video they made earlier, uh, you know, we, we kind of knew something. Courage was going to get back at Dr. Lupo in some way, shape, or form, but he wouldn't tell us what it was. Uh, I see you, Courage. That was pretty funny. <laughs> but Sagala, Dr. Lupo, they are here. You've got people across the way, right? David Williams, Wildcat. They're sitting in the, the building over there. It looks like there's someone very close by. The Ooh. 65 over there. Dr. Lupo going to send another one. And there he goes. Dante is down across the way from Chigua. And Edwin Hodge here is picked up as well. Nice and actually, Chigua is actually going to confirm Dante. So, eliminations happening all over the place. Yeah, that's right. If you're in Neo Tilt, you're definitely in for some trouble. This is not the place to land. If you're not there to kind of bring it all the way, pedal to the metal, you got to stick to your teammate. And that's what Sigal is doing here. Doing a really good job kind of sticking to the hip of Dr. Lupo. So you have Wildcat and David Williams now. Saw Shadow Rings and One Shot Girl. One Shot Girl is going to get cracked pretty hard right here. She's going to lose all that shield, but no fear. Still backing up her teammate here. The jump shotgun's great for close quarters. And no, no, has no mats now as well. She, she can't even disengage properly. I like that Chandler's kind of holding down the fort, right? Like, hey, she's very, very clearly identified. Like, I need to get back in this house. There's loot there. Maybe something can help me here. I'm, I'm very low on HP. I need something. Okay. Uh, well, that was not what they were looking for. Now they are both extremely wounded, just under 60 HP. Mora and Kalango here. They're going to try and, and close in on this, right? You know you've seen the, the white damage numbers come through. You want to secure these eliminations, put some points on the board. Ewok is going to find Alexia Ray and put her down there. 67 coming out. Great shot right there, and he's gonna go toe to toe. Can she clutch up? But no, it's not gonna be enough for Chandler. More one shot girl, unfortunately. Kalango does hit every single shot right there in those final moments. And Kalmar is gonna be able to save his team. Let's go. An elimination feed there. We also watched uh, Ewok, basically, and, and Jordan Fisher take down Alexia Ray and her duo partner Jordan. They have been full eliminated. They are gone. Dr. Lupo Sagala still here over and Neil Tilted. David Williams, Wildcat, they've just been kind of, it looks like they must have taken some kind of damage, right? They're, they're underneath that 100 threshold, but it's not by much. So either they like took fall damage or someone sent over like, someone, Dr. Lupo accidentally sneezed in their direction and <laughs> damage over on them. Yeah, man, we saw a lot going on earlier, a little bit of storm flips and could have really been any which thing here, but Wildcat's been playing games for a long time. Actually, his dad introduced him when he was just seven years old in 2011, but looks like we're hopping over with Vodka here and Alexander, who we haven't seen much of today. So let's go ahead and see how this battle's going to go for them as they're going against Ali A and Aaron Gordon, who we saw in the field against uh, Jordan Jones and Alexia Ray. So that was uh, quite the intense match here, but Alexander looks like he's somewhat struggling. He's going to need to uh, keep his back of Vodka close by. I mean, they're facing off against Ali A. This guy is a Fortnite veteran. I mean, this guy is thousands upon thousands of eliminations. He's going to rip the shield of Alexander. 
Marksman gonna find Old Nation as well. There you go. He is full confirmed, Alexander. He is gone. The question is, where is his duo partner? Watch Ali. Ali is kind of one of those people that's very big into communication, right? Trying to make sure, not oversharing, but definitely giving very important information. Hey, this is where I'm at. This is what I see. This is what I can do. My materials, my ammo. I need to cover here. I have this angle. Do you have this angle? Things like that. Super big fan of this guy. Yeah, absolutely. Ali A, quite the, uh, the you know, personality in the field. And talk about that, I mean, Vodka as well. Japanese YouTuber, he's been around for some time. A respectable player, does know how to, you know, get down with it. But here, hopping over to Ellie. We're seeing him go with a large push here. And he's gonna miss a couple shots, but he hits one right there. Turns back to Bill, says, you know what? It's time to put the bricks here. Oh, he's gonna have to disengage, and it's gonna be enough. He goes straight up. Uh, oh. uh, the sentiment was good. The angle might have been a little off, but I like it. All right, trying to maybe go and get a little bit offensive here. He's got himself. He's pushing post. with the Yo, 24 going health. In. Right underneath he goes and pops oh. another one. Oh, he's got to be so careful. Wait, is he distracting right now? Making sure his dual partner can get the angle that they need. It looks like it. I think he had a plan at some point. Said, you know what? Maybe uh, this is not the right move. And he kind of backed up there. But Ellie's showing that he is fearless right now. He and Neko, as Iferis is sitting just close by. We saw Faris earlier today in a, in a great fight against Jacob, I'm pretty sure. But Ellie is going to get knocked by Faris, who had the high ground right there. Let's see what Faris is going to do here. I mean, he does have the two chug splashes. He can get himself back up. There's the one. There is the follow-up. So he's got plenty of HP to work with. He also has three minis. But look at the, the AR count. 18 bullets. A single magazine is not where you want to be right now. Now, he did go ahead and drop Ellie. He, they need to go ahead, take some time, get the revive off. But, I mean, right now, they're not in the best position because don't forget, their weapons are not that much better. Like, obviously, Ellie does have that drum gun. He can put in some work, but we'll have to see how things go for him. Also, fun fact, his most recent album, Future, was certified platinum within the first month of release. Wow, that's, that's huge, actually that insane. That is a huge accomplishment. It's talking the first about month? I was going to say, talk about, right. you know, crazy a a adventures and, and, and travels and all that kind of stuff. I mean, the player they're fighting right here, Faris, traveled all the way from Saudi Arabia. He's here. He's ready to bring it. It's Ellie. Dude, Ellie's got the builds, man. Oh, okay. So they ping out where they see the player is, but now don't forget. Yeah, he's back. He's doubling back. And no. Ooh, over the head right there. That player has a haircut. Right through the crack. That was so close. If, that, if they didn't jump over, it. if he did not jump over that, that that might have been an elimination. I thought we were gonna see a major highlight right there for a second, but Ellie, you know, he's got this guy in his sights here. He's not gonna give it up. And don't worry, guys. You guys are not missing anything around the Fortnite map. This this is the battle to watch right now. As Neko kind of says, you know what? I'm tired of this. He's gonna step forwards just a little bit more now, and this is the commit. Even with the low health, they're gonna put it all on the table here. I mean, they know Except that his back Maurice is against. There. They know he's, his back is against the storm, right? They're just trying to make sure and, and make him uncomfortable. Look, he's out in the storm. That's kind of the, the position they put him in right now. And that this player's just trying to bail. Like they're just out in the storm doing their own thing. This is how threatened they are by Neko Kun and Ellie. Varus, uh, I mean. You know, it's okay. It's not ticking too bad yet. It's only that single point, but he's going to have to make a really long rotation, and that's if they don't spot him out in the storm. Yeah, you know what? It's going to be worth it. He will be all right. He will live to see another day because off they have to run now from the zone. They don't have heals, and Faris is left to, I guess, go against these guys at some point or another. But let's hop in with some highlights from earlier today. We have a little bit... Like we saw, Dr. Lupo and Sigala just kind of coming up. And that's another player that's going to get taken out right here and just showing people that, you know what? I have Tilted on lock here. I'm ready to control this place. And it's Kyle Kaplan who goes down to Dr. Lupo and Sigala. Again, they were sticking together at the hip earlier before, but Sigala's down. And I don't think Dr. Lupo has the reboot card, unfortunately. It does not look like it currently, but look, I mean, this is Dr. Lupo we're talking. The doctor is in the house. He knows what to do. He's been in these type of situations before. One be the world, but that's okay. He's he's comfortable. So look at this, Tifu and Nav. Look at the, the, the angle they have here. You've got Nav all the way in the back. He's sending sniper shots over to JT Brown. Tifu's sitting there forward, right? He's just saying, all right, all right, JT, come on. 
What are you trying to do? Are you trying to you trying to one v one me? You want to try and one v one my dual partner that's way back there? He's got a long angle on you. I have the close angle on you. Listen, J T. Brown is a professional hockey player, right? If you can take that kind of punishment sometimes out there on the field, you can do anything. Let's see what J T. Brown can do against the World Cup qualifier. He's speaking his head right there. And Siebel oh. says, you know what? I've been here for a little too long. Just more, uh, you know, players around him. He's got to be careful. And now look, he has to use that launch pad because for just a moment he saw a player running up on Nav. But it's okay, they're back together. They're ready to try and work down on this player here. Looks like it's Marksman. Oh, that's, that's JT's partners. Okay, so they were actually trying to line a pinch. Marksman used the Shadow Bomb to get behind them. So now Marksman's going to have to leave JT Brown behind. They were actually split up in those moments right there. It was hard to tell for a second, but no, Marksman says he's going to take the high ground and start pressuring back here. He puts a shot down on Tifu, but the Storm is on his back first, and JT Brown manages to rendezvous with Marksman here. So now they're together, he's popping his bandages, and yet JT, uh, JT and Marksman win the small skirmish here, if you want to call it that, because Tifu and Nav are off. They're gone, they, they're, they decided it's time to beat the zone now. Yeah, and I mean, facing off against someone like Marksman, you know, the, this is a long time competitive veteran, right? Like this guy has been around. So pairing these two together, you know JT's got, he's like in very good hands right now. You know, Marksman's absolutely making the right call, saying, look, we need to leave right now. We need to do this, we need to do that. Fun fact, JT Brown was the first professional hockey player to become a Twitch partner. That's huge. That's actually pretty cool. That's history. There you go, JT put, Brown. Put it in the world record book right there. That's one that cannot be broken. Is he? Solidified that. That's pretty cool right there. That's actually pretty cool. Oh, he's got the drift board. This is actually really good. He's going to be able to catch with Marksman and set himself back up. Look who else is here, though. Ninja and Marshmallow. They have got this on lockdown across the way. You've got Muselk. You've got Wax Motif. Look, this is Ninja we're talking about, right? You give him even a pixel, he is going to destroy your shields and make you wish you had never peeked in the first place. Ninja has been having quite the day so far. We talked about just being a little consistent will keep you in the running here. So far, no points have been earned this game, and that's got to put you on your edge, right? If you didn't pick up any of the kind of freebies in the early game, as it gets closer to that congestion, congestion later on, it's only going to get tougher, but Ninja puts down a couple shots right there. That's going to be 93 damage. That player no longer has much shield left. So like I said, you give him a, a pixel, he just rips your entire shield oh, off. Yeah. Well, thanks for flying in my airspace. Try again. Dr. Lupo, though, he's got himself that baller. We saw Nekokun and his dual partner right over the hill there. So he's got to try and think this through. You know, do I want to take these engagements? Do I try and go for that top 15 placement? I mean, dude, he's already got three eliminations. He's doing very, very well. Oh, no, we we're about to jump in with Ewok, oh. but Wade takes her out right there as Wade is still in this game. Chigua is close, as is John. John's trying to see if he can get up here now. And they've managed to take this hill and this positioning here. Jacob's still alive right now, as is Nick Merckx close by. I don't see Nick Merckx's partner. Where is Mario here? And oh no, Mario and Sanja has been taken out. He's got a launch pad though, he's okay. Yeah, the question is though, do you want to opt to use it? You know, I mean, Check this you don't out. need to. Oh, he's using the, the new Storm Sniper to scout out the next zone here. Notice how he kind of zoned in there. He, he looked at it. He says, all right, time to double on back here. He's got all the information. You got to love plays like that. And all, he's doing it again. He's actually trying to get as much information out of that sniper as possible. Very interesting mechanic right there. Yo, I mean, look, uh, Nick Marks is a longtime competitive veteran, right? I mean, shout outs to the M fam. This guy's been playing games since years of war. I mean, he is a third person shooter master. This guy is insane. And I mean, every single week we're seeing Nick reach new heights of a play, right? He's just continuing to one up himself every single day. But across the way, you've got Dr. Lupo going up against Lachlan and Liam McIntyre. This is really rough, unfortunately. Dr. Lupo is caught in the most toxic gas here. He has chipped down to almost nothing. Another stink bomb is gonna be his demise. Unfortunately, he is picked off. But I mean, if it's gonna be to someone, Lachlan's, you know, that's fine. I'm cool with that. You know, that, that was a respectable takedown right there. Lachlan and Liam McIntyre just using the perfect stinkers right there. Unfortunately, you cannot dodge those. That is, you know, kind of it right there as they seal the deal. But they get themselves a baller out of it as well, and now they're going to be able to make it to the next zone as it's just at uh, Neo Tilted here. You can see the map on the bottom right-hand corner. Neo Tilted is extremely congested. Players are just toppling on top of it. It's 
We're now back with Nick Merckx here. Nick Merckx already has the scoop on the storm, right? He's got the, right. the sniper to tell it. Look, he's right in the middle as well. I was going to say, why doesn't he just put that to use, right? I mean, you've got a utility weapon that just rips people's faces off. Why not just go ahead and use that weapon? It's in your inventory. Also, let's point out the five chug splashes, by the way. So he's ready to go, right? He's like, look, I'll fight you. I'll just disengage. Use this to just replenish myself. You know, it's you just got to do it, right? Yeah, Nick Merckx can literally take on a team right now and, and, and be okay, especially with the chug splashes being that you don't have to have a cooldown for him. You activate them right away. Talk about you know, people that are in good position. I mean, Ninja Marshmallow in a sweet spot here as well. They have the high ground. They also have the slip nearby. So everyone in Tilted, or nearby the slip, I should say, is just fine here. And look, we saw Faris earlier today. He's managed to stay alive. He's made it all the way to Tilted Towers, even without the heals. So he's still in it. Slayer 360 also still in the game. We saw a lot of him kind of sneaking around at different times. Gank Ops and Xavier Woods off in the distance there. Nick 830 still alive. Let's take a look at this little highlight from earlier. It's Airwalks, man. Airwalks so good. They, he, this duo actually is your summer block party Pro-Am champions, and they are back to try and defend their title. Figures if anyone's going to stand in their way, it's going to be Ninja and Marshmallow, the 2018 Pro-Am champions. I like the way they've just kind of double boxed up. Like you said, man, they're just locking this down. They've got the angles. They're just ready to play. They want someone to try and challenge them because they're in such a strong position. Nick 30 though, he is just chilling on the side of the mountain. You've got Myth down below, Wildcats over the hill right now. I mean, there's quite a bit of talent all very near each other that at some point are going to have to open up their boxes and say hello to the other person. Even Sino is here as well. My goodness, Lachlan, Liam McIntyre, Grime, Airwax, there's so much. Tifu is here as well with Nav. Joey is there, he's a little wounded, but listen, he's still my fire. He's got his uh, dual partner expert. Did you catch that one? Mm -hmm. You're too young. Never mind. Missed that one. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> no, guys. I know. I okay. Know. All right. Good, good, good reference right there. Thanks, man. Gotta love the music reference. Nice little double snipe coming out of Tifu and Nav. Yo, just pulling your leg, Zeke. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. I guess. I don't know what to say to that. But anyway, check it out. All right. We saw 52 players, 34 duos, Monster. It's crazy that we've seen the, the game slow down this much, you know? You would have almost thought we were basically watching the, the duo finals. You would think this is Saturday. Yeah, it's definitely uh, gotten a lot more intense as we approach the final games here. No one wants to kind of lose out, right? You want to get as much playtime as possible. Tifu utilizing a ramp overhead to make sure they skate straight across and not stay in the air for much longer than they need to be. For that reason, they're not going to take much damage here. He's going to be able to pop this next mini and just be A-OK -okay as they're still in the game. Don't forget, guys, Tifu's partner here, Nav. Let's make music as well, so... Good so Ooh. far here is Ninja Marshmallow just underneath them. Aiden Lost King's Rob, Ooh, Nick Merckx is laying in. Wait a minute, okay, so Tifu's shield just got ripped. You've got Aiden, you've got Nick Merckx, you've got Ninja, you've got Marshmallow. Courage, JD, Mint. Cloak, Wit, Larry, they are all occupying this same space right now. Rob from the Lost Kings, I'm telling you though, he's gonna be the one to come out on top. I'm not saying that because he's a good friend of mine. I'm not biased at all, but here we go. On with Courage, JD. You've got Courage, Sean JD. O'Malley, look at dude. Everyone's here! Cody Walker's there, Claire gets picked up in the crossfire. You've got Wade up top. Look at everyone just flying in on top of each other right now. Sean O'Malley is here to show everyone why he's undefeated still, all right? He's been competing since 2013 in the UFC. He's here to prove a point with Courage. Courage came dangerously close at the summer block party, taking it all home. They are still in the running here. Two good games. These next two games can really be theirs to take. But we're going to hop in with Tim oh, the Tatman. Wild card is active right here, right now. Now keep in mind, he's got no HP to work with. 57 really isn't that much. But this is Tim the Tatman that we're talking about. Why is the entire lobby? Just Tim, just Tim, just Tim, just Tim, just Tim, just Tim, Nothing you can do and talk about Shadow Molly. <laughs> he takes him out. He was the prime target there. Now take a look at Wade here, who's got the high ground. He's got the flint knock to save himself as well. And a combat. It's a lovely 70 shot right there. And this is where the lobby begins to condense and collapse on itself. Remember, no one has earned placement yet. There's still 26 duos in the running here, many of which are solos. Yo, if you were watching, did you watch the elimination feed? 
Grind picked up O King. That is Sinnoh's dual partner. Tifu is actually going to be picked up by Nick A30. Wow. And Nav then turns around and says, Nick, not today, friend. It is not good, eh? And I'm just getting word. We actually have a replay of the wild card that we're going to get to take a look at together and relive just kind of what happened. So, you know, it's difficult, right, with uh, situations I, I, like that. I pay for slow motion in this part right here. Tim knows. He smiled out. He's like, dang it, man. Be it's being a good sport about it. You got to love it. Aiden right there looking disbelief as he gets taken out as well. But now off of Cloak. We saw Cloak make that end game earlier in the last game. Whitlari is going to go down here. Cloak's got just enough help to make it all happen. His loadout is so great as well. Perfect shadow bombs are going to allow him to rotate here. If he uses the structures, he can continue the rotation for free. And that's exactly what he's going to do. He's going to get nice and far into the zone. Free baller here for Nick Merckx. As Nick Merckx is going to use it. Why not, right? He can get this free safety for a little bit. Dude, this is where Nick wants to be, right? He wants to be in the middle of the chaos. And everyone's trying to, you know, panicking, trying to figure out what they want to do. Nick is calm. He is cool. He's collected. He, has he is zero so builds. deadly. Yes, that is also another thing. Okay, the baller is cracked. He tries to go for the build, forgets for a moment. He's got to find his elimination. He needs something, anything. The chunk oh. of... Wait! No! Wait, oh. what this trap? Those were builds? Were those builds? Did you get them? Oh, it wasn't enough, though. He had oh. to connect those shots right there. Someone did get dropped right above him. Sinnoh's still in the running here, even by himself, is taking teams out. That's he Airwax. just took out Airwax, which is huge for Sinnoh because they both have seven eliminations. Airwax has 10 elims, so he still does technically have the lead, even with placement. But the longer Sinnoh stays alive now, the, the, the closer he can be to kind of catching up and taking that first place. So that was a huge elimination here. Dude, now look, jumping in. Look who's still left, though. Sinnoh, Sean, Symphony, Cloak, Jelty, Lachlan, Musel, Seven. There's so many people. Mr. Fresh Asian, we saw the clips from him. He's on super low HP, but he might be able to make something happen. Look at this. Cloak is in a great spot. Symphony as well. They have health advantage. The only other person is Musel, who's sitting on basically 200 HP. Sean gets cracked right now, Monster. Jelty wants to secure this elimination if possible, right? That would be huge for him. This is essentially a solo game here. There are eight players left and everyone is left to finish. The star the flip! Oh my god, this could be so huge! Look at this space, it's occupying everything. It's forcing people up, forcing them down, making them have to reposition. Even Sean, he's actually safe somehow on the other side of it. Yeah, and Sinnoh doesn't care. He's like, you know what? I'm going to keep this high ground here. As Sean Ooh. actually takes some damage from the flip right there, and then Sinnoh catches that Elin. So that's going to be another one for him. Ooh. He falls down and could not convert on Cloak. As Cloak gets another, and it's his high ground now, and he has the health advantage over the lobby here. Can Cloak see go from a second place to a first here? It's Musa versus Cloak, and Cloak gets chunked right there. Massive shield rip there, but it's okay. He's got a single mini. He's got 70 HP, and look, Sim is just below. Not much effective HP. Musel here, he's popping those Shadow Bombs, wants to try and drop out in an opportune moment. Wait a minute, the Shockwave's gonna change everything! Cloak needs to land these shots up! He's got no HP, can he do it? He, he does. does! He takes out Musel, and that is a competitive player's worst nightmare, hearing those impulses go off. But Cloak doesn't care, he doesn't care. Even with the 15 HP, he knows he can't take the zone here. He has to full commit for the offensive battle. The last two players are fighting right there. There goes the trap, limited builds here. Jelty is down. Cloak, no help. Can he collect with the last shot? This is your opportunity. He's gonna put the shots down here. Z, can he connect? He has to make something. Neither of them have the HP. No, you can't go on the start. Nice job to Jelty, and unfortunately, Cloak C takes the curse second place once again in a back-to-back -back performance right there. But Jelty secures the deal in the final moments right there. All because he had a trap. Cloak had to back up right there. You couldn't do anything about it. But it was the hesitation that allowed them not to uh, see where it came. Man, to fall to the likes of Jelty now, just want to make you well aware, Jelty is one of these players who's been vying for a spot in the Fortnite World Cup qualifiers, trying to make it here to finals. So this was going to be a tough fight. Unfortunately, though, both players were so low on HP. Once you kind of force them out of the storm, it's basically, I need to force you to take the shot. I need you to line up a shot for me and to try and 50-50 it. See, it was right here, the action came out, or the pressure down, but once he hesitated right here, that was where he made a fatal error. He just couldn't, couldn't play with the zone. Couldn't play with the zone. Very tough, but very well fought. I mean, let's talk, take it back, you know, when Musel jumped 
him right on the spot. And Cloak said, you know what? I have nothing to work with. No HP, no builds, no nothing. I'm taking the fight. He was the one that came out on top, and that's why he secured himself the second place. Still, I mean, you know, this is a very big accomplishment for both these players, right? Jelty picking up the Victor Royale, three points from that. I mean, Cloak popping off. You, I mean, I'm sure he heard you guys here, you know, yelling as soon as he got that elimination, because that was clutch. Yeah, that was a fantastic way to kind of hold it down right there, because Musilk used that impulse. He broke all the builds, and Cloak took fall damage. Had Musilk just connected one more time right there, that would have been his game, because he had the health lead as well. Yeah, right. And I mean, like you kind of said, that's kind of been the, the recent meta coming out of the competitive side of things. You're using Shockwaves to kind of reposition and just fragmenting builds all the way around you. So for Cloak to react so fast and clean up the elimination, mad props, seriously. What an incredible game, game number three. I'd be curious to see how the game shook up the standings that we'll take a look at a little bit later on. But I mean, what do you think, man? We saw some really big names traded back and forth. Tifu got shut down, Airwax got shut down, Aiden was picked off. I mean, that, that's what I think right there. That's one of the key turning points here that kind of happened in that last moment. The fact that Sino takes out Airwax, and you saw the look of disappointment on Airwax's face because I believe his camera had just came up right there. Was, dang, and then to go down to Sino, that's the perfect recipe for Sino to take out the number one player who was previously in the lead and continue to push his agenda forwards. That could have been a difference, but Airwax did have an Elam lead at that moment, so. We'll have to see how things shake out, man. These games are insane, and this is just a taste, you know? You got to think tomorrow, Saturday, Sunday, duo and finals, uh, solo finals, they're going to be absolutely insane. But for now, guys, let's go back over onto the top deck. Let's go hang out with Pookie, because she's got Jelty on standby. What you got for us? Okay, más adelante. Todos. Thank you so much, Zeke. I am down here on the floor. We have Jelty. And we have his duo partner here as well. Now, I just have to ask you, what is it like to come to New York and play on this massive stage? Uh, it feels great. Feels great. Do you want to let him know anything else? It's, I'm sorry. I didn't get as nervous as I thought I would be in front of so many people. Once you're in here, once you're playing Fortnite, it's pretty much just like being at home, I would think. Uh, but did you have a strategy going into today's games? Because you are a competitive veteran. You know, you have played in the World Cup qualifiers. What was your strategy? In the first partida, I tried to get to placement. In the second, I went for kills. And as in the third, I had a lot of grenades of humo. So I played until the final. So in the first one, I, I did a play free and, and uh, free for kills. And for the last one, I really just went for the win. So you just went for the win. You just went full send. So pretty much just like the qualifiers, right? Yeah. yeah. So I just want you to describe to me the last play that you that you had there, the last moments. Pues sabía que quedaba poca gente, así que nomás hice muchos cubitos hacia la zona y intenté trapear al que tenía arriba, pero no pude, pero se murió por la zona y gané. So I knew there were a lot of people in that in that zone. I tried to go up, but but I realized I couldn't. So I tried to go up the ramp and then I couldn't enter that zone. So you had to kind of adapt and adjust there, which you did, and it worked out well for you. Well, congratulations for being here. Thank you so much for talking to me. Best of luck in your next games, okay? Zeke, what do you think about these crazy games? Getting to talk to Jelly, this stuff's unreal. Listen, it looks like Jelty might have been a little nervous, all right? But Jelty, I'm going to tell you right now, you're a slayer, all right? Don't be nervous when you're that dang good. Well fought from him. But again, we've got another game. One game left that is going to determine who walks away, the Fortnite World Cup Pro-Am champion. Yeah, I need, I need to see if Jelty and Gabba Reaver, the Mexican duo right there, had enough to push them all the way up to top 10. We're going to find out right now. Let's peer into the standings right here. Let's, Let's take see. a look at the standings. Let's see what it is, Zeke. Ooh. It's still holding the lead, even after Sino took it over. But guess what? Jelty 
Gamma Reaver right there. The Mexican duo coming right up to the top right there. You saw Jelty's skills. You can't sleep on him. That cone was so nice in those final moments. But hey, Cloak with another second place performance. He's yeah. back up there. I mean, but I think the, the big standout right now is uh, Airwax and LR Grime. These guys are still holding that lead. And this is kind of something we saw back at the summer block party. But let's hop on over. Let's see who is in our 11th through 20th spot. What is going on on the opposite end? Right now, remember the number 42. That's where you're trying to aim. You've got people like Nick from the Lost Kings. You've got Sean there as well. Synth is up there. So many talented players. Nick A30, you know, all these guys really need is a stellar game, right? They need to put everything on the table right here, right now. Whether that be, you know what? We're going to hot drop. We're going to find as many eliminations as we possibly can. And then let's go ahead and pick up the W. We got ourselves. I say that like it's an easy thing. I, that's not me. I can't do that at all. Yeah, absolutely. We got ourselves some really intense competition right here. RO Grime and Airwax is not getting this for free. It is very close at the top. Xavier Woods is saying, you know what? We're still champs here. <laughs> still champs in, in your heart. I believe it. Absolutely. All right, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, the final game of the Fortnite World Cup Pro-Am is about to begin. If you guys are excited, let everyone sitting on this stage, let them all know, let's get hype, because this is it. After this, we crown a new potential champion. Can Airwax and Elro Grime hold on and defend their title and become two-time Pro-Am champions? That would be insane. Can Ninja and Marshmallow come up huge in this final game? Can someone else show up when it is necessary? Well, we'll find out. These players are dropping right here, right now. That really is the story. Will Sinu win his lucky landing drop here and continue to put the rain down? He had a lot of eliminations in the previous round, but he couldn't break the next threshold. Four more points to close the gap. Airwax had 10 Elims with this duo. R.O. Graham had three. He had seven. That's a lot of action. They're not afraid to win these battles. Uh, so, wait. Let's see okay. what's up. We have Robles here. And Chiqua is going to confirm. OK, so they got the you know kind of alpha up on the spot. So you know what? We're going to take this spot right here. This is their loop now. They're going to go in and clean that. Nice little start for them right there. Yeah, this is a rough spot to land sometimes, right? Because you can have three potential chest spawns. Sometimes you get a lunk, you get the two there. So they're going to have enough to kind of get them started. But man, do they need something else heading their way? There's quite a few spots that could rotate from. I got, a, from I got a question for you. So Chief will actually used to be a console player. He played Fortnite on console. He actually swapped over to keyboard and mouse, and he's a competitive player on keyboard and mouse now. Did you ever, did you still play with a remote controller or have you made the transition? Did you just ask if I played with a remote controller? I'm asking if you still do or have No, first of all, I've always played mouse and keyboard. Thank oh, you. Also, a remote okay. control is something you use to drive something else. Right. What is wrong with you, Monster? Okay. Ah. You know, the controller. <laughs> no, I'm actually, uh, I played a controller for a little bit at the very yeah. start. Um, and then I was like, you know what, I, I really want to try and just get better with mouse and keyboard, and so I dedicate a lot of my time to kind of focusing up with that, so. Now am I good? I'll tell you what, ask Sundown, and he will tell you the honest truth hey, right listen, now. I, I saw you in the practice games win that game over Bala. That was gonna, listen, hey, that's what happened, but that, that really happened. You got this, but let's not take away from Eric Slogo Gordon. Man. No, <laughs> oh, Slogo Man as well. He is down, look at this, this is Alley A. He's like, hey, hello, I'd like to come in the house now, please, I need eliminations, excuse me. I like what he did there, he's using those stinkers to clear out the air, see if there's anyone nearby. Jeremy Ray's gonna stick this revive, even without taking out Alley A. He says, you know what, you're safe enough, I'm just gonna get you right here, he's gonna commit to it. It's only a couple seconds left, is it gonna be enough? Listen, we'll man, find out soon. He's play he's been part of the movie It, he knows what true terror is. Allier is not going to be the one terrifying him from trying to revive his teammate. Over though, you got Ewok, you've got Jordan Fisher. They are hanging out by Pueblo right now. And it looks like they're pretty kitted out, all things considered. I mean, they've got the bare bones of what they need to get themselves started, right? Absolutely. Jordan Fisher here does have a okay loadout. So I say okay because he has a shotgun, he has shield. That's just enough. He's got the disengage tool, which he kindly shared with Ewok right there, yeah. giving her you know, an impulse or a shockwave as well to make sure that she can also disengage if things get sticky here. But it's all about getting that information. Look at the creep up. As you know, actually, Dead Revel and Oscar have been holding his spot down since earlier today, and they've done a great job fending off every single duel that's landed here. No duel has been successful. I'm actually curious to see if they're going to be able to win this early game engagement as well. 
They've been doing it so well so far. I mean, it looks like they maybe don't want to take the fight. As far as inventory, they're in a similar situation, right? Not really much of anything in the way of materials. Loadouts looking super sparse. And the big thing here is those three weapons, gray AR, green AR, and that drum gun are all using the same ammo type, right? So the moment you start firing one, you are just draining ammo from those other potential resources. So they don't want to take this fight. I, th I think it's smart to disengage. It's not worth it right now. Let them have it. There's loot behind you. Just keep the ball moving. Yeah, true that. See Oscar just sitting up top there. Oscar, an Argentinian, Argentinian, excuse me, YouTuber who plays Fortnite, recently started singing. But looks like we're going to jump in with John here. See what they have in Salty Springs, one of my favorite places. John Ha and Wade. John Ha rocking John Wick. Ooh. Huh. Huh. There you go. <laughs> there you go. I, I'm telling you right now, Pookie Face is the only person in, in the world that appreciates my jokes. I bet you wherever she is, she is rolling around laughing because she got that one as well. She also got my, my NSYNC one that you flamed me for. Cake! Oh! I would love some. <laughs> Look at that. Five HP and five shield. You like to see it. Wade is going to go ahead and try and get back grouped together. Oh, actually, he's trying to push Yoshi. That is not his same team member. Just kidding. Yeah, Wade's right up there. Yoshi is in the skeletal remains of what was the monster kind of battle that occurred. I didn't get to actually watch that event in game, unfortunately. Bro, you missed out. Dude, I was working on some things, but here we have Yoshi. I said I wanted to see what he's got with the uh, kind of representation for the caster squad here. He's still alive, and unfortunately, Freddy was taken out. He's got to use one of his two shadow bombs right now. He might have to use a second here. We'll find out, and nope. Keith says calm and cool, says I'm okay. I got out of there, and it's enough distance for him. Three things. One, you know Solari's a cool guy, because he is a cool guy, and I know him. Two, he's using the Drift double pickaxes, even cooler. Three, they went to that monster spawn. That is actually the new hot spot. You can get so many resources and loot from that, and that's why you saw him go there. But Mr. My. Fresh Asian, already five eliminations. <laughs> My goodness, he oh, is he just, five. <laughs> I don't know, dude. He is tearing up Pleasant Park right here, right now. I like that he's even going that extra precaution, right? Like, hey, we know, we can see in the bottom right mini map, there's no one else. These <laughs> guys have cleaned out everyone. But he's trying to make sure, he's like, look, I need to make sure to get my teammate up. We're going for the long game. Let's make sure we're back in this. Chandler Riggs here, one shot girl. Over here, they're gonna be disengaging. They, they've got, they probably have been seeing these people go up the sky platform, there you go. They're going to go ahead and scope in. Not worth the engagement right now. I mean, look at the loadout. Look at the materials. This so is unfortunate. The, the two times we tuned in with the Runshot Girl, she had a drum shot. But here's a little fun fact. One Shot Girl wrote a song and made a music video about how she loves Wendy's. Yo. Yep. High key, Wendy's is dope. <laughs> if you disagree, I'm not really sure what you're we, saying. You know, you know what would be a really cool uh, username for you, Zeke? What? Fast Food Zeke. <laughs> 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 All right. <laughs> Uh, Z kind of recuperates from that one. I think I might have broke something all inside right. of him <laughs> with the joke, but it's all good. All right. I feel personally attacked right now. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong, but I feel personally attacked right now. Wow. Okay, power is here. <laughs> Goff is that, here. It's, it's a great username, though. Honestly, it's clever. Fast food, Zeke. I don't know what I'm going to do with you. <laughs> Watch that elimination feed in the top left. Chandler Riggs and Ali Air are Ali, excuse me, Ali A are Finding eliminations. Wow, my brain tried to put Ali A and R in one word. Let's not do that again. Now he's out in the storm. He is ticking down. He needs to try and get out of dodge if possible. But it looks like he might have quite the trek still to make. Exile is just up in front of him there. Dude, look how far away he has to go. He's down by Lonely. The circle is over by Pleasant or Pressure Plant. He's got to go. Yes, he, needs he has something. A super long rotation. He does have Shadow Bomb, so that's okay. But with the player nearby, oh my, the aggression says, you know what, he's going to chop that build down right there. And it's barely held up, but instead he goes for the build battle. He's actually committed to this. Drops a great floor right there to block him out and commits all the way. That's one shot. Can he get the third? All he has to do is commit one more time. He's going to fall into the box. Whoa. He's trying so hard here. He's already committed. That's his floor as well. He takes that, goes for the edit. And now in comes the pressure. He's trying to fall right inside. There is a nifty little trick, though. If he just walks right up to the cone, he can actually fall and slip inside and catch his opponent off guard. Let's see if he ends up doing it. All this is 
not looking good, man. It's not looking Defense good. Defense in. Oh, Chassis disengaged. That was not the play. He should have just stuck with it. He's got no HP, but look at Exile on 11, 10. That's another nine he's seconds gonna before he's going to be eliminated. Ali needs to look up. He literally needs to look up in the sky Take right now. Does he oh, see him? He didn't see him. He went over the hill. He's trying to get the angle on him. No way. Uh! Oh, he gets taken out right there. And it is going to convert to Ali A because he did the last damage. And oh, no. Edelkoff, we were just watching him. He's a 28-year-old Brazilian YouTuber, just moved to the States, and to get taken out, it's so unfortunate. But now we're looking at Flake's power. Can he clutch it up for Edelkoff, his teammate here? Should be the carry right now, and that's a great shot. Did get JT Brown, but couldn't convert. Nick, uh, uh, Marksman right there, so, so good. Connects with all of his shots, and that's the name of the game, Zeke. I mean, uh, like I kind of touched on earlier, Marksman is a very good competitive player. The fact that anywhere they were trying to go, Marksman was ready. Storm flips, stink grenades, drop down. I'm ready with my shotgun. Tough spot to be in. Look at this, though. Airwax, look at the loadout. Monster, launch pad, six minis. We've got shadow bombs. We've got the brand new storm sniper. We've got gold and purples across the board. Matt's for days. And, of course, to top it all off, He's got the bush there for extra padding to absorb an incoming shot or amount of damage. Airwax is playing as if it's as if it's tomorrow. Listen, He's like, look. I know, I know like Airwax is a World Cup qualifier and everything, and RL Grime makes music, but I, I got a feeling RL Grime is way better than we think. He has been doing no, so, so good, so, so good. So here's the thing. I actually ran into him in the lobby two days ago. Okay. I was like, hey, man, like, how are you, you know, are you ready to go? Like, you guys just won summer block party. What do you think? He's like, bro, I've literally been practicing every day. Like, every oh, moment gosh. I have, I want to be good. And that's what we're seeing, right? Like, it's such a, it's such an amazing feeling seeing these guys keep up and really, you know, get that, that bug for Fortnite that we love. You know, that itch to want to grind right there. That's a good feeling, but... He's a slayer. Back All right. Back. Fresh Asian actually brought back Desmond Chan from the reboot card. Remember, last time we saw him, they were down. No, I think that was a revive. Okay, so he, but he managed to pick them up, yeah. and they're still in the game. And they're still in Pleasant Park, by the way. Dude, they've been locking it down. Look, Mr. Fresh Asian, oh, though, no. he he had a shot go his way because his shields are ripped. And that's Jelty. That oh. is the winner from the last game. Jelty is here. Unfortunately, his dual partner has been eliminated. But Monster, look at the loadout. I mean, he's got a loadout that he, you know, it's, it's like a skirmishing loadout, right? I'm going to shockwave forward. I'm going to combat you a, a couple times. If you try to leave, you're going to get lasered. You're going to get beamed. If I need to follow up, I have the launch pad. You know, he's in a prime spot, but look at the builds. And this is how you know he's an actual competitive player. That's a competitive loadout. Most players in the comp scene will run a combat with an AR. You know, most of them do tend to run the dual weapons followed by utility and heals. So Jelty is a scary, scary player to be going against. And Mr. Fresh Asian needs to be very wary here oh. because Jelty Cat's a small lead. He's he's gonna he's gonna push. You see there, he had the angle. He saw the player edit down and he pre-edited his wall ready to take the shot. Now of course they had an extra wall there between them and Jelty, so they were ready. You know, there was no shots coming through. He's gonna drop the uh, turret there. He doesn't need that oh, right you think, now. You think Mr. Fresh Asian is baiting the sentry gun right here? That's tough. It's hard to say. I mean, they obviously want to find this elimination, right? Someone in their face. Oh, look at look. Jelsey's setting it up right here. No way. He's setting it up. Oh. He's pushing all the way through. Gets the backside. One. That's one. Two. That's on white. He's on white HP right now. He's gotta remember. He's gotta remember where that other player went. He's gonna try and isolate these guys. These are his builds. Can he do it? He's looking, he's looking, he's on the hunt right now. He still has a shockwave monster. He could still pull off the impossible, the craziest amount of skill. Look, and they're still they're still joined at the hip. This actually could be their 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 fall, right? Like this could be what actually gets them eliminated. They kind of need to spread out a little bit in case he does have that second shockwave. Delta is clearly flexing the way he set up the ramp to bounce his body, you know horizontally, right? Just straight across, making sure yep. that he did not go upwards. It was a very, very clever strategy. Wow. So they use the heavy snipe. They've tried to go for the floor replace, and look at this. He was already ready. It's like he's in their brains. He's literally reading their minds right now, Monster. He's so focused, so zoomed in. This is quite the intense battle. It's a 1v2. Jelty has already shown that he is here to dominate. What can Jelty do? I mean, he's got the grenades. He can start dropping Going them. for it. He's doing it again. 
Uh, Fortunately, this time it was a bit of an overshoot, but it's okay. He's out of the lines then. He has three builds left, so he wants to mess around uh, here. He does still whoa! own some of those. That was huge. He takes one player down. Can he get the second? That's Mr. Was, Fresh Asian. Wow. Of all the duos you could have gotten right here, he actually got the competitive one. Mr. Fresh oh. Asian is down. <laughs> and a little bit of a taunt because I think he knows. He knows. He absolutely knows. He, he knows. He saw the upgrade. name. He knows who he's competing against. And now the confidence boost is there. Oh, oh no! He didn't see him. What's he gonna do? He still clutches up. Desmond <laughs> Jam almost had it. So what happened there? Really quickly, Jelty peaked, but his character model was perfectly lined up with Desmond, who seemingly <laughs> appeared out of oh nowhere. Oh my God. Oh my god, that was actually so insane. And look at this, watch the elimination feed. Airwax picks up Xavier Woods, Nick Merckx finds Mora there. And now we're back on board with Tifu and Nav. I'm, I'm not over the near I, instant karma. I know! <laughs> really not over it, but <laughs> here's Tifu laying down some shots here. Shield hit once right there, Expert uh, Thief still in it. Joey Fatone oh, is gonna get hit no. right there, unfortunately. He's gonna get taken out. Oh. And Sigala, Sigala's close Bye, by. bye, bye. <laughs> Mid three blade coming out of airwax here. Look at the laser beam. Xavier Woods just pulled out of the skies. Unfortunately, that's just the way of the road. Tifu and Nav, they are in the storm. I mean, it's gonna be ticking for a little bit more, but oh, look at this. He's juggling medkits. All right, there. Come on, don't drop it. There it is. There's, that's actually really hard to do. I definitely can't do it. He probably wanted to keep the uh, the redeploy, but you know what? It's better to make sure you get into safe zone. Now he's gonna have like an empty slot, right? Once he uses the med kit, there's nothing available to him right now. Yeah, that was why he wanted to juggle it, especially being that it was a five tick. You know, he only had that one opportunity. He couldn't make a mistake right there. Let's take a look at these replays coming out of Tifu. There goes Joey. Not gonna make the joke again. A 30 over on this player. A 74, Sigala is going to be picked up. Look, this has to go back out and confirm. And I like that he did double back for the loot. That is gonna, you know, that would have opened up more doors had he been able to juggle both, but it's okay. And we saw fine. we saw Tifu earlier today talk about he almost had a great game. He almost had a victory, but not having any heals kind of was his detriment. But this time around, he's making sure he's taking good care of his loop pool right there. So be nice and jealousy still in the game here. Running that double box right now, making sure he's turning up here to kind of hold defense and look for another opportunity, being that he's by himself, especially now. He lost uh, Gabo, unfortunately, and he's by himself again. Let's take a heavy snap right there. Didn't connect, but your bottom right is Air Rocks. Man, this is actually really scary. Jelty has quite a kit on him right now. This loadout is actually insane. And you can tell he's prioritizing those grenades, right? He's hanging on to the, well, he hung on to the three that he had back in Pleasant. So he really values that item. But on the other side of the coin, look at Air Wax. Look at that loadout. Still about where we left off, right? The loadout of a king. He's got it all right now. He's got his dual partner, Grime. They're looking great on HP and shield. And let's not forget, they are in first place. And they they are your, your summer block party champions. They want to defend that title. This is the last game, and they've really slowed down the momentum here. They don't have nearly as many eliminations as we saw before, but Airwax is looking to change this as he's going for the box chase here. He has Ghost Sean on his back. Sean just gets on out of there, pops it and goes to the races. The Shockwaves is going to keep him alive for now as he pushes the wrong players here. Airwalk still in it. Man, the world is their oyster right now. They have everything they need to win this game. The question is, can they execute? Will there be something that happens? Will some other, you know, duo take a step forward and say, we want to challenge you? You've got Ninja Marshmallow, the 2018 Pro-Am champions across the way. Marshmallow dropped to half. On the other side, Cloak and Tifu. How do they keep finding this, themselves in a situation where they're very close to each other? Their minds are thinking in, in sync right now. Oh, banking nice right days. there from Tifu is going to set it up perfectly to get these floats across. And look at the bank shot. So beautiful right there. Can he connect? That's one hit. He got where he goes down. He's going to convert the Elim. And off to the reload he goes. He's going to do it one more time. Here's one, two. Probably going to line up a shotty here. And he is trying to connect. He doesn't quite get it. He up 44. But they're gone. And now you know for a fact that he knows that that was Cloak. And Cloak knows that this was Tifu. And he's saying, right now, this is not the engagement. Yep. yep. We'll fight, but right now is not the time. 
They go ahead and disengage. Tifu now, they're, they've rocket, they're rocking eight eliminations. That's eight points, and that's huge. They still have launch. They use one. They've got a second one. They've got it all. Yeah, they're so loaded right now. So, great play right here. Tifu's going to cut across and talk about the competitive player, specifically lob to run the dual uh, weapon loadout, and that's exactly what Tifu has here. Loads of utility. Goes for the peak shot right here. And is that air rocks he rolled up on? Not gonna sure. find out right now as Tifu is going for the water place here. He's better be careful. He might get punished in return here. He does take it. Jump into the box. These are not his builds. This is a dangerous spot to be. And that's exactly why he backs up here. He's gonna go back to Nav. He's trying to relocate his teammate. Bobs are ringing out, but right now Tifu is playing defensively. This is really good. Now where is Nav though? Watch that little marker. Nav is somewhere on the right. These guys need to connect if they can. You've got Sim down below. Okay, so Nav is actually one by one over diagonally. Was Air Rocks, who's right there. You saw that. Actually, I think that was actually Ninja. Might have been as well. Man, Ninja it was actually Ninja. Peaks. Yeah, yep, yep. It was, in fact, Ninja. Look at, I mean, <laughs> you got me people. How many uh, fantastic names? Sean O'Malley, Tifu, Nav, Kurt, JD, Wildcat. You know, they were pushing Ninja. Marksman is here with JT Brown. They're already on nine eliminations. Wow, this is a huge game for Marksman here. And JT Brown, if they can snag this victory, we don't know what that top 10 is going to be looking like after oh. that. Dude, everyone said, this is game four. All right, let's go ahead and go full set. This, Showing is, their, it. this is it. Showing what they got, man. Dude, even Jelty, look. Jelty's still here. He's still hanging out. He's been by himself, remember, since Pleasant Park, and he's still putting in work. Marksman and JT right now is going to try and rip the shield off of this player. Two tags, there is the third. That means that player has little to no shield left. And look at this, the shooting gallery. Everyone flying around. White damage, Lovely. number two. Monster, they're out the storm. Can they be picked up? They cannot. So close. They were doing such a great job working together to lay down that fire there. And there's still more players nearby. He's trying to see what he can get. That was a great Ooh. shot right there. That one might actually convert, but it doesn't matter. He has to get to the next spot. And it does. It was Nick Merckx who ends up falling to the zone at that moment because he has so much damage. And look at this. Marksman says, you know what? You don't, you, you don't get that for free. He's breaking it on down right here. Marksman one. wants this, dude. You can tell just by the way he's moving. He wants his big reality. Now, keep in mind, everyone here just hit top 15. That's an initial round of placement points. Three for every single person on the board. This is huge. Aerox already has four eliminations as a team right here. R.O. Grom and Aerox, he's found someone else he wants to start pressuring. Those are his builds, though. Can he get this wall right here? There it is. Quick replacement. You didn't even see it. But just like that, it was his. That's a huge shot. Kenny get the push through right now. We're looking at Airwalks in the bottom right screen here. In goes another replace. He's so fast. It was Ninja making it look easy. And now look across the way. Marksman took the high ground. It does take fall damage. JT Brown and Airwax, they're going up, up, up right now. Down below, Lachlan, McKenzie, Ooh. Grime is still here. This is an all-out brawl right now, Monster. No duo is that close together. You've got Aiden. He's by himself because Rob was eliminated earlier on by Tifu. Lachlan's got himself caught in a box. And look, Marksman is using those chug splashes. He's like, look, now is the time. I know down below there is an enemy, and he is a threat. I have to be in the best possible Honestly, spot. Honestly, way to keep cool for Marksman. Re uh, recoups with this teammate right there. He's just regathered himself, use those chug splashes, and that's why they're the best heal in the game. They're just back just like that. Sean goes down. Courage also goes down in one fail swoop. And that was Aiden who picked them all up. And look at this marksman. He's still holding that high ground right now. Air Rocks just got taken out by Aiden and Jacob. So Jacob is still in the running here. We saw him clutch a game earlier today. Can he do it even with no material once again in another game here? But it's going to be a tough one as Marksman and JT Brown are so healthy and looted in the high ground right here. Aiden actually wraps, just a straight up wraps up Jacob right there. Dude, they have materials. They just use a chug splash between them. Look at everyone else. It's Lachlan and Aiden. Now Aiden picks up Lachlan, but this is a 2v1, and Aiden is not in the right position right here. He needs to try and come up. He's going to be taking a ton of storm damage right now, Monster. What can he do? He can't be counted out, though. Aiden is a qualifier here, even with the double raining fire. What's it going to happen? JT Brown has given up the positioning, and he actually connects right there. And JT Brown wraps up Aiden in the final moments of the Pro-Am in game four with a huge game, 12 total elims for JT Brown and Mark Smith.
do well execute you could tell i mean like like you said this is aiden right this guy's been in situations like this before he knew what he had to do he tried to go for the high ground marksman though intelligently said look you know what i'm gonna block aiden from getting this high ground i know my dual partner has the angle he's telling me he has the angle look at this jt drops back down as aiden says look i gotta double back nope JT is here, he is ready, and he lands a combat to the face for the victory royale. What a sleeper of a duo right there. JT Brown says, you know, I'm partnered on Twitch for a reason. Let me show you how I connect with these shots real quick. <laughs> That's exactly what he does. He was confident in the push, and he did a great job executing right there in those final moments. You can't ask for a better last game than that for another duo to kind of come up and really make sure that no one is safe here. Does that mean we've seen a different duel every single game? Yes, we have. That's what the problem will do to you, man. This is what Fortnite does to you, all right? What an unbelievable game that was. And it's crazy, because for a while, that game was pretty slow. We slowed way down, right? Everyone's thinking, last game, what, what do I need to do? Where can I get? If not first, where can I push to try and, and get some money for my charity? You know, what's, what, what place do I have to kind of push for? to try and get the most. First. Uh, yeah, well, first, yeah, of course. But I mean, you've got Airwax, you've got Harl Grimes, you've got Ninja, you've got Marshmallow, you've got Marksman and his dual partner, JT Brown, standing in your way. That's tough, that's a tough ask. Well, I think, uh, I think I'm ready to know. Are you ready to know? I'm ready to know. That was a great last game and it can, it can go either way. I mean, here we go. After four games, Everyone here in the venue, I think you guys are all ready to know who the winners are. And Monster, I'm gonna allow you the honor, my friend. And your 2019 Pro-Am here at the Fortnite World Cup Finals winner is Airwax in RL Grime coming back with another victory. First, they did it at the summer block party, showing that do not sleep on him. He's an he's a World Cup qualifier for a reason. He's been so calm, cool, and collected this whole time. Confidence at an all-time high. He said he was gonna win it, and that's what he came out here and did. That's right, man. Your defending champions not only won the summer block party only a month ago, but came back and said, you know what? World Cup finals, there's a pro-am. We'll go ahead and we'll win these. Two pro-ams back to back. Look at the smiles across their face. All the work that Grime has been putting in to better himself, to support his duo. It all pays off in that moment. 52 wow. points, 12 points ahead of the pack. That is unbelievable. And what a great top 10 for everyone that made it this far. Sino and O-King, just a fantastic performance. Still half a million dollar in prize right there to go to charity. Jelty took a victory with Gabo. Jacob and Claire also took a victory. Tifu and Nab, fantastic performances. Consistency is gonna pay off and everyone plays so well. And don't forget, I mean, every single person here is a winner. Don't forget, this is all for charity. So we want to make sure every single person is listed. We want to make and remind you guys here and at home viewing, everyone here is a winner. This was so much fun. What a great tournament. Here is our final pages right there. You see Jordan Ewok up there, Nick A30, Max Carver, John Ha and Wade. We saw a little bit of them. Seven and PC Sequeira right there as well. And as the list goes on, Everyone here is going to be able to contribute to a great cause of their choice. Yeah. And uh, offer the, uh, the name of good right here on their yeah. some good old Fortnite action. And here's your last page. There you go, man. Everyone walks away a winner, like you said, for the charity of their choice. At the end of the day, that's what all this was about, right? Just giving back a little bit, make sure they're supporting the world, making the world a better place. You like to see it. What an unbelievable day. Any final thoughts from you, my man? I mean, it's been a long day. I've definitely had a long day. This has been, you know, Monster D-Face and Zeke taking our last swings up here at the desk, and hope you guys enjoyed. But with that, we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and send it down to Golden Boy. He's got the rest for us. Thank you so much, gentlemen. It was a long day, grueling competition from the creative showdown all the way down now to the next Fortnite Prime. It was incredible though. And as you all know, we have our winner. Welcome to the winner's circle. Once again, it's Airwalks and Grime.
Gentlemen, this is yours. Your 2019 Pro-Am Champions, the two-time L-R-L Prime! Awesome stuff, fellas. Come here, come here. I'm gonna get your thoughts real fast. Actually, Grime, I'm gonna start with you, man. You're a two-time champion. Awesome stuff. Yeah. This this duo works so well. Why is that? Uh, I mean, he's just an incredible player. He's taught me a lot about how to play late game and rotate. He's just he's a great mentor. So yeah, I would love to see you. And I got to be darn confetti. I would love to see you compete eventually because I think you got what it takes, buddy. All right, Airwalks, man. You're ridiculous, you did it again. You're a man of very few words, so I'm gonna let you just say what you want to the fans here, say whatever you want to say to your competitors. The floor is yours. Um, I don't know, it's, it, it was incredible. I'm, I'm happy to be invited again and compete again, and I uh, hope I win tomorrow. I was gonna ask that. You're gonna, go, you're gonna join me in the winner's circle one more time tomorrow? Gonna try to, yeah. I think we can, I think we can. I have a lot of faith in you, obviously, with how good you are. And as you guys are now two-time champions, this is a, a, a big moment for you. Where, where is the money for the charity going? Who are you sending your money to? Uh, it's going to a great civil rights organization called ACLU, so shout out to them. Awesome stuff. And, and, and for you, Airbox? Uh, WWF, uh, Save the Planet. Uh, I think it's a great cause, and I'm happy to give them one million. Awesome stuff. Well, there you have it, folks. Come on, Arthur Ashe Stadium. Let's give him a round of applause. The two-time Fortnite Pro-Am champions, R.L. Grime and Airwalks. Congratulations. And now, don't forget, don't forget that while this was all well and good, and we have two-time Pro-Am champions, the Fortnite World Cup Finals starts tomorrow. That's right, and we're gonna be going to duos. The best duos in the world of Fortnite are gonna be clashing for your entertainment. So make sure you join us here at the Arthur Ashe Stadium. Make sure you join us on Twitch, YouTube, or whatever platform you decide to tune into. And don't forget as well, we wanna let everyone know that at 1 p.m. Eastern time tomorrow for the Duos Championship and 1 p.m. Eastern time, Marshmallow's live performance will kick off the Solos Championship. There's gonna be a lot of good stuff happening here, folks. And we thank you so much for joining us here today. That being said, obviously, we know that there's gonna be a lot of talk. Who's gonna take the top crown tomorrow? Is it gonna be one of your favorite duos at home? Let us know on Twitter using the hashtag Fortnite World Cup. We wanna hear from you. And of course, we thank you so much for joining us here today. Thank you so much once again. I'm Golden Boy. This has been incredible. We'll catch you next time. See you tomorrow. What you've been waiting for. The countdown is about to begin. The players are loaded into the island. It starts right now. All the way out from South Korea, there they are. It is all up to Sinnoh here. Wildcat down low, he takes the shot, and it's Sinnoh with a victory royale. Does it? Off and he gets ownership of the wall. You never want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Aiden in the box, baby. Let's go, man. Get high, there he is. <laughs> oh, no, man, it's not like this. He tries to get oh, out. He does manage to save him. Oh, oh, no. Uh, he loses the high ground. Take a look. Oh! oh! The side shot of Clumsy. Nick, it was Nick. Every single time, it's Nick. Where is he sitting? Clumsy needs to land these shots up. He's got no HP. Can he do it? He, he does. does. Oh. Oh. He has to make something. Neither of them have the HP. No, you can't go on the start. Nice job to gel team. Airwalks in RL Grime coming back with another victory.